Welcome to the realm of the paranormal. If you crave spine-tingling tales and encounters with the unknown, then Paranormal M is your go-to channel. Don't forget to subscribe and tap the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Two Weird Stories Let me tell you about a series of peculiar occurrences that I frequently witnessed during the nighttime. A phenomenon that persisted over the course of what I believe to be several years. It all started with my nocturnal ventures outside, perhaps to secure a door or attend some other task. During these brief moments, a striking sight would manifest before my eyes, an enigmatic shadow entity darting past me. However, this was no ordinary shadow. It emanated a distinct bluish-black hue that stood out starkly against the backdrop of the night. Sometimes it would streak by in a mere blur, while on other occasions it appeared to possess limbs as if it was engaged in a spiritual sprint. This peculiar phenomenon recurred with great frequency, though it never struck me as being particularly terrifying. Rather, it imbued an unsettling feeling within me, albeit sporadically. In the present day, numerous years removed those encounters. I am inclined to believe that it was nothing more than a figment of my imagination. Thus concludes the first tale of my experiences, which I apologize if I failed to instill a sense of nail-biting suspense. Now allow me to recount an entirely inexplicable incident that transpired under rather peculiar circumstances. It transpired during a family vacation to the sun-drenched state of Florida where we were accompanied by my cousin's family. Our temporary house was nestled on the third floor of a grand hotel, boasting a total of four stories. Several days had passed since our arrival, during which we made multiple uneventful journeys in the elevator. However, the perplexing event I'm about to share unfolded on a day when our plans involved a visit to the hotel pool or some equally delightful pursuit. As my father, brother, cousin, his mother, and I boarded the elevator, everything appeared entirely ordinary. The doors gracefully slid shut, and the elevator commenced its descent. But lo and behold, just as we found ourselves suspended between the second and third floors, an unprecedented occurrence took place. An ear-splitting, otherworldly scream permeated the air, striking our eardrums with unparalleled force. To compound this mystifying nature of this event, the agonizing sound seemed to reverberate not from some distant corner of the hotel, but rather from a location perilously close to our immediate vicinity. It was at this source that the dreadful wail had materialized, either directly above the elevator or inexplicably within its confines. My father and my cousin's mother, seemingly impervious to the disconcerting incident, dismissed it with casual nonchalance. However, my brother, my cousin, and I found ourselves deeply unsettled by this unnerving encounter. Through our initial shock gradually subsiding, the incident lingered in our minds like a haunting melody. Later that day, as the sun painted the sky in hues of golden twilight, my brother, cousin, and I found ourselves once again standing before the very elevator. The decision to ride it again was met with mixed emotions. My brother, understandably shaken by the earlier episode, vowed to abstain from further elevator excursions. However, my cousin and I, curiosity piqued and compelled by the inexplicable allure of the unknown, resolved to brave the journey in the hope of unraveling the enigma that had befallen us. With trepidation crawling at our hearts, we embarked on the elevator once more, ascending and descending, each time inching closer to the epicenter of this uncanny mystery. And then it happened. Somewhere amidst the third and second floors, a peculiar sensation enveloped the elevator, as though an invisible weight had settled upon it and it began to collide with an unseen obstruction. Anxiety gripped us and our thoughts veered towards the unsettling possibility that a person might have become trapped within the confined space of the elevator shaft. The weighty sensation and the jarring impact intensified our concerns, raising the distressing notion that an individual's safety hung precariously in the balance. However, as we disembarked from the elevator, our fears seemed to dissipate momentarily, replaced by a glimmer of hope that the subsequent rides would return to their ordinary nature. 
Nevertheless, the allure of unraveling this inexplicable occurrence proved irresistible. As if an invisible force compelled us to confront the mysteries that lay shrouded within the seemingly innocuous metal box. Gathering our courage, my cousin and I resolved to embark on yet another venture, a mission fueled by curiosity and the need for closure. With each ascending and descending journey, we found ourselves holding our breath, anticipating another encounter with the bizarre and inexplicable. And indeed, our persistence was met with disconcerting revelations. During subsequent rides, the peculiar heaviness returned, accompanied by disconcerting sensations of the elevator colliding with an unseen obstacle. It was as if an invisible hand grasped the elevator, impeding its smooth passage through the floors. The sense of foreboding only deepened as we grappled with the eerie notion that some supernatural or otherworldly force was at play, manipulating the very fabric of our reality. As our vacation days dwindled and the Florida sun dipped below the horizon, we found ourselves torn between the fascination and the trepidation. The once familiar hotel, now imbued with an aura of mystery, became our haunting playground. We embarked on numerous expeditions, our steps guided by an insatiable desire to unravel the enigma that had gripped our minds. Each ride in this enigmatic elevator brought us closer to the heart of the mystery but also intensified the unnerving sensations that accompanied it. Our conversations shifted from jovial holiday banter to relentless speculation. Late nights were spent poring over local folklore, urban legends, and tales of supernatural encounters that might offer even a sliver of explanation for the enigmatic events that had unfolded. Our obsession became all-consuming, eclipsing the joy and relaxation that a vacation is supposed to bring. The once-anticipated gateway had transformed into a quest for answers, propelling us further into the realm of the inexplicable. Yet, despite our tireless efforts and fervent inquiries, the truth remained elusive. The elevator, like a silent sentinel, guarded its secrets with steadfast resolve. We questioned hotel staff and consulted experts in paranormal phenomenon, and even scoured the archives of local newspapers hoping to find a trace of any incident that might shed light on our perplexing experiences. Alas, our pursuit yielded nothing more than frustration and an ever-deepening sense of bewilderment. As the final day of our vacation arrived, we found ourselves standing before the hotel elevator one last time. A mixture of disappointment and resignation in our hearts, the thrill of the unknown had been replaced by a wariness born of relentless pursuit and unanswered questions. With heavy steps and heavy hearts, we entered the elevator, the doors closing with a finality that mirrored our state of mind. And then, as if in one last act of defiance, the elevator jolted, and the familiar weight settled upon us once more, but this time there was something different. Amidst the eerie collision and the inexplicable heaviness, a faint whisper reached our ears. It was a voice, soft and ethereal, resonating with a melancholic tone that sent shivers down our spines. Though the words were indistinguishable, the message conveyed a profound sense of longing and a plea for understanding. In that moment, the realization dawned upon us that we were not mere bystanders in a string of inexplicable events. We were part of a narrative woven by forces beyond our comprehension, entangled in a tale that transcended the boundaries of our understanding. The whispers and eerie encounters were not random occurrences, but manifestations of a hidden realm intersecting with our own. With newfound determination, we vowed to delve deeper into this enigmatic tapestry, to decipher its secrets and find meaning within the chaos. We sought out local historians and paranormal experts and individuals who had experienced similar, similar phenomenon, hoping to piece together the fragments of this perplexing puzzle. Their stories and insights painted a vivid picture of a hotel steeped in history, filled with tales of unexplained happenings and ghostly apparitions. The hotel, it seemed, had a long-standing reputation as a hub for supernatural occurrences. From spectral sightings to inexplicable noises, Countless guests had encountered the unexplainable within its walls. Rumors circulated of tragedy that had unfolded many years ago, a secret tragedy obscured by time and silenced by passing generations. It was believed that the spirits of the past still lingered, 
yearning to communicate, to share their untold stories. Armed with this newfound knowledge, we embarked on a quest to unravel the hotel's haunted history, determined to uncover the truth that lay hidden beneath the surface. We delved into archives, poring over old newspaper clippings, local records, and personal accounts, painstakingly reconstructing the events that had transpired within those very walls. Each piece of information brought us closer to the understanding of this nature of these eerie encounters. As we pieced together the fragments of the past, a narrative emerged. We discovered a tragic incident that had occurred decades ago, a fire that ravaged the hotel, claiming the lives of several guests. Among them was a young man who had perished on the third floor, the exact location where our elevator experiences had been unfolding. It became evident that his restless spirit, trapped in the ethereal realm, sought solace and resolution. Empathy filled our hearts as we connected with the lingering energy of the departed soul. We realized our encounters with the unsettling screams, the inexplicable heaviness, and the whispers were his desperate attempts to communicate his anguish, his yearning for closure. The weight we felt in the elevator symbolized his eternal struggle, caught between realms, forever trapped in liminal space. Armed with this newfound understanding, yet again, we set out to assist the tormented spirit to offer him the solace and release that he sought. He reached out to paranormal investigators, spiritual mediums, and renowned experts in the field seeking guidance on how to bridge the gap between the living and the dead. Today, we devised a plan to conduct a seance, a sacred ritual to commune with the lingering presence. The night of the seance arrived, and we gathered in the very elevator that had been the stage for our mysterious encounters. Surrounded by flickering candlelight, we opened our hearts and minds, invoking the presence of the departed soul. The air grew charged with anticipation as we listened intently, waiting for a sign, a response from the other side. And then, in a moment that felt suspended in time, the elevator trembled, and a gentle breeze swept through the confined space. The ethereal whispers grew louder, forming coherent words, carrying the sorrow and longing of the tormented spirit. We engaged in a heartfelt dialogue, offering understanding, compassion, and assurance that his story would not be forgotten. As the seance drew to a close, a profound sense of peace enveloped us. We felt a weight lifted, both within the elevator and within our souls. It was as if the restless spirit had found solace, finally able to release its burdens that had bound it to this earthly realm. Our efforts had not been in vain, for we had become conduits of healing, bridging the gap between the living and the dead. In that moment, a profound sense of fulfillment washed over us, reaffirming the interconnectedness of our world and the power of empathy and understanding. The word of our encounter spread through the hotel, captivating the staff and guests alike, People came forward sharing their own encounters with the supernatural, their voices blending into a chorus of validation. The once dismissed whispers and eerie experiences were no longer confined to the realm of imagination, but had become undeniable truths, acknowledged and respected by those who had walked the same haunted halls. Inspired by the newfound unity within the hotel, we initiated a community effort to honor the memory of the departed souls and acknowledge that history had shaped this establishment. A memorial was erected, commemorating the lives lost in the tragic fire. The hotel's management, recognizing the significance of their haunted past, organized guided tours, inviting guests to explore the paranormal phenomenon and embrace the rich tapestry of its ghostly inhabitants. With time, the hotel transformed from a place of mystery and fear into a beacon of intrigue and acceptance. Paranormal enthusiasts, history buffs, and curious travelers flocked to experience the haunting allure that had captured our hearts. The elevator, once a source of trepidation, became a symbol of connection between realms, a tangible reminder of our shared human experiences. Our own lives were also forever changed by the events that unfolded during that fateful vacation. We became advocates for the recognition and understanding of the supernatural, spreading awareness and encouraging empathy toward the unseen. Our encounters with the shadow entity and the tormented spirit became catalysts for a deeper appreciation of the mysteries that surround us, 
reminding us that there's always more to the world than meets the eye. So as time passed, our memories of that vacation in Florida remained etched in our minds, serving as a reminder of the profound impact our journeys can have on our lives. We carried the lessons learned, the connections made, and the stories shared with us, cherishing them as cherished fragments of a tapestry woven with both light and shadows. And so, dear reader, as I conclude the ex extraordinary tales of the inexplicable, I invite you to embrace the enigmatic aspects of life, to seek understanding in the unknown, and to approach the world with an open heart and an unyielding curiosity. For it is in these moments, when the boundaries of our reality are tested, that we truly come alive, embracing the beauty and wonder that lie just beyond our comprehension. Story number one. My first ghost experience as a child was with a little boy and I don't even know if it was real. When I was about 18 years old, I had a chilling experience while sharing ghost stories with a friend. As I recounted my various encounters, a deeply buried memory suddenly resurfaced, transporting me back to a time when I was around five or six years old. In those early years, I suffered from severe insomnia, often staying awake on days on end. Night after night, I would lie in bed, hopelessly bored until the break of dawn. On this particular night, I found myself unable to drift off to sleep, a common occurrence for me, though the details of that memory have become somewhat hazy due to my tender age at the time. I shall endeavor to recall them to the best of my ability. I distinctly remember a young boy, perhaps only a year or two older than me, walking over from the doorway to where I lay. Sensing my restlessness, he inquired about the cause of my sleeplessness. Frustrated with my perpetual inability to slumber, I must have exclaimed my exasperation. I recall telling him, I can't fall asleep. Unfortunately, I cannot recall his response, but I do remember him climbing onto my bed. There we lay, engaged in a conversation about sleep, while he imparted suggestions that might aid me in finding repose. Seeking to help, he asked what I enjoyed, and after pondering for a moment, I replied, Butterflies. Instructing me to shut my eyes, he encouraged me to visualize butterflies gracefully fluttering around. Eager to find solace, I complied, and miraculously, I managed to drift off into a peaceful slumber. The following morning, as the sun-bathed room in its gentle glow, I awoke to find the boy gone. Naturally, I found this peculiar, but being a child myself and recognizing a similarity to me, I wasn't overly frightened, though a tinge of unease lingered. Little did I know that the strange events were not over yet, as the subsequent night would bring forth another peculiar encounter. Deciding to seek refuge in my parents' bed that evening, I nestled myself at the foot, gazing at the room's expanse while sleep continued to elude me. To my astonishment, the little boy materialized once more, standing hesitantly in the doorway. His gaze fixed upon me, he inquired, would you like to sleep with me again tonight? In that moment, an inexplicable sense of unease washed over me, filling my core with a tinge of fear. No, tonight I prefer to sleep in my parents' room, I responded, my voice trembling ever so slightly. Instantly, the boy's countenance grew crestfallen, and he muttered, All right. Although I offered an apology, assuring him that perhaps we could sleep together another night, he vanished into thin air, never to be seen again. The vividness and authenticity of these recollections continued to bewilder me, prompting me to question why such memories remain etched in my mind so indelibly. Recently, my father confirmed my suspicions, acknowledging that the house we once inhabited held an eerie atmosphere. Even the skeptical mother, who had dismissed the paranormal notions in the past, recounted an incident that she experienced while putting away my laundry. Remarkably, my doll, a playful toy that would joyfully sing Ring Around the Rosie when its hands were pressed, and chant Little Little Piggy went to the market when its toes were touched, unexpectedly sprang to life, triggering its nursery rhymes without any apparent cause. Throughout my time in that peculiar house, 
a pervasive sense of unease enveloped me, as if I were never truly alone. Perhaps, unbeknownst to me, there is more to that house than met the eye. The strange occurrences and the lingering presence of the mysterious boy had left an indelible mark on my psyche. It was as if a veil had been lifted, revealing a hidden world intertwined with our own. Curiosity consumed me, and I embarked on a quest to uncover the secrets of that enigmatic dwelling. I delved into research about the house's history, hoping to unearth any clues that could shed light on the supernatural phenomenon I had experienced. To my astonishment, I discovered a haunting tale that dated back decades. According to the records, the house had a tragic past. A young boy, much like the one I had encountered, had lived there long ago. His life had been cut short under mysterious circumstances, leaving behind an unsettled spirit. The boy had been known for his fondness for butterflies, a passion that mirrored my own childhood fascination. As I continued to unravel the story, it became apparent that the boy's restless spirit sought solace and companionship. He had found a kindred spirit in me, a fellow insomniac longing for sleep. Through his gentle guidance and genuine concern, he had shared his wisdom on finding respite, using the imagery of butterflies to transport me to a realm of dreams. However, something had changed that fateful night when I declined his invitation to sleep together once more. It was as if I had unintentionally severed a connection, causing the boy's disappointment to manifest in a chilling manner. The realization weighed heavily on my conscience, and I couldn't help but feel a pang of regret for rejecting his companionship. Determined to make amends, I decided to reach out to a paranormal expert and mediums in hopes of reconnecting with the spirit of that young boy. Their guidance led me to a spiritual cleansing ritual, a way to restore harmony between the realms of the living and the departed. With trepidation and hope intertwining within me, I followed their instructions meticulously. The ritual involved creating a peaceful sanctuary within the house, adorned with elements that resonated with the boy's fondness for butterflies. Candles flickered softly, casting a warm glow, while delicate butterfly figurines adorned the room. I whispered words of apology and understanding, expressing my remorse for the unintended rejection. As the incense-filled air moved about with its soothing scent, I closed my eyes and I focused on inviting the boy's spirit back into the sanctuary. A soft breeze brushed against my skin, carrying an ethereal presence that seemed to embrace the room. And then, in the stillness of the moment, I felt it, a gentle touch on my cheek, as if a butterfly had landed delicately upon my face. Opening my eyes, I beheld a vision that moved me to tears. The boy stood before me, his ethereal form emanating a sense of forgiveness and acceptance. There was no need for words. Our connection transcended the limitations of spoken language. In that sacred space, we found solace, understanding, and a shared desire for peace. From that day forward, the house no longer felt eerie or unsettling. Instead, it became a sanctuary where the living and the departed coexisted harmoniously. The presence of the young boy, once a source of uncertainty, became a comforting presence, a reminder of the interconnectedness of our world and the unseen forces that guide us. As time went on, I left that house behind. But the memories and lessons learned remained with me. The encounter with the young boy and the journey to reconcile our connection taught me the profound impact that compassion and empathy can have, even across the divide between the living and the spirit world. Now, whenever I see a butterfly gracefully fluttering by, I'm reminded of that extraordinary chapter in my life where the boundaries of reality blurred and the mystical intertwined with the mundane. It served as a constant reminder that there is more to this world than what meets the eye, and the unseen threads of connection can weave intricate tapestries of understanding and compassion. In the years that followed, I embarked on a personal journey of exploring the realms of the paranormal and supernatural. The encounter with the young boy sparked a deep fascination within me, igniting a thirst for knowledge and a desire to unravel the mysteries that lay hidden beneath the surface of our everyday existence. I delved into ancient texts, studied the works of renowned physics and spiritualists, and sought out individuals who had encountered otherworldly phenomenon. 
My path led me to join paranormal investigation teams, where I participated in countless haunted expeditions, trying to decipher the messages whispered by lingering spirits and understand the enigmatic forces that governed their existence. Through my endeavors, I encountered a myriad of extraordinary stories and witnessed phenomena that defied rational explanation. I stood in the presence of apparitions, felt the icy touch of unseen entities, and communicated with departed souls through mediums and advanced technology. Each encounter deepened my understanding of the intricate tapestry of the supernatural realm and the complex nature of human consciousness. As I continued to immerse myself in the study of the paranormal, I sought to bridge the gap between the scientific and the spiritual. I collaborated with researchers, psychologists, and physicists who were equally intrigued by the unexplained. Together, we conducted experiments and explored theories that aimed to shed light on the mechanisms behind ghostly apparitions, psychic abilities, and the intricacies of the afterlife. The knowledge I gained and the experiences I accumulated propelled me to become a respected authority in the field of parapsychology. I lectured at prestigious universities, published groundbreaking research papers, and shared my insights through books and documentaries. My goal was to challenge the skepticism that often shrouded the supernatural, urging society to embrace the unknown and consider alternative explanations for the inexplicable. However, amidst the pursuit of answers, I never forgot the profound lesson I learned from the young boy all those years ago. The importance of empathy and compassion in our interactions were both with the living and the departed. I advocated for a more holistic approach to the paranormal, urging investigators and enthusiasts to prioritize understanding and respect when engaging with spirits in haunted locations. In my quest to bridge the gap between realms, I also became an advocate for the preservation of historical sites and haunted locations. These places served as portals to the past, allowing us to glimpse fragments of history and connect with the souls that once inhabited them. I worked tirelessly to ensure that these sites were treated with reverence and that their stories were shared, fostering a deeper appreciation for the interplay between the material world and the ethereal realm. As I reflect upon my journey, I'm filled with gratitude for the extraordinary encounters, the knowledge gained, and the impact made. The young boy who appeared in my childhood bedroom became a catalyst for a lifelong exploration of the supernatural, leaving an indelible mark on my path and shaping the trajectory of my career. Today, I continue to delve into the mysteries of the paranormal, fueled by an insatiable curiosity and a burning desire to unlock the secrets of the unseen. With each investigation, each conversation with the spirit, and each connection forged, I'm reminded of the profound beauty and complexity of the world that we inhabit, both seen and unseen, and I remain dedicated to sharing these revelations, bridging the gap between the known and the unknown, and unraveling the enigma that is our existence. Story number three, Jail Ghosts, number two face in the window. I've got a captivating tale to share with you all, my fellow listeners. You see, I happen to work at this county jail, a place filled with intriguing stories and peculiar occurrences. Now let me take you back to one particular night, where the events I experienced unfolded in a rather mysterious and unsettling manner. It was around the unholy hours of the night, somewhere between 3.30 and 4 a.m., that precise moment, I received a call beckoning me to hurry to a specific cell block. The purpose of my presence there was to retrieve a fellow officer for a short while, as he had to tend a phone call or attend some other pressing matter in the office. Obligingly, I made my way to the designated cell block, ready to assume my temporary responsibilities. Upon arriving at the cell block, my fellow officer thanked me and assured me that he would return before the time came for the mandatory checks to be conducted. With that, he left, leaving me to carry out my duties alone. Now here's where the atmosphere took an eerie and perplexing aura. You see, all the cells in this unit were arranged in such a way that they faced the central desk, allowing the incarcerated individuals within to gaze out through small windows. As I took my seat at the desk, awaiting the return of my comrade, 
I idly twiddled my thumbs to pass the time, but then out of the blue, I heard a distinct tapping sound emanating from one of the cells. It immediately grabbed my attention, compelling me to scan the surroundings in an attempt to ascertain the source of this peculiar noise. To my surprise, the tapping persisted, and amidst the rhythmic beats, a voice emerged, uttering the phrase, Seventeen House. Curiosity piqued, I directed my gaze towards cell 17, which resided in the corner of the block, and there, standing within the narrow window, was an inmate, relentlessly tapping on his wrist, as if anxiously inquiring about the current time. Without hesitation, I responded by raising my hand, showcasing the number of fingers corresponding to the hour. The inmate nodded appreciatively before retreating into the shadows, disappearing from view. A few more minutes lapsed, and yet the absent officer had not returned. Consulting his log, I realized that he was long overdue for conducting a routine check. Concerned for the safety and well-being of the incarcerated individuals, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Rising from my seat, I embarked on a thorough inspection of the cell block, diligently peering through the small windows of each cell door. My intent was to ensure that all the inmates were secure and that nothing seemed amiss. As I made my way to cell number 17, the very same cell from which the inmate had sought the time, I aimed my flashlight into the dimly lit enclosure. What I discovered within left me utterly dumbfounded and perturbed. The cell was utterly vacant, devoid of any signs of habitation. No inmate stood there. No bedding or personal effects adorned the space. It was an eerie void. Perplexed, I double-checked the number, confirming that it was indeed cell 17, as I had initially believed. Satisfied with my inspection, I completed the remaining checks and returned to the central desk, laden with a sense of unease. Seated once again, my mind filled with questions and curiosity, I decided to consult the cell log, a record that documented the allocation of inmates in each cell, and what I discovered within its pages sent a chill down my spine. According to the log, cell 17 had been unoccupied for approximately two weeks, out of service due to a malfunctioning toilet. Yet there I was, standing at the desk, my thoughts consumed by the inexplicable events that had unfolded before me. The realization that the inmate had seemingly appeared in a cell that had been unoccupied for weeks sent shivers down my spine. It was as if I had witnessed a ghostly apparition, defying all rational explanation. Unable to contain my growing unease, I knew I had to share my bewildering encounter with the returning officer. As soon as he arrived, I recounted every detail, hoping that he might provide some insight or offer a logical explanation for what I had experienced. To my surprise, he too was taken aback by the peculiar nature of the situation. With a furrowed brow, the officer informed me that cell 17 had been deemed unfit for habitation due to the broken toilet. As a result, it had remained unoccupied for the past couple of weeks. The mere presence of an inmate in that cell seemed implausible, if not impossible. We both found ourselves grappling with this enigma, struggling to comprehend how this inexplicable occurrence had transpired. Determined to seek further evidence and perhaps some, shed some light on mysterious events, I decided to consult the surveillance system. The jail had a network of cameras strategically positioned throughout the facility, including one that overlooked the area encompassing cell 17. Making my way to the sergeant's office, I requested his assistance in retrieving the footage related to the incident. The sergeant, intrigued by my unusual circumstances, swiftly obliged my request, and together we delved into the footage, eagerly anticipating the moment when the tapping and the voice saying 17 House would be captured on screen. As we watched the recording, my heart pounded with anticipation, hoping that the video would provide some semblance of clarity. To our astonishment, the video depicted an accurate representation of the events that had transcribed. There I was, sitting at the desk, twiddling my thumbs, just as I remembered. The tapping noise reverberated through the speakers, and the inmate's voice echoed through the cell block, uttering those haunting words. However, as we scrutinized the footage closely, we were met with an eerie realization. No face appeared in the window. 
It was as if the inmate's presence has been reduced to a disembodied voice, defying the laws of logic and reason. Our search for answers only deepened the mystery, leaving us with more questions than before. How could a non-existent inmate engage in such a bizarre interaction with me? What supernatural force could have orchestrated this perplexing charade? Rumors and whispers of paranormal phenomena had occasionally circulated within the jail's confines, but nothing as concrete and bewildering as what I had experienced. I couldn't help but wonder if this was an isolated incident, or if other staff members or inmates had encountered similar inexplicable encounters within these walls. Word of my encounter spread among my colleagues, prompting hushed conversations during breaks and shared tales of their own unsettling experiences. Some had witnessed unexplained shadows flitting across the walls, while others swore they had heard whispers echoing through the corridors when no one was around. The jail, it seemed, harbored its own secrets, hidden within its austere walls. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the enigma surrounding cell 17 remained unsolved. The incident faded into the annals of the jail's history, a haunting reminder that even with the confines of the seemingly mundane, the inexplicable and the supernatural could intertwine. To this day I reflect upon the bewildering night, pondering the nature of reality and the existence of forces beyond our comprehension. The memory of that ghostly encounter continues to haunt me, serving as a constant reminder that sometimes in the depths of the unknown, the explicable can reveal itself, defying our limited understanding of the world. It serves as a stark reminder that there are realms beyond our grasp, where the boundaries of logic and reason blur and the supernatural dances with the mundane. Over time, I became increasingly fascinated by the hidden mysteries of the jail. I delved into books and articles seeking accounts of otherworldly encounters within the correctional facilities. To my surprise, I stumbled upon a collection of stories shared by both inmates and staff members from various prisons across the world. These tales painted a tapestry of unexplained phenomenon, showcasing a parallel reality that coexisted within the walls of these institutions. In one account, an inmate claimed to have seen spectral figures wandering the corridors late at night, their ethereal presence casting an eerie glow. Another narrative spoke of inexplicable temperature drops, with cells turning icy cold despite the absence of any logical explanation. Reading all these theories, I realized that my experience was not an isolated incident. Others had faced similar encounters with the inexplicable, grappling with their own versions of the unexplained phenomena. The jail, it seemed, held a veil between the tangible and the intangible, a threshold where the paranormal intersected with the mundane routines of prison life. Emboldened by these shared experiences, I embarked on a quest to uncover the secrets of the jail. I sought out seasoned officers who had patrolled its corridors for years, hoping they would shed light on the hidden whispers and inexplicable occurrences that permeated the facility. Their accounts, filled with a mixture of awe and trepidation, unveiled a hidden world teeming with unexplained events. One veteran officer recounted an incident where he had witnessed doors swinging open and closing by unseen hands, accompanied by a chilling breeze that seemed to carry whispers from beyond. Another guard described a palpable sense of unease and a feeling of being watched, particularly in certain cell blocks notorious for their turbulent history. The more I delved into these encounters, the clearer it became that the jail possessed a unique energy, an ethereal presence that divide conventional understanding. It was as if the very fabric of the building absorbed the emotions, memories, and energy of those who had passed through its gates creating a complex tapestry of spiritual residue. In my pursuit for answers, I connected with paranormal investigators and researchers specializing in haunted locations. Together, we organized investigations within the jail, armed with sophisticated equipment designed to capture evidence of the otherworldly. Throughout these explorations, we recorded unexplained footsteps echoing through empty corridors, disembodied voices whispering chilling messages, and even instances of poltergeist activity. The culmination of these efforts led to a shift in perception within the jail. 
what was once whispered in hushed tones among staff members now became an open conversation. Inmates began sharing their own encounters, providing additional layers of insight into the mysteries that lurked within the confines of their cells. These shared experiences fostered a sense of camaraderie among the incarcerated, the staff and the researchers. Together, we embraced the inexplicable, seeking to understand the uncharted territories of the supernatural that intertwined with the everyday reality of the jail. In retrospect, my encounter in Cell 17 served as a catalyst, igniting a journey of exploration and understanding. It taught me to embrace the enigmatic nature of the universe, recognizing that even in the most mundane of places, the extraordinary can unfold. Story number three, Bedroom Ghost Encounter. I found myself standing in my room, engulfed in an eerie silence that was disrupted only by the peculiar sound of heavy breathing emanating from the far corner where my dresser stood. A shiver traveling down my spine, sending chills coursing through my entire body. Doubt and uncertainty gripped my mind as I questioned my own sanity. Was I losing it? Or was there something truly amiss in this room? Curiously, my dog, usually ever alert and vigilant, lay peculiarly asleep amidst this unsettling atmosphere. So, determined to confirm whether my ears were playing tricks on me, I focused intently on the source of the ominous breathing. In an attempt to drown out any other sounds, I gently nudged my slumbering companion, causing him to stir and cease his snoring. Yet, to my astonishment, the mysterious breathing persisted unabated. Anxiety began to gnaw at my thoughts, compelling me to delve deeper into this paranormal encounter. Tentatively, I summoned the courage to communicate with the unseen presence that lurked within the confines of my room. My voice quivered as I attempted to initiate a dialogue, hoping for some form of response. With every passing moment, the oppressive breathing gradually subsided leaving behind an unnerving stillness. Just as I began to entertain the possibility that the enigmatic entity had retreated, my faithful canine companion abruptly shifted his attention. The once dormant dog now directed his fervent barking toward the shelves situated on a different wall. A wave of apprehension washed over me as I pondered the significance of this change in focus. What was it that had captured his attention? Was it the same entity that had ceased its breathing presence moments ago? Or was there another presence lurking within the shadows of my room? Uncertainty besieged my mind as I grappled with the dilemma of discerning the intentions behind these mysterious occurrences. I pondered the role of the lit candle that adorned my room, flickering gently in their ethereal glow. I couldn't help but wonder if they had inadvertently invited a supernatural presence into my living space. I quickly dismissed any thought of the witchcraft or intentional summoning, as my relationship with the supernatural was non-existent. My room remained clean and orderly, devoid of any occult artifacts that could have enticed spirits to make their presence known. As I replayed the events in my mind, a chilling realization dawned upon me. The unsettling breaths I had heard earlier were unmistakably inhuman. They lacked the familiarity of any earthly creature ruling out the possibility of a hidden animal within the walls. I also recalled with certainty that the windows of the room were perpetually sealed, barring any external factors that could, you know, explain this unearthly disturbance. So torn between fear and curiosity, I found myself at a crossroads, seeking a resolution to the enigma that had manifested within the sanctuary of my room. Would I succumb to dread and flee from the unknown? or would I confront the apparition head-on, determined to decipher its intentions? The decisions weighed heavily on my shoulders as I grappled with the consequences of each choice. In that moment, I vowed to unravel the mystery that had plagued me. Armed with a courageous heart and an unwavering determination, I embarked on a journey to confront the ethereal forces that occupied my living space. With every step, my pulse quickened, adrenaline coursing through my veins, preparing me for whatever awaited me beyond the realms of my understanding. As I braced myself to face the unknown, 
a surge of adrenaline propelled me forward, overriding any lingering doubts or fears. My palms moistened with perspiration and my heartbeat thundered in my ears, but I was resolute in my pursuit of answers. Approaching the shells that had captured my dog's attention, I noticed an inexplicable chill in the air, causing goosebumps to form on my arms. The atmosphere crackled with an intangible energy, hinting at the presence of something beyond the realm of the living. With a trembling hand, I reached out to touch the surface of the shelves, hoping to establish a connection, a link to the otherworldly force that had disrupted the tranquility of my room. As my fingers grazed the smooth wood, an electric jolt coursed through my body, jarring me momentarily. Suddenly, a flurry of images flooded my mind, visions of shadowy figures, ethereal whispers, and a profound sense of anguish and longing consumed my consciousness. It was as if I had tapped into a forgotten narrative, a tale woven by spirits longing to be heard. Overwhelmed yet determined, I focused my attention on deciphering the messages being transmitted through the psychic channel. Closing my eyes, I allowed myself to be enveloped by the supernatural current, surrendering to the unknown forces at play. In the depths of my mind, I discerned fragmented voices, desperate pleas for solace and redemption. These ethereal echoes spoke of unresolved pasts, trapped souls yearning for release. Their presence wasn't malevolent, but rather born out of a desire for acknowledgement and closure. As I delved deeper into the spiritual realm, I realized that my room had inadvertently become a conduit, a sanctuary for lost souls seeking respite. The candles, symbols of warmth and illumination had inadvertently beckoned these wandering spirits, drawing them towards my space in search of solace. Embracing my newfound role as a mediator between the living and the ethereal, I vowed to assist these troubled souls in finding the peace that they so desperately sought. Armed with compassion and empathy, I dedicated myself to unraveling their stories, to lending a listening ear to their forgotten narratives. Days turned into weeks as I immersed myself in this newfound purpose, researching forgotten histories, visiting local libraries, and consulting with spiritual experts. I sought to uncover the identities and the history of these spirits that had chosen to reveal themselves within the confines of my room. With each revelation, a sense of fulfillment washed over me. It was not the malicious presence I had feared, but rather a collective plea for understanding and redemption. I had become a conduit for healing, a bridge between the living and the departed. Word of my unique ability spread and soon individuals burdened by the unexplained phenomenon sought my guidance. I counseled and comforted, providing solace to those tormented by the supernatural. Through my experiences, I realized that the world of the paranormal was intricately intertwined with our own, and that compassion and empathy were potent tools for bridging the gap between the two worlds. Years passed, and my room transformed into a haven for those seeking spiritual enlightenment and guidance. The once frightening breathing and barking had become a distant memory, replaced by a harmonious coexistence between the living and the spirits that dwelled among us. Reflecting upon my journey, I marveled at the intricacies of the unseen world. What had initially been a source of fear and uncertainty had blossomed into a profound connection with the supernatural. My room, once shrouded in mystery, had become a testament to the power and empathy and understanding. As I continued to navigate the delicate balance between the tangible and the ethereal, I am reminded that within the darkness corners lies the potential for profound discovery and growth. It's through confronting our fears and embracing the unknown that we truly expand our understanding of the world and ourselves. The encounters in my room served as a constant reminder of the fragility and complexity of the human experience. Each spirit that crossed my path brought with them a unique story, a tale of love, loss, or unfinished business. Through my interactions with them, I gained insights into the depths of human emotions and the enduring power of the soul. The lessons learned within those four walls extended far beyond the realm of the supernatural. They permeated every aspect of my life, enriching my relationships, deepening my empathy, and fostering a sense of interconnectedness with all beings. I became acutely aware of the unseen struggles that individuals carried, 
recognizing that everyone had their own ghosts to confront. Driven by a newfound purpose, I ventured beyond the confines of my room, seeking to assist not only the spirits that sought solace, but also the living souls burdened by their own internal hauntings. I volunteered at shelters, offering a listening ear to those grappling with trauma and providing a comforting presence in their darkest hours. I discovered that the ability to connect with the ethereal had given me a unique perspective on human suffering and the capacity for healing. Over time, my experiences led me to establish a community center dedicated to spiritual exploration and emotional healing. It became a sanctuary for individuals from all walks of life, a safe space where they could share their stories, find guidance, and embark on their own journeys of self-discovery. Together, we created a supportive network that transcended the boundaries of the physical and delved into the realm of the metaphysical. As the years rolled on, the community center flourished, drawing seekers from far and wide. Workshops and seminars and group sessions became the norm, with the individuals delving into various spiritual practices and connecting with their inner selves. The paranormal encounters that had initiated my path now served as catalysts for the transformation and enlightenment of others. Within the walls of the community center, people shed their fears, embraced their vulnerabilities, and found solace in the collective support of like-minded individuals. We celebrated the diversity of experiences, recognizing that each person's journey was unique and deserving of respect. Together we unearthed buried truths, confronted past traumas, and opened ourselves to the limitless potential of growth and healing. Through it all, I remained humbled by the interconnectedness of the living and the spirit realm. I learned that the boundaries between the seen and unseen were not rigid, but fluid, and that our perception of reality was limited by our own beliefs and conditioning. I encouraged others to question their preconceived notions, to challenge the boundaries of what they deemed possible, and to explore the vast tapestry of existence that lay beyond the veil. As I reflect upon my extraordinary journey, I'm reminded that the supernatural is not to be feared, but embraced. It is a realm of infinite wisdom and untapped potential, waiting to be explored by those courageous enough to venture into its depths, in the darkest corners of our existence, where shadows linger and whispers echo, lie an invitation to step into the unknown, to expand our consciousness, and to discover the extraordinary that resides within all of us. Twelve strange things in my house. I vividly recall the strange events that have unfolded in my home over the years. It all began in 2018 when my family and I moved into our current house. It was just 15 years old at the time, filled with youthful curiosity and excitement. Little did I know that peculiar occurrences would soon become a regular part of my life. During that first summer in our new home, an incident occurred that left me baffled and unnerved. It was a late hour around 2 a.m. when I found myself in need of a drink from the kitchen. As I made my way downstairs, I caught a glimpse of a group of people gathered around the dining room table. Their faces were indescribable, almost blurred and vague, making it impossible for me to discern any specific features. Before I could fully comprehend the surreal sight before me, they vanished into thin air. It was a perplexing encounter that would forever stay etched in my memory. The following year, in 2019, I was home alone one day, except for my cat. I distinctly recall hearing faint footsteps emanating from upstairs while I was in the living room. These sounds were different from the gentle movements of my feline companion, so I ventured to investigate. To ensure my safety, I gripped a knife tightly, unsure of what I might encounter. However, as I reached the upper floor, I found nothing out of the ordinary. The windows were closed and everything appeared undisturbed. It was as if there had been no one else present, but deep within, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. Despite my best efforts to explain these occurrences, I remained convinced that there was more to this than met the eye. In the year 2020, my family welcomed a new addition, a dog. It was during a dark evening when an incident occurred that further intensified that peculiar happening within our home. My sister and I were enjoying our meal when suddenly, our dog's behavior took a drastic turn. He fixated on something in the garden, 
barking incessantly as if attempting to scare away an invisible presence. I peered outside, searching for any sign of an intruder, but to my bewilderment there was nothing to be found. While I acknowledged that there might be a logical explanation, deep down I couldn't shake off the sense of unease that lingered. Although there were other incidents that occurred intermittently, my recollection of them remains hazy. They were unsettling experiences that I prefer not to recount in detail, as the memories are elusive and difficult to put into words. However, it was in 2021 that I encountered an eerie situation that would mark a turning point in the intensity of these strange occurrences. Sleep had eluded me for quite some time as I couldn't find solace in laying on my side, fearing the unknown that lay behind me. And then one fateful evening I found myself unconsciously lying on my side facing the wall without any awareness of how I had ended up in that position. Upon awakening, an inexplicable sensation washed over me, an unwavering conviction that something was lurking behind me. It was an overwhelming presence that I could almost feel with every fiber of my being. The desire to scream gripped me, yet an inexplicable fear prevented me from doing so, as if some malevolent consequence would befall me should I utter a sound. To reassure myself that it wasn't merely a case of sleep paralysis, I attempted to move my fingers, legs, and feet, successfully proving that I had control over my body. And then, in a startling moment, I felt a gentle force pushing me, urging me to shift from my one side to the stomach. By some inexplicable means, I managed to resist this unseen entity's influence, though the precise methods eludes my understanding. Almost instantaneously, as I thwarted its efforts, sleep engulfed me once more. From that moment onward, the occurrences took a darker turn. The summer of 2022 found me vacationing in Spain, desperately seeking respite from the disquietude that had become synonymous with my home. However, even amidst the sun-drenched days and serene landscapes, a sense of unease persisted, as though an ominous presence had followed me across its borders. My vacation stretched over two weeks, and during that time I never truly found tranquility. On the journey back home while I was slumbering, a dream seized me, unveiling an unsettling sequence of events. In my dream, I heard a knock on the door of my imaginary house. As I opened it, a cat sprang towards me. But what I saw next chilled me to the core. It was no ordinary feline, but a malevolent jinn or demon lurking in the guise of a harmless animal. Upon its leap, an indescribable force gripped my throat robbing me of breath for several agonizing seconds. The dream then spiraled into a nightmarish realm, evoking unspeakable horrors. When I finally awoke, the situation took even more of a disconcerting turn. Still in 2022, on a night when sleep claimed me once more, I inadvertently neglected to perform my nightly prayers, a fundamental aspect of my Muslim faith. It was on this particular night that I descended into a nightmare of unparalleled proportions. In this macabre realm, I found myself illuminated by the glow of lamps as I lovingly caressed my dog. But as I turned away, a chilling revelation awaited me in the kitchen, a duplicate of my dog, devoid of any shadow. In Islamic lore, such absence of shadow signifies a jinn's presence. My realization triggered a monstrous transformation as the doppelganger morphed into a grotesque demon, hell-bent on annihilating me. However, I found solace in my faith as the words of prayer flowed from my lips, warding off the nefarious entity. With the invocation complete, the abhorrent apparition vanished into thin air. Yet, the aftermath of this otherworldly encounter left me in excruciating pain a sensation so overwhelming that it even impeded my ability to breathe. This physical torment persisted for an entire week, haunting my every waking moment. January of 2023 saw me tormented by insomnia, trapped in a perpetual state of wakefulness. It was approximately 1 a.m. when a tremendous bang reverberated through the walls of my room as if an invisible force had struck it with great fury. The impact was so powerful that my entire room quivered in response. 
Startled and filled with trepidation, I couldn't fathom what could have caused such a disturbance. Shortly thereafter, in February of the same year, another bewildering incident occurred. As I awoke one morning, a searing pain seized my attention. A deep scratch, seemingly appearing out of nowhere, adorned my skin. The scratch was long, leaving an, an indelible mark of agony. Days later, a vivid red streak appeared in the exact area where the initial scratch had materialized, serving as a disturbing reminder of the mysterious events that plagued my sleep. And then, yet again, a few days later, I woke up to discover a crimson line etched across my nose. These unexplainable marks left me profoundly unsettled, unable to find solace, even in the sanctuary of sleep. In March of 2023, while in the solitude of my bathroom at midnight, a series of incessant knocks echoed through the door, six or seven distinct raps demanding my attention. I responded informing the unseen visitor that the room was occupied, and abruptly the knocking ceased. Stepping out, I assumed it must have been one of my parents seeking entry. However, upon reaching their room, I discovered both of them sound asleep. Emanating the possibility of their involvement, my sister slumbered peacefully as well, and with my brother at university, I was the only one awake. Perplexed, I pondered over the identity of this mysterious knocker, someone or something with intentions that remained elusive. Finally, in April 2023, a mere two days ago, I returned home after dining with friends around midday. As soon as I stepped through the threshold, an oppressive atmosphere enveloped me, filling my senses with an inexplicable fear. The unsettling aura was not the only disconcerting aspect that greeted me. My pets, usually a source of comfort and companionship, displayed bizarre behavior. Their gaze fixated on specific spots, seemingly guarding me from an invisible threat that I couldn't perceive. Whenever I went, they followed, their attention directed me towards areas adjacent to my presence. In the living room, they stared intently at a spot beside the couch, while in the dining room, their watchful eyes remained locked on the kitchen and the cellar door. It was as if an unseen entity shadowed my every move, its presence detectable only by my vigilant pets. As the evening wore on, an overwhelming sense of distress overcame me, intensified by my cat's unwavering devotion. This normally aloof feline remained by my side, mirroring my steps in an unwavered jo unwavering loyalty. <clears throat> Even when I sought respite in the bathroom, he trailed behind me, unyielding in his unwavering vigilance. Meanwhile, my dog devoted minutes to end the f my dog devoted minutes on end to fixating on a particular spot in the darkened kitchen. The tension in the air was palpable leaving me gripped by an unexplainable terror. However, the arrival of my parents brought a momentary respite as the peculiar behavior ceased and I found some measure of relief. These chronicles merely scratch the surface of the inexplicable occurrences that have plagued my home and my psyche over the years. Each incident from the ghostly figures to the spectral scratches and unyielding presences has left an indelible mark on my being. As I traverse this journey through the unknown, searching for answers and potential explanations, I can't help but wonder what lies beyond the realm of our understanding. The enigmatic forces that encroach upon our lives remain a constant reminder of the vast mysteries that surround us, ever beckoning us to explore the uncharted territories of our existence. Story number two, Strange Findings with Pictures. As I step out of my house, a sense of anticipation fills the air. The familiar routine of taking my beloved dog for a walk in the nearby park is about to commence. This park, nestled inconspicuously behind a colossal sporting goods store, remains relatively unknown to most people. Its obscure location has rendered it virtually empty making it the perfect haven for me and my energetic canine companion. With a leash in hand and my dog eagerly wagging her tail, we embark on an expedition toward the park. 
as we approach, the tranquil pond at the park's heart comes into view, casting a serene ambiance over the surroundings. It's a sight that never fails to captivate me. The gentle ripples on the water's surface create a symphony of tranquility that resonates deep within me. Releasing my dog from her leash, she darts away with unbridled enthusiasm. I watch with delight as she frolics and bounds through the grassy expanse, her joyful barks echoing through the stillness. Meanwhile, I take the opportunity to meander leisurely around the circumference of the pond, relishing the harmonious blend of nature's melodies and my dog's exuberant playfulness. On this particular day, however, a twist of fate leads me to a revelation that would forever alter my perception of this serene oasis. As we make our way to the far side of the pond, my eyes catch a glimpse of my furry companion racing down a footpath concealed within the dense trees and bushes. Intrigued by this unfamiliar sight, I called out her name, hoping to beckon her back. To my surprise, she momentarily emerges from the foliage only to swiftly retreat back into its mysterious depths. Curiosity getting the better of me, I decide to follow her. Venturing down the footpath, the canopy of trees above cast a dappled shade upon the forest floor. The rustling of leaves underfoot creates a soothing cadence, heightening the sense of adventure that now courses through my veins. As I push deeper into the heart of the grove, the landscape begins to unfold before me, revealing a hidden sanctuary crafted by imaginative hands. It appears as though a group of children had assembled a whimsical fort amidst nature's embrace. A board serving as a makeshift bench rests upon a stump, while reeds from the adjacent pond have been artfully woven through the bushes and form a rudimentary wall. It's a charming discovery, enchanting in its simplicity. However, the allure of this newfound enchantment quickly dissipates when my gaze falls upon a macabre spectacle suspended from the tree at the center of the clearing. Bones, small and delicate, dangle ominously, swaying gently in the breeze. Among them, the skull of a diminutive canine stares back at me, its empty eye sockets serving as a chilling testament to some unknown fate. A shiver courses down my spine as a foreboding realization takes hold. To compound the unease, my canine companion exhibits an unusual fascination with the concealed trash bag nestled amidst the undergrowth. Cautiously, I approach to investigate its contents, my heart pounding with apprehension. Peering inside, my eyes widen at the unexpected sight that greets me. The bag harbors several rolls of what appears to be surgical tubing. A disconcerting sense of foreboding washes over me, as though the veil of innocence surrounding this hidden sanctuary had been abruptly lifted. In that moment, an overwhelming instinct prompts me to secure my dog back on her leash, Fear gnaws at the edges of my consciousness, urging me to retreat from this eerie realm that now feels tainted by an unknown darkness. With haste, I capture photographic evidence of the disconcerting discoveries before hastily making my escape. The sense of urgency propels me out of the clandestine grove and back onto the familiar path leading out of the park. Days pass and the haunting memory of that unsettling encounter lingers within me. Determined to unravel the mystery, I mustered the courage to return to the park, hoping to find some answers. As I approach the entrance, a mix of trepidation and curiosity tugs at my heartstrings. What will I discover this time? Will the remnants of that eerie sanctuary still linger? Or will the park have undergone a transformation to erase any trace of its existence? As I step foot into the park, my eyes widen in astonishment. The once lush trees that adorn the footpath have been uprooted and removed, leaving behind a barren landscape. The absence of the grove feels like a void, as if nature itself has attempted to erase the remnants of its dark secret. The city park service must have deemed it necessary to intervene, perhaps oblivious to the sinister undercurrents that had taken root. Undeterred, I ventured deeper into the park, my gaze darting across the surroundings, searching for any remnants of the secret grove. However, it became evident that nature's intervention had been thorough, leaving no trace of the fort or the chilling bones that had sent shivers down my spine. The park now appears unblemished, its tranquility restored, deceiving any casual observer into believing that nothing... deceiving any casual observer into believing that nothing untoward had ever transpired within its borders. 
Yet the unease that had settled within me refuses to dissipate. I am not alone in my misgivings. Whispers of sinister occurrences and inexplicable phenomena begin to circulate through the great vine of town. It seems that the appearance of satanic graffiti, once confined to the outskirts of our community, has crept closer, manifesting in alarming proximity to the park. The newfound darkness casts an ominous shadow over the town, leaving its residents unsettled and wary. Unable to dismiss the unsettling connection between the graffiti and the disturbing discoveries within the grove, my apprehension deepens. The inexplicable events and the emergence of these malevolent symbols instill a sense of caution within me, urging me to exercise vigilance and avoid the once-beloved park. Now, whenever I pass the entrance to that secluded sanctuary, an inexplicable chill runs down my spine. The park, once a cherished escape, now holds an air of foreboding, its innocence forever tainted. The hidden grove with its twisted remnants and its disturbing secrets serves as a haunting reminder of the darker forces that lurk beneath the surface of our seemingly idyllic surroundings. In the face of this newfound unease, I find solace in alternative routes and different locales for my dog's daily exercise. The small park, once a sanctuary of joy and serenity, had been forever transformed in my mind. The echoes of that fateful day continue to reverberate within me, a reminder that not everything is as it seems, and that line between innocence and malevolence can be disturbingly thin. As time passes, the town grapples with the growing presence of satanic imagery, each sighting amplifying the unease that permeates our lives. The once peaceful streets now carry an air of caution, and conversations are tinged with a collective anxiety. The mysterious grove and its hidden horrors have become a cautionary tale, a symbol of the darkness that encroaches upon our community. Though the park and its secrets remain shrouded in ambiguity, I'm left with an indelible impression of the inexplicable and the sinister. The experience has forever changed my perceptions of the world around me, reminding me that within the facade of tranquility lies the potential for darkness. It serves as a somber reminder that we must remain vigilant and attentive to the signs that may hint at the presence of malevolent forces lurking in the shadows. In an effort to bring awareness to the unsettling discoveries I made, I reach out to local authorities sharing the photographs I had captured during my hasty retreat from the Hidden Grove. They express concern and assure me that they will investigate the matter thoroughly. Together we hope to shed light on the enigmatic occurrence that plagued our town, to expose the truth behind the satanic graffiti and the disturbing remnants found within the secret grove. Meanwhile, the community rallies together, forming neighborhood watch groups and organizing informational sessions on personal safety. The once dormant sense of unity is rekindled as we strive to protect our loved ones and preserve the harmony that had once defined our town. We become more vigilant, reporting any suspicious activities or signs of dark symbolism to the authorities. As the investigation progresses, rumors circulate, fueling our collective anxiety. Speculations of cults and hidden rituals run rampant, perpetuating a sense of paranoia among the townsfolk. The eerie silence that now envelops the park serves as a constant reminder of the enigma that remains unsolved, leaving us on edge. While the true nature of the Hidden Grove may forever elude us, its impact on our lives is undeniable. It has reshaped our perception of safety, reminding us that evil can hide in plain sight. Our once blissful ignorance has been shattered, replaced by a cautious awareness of the hidden depths that may exist within our seemingly ordinary surroundings. In the midst of this uncertainty, I find solace in the unwavering loyalty and companionship of my dog. She, too, has been affected by the events that unfolded in the park. Her once carefree demeanor now carries a twinge of wariness, a reminder that animals possess an instinctual awareness of danger that we sometimes overlook. Together, we explore new paths, seeking solace in every different corner of our town. The once-beloved park, now tinged with the air of mystery and foreboding, fades into the background of our lives. Its significance wanes as we adapt to the evolving circumstances, knowing that our safety and peace of mind lie remaining vigilant and connected to our community. As time passes, the memories of that eerie encounter in the Hidden Grove begin to recede, gradually replaced by new experiences and new challenges. 
Our town continues to grapple with the remnants of darkness, yet we persevere, determined to restore a sense of security and reclaim the tranquility that was once synonymous with our community. The park with its pond and overgrown footpaths become a distant memory relegated to the annals of our personal histories. We forge ahead, acknowledging the fragility of innocence and the need to confront the shadows that threaten to engulf us. As we navigate the complexities of life, we carry the lessons learned from the chilling journey in the park, forever vigilant, forever aware of the potential darkness that lurks just beyond the surface of our everyday lives. Story number two, my haunted house experience and possibly helping a spirit pass to the other side. The first house I ever owned holds a special place in my heart. It was a charming brick craftsman style bungalow that exuded character, constructed back in the 1910s. Nestled in the picturesque Congress Park neighborhood of Denver, my humble abode boasted a rich history and a cozy atmosphere. Interestingly, this neighborhood and the neighboring Cheeseman Park was not immune to the eerie ghost stories, primarily due to their dark past as a city cemetery. You see, there was a tale that circulated about the contractor hired to relocate the bodies when the decision was made to transform the cemetery into a residential area. Rumor had it that he failed to fulfill his duty entirely, leaving a haunting legacy behind. However, the story I'm about to share is not connected to those spine-chilling legends, but rather a personal encounter of my own. It all began when I purchased the house from an estate of a deceased woman. Although she had passed away, her spirit seemed to linger within the walls of the house. My first encounter with the inexplicable occurred one day while I was engrossed in the mundane task of changing light bulbs in the bathroom. The door behind me was open, and as I focused on my task, it suddenly swung forcefully towards my closed position, hitting me square on the butt. Instinctively, I assumed it was my mischievous cat attempting to explore the hidden spaces behind the door. However, to my surprise, she was fast asleep in the living room. Perplexed by this peculiar incident, I brushed it off as a mere oddity, muttering to myself, Huh, that was weird. Weeks turned into months, and the memory of the door incident had faded into the recesses of my mind. Then one fateful night, I awoke abruptly from a deep slumber, startled for no apparent reason. A dim nightlight in the hallway cast a delicate sliver of light through the slightly ajar bedroom door. The door gradually widened, revealing the mysterious darkness beyond. Assuming it was my cat sneaking to the room, I peered toward the door, but to my astonishment she was curled up at the foot of my bed completely oblivious to the unfolding events. As I strained my senses, I heard the distinct sound of footsteps echoing on the creaky wooden floor. The footsteps moved gracefully from the door, traversing the room until they reached the foot of my bed. Entranced, my feline companion followed the unseen presence with her gaze, silently observing its ethereal journey across the room. Strangely, there was no sense of malevolence in the air, it was as if a benign spirit was merely passing through. After a moment of stillness, the cat nonchalantly settled back down and resumed her peaceful slumber. This surreal sequence of events repeated itself several times over the course of a year. Each time the same enigmatic phenomenon unfolded, capturing my attention but never causing distress. Had it not been for my cat's calm demeanor during these occurrences, I would have surely succumbed to fear and anxiety. Yet her unwavering serenity reassured me that there was nothing to be afraid of. It was just a curious presence, traversing my room before vanishing into the night. One morning, fate intervened, bringing my sister and brother-in-law to spend the night at my house during their journey through town. Little did I know that this visit would provide an unexpected revelation. As we gathered for breakfast, my brother-in-law casually inquired if I'd ever experienced anything peculiar in the house. Intrigued, I asked him the reason behind his query. To my astonishment, he recounted an eerie, familiar tale, the door opening and footsteps crossing the room, mirroring my own encounters. I was dumbfounded by the revelation, for I had never shared my experiences with him, my sister, or anyone else. 
this confirmation from an impartial witness confirmed the validity of my encounters and further deepened the mystery that enveloped my home. As time went on, additional strange incidents occurred, reinforcing the enigmatic aura that enveloped the house. I often heard peculiar noises emanating from the kitchen, resembling the sounds of vegetables being chopped, pots and pans being shuffled, and even the distinct click of the oven door closing. Intriguingly, upon investigation, everything would be in its rightful place, leaving me bewildered. One evening, a close friend joined me to watch a movie, entirely unaware of the house's eerie reputation. Suddenly, he muted the television, held his finger to his lips to signal silence, and then intently focused on the kitchen. After a few moments, he whispered, Who's in the kitchen? His startled expression mirrored my own astonishment as we both acknowledged the unexplainable presence lurking within the confines of my home. But the most terrifying encounter I had in that house occurred one night, etching itself indelibly into my memory. It was an experience devoid of apparitions or spectral shapes, leaving no room for ghostly sightings or visual evidence to support my account. As I lay in bed, the familiar routine unfolded once again. The door opened, allowing a slender beam of light to penetrate the darkness, and footsteps reverberated toward the foot of my bed. However, on this particular occasion, a woman's voice emerged from the abyss, breathless and desperate, uttering the bone-chilling words, "'Take me to the hospital.' The voice was ethereal, delivered in an otherworldly manner that defied normal speech patterns. It seemed to emanate from the darkness itself, whispering urgently as if carried by a gentle breeze that crept across the room. The words echoed in my mind, accompanied by a haunting sensation that sent shivers down my spine. Overwhelmed by fear, I sought refuge in the living room couch, where I spent a restless week far removed from the room that had become a conduit for the inexplicable. Driven by curiosity and a need for answers, I embarked on a quest to uncover the history of the house and the individuals who had once called it home. Seeking assistance from the neighboring residents, I discreetly inquired about the previous occupants, omitting any mention of the paranormal occurrences that had plagued me. The neighbors revealed that the previous owner, a kind-hearted woman, had lived in the house until she reached the age of 83. It was a place where she had raised her family, and her son had continued to visit and care for her until her passing. The revelation deepened my connection to the house, knowing that it had been a haven of love and familial bonds for the woman who had come before me. However, no mention was made of her late husband, Michael, leaving me to wonder about his fate and the role within the haunting tales. Driven by an insatiable thirst for knowledge, I conducted a thorough investigation into the house's history, delving into property records and probate records. These searches unearthed the deed's history, shedding light on the previous owners and their lives within these walls. The house had been in possession of a couple named Michael and Evelyn, Although the documents did not disclose when Michael had passed away, the neighbor's silence on the matter seemed to imply that he had departed the world way before Evelyn. Their love story intertwined with the house, leaving behind an indelible imprint on the space I now occupied. Months passed, and the house remained steeped in its enigmatic ambiance. Yet, after the incident involving the desperate plea for help, the occurrences gradually ceased as if the ethereal presence had found solace and resolution. One night, as the door creaked open once more, and the footsteps retraced their well-worn path to the foot of my bed, I mustered the courage to address the invisible inhabitant. With a calm voice, I spoke directly into the darkness, whispering, Evelyn, Michael has been waiting for you. He loves and misses you. I believe it is time for you to go and be reunited with him. There was no grand revelation, no overwhelming surge of energy, just a sense of closure in my words. From that moment onward, the inexplicable happenings that had defied my time in the house gradually dwindled until they ceased altogether. For the remaining three years that I lived in that beloved bungalow, tranquility reigned supreme. The house became a sanctuary, devoid of the mysterious occurrences that had once captivated and unnerved me. 
it seemed that my encounter with the ethereal had reached its conclusion, leaving behind an unexplainable but cherished chapter in my life. The house retained its warmth and charm, becoming a home filled with cherished memories and a sense of wonderment for the unexplained. As I bid farewell to the house that had housed both the living and the ethereal, I carried with me a newfound appreciation for the intangible mysteries that can quietly coexist within the boundaries of our everyday lives. Story number 12. Ask Reddit. I once had the opportunity to work as a live-in staff member in a college dormitory. It was during the summer when the campus was relatively empty, housing only a small number of dedicated students attending summer school. Approximately 30 individuals total. These students were known for their high level of academic motivation and often carried the weight of stress making them generally quiet. One fine day in late June, my office received a phone call from a concerned sibling. She informed us that her brother, who lived alone in a room on the summer school floor, was unreachable. While it wasn't uncommon for students to avoid their families due to frayed nerves or social awkwardness, the situation caught our attention. Our standard procedure for checking on students involved attempting to contact them through the emergency contact information. If unsuccessful, we would visit their room and confirm their presence and availability. However, we were required to enter a student's room only in the presence of another staff member to ensure everyone's safety. After failing to reach the student via his room and mobile phone, and considering the shortage of staff members that day, I decided to personally visit his room to ensure his well-being. Arriving on the floor around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I discovered it to be deserted, as I had anticipated. Locating the student's room number, I immediately noticed the faint sound of a movie playing from behind his door, emanating from either a television or maybe a computer. Knocking on the door three times, I announced my identity as a staff member responsible for checking on his health and safety. No response. Initially, I didn't find this particularly remarkable, as college students are notorious for leaving their electronics on while being absent from their rooms. To alleviate any concerns, I decided to investigate further. I checked the floor's showers and bathrooms, finding them empty. Returning to the student's door, I knocked three more times, allowing approximately 20 seconds between each knock. Still no answer. At this point, my instincts began to tingle. Having worked in residence halls for several years, I sensed that something was amiss. The combination of the concerned family, the running electronics suggesting recent activity, the idiosyncratic behavior of summer school students, and the deserted floor all added up to an unsettling situation. Being alone in that moment likely exasperated my unease, evoking memories of eerie settings such as Overlook Hotel from Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Seeking closure or some semblance of sanity, I disregarded the protocol prohibiting solo room entry and decided to unlock the student's door. However, before doing so, I knocked on the door once again, announcing my presence as the hall director. With a sense of urgency, I entered the room, and as soon as I did, my senses were heightened even further. The room appeared relatively empty, with the student seemingly living out of a suitcase which was unusual considering the minimum eight-week duration of the summer school session. The disheveled bedding indicated recent use as if someone had been sleeping in it and all the lights in the room were on. As I suspected, an open laptop powered by its battery played the matrix on a desk. However, the student was nowhere to be found. In an attempt to rationalize the situation and quell my growing discomfort, I convinced myself that the student must have crossed paths on the way to his room and he was likely downstairs in the lobby picking up food for a late lunch. Yes, that must be it. Preparing to leave, intending to reach out to the student later, or maybe later in the afternoon or the evening, something caught my attention. It was an odd piece of evidence. A set of accordion closet doors, which are often removed due to their disuse. They were still present in this particular room. Not only were they present, but they were closed. This struck me as odd, as it has been quite some time since I had seen anyone actually use those cranky and dysfunctional doors. In that moment, my intuition surged to an all-time high, and a wave of realization washed over me. 
Oh no, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I suddenly found myself alone in a room with a potential suicide student who might already have taken drastic measures. I was about to become that guy who discovers a tragic scene and is burdened with an avalanche of paperwork and unpleasant tasks, including the heart-wrenching responsibility of informing the family. My heart raced and my mind raced even faster. Panic started to set in, but I knew I had to stay composed. Gathering my courage, I mustered the strength to address the closed doors, my voice cracking with a mixture of fear and concern. I announced my name and title, informing the student that I'd be opening those accordion doors in a count of three seconds. Three, two, one. Fumbling with the latch on the doors, my hands trembling, I finally managed to disengage them. As I slowly slid the doors apart, I braced myself for what I might find. Would it be a horrifying sight, a ghastly scene of tragedy that would haunt me forever? But what I saw on the other side was the last thing I expected. There stood a tall, dark-skinned Indian man, towering at about seven feet, staring at me with an embarrassed expression as if I had stumbled upon his secret hideout. We locked eyes when it felt like an eternity and we just stood in silence, not blinking, not breathing, not uttering a single word. Finally, the realization of what had transpired hit me, and a mix of disbelief and relief washed over me. Fighting my voice again, I managed to stammer out the only words that came to mind. Um, are you in here hiding from me? He looked at me, his gaze filled with a mixture of vulnerability and uncertainty, and simply replied, Yeah. My heart was still racing, but a sense of relief flooded through me. I turned to leave the room, planning to give the student some space and then reach out to him later. But because I closed the door behind me, I turned back to him, unable to shake off the concern that had gripped me from the beginning. Call your sister, I said, my voice filled with a mix of compassion and genuine worry. She's worried about you, and frankly, I am too. With that, I left the room, closing the door gently behind me. The weight of my shoulders had lifted slightly, knowing that the student was physically unharmed. Yet, I couldn't help but feel a lingering sense of concern, a reminder of the delicate nature of mental health and the importance of reaching out to those who may be struggling. As I walked away from the room, my mind filled with thoughts of the steps I needed to take, checking in with the student, ensuring he received the support he needed, and connecting him with the necessary resources on campus. The incident served as a poignant reminder of the challenges and responsibilities that came with working in a college dormitory, where our role extends beyond providing a place to live, but also caring for the well-being of the students we serve. Deep down, I hoped that the student would find the strength to confide in someone, to open up about the struggles he faced, and as I continued my work in the dormitory, I remained committed to fostering a supportive environment where students felt comfortable seeking help, knowing that they weren't alone in their challenges. Mental health is a crucial aspect of student well-being, and it's our duty as staff members to provide a safe and supportive space for them to navigate through their difficulties. In the days that followed, I made it a priority to check in on the Indian student regularly, ensuring that he had the necessary support systems in place. We had several conversations about his well-being and his struggles and the importance of reaching out for help when needed. It was through these interactions that a deeper connection formed and I became not just a staff member, but also a trusted confidant. Over time, the student began to open up about the immense pressure that he had been facing academically and personally. The high-stress environment of summer school, combined with his own expectations, had taken a toll on his mental health. Together, we explored strategies to manage stress, discussed the importance of self-care, and connected with him on counseling services provided by the university. As the weeks went by, I witnessed a remarkable transformation in the student. With the support he received, he gradually regained his confidence and started taking steps towards a healthier and more balanced life. He became involved in campus activities and joined study groups and even reached out to fellow students who might be experiencing similar challenges. This experience reaffirmed the vital role we play as live-in staff members not only ensuring the physical safety of our students, but also fostering a caring and inclusive community. It reminded me of the power of compassion, empathy, and the impact of even a single act, reaching out, and how it can have on somebody's life. In the years that followed, I continued to work in the college dormitory, cherishing the opportunities to support students through their journeys. Each day brought a new challenge and a new story, but the lessons I learned from that event remained etched in my memory 
It served as a constant reminder to be vigilant, to listen attentively, and to prioritize the well-being of every student under our care. Story number five, Demonic Haunted Apartment. Twelve years ago, my family and I embarked on a fateful journey as we moved into an apartment that would soon reveal itself to be haunted. Perhaps even something demonic. To fully grasp the gravity of the situation, I must delve further back into the past and shed light on the role my stepson played in this chilling tale. These eerie anecdotes concerning my stepson were relayed to me by my husband. And as I recount them, I can't help but believe that my stepson possessed a certain sensitivity to the supernatural, including ghosts and paranormal phenomena. It all began when my stepson was just a baby, back when we resided in another haunted apartment. One night he awoke from his slumber, crying as if in pain, and to our shock, we discovered three distinct scratches on his delicate back. While skeptics may offer plausible explanations, my husband adamantly insisted that those scratches were not present before putting him to sleep. Another curious phenomenon was the presence of orbs in nearly every photograph featuring my stepson. Although some might dismiss it as mere coincidence or explainable by natural means, we had pictures where only his foot was visible, and yet there was a perfectly positioned orb near it. Remarkably, regardless of the photo's location, approximately 90% of the pictures we had of him showcased this perplexing anomaly. Now let us jump forward once again, back to the time when we first made our ill-fated decision to move into that haunted apartment 12 years ago. Despite our poor credit history, the landlord granted us a chance, and we were elated at the prospect of having our own space, Having previously lived with my mother, I distinctly remember the landlord mentioning the extensive renovations that had been necessary due to the previous tenant's wanton destruction of the place. Little did we know that this information foreshadowed the horrors that awaited us. In the first month of our occupancy, I began noticing fleeting shadows in the corners of my eyes, emanating from the two bedrooms. Initially, I attributed these sightings to exhaustion, as I was caring for my one-year-old son at the time. Exhaustion seems pretty plausible. However, as time passed, the paranormal encounters escalated. On one particularly unsettling occasion, I decided to take a shower while my one-year-old son napped. To ensure I could hear him if he woke up, I left the door leading to my bathroom ajar, open just a little bit. As I stood underneath the cascading water, an inexplicable sense of being watched washed over me. When I mustered the courage to open my eyes, I caught a glimpse of a fleeting black shadow darting past the partially open door. Simultaneously, my son erupted into hysterical cries. Filled with the mixture of fear and protective instinct, I hastily exited the shower, scouring the house for signs of an intruder, only to find that the front door remained securely locked. A month passed and strange occurrences began plaguing my stepchildren's room, who at the time were seven and eight years old. The wooden closet door started knocking on their own accord, occupied by an unsettling stench akin to rotten eggs permeating the room. Despite my exhaustive efforts to locate the source of the odor, my search proved fruitless. During subsequent visits, my mother-in-law playfully teased that the kids must have hidden an egg salad sandwich somewhere. My husband, too, acknowledged this knocking sound, but attributed them to the air conditioning systems kicking in. One weekend, my husband had to travel for work, leaving me alone with all the children. After successfully putting them to sleep, I decided to stay up and watch an episode of Ghost Adventures. As I lay on the couch engrossed in the paranormal investigation, my gaze happened to wander upwards, only to be met with the sight of my stepson standing by the couch with his eyes tightly shut. It dawned on me that he was sleepwalking, a phenomenon that occasionally occurred. He started mumbling about an old, terrifying man residing in his closet. Naively believing it to be a mere nightmare, I gently guided him back to his bed. However, as I turned to leave the room, my stepson suddenly sat up, his eyes still closed and uttered, 
The old man in the closet is looking at me. A sense of dread enveloped me as I glanced towards the closet, now inexplicably open. Then, to my horror, my stepson whispered, He's going to knock. In that very instant, three distinct knocks reverberated through the room, accompanied by the resurgence of the putrid odor of rotten eggs. In a state of panic, I swiftly flicked on the lights and guided my stepson to the safety of my bedroom. Internally, I was consumed by fear, as my stepdaughter, asleep on the top bunk in the same room, was now left vulnerable. Eventually, I managed to gather all the children into my bed, remaining awake until fatigue overcame me and sleep inevitably claimed me. Although not particularly devout, I turned to my mother for advice on how to confront the unexplained terrors plaguing our apartment. She advised me to pray over our rooms and anoint my fingers with oil, drawing crosses on each doorframe. Eager to restore a semblance of peace, I followed her instructions to the letter. That very night, my dreams turned into a horrifying nightmare, wherein my mother appeared possessed. In this macabre vision, I witnessed her meeting a grisly demise, the horror of which I was forced to endure. Jolted awake, tears streaming down my face, I longed for an escape, a means to leave this place behind. Alas, moving was not an immediate option, and the apartment seemed to settle into a state of calm after this ghastly ordeal. However, a new manifestation emerged during this respite. On one particular night, I abruptly woke to the sensation of my bed shaking, as if someone had pressed their knees against the mattress and commenced an unsettling tremor. Yet every time I attempted to rouse my husband to share this inexplicable occurrence, the shaking would immediately cease. This peculiar phenomenon recurred on a weekly basis, adding to the mounting sense of unease that permeated our lives. Allow me to provide a bit of context. My one-year-old son slept in a toddler bed, positioned in front of our own. One night, both my son and I were awake in the living room, and my husband, exhausted from a day's work, had retired to bed early. To my astonishment, he emerged from the bedroom with a troubled expression and admonished me for allowing our son to enter the room, as he claimed the bed had been shaking. I vehemently denied that our son had ever set foot in our bedroom. As I finished my sentence, the glass cover of the entryway light situated directly behind me suddenly crashed to the floor. My husband stood there, his wary mind struggling to process the series of unsettling events unfolding before him. Finally, he began to see and feel the things that had tormented me for so long. Soon after, fate intervened when a nearby house became available for rent, providing us with an opportunity to escape the clutches of that dreaded apartment. With an overwhelming sense of relief, we packed our belongings and left, having spent less than a year in that wretched place. As we settled into our new home, a wave of gratitude washed over me, for I feared that whatever malevolent entity resided within the haunted apartment might have attached itself to us, forever haunting our lives. Tragically, in 2019, my stepson passed away, potentially a victim of COVID-19. Prior to his untimely departure, I had shared the eerie events that had unfolded in the apartment with him during his teenage years. Astonishingly, he claimed to have no recollection of the incidents, but deep down, I wholeheartedly believed that he indeed bore witness to the entity that plagued our lives in that accursed dwelling. To this day, the memories of those harrowing experiences remain etched in my mind, a chilling testament to the experience of forces beyond our comprehension. Story number 13. Things mysteriously happening around my house. In my seemingly ordinary life, I often find myself caught in a web of blame for problems I had no knowledge of. Fortunately, such instances were rare, so I didn't feel overly concerned. I would simply attribute it, you know, attribute them to mere misunderstandings and then I'd move on. As an 18-year-old girl, I resided with my mother and brother, and our existence was rather uneventful. We coexisted peacefully, although my brother occasionally stirred up trouble, but I, for the most part, remained unaffected. Lately, however, a series of peculiar incidents have been unfolding, 
leaving me with an unsettling feeling that something or someone was playing tricks on me. Strange occurrences seemed to surround me, yet I had no hand in them. For instance, there were times when I would struggle to unlock my phone for hours only to have it suddenly accept the possible passcode that had failed before. Furthermore, my mother persistently nagged me about putting away my muddy shoes incorrectly and damaging things, even though I never committed such an offense. I always left them out and wiped off all the dirt, and it struck me as bizarre that this happened twice when I hadn't even been outdoors in a month. However, today's events took the strangeness to an entirely new level. My mother had left the house while my brother remained locked in his room. I leisurely enjoyed my dinner for approximately an hour. Yet, upon her return, my mother discovered the kitchen counters marred with deep scratches, as if someone had maliciously carved them with a knife. The gravity of the situation intensified when she mentioned that she might have to pay for the damages, considering that we were merely renting the place. At that moment, I was engrossed in my own activities in my room, and had even washed my dishes, so I had no recollection of noticing anything amiss. My brother denied any involvement with the knives, and I had only used one briefly to open a package in a completely different location, far away from the counters. The situation had transformed into an enigma, with my mother quick to point a finger at me, since I had been the only one out of the house during the incident. However, I found myself stuck in a paradoxical predicament. On one hand, my mother believed my innocence, acknowledging my genuine confusion regarding the strange happenings. Yet, on the other hand, she seemed to suspect that something was wrong with me, suggesting that perhaps I was forgetting my own actions. I vehemently denied any wrongdoing and insisted that nothing was awry in terms of my memory. I knew that I never caused problems, especially after being specifically instructed not to. Despite my genuine confusion, my mother's lingering doubts persisted, leaving me in a perplexing state of frustration. The incidents kept recurring, continuously implicating me as the epicenter of the mysterious events. Yet deep down, I knew that I was not the one responsible. It was an agonizing experience to be held accountable for circumstances beyond my control. The uncertainty surrounding these occurrences weighed heavily on me, as I searched for answers that seemed to elude me at every turn. I longed to vindicate myself and put an end to this perplexing saga. The need to prove my innocence and reclaim my peace of mind became my relentless pursuit. I refused to succumb to the notion that there was something inherently wrong with me, for I knew in my heart that I was not the forgetful or the careless one that they were telling. It was crucial to uncover the truth and expose the hidden force behind these inexplicable events. As days turned into weeks, my determination only grew stronger. I became increasingly vigilant, monitoring every movement within our household, hoping to catch a glimpse of the elusive culprit. I scoured every nook and cranny, searching for any semblance of evidence that could shed light on the situation. The peculiar incidents had consumed my thoughts and actions, becoming the focal point of my existence. Friends and family watched as my relentless pursuit consumed me, expressing concern for my well-being. They advised to let me go and move on, but I couldn't bear the thought of being forever labeled as the one causing these inexplicable problems. I yearned for a resolution that would restore harmony within our family, allowing us to once again coexist without any suspicion or blame. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months, Yet the source of these peculiar events remained concealed, like a phantom lurking in the shadows. I exhausted every conceivable explanation, contemplating the existence of the supernatural forces or unseen entities orchestrating this elaborate charade. The once simple notion of a misunderstanding had transformed into a complex enigma, challenging my sanity and resilience. Amidst the chaos and uncertainty, one thing remained unwavering my determination to uncover the truth. The mysterious incidents had not only disrupted our daily lives, but also deepened the rift within our family. I yearned to restore the trust that I had once eroded by these inexplicable events and reunite us under the banner of understanding and acceptance. In my quest for answers, I sought professional assistance, consulting experts in the field of paranormal phenomena and psychological mysteries. 
They delved deep into the intricacies of my mind, probing the depths of my subconscious in an attempt to unravel the tangled threads of this perplexing tapestry. Countless therapy sessions, hypnosis, and exhaustive examinations ensued as we embarked on a journey to unlock the secrets buried within. Days turned into months and months into years as the investigation intensified. The persistent efforts of the experts finally bore fruit when they stumbled upon a breakthrough. Through a meticulous analysis of my subconscious mind, they unraveled the existence of a dissociative identity disorder, a condition that had long gone unnoticed. It turned out that within the depths of my own psyche resided an alter ego, an alternate personality that had been orchestrating these bizarre incidents. This dormant side of me, unknown and untamed, would seize control during periods of stress and anxiety, wreaking havoc in a desperate attempt to assert its existence. The alter ego, desperate to be acknowledged, would engage in these disruptive acts, leaving behind a trail of confusion and discord. Armed with this newfound knowledge, a comprehensive treatment plan was devised to integrate and reconcile the conflicting facets of my identity. Through a combination of therapy, medication, and unwavering support for my loved ones, I embarked on a journey of self-discovery and healing. The process was arduous, fraught with challenges and setbacks, but I remained resolute, driven by the desire to regain control over my life. Gradually, the incident subsided as I gained mastery over the alter ego and its disruptive tendencies. The scratches on the countertops ceased to appear, the misplaced blame dissolved, and a newfound sense of tranquility settled upon our household. We embarked on a collective healing journey, rebuilding the fractured bonds of trust and understanding that had been shattered by the enigma that plagued us for far too long. Looking back on that perplexing chapter of my life, I'm reminded of the resilience of the human spirit and the power of love and support. The inexplicable incidents, once a source of turmoil, became a catalyst for growth and self-discovery. They served as a reminder that sometimes the most profound mysteries reside within our own minds, waiting patiently to be unveiled and embraced. Today, as I reflect upon my journey, I'm grateful for the twists and turns that led me to a place of clarity and understanding. The trials and tribulations ultimately shaped me to a stronger individual, armed with the knowledge that even amidst the most bewildering circumstances, there's always a path forward, a path that leads to self-acceptance, forgiveness, and the restoration of harmony within oneself and the world around us. Why do some ghosts interact with the people they used to work with as if they were still alive? In the realm of tales involving ghosts, those ethereal beings that interact with the living in various ways, be it negatively, positively, or with neutral disposition, there exist those peculiar stories that defy all expectation. It's challenging to find an adequate description for them, but ultimately what sets them apart is the fact that only one individual is privy to these encounters. Yet, by their vivid descriptions, it becomes abundantly clear that these apparitions were not mere figments of imagination, but physical present entities, leaving no room for the witness to doubt their existence. What makes these accounts particularly intriguing is that these spectral encounters, despite their undeniable peculiarity, always unfold in the most mundane of circumstances. Recently, I came across one such extraordinary incident that left me bewildered. It involved a gentleman who worked the night shift and found himself struggling to move a cumbersome wire spool. In a moment of serendipity, a man dressed in the attire of a fellow co-worker materialized, seemingly out of thin air, and graciously offered his assistance in pushing the unwieldy object while the bewildered worker guided him. As they undertook this peculiar collaborative endeavor, a most ordinary conversation ensued between them. They delved into topics as banal as one could imagine, cracking jokes about political landscapes, including the infamous Donald Trump, discussing the actions of their bosses, and even sharing anecdotes about their respective nights that had unfolded thus far. The entire exchange could be described as a mundane discourse on the happenings of their shared realities. 
However, the true oddity of the situation manifested when the security footage captured the wire spool moving autonomously, seemingly propelled by an unseen force, while the lone employee responsible for its guidance never made contact with it. Astonishingly, the wire spool obediently responded to the ghostly intervention, as if the invisible helper's ethereal touch was capable of influencing the physical world. This unexplainable phenomenon ceased abruptly, and the worker, filled with gratitude, turned around to express his heartfelt appreciation to the enigmatic figure. Yet, to his astonishment, the apparition had vanished into thin air, leaving behind nothing but an empty space where he had stood moments before. It is at this juncture that a profound question emerges. If a ghost possesses the conscious ability to manifest itself in such a palpable and corporeal manner, why would it choose to act as if such extraordinary circumstances were entirely ordinary? One might assume that these spectral entities, endowed with a heightened awareness of their existence beyond the earthly realm, would possess an acute understanding of the abnormality of their situation. After all, they would surely discern that their inexplicable presence in the physical world defies the natural laws governing the living. Nevertheless, there is a certain wholesomeness to these encounters, regardless of their enigmatic nature. The very fact that a ghost would willingly and selflessly offer assistance to a hapless worker, engaging in light-hearted conversation reminiscent of ordinary camaraderie, evokes a sense of warmth and comfort. It's as if these earthly, rather unearthly beings, aware of their limited interaction with the living, yearn for a taste of the mundane, relishing in the simple joys of human connection, even if it exists in a realm beyond our comprehension. As I ponder these inexplicable encounters, I'm reminded that the world is vast and boundless and mysterious, holding secrets that surpass our current understanding. The stories of ghosts ranging from the terrifying to the benevolent teach us that reality is not always confined to what we perceive with our limited senses. These accounts of these extraordinary apparitions that seamlessly blend into the fabric of everyday life serve as a constant reminder that the boundaries between the tangible and the ethereal are far more complex and fluid than we could ever fathom. They beckon us to question the very nature of existence and challenge the rigid confines of our understanding. In the aftermath of witnessing such an otherworldly encounter, my curiosity knows no bounds. I find myself delving into ancient folklore, seeking answers in the annals of paranormal research, and engaging with individuals who have experienced similar inexplicable phenomenon. It becomes apparent that these outlier stories of ghostly interaction hold a key to unraveling the mysteries of the spiritual realm. As I immerse myself in this captivating pursuit, I stumble upon accounts from diverse cultures and epochs, all sharing a common thread, the coexistence of supernatural within the realm of the ordinary. The stories range from benevolent spirits offering guidance and protection to the mischievous apparitions playing harmless pranks. It becomes increasingly evident that the relationship between the living and the spectral is not confined to a mere dichotomy of fear and terror, but rather a nuanced interplay of emotions, intentions, and connections. Could it be that these seemingly mundane encounters serve a greater purpose beyond our comprehension? Perhaps in their own enigmatic way, these ethereal beings strive to bridge the gap between the realms of the living and the dead. Their choice to manifest in the most ordinary of situations hints at a profound understanding of human nature, a recognition that our daily lives are comprised of seemingly trivial moments that shape the very fabric of our existence. In contemplating the motivations of these ghosts, a glimmer of insight emerges. It is possible that these spectral beings, confined to the intricacies of our reality, long for the warmth of human interaction, the laughter and the camaraderie that's often taken for granted. By assuming the guise of everyday individuals, they strive to assimilate into our lives, if only for a fleeting moment, and experience the simple pleasures of shared experiences. Moreover, these encounters serve as a gentle reminder to us, the living, of the interconnectedness of all things. They prompt us to look beyond the superficial divisions that society imposes and recognize the inherent unity that binds us all. In the presence of these extraordinary apparitions, social barriers crumble, and we are reminded of our shared humanity. Yet, 
The question remains, why do these ghosts choose to portray themselves as normal, disregarding the peculiarity of their existence? The answer, it seems, lies in their desire to alleviate any discomfort or fear that may arise from their supernatural nature. By appearing as solid and tangible as the living, they seem to create a sense of familiarity and reassurance. They understand that abrupt revelations of their ghostly nature could lead to disbelief, panic, or even harm. Therefore, they adopt a guise that minimizes the shock, allowing for a smoother interaction between their ephemeral world and our own. In the pursuit of unraveling these mysteries, I've come to realize that the nature of ghosts and their interactions with the living may forever elude complete comprehension. Perhaps, in their elusive nature, lies the very essence of their existence, an enigma meant to perpetually challenge our perceptions and expand our understanding of the universe. So, as I continue to explore the depths of these outlier ghost stories, I do so with a newfound appreciation for the extraordinary, hidden within the ordinary. The ghostly encounters that defy explanation serve as a testament to the boundless possibilities that lie beyond the realm of our senses. They remind us that the tapestry of reality is woven with threads of wonder, and within its intricate patterns, the mundane and the supernatural intertwine, inviting us to embrace the profound mysteries that lie just beyond the veil of our everyday lives. Creepy Forest Visits Before my visit, I received a referral from our regional chaplain who oversees ministry and chaplaincy support in a sprawling city area. While pastors, ministers, and priests usually work within the confines of churches or abbeys, I transitioned from being a pastor to becoming a chaplain integrated into the local community. As an area chaplain, my responsibilities encompass several suburbs and extend to providing support for the staff of the Order of St. John, residing or working within these areas. The referral I received was from a location within my jurisdiction, a forest that has become notorious for its eerie happenings. Reports mentioned strange noises, an unsettling feeling of being observed, and the presence of enigmatic symbols. Curiously, the community member who raised these concerns also experienced consistent nightmares and restless sleep after visiting the forest. Although it took some time for them to connect the dots, the forest itself was a charming, albeit secluded place on the outskirts of suburbia. Often frequented by dog walkers, naturally I decided to bring my faithful canine companion along for this investigation, ensuring I also carried a blessed tiaha an ancestral weapon symbolizing strength and protection. During my initial visit, I encountered a series of peculiar occurrences that left me unnerved. I stumbled upon a bird with a broken neck positioned beside a bag of putrefying meat adjacent to a small candle shrine nestled within the forest. This discovery hinted at human involvement, although my role entailed disproving paranormal phenomenon. Nevertheless, this finding immediately raised concerns within me. Continuing my exploration, I encountered two more deceased animals, an indigenous eel with its head cleanly severed, and a hapless hedgehog that had suffered severe blunt force trauma, rendering it completely flattened. At that point, my mind entertained possibilities such as a delinquent adolescent, a homeless person seeking refuge, or even an ill-conceived attempt at dark magic. Additionally, I noticed unusual markings adorning the trees on the path, adding to the mystique. Furthermore, the absence of any sounds of wildlife was conspicuous. Although I considered the possibility of seasonal variations and common fluctuations in atmospheric pressure. To address this, I conducted a blessing ritual involving the recitation of sacred songs. Astonishingly, I concluded the ceremony the birds around me started to sing. Determined to eliminate any potential threats, I disposed of the decaying meat by discarding it into a nearby bin. During my second visit, I arrived armed with a Bible, a small wooden cross, and wearing my official uniform. I understood that blessings were not a one-time solution, 
but rather required repeated interventions. These rituals acted as a security blanket, serving to reassure and protect, and on this occasion I noticed extensive drag marks scattered throughout the forest, many of which led to the small shrine area where I had discovered the dead bird previously. Furthermore, the distinct murmuring I had faintly perceived during my first visit became more distinct. I also experienced instances of significant movement around me, including an inexplicable disturbance in a shallow stream. Despite the stream's mere 15 centimeter depth, something caused a forceful splash, launching water about a meter into the air, an utterly perplexing occurrence. Moreover, I felt an unusual pressure on the back of my neck and ribs, although I speculated that this might just be a manifestation of anxiety-induced muscle tension. Undeterred, I traversed the forest, clutching my wooden cross tightly, clutching my wooden cross tightly while reciting small exorcism invocations whenever a sense of apprehension loomed. I aimed to ward off any lurking malevolence and ensure my own safety during this investigation. The third visit proved to be the most challenging. Upon arrival, a putrid stench permeated the entire forest due to the multitude of decaying animals. Although I suspect that I had missed some of the deceased animals during my previous visits, the overwhelming smell of death in the forest confirmed the extent of the grim situation. A decapitated rat, several birds, and a few mice lay scattered among the trees and foliage. Determined to address the spiritual turmoil that plagued this place, I had come prepared with the prayer book of St. Martin, intending to consecrate the area and bring about a sense of peace and healing. As I ventured deeper into the forest, it became increasingly evident that despite the constant sound of voices and footsteps echoing along the trail, I could never quite catch sight of anyone. The indistinguishable murmurs seemed to emanate from just around the corner, tantalizingly close yet frustratingly elusive. Undeterred, I proceeded cautiously, keeping my dog on a tight leash, vigilant for any sign of sources of these perplexing sounds. Upon commencing the prayer ritual, an overwhelming wave of nausea surged through me, and I found myself vomiting uncontrollably. The putrid odor of death grew even more suffocating, intensifying the challenging circumstances I faced. Nevertheless, I persevered, determined to complete the consecration and alleviate any sinister energies that plagued the forest. The sounds of movement persisted, a cacophony of rustling leaves and snapping twigs, as if some unseen force was observing my every move. The pressure on the back of my neck and ribs remained, reminding me of the delicate balance between my own fears and the spiritual realm I sought to address. Despite the physical and emotional turmoil, I pressed on, my voice trembling, but resolute as I continued the prayers. Gradually, as the consecration neared its conclusion, the vomiting subsided, and the sickening odor dissipated into ether. I found a profound sense of calm descending upon the forest, replacing the previous atmosphere of malevolence and unrest. To ensure thoroughness of the consecration, I repeated the prayer once more, and this time without any adverse effects. Now, on my fourth and most recent visit, a noticeable transformation has taken place within the forest. The carcasses of the deceased animals have either decomposed or disappeared entirely, and the pervasive stench of death has also vanished, replaced by the familiar scent of nature's tranquility. Although peculiar noises and mysterious movements still persist, I sense a marked decrease in their frequency and intensity. The absence of large wildlife in this area makes these sounds even more perplexing, but I'm hopeful that my efforts have begun to restore harmony and dispel the lingering darkness. However, my work is not yet complete. I am aware of the accumulated litter and debris that require immediate attention. With renewed determination, I will return to the forest, equipped to cleanse and bless the neglected surroundings once more. The markings, once symbols of the enigma and unease, will be rectified and imbued with a renewed sense of positive energy. As I embark on this final phase of my task, I carry with me a mix of anticipation and trepidation, 
The journey to restore balance in the forest has been arduous, yet I remain resolute in my commitment to the community and my duty as a chaplain. Wish me luck as I navigate the remnants of darkness, armed with faith, compassion, and an unwavering belief that the light will ultimately prevail over the shadows. Story number 10. Visual Snow or the Paranormal Throughout my entire life, I've been plagued by peculiarities in my vision. From my earliest memories as a child, I recall lying in bed, captivated by the mesmerizing display of colored static that danced and swirled amidst the various patterns in the dimly lit room. As I grew older, the static evolved, transforming into something more intricate. Alongside the static, I began to perceive an array of geometric shapes that mimicked its behavior. Two-dimensional triangles, squares, circles, and other indescribable forms manifested themselves within my vision. These inexplicable occurrences aligned with the description of a condition known as visual snow, which causes individuals to witness static in their visual field. However, my encounters with darkness went beyond mere static, venturing into the realm of the unworldly. As a child, I made a remarkable discovery concerning the static that filled my parents' room. The shapes, patterns, and colors that manifested in the air were far more vivid and diverse. Fascinated by this revelation, I developed a routine of leaving my own bedroom at dawn, seeking solace at the foot of my parents' bed where I would immerse myself in this enigmatic beauty of the static. It was during one such morning that the extraordinary event unfolded before my eyes, forever altering my perception of reality. Emerging silently from the very wall of the bedroom, a full-sized deer materialized before me, as though it had traversed from the depths of a mystical forest. The deer's antlers were but mere stubs, and its entire body emanated a soft ethereal blue light that resembled the dawn's gentle illumination seeping in from the bathroom window. Notably unlike the static that filled the air, the deer possessed a solid uniform blue hue, rendering it unlike any other visual manifestation I had ever encountered. Locking eyes with me, the deer conveyed a serene composure as it sat before it, awestruck and motionless. We engaged in a silent survey of each other's beings, and without warning the deer pivoted and vanished into the very wall it had emerged from. Still reeling from this inexplicable encounter, I averted my gaze, only to be met with yet another surprise. Perched upon the bedside stand, a heron awaited me, bathed in the same dim blue radiance as the deer. The majestic bird observed me with a tinge of wariness as I cautiously approached, desperate to establish a tangible connection with the enigmatic world I found myself immersed in. To my astonishment, the, her the heron permitted my fingers to draw near, almost touching its iridescent tail feathers, bridging the gap between our realities. It was only for an ephemeral moment. Soundlessly, the heron took flight, disappearing into obscurity of the ceiling. I recall the bird's languid movements, its flight seemingly slowed, its wings evoking a faded blue blur. No further animals materialized that morning, marking the end of my encounters with creatures emerging from the veils of darkness. This first revelation concluded my sightseeing sessions altogether, leaving an indelible mark of disturbance within me that persists to this day. The sight I beheld was undeniably horrifying, and the absence of a rational explanation intensifies my disquietude. Retreating from the depths of the dark, I sought refuge in my parents' room once more, yearning to witness the return of these extraordinary creatures and relish in the peculiar sensation that accompanied my interactions with the static. However, on this particular occasion, my venture into the room occurred earlier than usual. The sun had only begun its ascent, casting a somber dark gray light that veiled the room instead of the usual azure hues. Nestled amid my slumbering parents, I scanned the expanse of the ceiling, my attention drawn to the presence of the obscure masses gliding across the room above my head. Yet I retained an unwarranted sense of calm, 
for I had witnessed these peculiar shapes countless times before. However, one of the masses deviated from the norm, descending towards me with an ominous deliberation until it settled right beside me on the bed. The realization that this ethereal entity was steadily approaching sparked a profound dread within, eclipsing any previous unease I had experienced. I could feel its weight pressing against my side, leaving an indelible imprint on the bed, and this creature, this abomination, was unlike anything I had ever encountered. Unveiling itself in a shade of dark gray, the creature assumed a feline form, albeit devoid of fur, its grotesque emaciation accentuated by the protrusion of its bony spine and the visible outline of its ribs beneath the thin, ashen skin. Yet the most disconcerting aspect within its head and neck, reminiscent of a prehistoric dinosaur featuring a long, arched neck and lizard-like visage. The creature's eyes emitted a dim, lighter shade of gray, instilling a sense of profound unease within me. I cannot recall specific facial details or whether it possessed a tail, for all I remember is the paralyzing fear that consumed me in its presence. Assuming a cat-like pose, it turned its head to regard my ascots. With my heart racing, I remained frozen in terror, too petrified to make even the slightest movement. The notion of provoking the creature and subjecting myself to its potential malevolence held me captive. Meanwhile, my parents slumbered peacefully, oblivious to the monstrous entity that had usurped their sanctuary. Never before have I felt so utterly helpless, my life seemingly hanging by a thread despite the proximity to my parents. Amidst my mounting panic, the creatures remained motionless, emitting no sound. Eventually, it averted its gaze from me, displaying a disinterested disposition. In that moment, an instinctual surge of survival propelled me to escape the room without a moment's hesitation. Counting to ten in my mind, I bolted from bed, retreating back to the refuge of my own room, my mind plagued with the conviction that I was being pursued. My recollection of the events that followed fades into obscurity from that point onward. The encounter with the aberrant creature marked the final chapter of my exploration into the enigmatic world of static and darkness. Reflecting on these events, I now realize that I should have heeded the signs and ceased my engagement with the static long before. It seems evident that I was never meant to bear witness to the ephemeral phenomenon that had occupied my sight. Rather, I believe that this haunting experience served as a warning, cautioning me against meddling in the realms beyond our perceived reality. It has become abundantly clear to me that alternate dimensions exist, intersecting with the plane that we consider reality. While I maintain an open mind regarding the supernatural, the disconcerting possibility of sinister entities lurking in our midst, unbeknownst to us, fills me with an unshakable sense of trepidation. Thus, my fears predominantly stem from the specters concealed within the shadows, rather than the apparitions that manifest themselves within my sight. To those who harbor the desire to embark upon similar journeys into the depths of the darkness, I implore you to exercise caution or better yet, refrain from venturing forth altogether. If anyone shares similar experiences, perchance possesses explanations to unravel these mysteries, I beseech you to enlighten me. The search for understanding continues, fueled by a yearning to shed light upon the uncharted territories that lie beyond our comprehension. Seance Last month on the 10th of July, I embarked on an extraordinary adventure with my friends. We found ourselves in the depths of an old eerie estate that had been standing since the early 20th century. The former owner of the house was an influential man, renowned as a judge in his time. Ultimately, his life came to an abrupt end due to a heart attack that took place within one of the Grand Master bedrooms. Despite its haunting history, the allure of its cheap rent compelled us to rent the property for at least a week. Initially, we amused ourselves with classic board games like Monopoly and indulged in various social pursuits. However, as the hours ticked by, monotony began to take hold of our spirits. A wave of boredom washed over us, urging us to explore the vast expanse of the house. It was during this search for excitement that one of our daring friends suggested watching horror movies. Succumbing to curiosity, we settled down to watch the spine-chilling films Evil Dead and Drag Me to Hell. 
Yet even these terrifying tales failed to captivate our restless souls. Yearning for an adrenaline rush, we collectively decided to engage in an activity that would surely send shivers down our spines, a seance. None of us possessed the faintest idea of how to perform such a ritual, so we resorted to the vast expanse of the internet to guide our endeavors. After gathering the necessary information, we nervously embarked on the seance, hoping to make contact with otherworldly beings. However, much to our disappointment, the seance concluded without any supernatural occurrences. As hunger gnawed at our stomachs, we gravitated toward the kitchen, anticipating a feast of pizza to satiate our appetites. Yet, as we savored each slice, a cacophony of noises echoed from above us, accompanied by the unmistakable sound of footsteps. Startled, we hastily ascended the stairs, seeking refuge in the master bedroom. Upon our arrival, we scoured the room for any signs of intruders or paranormal phenomenon, but found nothing amiss. With our nerves still on edge, we cautiously returned to the living room. The following night marked our final stay in the house, intensifying our determination to connect with the spiritual realm. Once again, we gathered in a circle, hopeful that our efforts would bear fruit. Alas, our hopes were dashed as the evening waned, leaving us empty-handed in our quest for communication. As the day of departure loomed, a series of peculiar events unfolded before our eyes. To our astonishment, a mysterious handprint materialized on the surface of a TV screen, perplexing us as to its origin and purpose. Moreover, one of our companions discovered the loss of his cherished notebook and pen, an occurrence that perplexed us all. Equally disturbed with the ordeal faced by a friend who had occupied the bedroom where the phantom footsteps had resonated, he endured a sleepless night, tormented by the restless string of nightmares. Strangely enough, he had never encountered any difficulty sleeping in that room before. Yet, the pinnacle of strangeness manifested when compelled by an inexplicable urge. I turned to gaze upon the house one last time. As my eyes surveyed the facade, a chilling sight greeted me from one of the windows. It was not the figure of an old man, or any recognizable human form. Instead, it was a spectral mist, seeming to coalesce gradually morphing into an entity that bore resemblance to a woman. The inexplicable occurrences and unshakable sensations that unfolded within the confines of that antiquated estate left an indelible mark on each of us. The atmosphere had remained eerily normal until we attempted those seances. It was as if our meddling with the spirit world had opened a portal to the unknown, inviting a host of inexplicable phenomena into our lives. In the days that followed, a palpable sense of unease settled upon us. Whispers of disembodied voices seemed to linger in the air, faint but undeniably present. Shadows danced at the corners of our vision, teasing our senses with their fleeting movements. Objects inexplicably shifted from their original positions, defying the laws of logic and physics. Sleep became an elusive luxury for all of us. Night after night, we found ourselves plagued by vivid and terrifying nightmares, the line between dreams and reality blurred, leaving us exhausted and perpetually on edge. It was as though the spirits of the house had taken hold of our subconscious, tormenting us as punishment for our failed attempts at contact. The once vibrant and joyful camaraderie among our group now withered under the weight of fear and uncertainty. Each of us bore the weight of our individual experiences, yet the shared sense of foreboding served as a constant reminder that we were not alone in our torment. Conversations grew hushed and guarded, the specter of the supernatural overshadowing every interaction. Desperate for answers, we delved deeper into the history of the estate. Researching archives and interviewing locals, we uncovered a dark tale that had long been concealed beneath the layers of time. Rumors swirled of the judge's involvement in the series of heinous crimes, his position of authority enabling him to evade justice. It was said that the very walls of the estate held echoes of the judge's malevolent deeds, his spirit forever trapped within its confines. 
Armed with this newfound knowledge, we resolved to confront the lingering presence that held us captive. We sought out assistance of a renowned paranormal investigator, someone who could shed light on the forces at play within the estate. With an air of expertise and an array of specialized equipment, the investigator embarked on a thorough exploration of the property, hoping to unravel the mystery that had consumed us. Days turned into weeks as the investigation unfolded, unveiling a series of chilling discoveries. Electronic voice phenomenon recordings captured faint whispers, urging us to leave and beware. Anomalies appeared in photographs, manifesting as ethereal orbs and misty figures. The investigator's own instruments registered abnormal electromagnetic fields, a testament to the otherworldly energies that permeated the house. As our understanding of the situation deepened, so did our resolve to liberate ourselves from the clutches of the supernatural. Armed with sage, crystals, and incantations, we performed a meticulously planned cleansing ritual, channeling positive energy and banishing the negative forces that held sway over us. The atmosphere within the estate shifted, gradually transforming from one of dread to one of lingering serenity. With the spiritual turmoil finally subsiding, we made our final preparations to leave the house for good. Our time there had been a harrowing journey into the realm of the unknown, an experience that would forever shape our perceptions of reality. As we close the door behind us, we carry with us the weight of those indelible memories, reminders of the delicate balance between the living and the spirit that inhabit the ethereal plane. Though we had sought adventure and excitement, we had unknowingly wandered into a realm far beyond our comprehension. The estate's haunted legacy had become a part of our personal narratives, intertwining with our lives and forever altering our perceptions. We left that place with a newfound respect for the unseen forces that dwell in the shadows, forever cautious of the boundaries we dared across in our pursuit of the extraordinary. Story number six, The Mom Mimic. In 2007, a memorable incident took place that still haunts me to this day. It all began when my sister and her husband decided to move into a rental home shortly after the birth of their adorable little baby boy. The house was situated in a relatively new neighborhood, boasting modern features and an overall inviting atmosphere. As a loving and supportive sister, I was more than happy to offer my services as a babysitter, allowing my sister and brother-in-law to have a well-deserved evening out. On that particular evening, I arrived at their new abode, excited to spend some quality time with my adorable nephew. Before departing for their night out, my sister briefed me on some essential details. She mentioned that there was a load of baby clothes in the dryer that needed to be taken out and folded. Eager to help, I assured her that I had enough time to complete the task. After bidding them farewell, I heard the comforting sound of the dryer's completion alert after about 30 minutes. I carefully placed my nephew in his crib and made my way to the laundry room to tend to the clothes. With utmost care, I removed the freshly laundered baby clothes from the dryer and meticulously folded them. Placing the neatly folded garments in a basket, I positioned it on a changing table. Feeling satisfied with my accomplishment, I retrieved my slumbering nephew from his crib, gently relocating him to his bassinet in the peaceful ambiance of the living room. There, I entertained myself with some quiet television time. However, my tranquility was abruptly shattered by a loud bang emanating from the nursery, the very room we had occupied earlier. Curiosity and concern washed over me, but upon peering into the bassinet, I found my nephew blissfully asleep. Undisturbed by the commotion, just totally asleep. Determined to investigate, I cautiously made my way to the nursery, nervously pushing the door open. To my astonishment, the laundry basket that I had placed on the changing table was now on the other side of the room, toppled over and upside down. The once neatly folded baby clothes appeared as if they had been carelessly tossed about. Puzzled and somewhat unnerved by the inexplicable incident, I swiftly collected the basket and its disheveled contents, returning them to the living room for refolding. Despite my confusion, I chose not to mention the incident as I didn't want to spoil my sister and brother-in-law's evening. Months passed, and my sister once again sought my babysitting services for an evening. 
This time, my mother decided to join my sister and brother-in-law as they planned a trip to a nearby casino. Before their departure, my sister informed me that my nephew would require a feeding upon awakening from his nap. True to her word, my nephew stirred awake just 30 minutes after they left, prompting me to bring him to the kitchen and settle him into a chair while I prepared his bottle. Now let me interject with a tidbit about myself. My name is Angelina, but I go by Angie for short. My mother in particular only used my full name when I was in trouble or when she was angry with me. Generally, it was quite rare to hear my full name being employed. Bearing this in mind, as I was engrossed in bottle preparation, I suddenly heard my mother's voice resounding angrily from what seemed to be the nursery. Angelina, come here now, she called out, her tone filled with ire. In response, I yelled back, Just a second, I'm in the middle of making the baby's bottle. However, my mother's voice echoed once more, this time from the master bedroom, intensifying her urgency as she repeated, Angela, come here now. Feeling a mix of frustration and confusion, I retorted, What's going on? Give me a second. Scooping up my nephew, I made my way toward the master bedroom, expecting to find my mother in distress and seeking assistance. To my astonishment, the room was empty, devoid of any trace of my mother's presence. I searched every nook and cranny, examining both the nursery and other areas of the house, including the guest bedroom. The bedroom and even the garage, too. My search led me to the driveway, where I checked for any additional cars beside my own. To my surprise, there was only my vehicle parked in the driveway. Perplexed, I re-entered the house and promptly dialed my mother's number. Hey! I exclaimed, my voice filled with a mixture of confusion and concern. Did you guys come back and forget something? On the other end of the line, my mother's voice responded with an equal bewilderment. No, why? We've been out on the road for over 30 minutes now. My stomach churned with unease as I processed her words. Trying to maintain composure, I dismissed the incident, casually attributing it to the television's influence, even though it had been switched off the entire time. After ending the call, my heart nearly leapt out of my chest as the doorbell rang, shattering the eerie silence that enveloped the house. With a mix of trepidation and anticipation, I hurried toward the front door, almost forgetting to check through the peephole before swinging it open. To my surprise, there was no one to be seen on the other side. I peered out cautiously, examining a driveway, or examining the driveway, for any sign of additional vehicles. Alas, only my car was visible. A profound sense of dread washed over me yet again, intensifying with each passing moment. It was as if an invisible force was toying with my senses, playing a macabre game of hide-and-seek, and left me feeling unnerved and vulnerable. There was no one outside, and from the vantage point offered by the house's location, I could clearly observe both directions of the street. Strangely enough, I never disclosed any of these spine-chilling incidents to my sister until she decided to move out of that unsettling rental home. As I assisted her with the moving process, I couldn't help but notice that my nephew's crib had been relocated to the safety of the master bedroom. Intrigued, I inquired about this change, partly driven by curiosity about my nephew's sleeping patterns. What she revealed caught me completely off guard, mind you. My sister confessed that around Halloween she had purchased a black light and had the audacity to plug it in within the confines of the nursery. To her shock and horror, the room was instantly illuminated with a chilling sight. A large, concentrated stain dominated the center of the room, surrounded by eerie handprints creeping up the walls. Overwhelmed by an indescribable discomfort, she promptly decided to move my nephew's crib into her own bedroom that very night. Stunned by a revelation, I couldn't help but share my own experiences during the first night I babysat her nephew. It was then that my sister confided in me, disclosing a series of strange occurrences that had plagued their time in that house. Lights flickering sporadically, the doorbell ringing incessantly with no one ever present, and even the unsettling sensation of hearing disembodied voices were just a few of the eerie encounters she endured. The landlord, in a desperate attempt to retain tenants in the increasingly notorious rental property, had offered my sister a reduced rent if they signed a year-long lease, Sensing something inherently wrong with the place, my sister firmly declined the offer, ultimately choosing to relocate. 
As we reminisced about these unsettling events, a lingering sense of curiosity nagged at me. I often wondered what might have taken place within the walls of that house, if only I had delved deeper into the mysteries that it held. It pained me to think that an unseen presence had mimicked my mother's voice, using it as a tool to disturb and unsettle our peace of mind. The true nature of that malevolent force remains shrouded in the shadows, forever leaving us with unanswered questions and an enduring sense of unease. Watching Spirit When the kitchen is free, I love to immerse myself in my baking endeavors. It's a delightful escape for me, especially when I can plug in my trusty earbuds and lose myself to the rhythm of my favorite tunes. However, there was an unusual occurrence that captivated the attention of my entire family, a series of perplexing thumping and banging noises emanating from the attic area. Curiously enough, this area happened to be right outside of my room, although that detail might not be particularly relevant to the story. Nevertheless, we were all dumbfounded, unable to explain the origin of these mysterious sounds. As I was reaching the final stages of completing the batch of cookies I was diligently crafting, the thumping noises abruptly infiltrated my auditory realm. Initially, I attributed it to the volume of my music, hastily reducing its intensity. Yet, a few minutes later, the thumping persisted, compelling me to pause my melodic sanctuary and listen intentively. The sound recurred once again, prompting me to believe that perhaps my mom and grandma had returned from their grocery store expedition. Anticipating their arrival, I eagerly awaited the familiar sounds of the back door swinging open, signaling their return so I could offer my assistance with the bags. Alas, no door creaked open and no footsteps approached. Instead, an eerie sensation overwhelmed me, a distinct feeling of being watched. I've always found such experiences deeply unsettling, so I instinctively scanned my surroundings in a fervent quest to uncover the source of this unnerving presence. Initially, I suspected that it might be my beloved dog or perhaps a mischievous cat playing some unorthodox hide-and-seek game. Yet, upon closer inspection, they were nowhere to be found. My gaze gradually drifted toward the dimly lit hallway, leading to the enigmatic attic area. And there, amidst the shadows, my eyes locked onto the sight that sent chills cascading down my spine. A figure, partly concealed by the hall's entrance, peered into the kitchen with an unsettling smile etched upon its countenance. The being's appearance was nothing short of nightmarish. Its complexion boasted an unsettling blend of pure white, tinged with sickly gray hues at the fingertips. Its eyes, devoid of any discernible reflection of vitality, were pitch black and seemed to penetrate the very depths of my soul. Stringy locks of light brown hair hung limply around its face, and a set of grotesquely yellowed teeth completed the horrifying visage. The mere sight of it invoked an overwhelming fear that coursed through my veins, urging me to flee, and flee I did. Rushing down the foreboding basement, a realm I rarely ventured into unless accompanied by somebody else, summoning my brother to join me, and together we ascended back to the kitchen, anxiously awaiting the return of my mom and grandma while the insidious thumping noises continued their persistent assault on our senses. In a state of unease, we exchanged apprehensive glances with each other, yet no further apparition materialized before us. From that day forward, my existence has been punctuated by intermittent sightings of this malevolent entity. It appears without warning, lurking within the kitchen or peering out from its hiding place, fixated on me with its haunting gaze. Curiously, I never attempted to communicate through words or any other form of sound. It maintains a peculiar distance, never daring to draw too near, yet restlessly following me wherever my path takes me. I do recall a particularly chilling encounter. Bewilderingly enough, I spotted it lurking in the vicinity of a friend's house, a good half hour away from my usual surroundings. The implication of its omnipresence sent shivers down my spine. My mind has been plagued with questions, uncertainty, and a lingering sense of dread. 
What does this enigmatic entity want from me? Why has it chosen to restlessly stalk and observe my every move? I find solace in knowing that I'm not a practitioner of witchcraft, nor have I dabbled in summoning spirits. Furthermore, none of my family members possess an inclination towards such occult practices or have engaged with the Ouija board. The motive behind this unwavering fixation remains shrouded in darkness, an enigma that refuses to unveil its secrets. Days turned into weeks and weeks transformed into months, yet the unsettling presence persists. It continues to haunt my kitchen as if claiming it for its own domain. Its unsettling smile serves as a constant reminder of the malevolence that lurks just beyond the veil of my reality. The once comforting space where I found solace and baking and all these other different things has become a battleground of fear and uncertainty. I cautiously approach each culinary endeavor, my ears primed for the faintest hint of those dreaded thumping noises. They serve as a chilling soundtrack to the twisted game of cat and mouse that's consumed my life. Despite the sheer terror that permeates my existence, I cannot deny the strange lore of this macabre phenomenon. There is a morbid curiosity within me that longs to decipher the secrets that it holds. Perhaps deep down, I yearn to confront its sinister presence face to face, to demand answers and bring an end to its reign of terror. But caution prevails, for I know not the extent of its power or the consequences of engaging with it directly. As time passes, the encounters become more frequent, and the boundary between the reality and nightmare blurs with each sighting. The entity's presence, once confined to the kitchen, now infiltrates my dreams, manifesting itself as a haunting specter in the realm of sleep. Night after night, I'm tormented by its menacing grin, unable to escape its relentless pursuit, even in the realm of the subconsciousness. My daily routines have been tainted by an incessant paranoia. I find myself constantly glancing over my shoulder, convinced that it's a malevolent eye fixed upon me, even in the most mundane of settings. The once mundane act of grocery shopping became a nerve-wracking ordeal, as I dread the possibility of catching a glimpse of that unsettling figure lurking among the aisles, always watching, always smiling. Friends and loved ones express concern as they witness the toll this ordeal has really taken on my mental and physical well-being. They urge me to seek help and to consult experts in the supernatural in hopes of finding a way to banish this haunting presence from my life. Yet, the fear of exacerbating the situation or invoking further wrath restrains me. Who knows what horrors await if I were to tamper with forces beyond my comprehension. And so, I continue to navigate the treacherous waters of existence, forever burdened by the presence of this insidious entity. Its enigmatic purpose remains an unsolved riddle, a puzzle that consumes my thoughts and dominates my every waking moment until the day arrives when I can finally uncover the truth and break free from its oppressive grip, I'm destined to live in perpetual states of fear, forever haunted by the smiling specter that refuses to release me from its clutches. Haunted or Paranoid? I'm a 19-year-old with a deep fascination for all things creepy and mysterious, from unsolved mysteries to investigation, true crime, and even the paranormal. I've always been drawn to the unknown. While I consider myself a believer, I've never really experienced anything truly paranormal, except a few instances that made me question my beliefs. One such incident occurred when my bedroom door closed by itself. It happened a few times, but I always brushed it off, attributing it to drafts or some other logical explanation. Then there was the time when I visited a supposedly haunted house in my hometown. I was only nine or ten, something like that at the time, and I have to admit my imagination was heavily influenced by my mischievous siblings. So when I did see some eerie things in that house, I couldn't help but wonder if it was all in my head. Don't get me wrong, I do believe in the paranormal, but some stories and experiences are simply too far-fetched for me to wholeheartedly believe. 
full-bodied apparitions, Ouija boards, ghost radios, they all seemed more like fictional creations than real-life occurrences. I have my doubts, despite my curiosity. Yesterday was just another day for me. Engrossed in my love for all things creepy, I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers, Moist Critical, on my laptop. Whenever I sit down to watch his videos, I create a little fortress in my room. I close the door, shut the windows, and make sure I have enough water and snacks to last me for hours. It's my own personal ritual, and yesterday was one of those marathon sessions. I had been sitting in front of my laptop for at least an hour, completely immersed in watching Moist Critical's reactions to a thrilling cop chase. Nothing creepy, just pure entertainment. Let me set the scene for you. My desk is positioned against a wall on the opposite side of the window. This means that I'm sitting down, my back is facing the window, and on the windowsill, I have an assortment of items, including aromatherapy oil diffusers, my collection of crystals, a Himalayan salt candle holder, and two vinyl records by Jeff Buckley. The vinyl records are securely propped up against the wall, and my cat was in my grandmother's room at the time, not in my room. Both the windows and the doors were closed tightly, given the icy weather outside. And then it happened. Out of nowhere, the vinyl records, the essential oil bottles, the candle, and even a few crystals suddenly fell off the windowsill. I jolted from my seat, nearly choking on my own breath, and a surge of fear washed over me. There was no logical explanation for this bizarre occurrence. Nothing could have possibly provoked these items to fall off the windowsill in such coordinated manner. It was as if an unseen force had deliberately knocked them down. At that moment, I felt a chill run down my spine. I quickly scanned my surroundings, desperately searching for any possible explanation. I should mention that there was a radiator directly beneath the windowsill. But it wasn't turned on at the time, or at least not enough to generate the unusual heat waves that might cause movement. Even if it had been on, the most it could have done was swung the blinds slightly, certainly not send objects flying across the room. As I stood there, perplexed and trembling, my mind raced through countless possibilities. Was it a ghost? A poltergeist, perhaps? Or could it be something more sinister lurking in the shadows of my Transylvanian home? Living in Transylvania with its rich folklore and tales of vampires, it's easy to let one's imagination run wild with thoughts of Dracula himself causing the disturbance. The legends and myths surrounding Transylvania have instilled a sense of both excitement and trepidation within me. While I don't truly believe in the existence of vampires, the coincidence of this strange event occurring in such a renowned location added an extra layer of intrigue. Attempting to regain my composure, I cautiously approached the fallen items on the floor. The crystals glistened under the dim light, their vibrant colors casting eerie shadows across the room. I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched, that unseen eyes were observing my every move. Goosebumps prickled my skin as I gingerly picked up the vinyl records and examined them for any sign of damage. Surprisingly, they seemed to be completely unscathed as if they had landed on a cushion of air rather than a hardwood floor. Questions raced through my mind, begging for answers. Was this a mere coincidence, or was there something more to it? Could it be that the spirits of those who once inhabited this house were trying to communicate with me? The idea both thrilled and terrified me. Seeking answers, I decided to delve further into the history of the house, and the land that it stood on. Perhaps there were tales of unexplained phenomenon or tragic events that might shed light on this peculiar incident. My research led me down a rabbit hole of ghost stories, eyewitness accounts, and local folklore. I discovered that the house had a dark past, with rumors of unexplained deaths and inexplicable occurrences. Some even claimed that the spirits of the deceased still roamed its halls, forever trapped in liminal space between the living and the dead. Armed with this newfound knowledge, I couldn't help but wonder if the fallen items were a message from beyond the grave. Was there a spirit desperately trying to reach out to me, convey a long-buried secret, or seek solace? The idea fascinated me, fueling my desire to uncover the truth. Embracing my fascination with the paranormal, I decided to embark on my own investigation. I set up cameras and recording devices in my room, 
hoping to capture any further inexplicable occurrences. I meticulously documented every detail, analyzing each piece of evidence in my quest for answers. The nights were spent in anticipation, eagerly reviewing the footage, listening for whispers in the dark, and scrutinizing every creak and groan of the house. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, but my efforts yielded no substantial evidence. The house remained silent as if guarding its secrets with an impenetrable shroud of mystery. Doubts started to seep into my mind, questioning the validity of my beliefs and the nature of paranormal stuff itself. Was I merely chasing shadows, clinging to superstitions in the hope of finding something extraordinary? Nevertheless, my passion for the unknown persisted. I continued my exploration of the supernatural, attending haunted tours, participating in seances, and engaging in discussions with fellow enthusiasts. Each encounter, while not providing definitive proof, fueled my curiosity and strengthened my conviction that there was more to this world than meets the eye. As the years went by, my experiences and investigations allowed me to appreciate the subtleties and complexities of the paranormal realm. I learned that there is not always about dramatic apparitions or objects flying across the room, but rather the subtle whispers in the wind, the unexplainable cold spots, and the eerie sensations that send chills down your spine. Today, I still reside in Transylvania, surrounded by the rich tapestry of its supernatural history. While I may never fully understand the incident with the fallen items on that fateful day, it remains a constant reminder that there are forces at work beyond our comprehension. Demonic Dream and the Events After It all began when I decided to take a nap one afternoon. As I drifted off to dreamland, everything seemed normal. I found myself sitting on the sofa with my friend, unaware of the impending strangeness that awaited me. Suddenly I became conscious within the dream, realizing that I was indeed dreaming, yet I remained silent. A peculiar tension filled the air and my gaze fell upon a box of tissues. To my astonishment, a tissue mysteriously soared upwards, piercing through the ceiling. Intrigued, I boldly challenged the unseen presence, saying, If someone is here, do that again. Lo and behold, the tissue obeyed my request, but this time I managed to catch it. Curiosity urged me to turn to my right, only to find a colossal goat inches away from my face. Strangely enough, I somehow knew that this goat possessed human teeth. In my mind, I pondered, If you are what I think you are, speak. Just as it was about to utter a word, I intervened and stopped it. The goat responded with a slight head movement, seemingly annoyed, and then emitted a bone-chilling demonic scream. Abruptly, I jolted awake, still able to hear the reverberations of the dreadful sound for a few fleeting moments, as if it clung to my senses, forcibly pulling me back into wakefulness. Keeping this unsettling experience to myself, I refrained from sharing it with anyone, particularly my partner at the time, who held an irrational fear of such matters. However, an unspoken shift in the atmosphere within our home became apparent. Occasionally, I would jest, half-seriously stating, there's a ghost haunting our house, to which my partner would dismissively respond, it won't do anything. Several days later, while accompanying my mother to the hospital, I received frantic messages urging me to return home immediately. When I arrived, I found my partner sitting outside, visibly terrified with her dog by his side. Trembling, he recounted a spine-chilling encounter that he had had in the kitchen. As he prepared a drink, he distinctly heard my voice inquire, Are you okay? Turning around, he expected to see me standing there, but to his astonishment, no one was present. Bewildered, he resumed his task, only to experience a sudden surge of searing pain coursing down his back. Upon inspection, we discovered three deep crimson gnashes running vertically down his spine, a perplexing sight considering his short nails made it impossible for him to have inflicted these wounds upon himself. The scratches persisted for three days, and it was after that ordeal that he decided to leave. 
A week later, my mother approached me, visibly disturbed. She recounted an incident from the previous night when she had heard my voice echoing from the bottom of the stairs, urgently calling out, Mom! The time was 3 a.m., and I was sound asleep upstairs, rendering it impossible for me to have uttered those words. Although it resembled my voice, she knew deep down that it couldn't have been me. Weeks passed and life carried on with the undercurrent of an ease, and I found myself in the hallway bringing in groceries when an inexplicable force seemed to grab my butt. Shocked and bewildered, I rushed to my mother, sharing the bizarre occurrence. In jest, we attributed it to the mischievous ghost, with my mother playfully chiding, You dirty pervert. However, as I returned to the bottom of the stairs, the demonic scream reverberated through the air once again, chilling both my mother and me to the core. Overwhelmed with fear, I hastily fled the hallway, my heart pounding in my chest like a drum set on overdrive. The bone-chilling scream echoed in my ears, intensifying the horror that had gripped my entire being. I couldn't shake the feeling that the unseen entity was toying with us, its presence lurking in the shadows of our home. Seeking solace and reassurance, I turned to my mother, her expression marrying my own fear-stricken countenance. We exchanged anxious glances, both knowing that something beyond our understanding was unfolding before us. The hair on the back of my neck prickled as I heard what sounded like faint footsteps resonating upstairs. Each footfall seemed to grow louder, as if some invisible force was purposely moving away, evading our grasp. Determined to confront whatever malevolent force has invaded our lives, I mustered the courage to ascend the stairs, one hesitant step at a time. The air grew thick with anticipation, and my palms grew clammy with perspiration. With each creak of the stairs beneath my weight, a sense of trepidation mounted within me, warning me of the perils that awaited. As I reached the top of the staircase, the atmosphere became increasingly oppressive. Shadows danced along the walls, playing tricks on my anxious mind. I cautiously moved towards the rooms. My senses heightened to detect even the slightest disturbance. It felt as if time stood still, and the world holding its breath, waiting for the next haunting to occur. The first room I entered was my own. The space had once provided solace and comfort, but now it seemed tainted by an otherworldly presence. Every corner, every object seemed infused with an eerie energy that sent shivers down my spine. I could almost hear whispers in the silence, murmurs of a spectral nature that eluded comprehension. With bated breath, I continued my exploration, moving from room to room, searching for any sign of the supernatural intruder. The once familiar hallways now felt like a labyrinth, a maze of uncertainty and fear. It was as if the very walls held secrets, secrets that refused to be revealed, secrets that threatened to consume my sanity. Days turned into weeks and the paranormal activity persisted. Objects would inexplicably move and doors would slam shut and disembodied voices would echo through the empty corridors of her home. Sleep became a distant memory, as each night brought with it a barrage of nightmares and restless tossings and turnings. The veil between the realm of the living and the realm of the spirits seemed dangerously thin, blurring the boundaries of our perceived reality. Desperate for answers, I sought the guidance of experts in the occult and the paranormal. They conducted investigations delving deep into the history of the house and its surroundings. Their findings painted a chilling picture, a history of tragedy, dark rituals, and restless souls longing for peace. It appeared that her home had become a focal point for these tormented spirits, drawing them towards us like moths to a flame. Eventually, we made the difficult decision to leave the house behind, bidding farewell to the echoes of the past that had haunted us for far too long. As we settled into our new abode, the oppressive weight that had clung to our lives gradually lifted, and a sense of normalcy returned. However, the memories of these harrowing days still haunted me. The events that unfolded in that house serve as a constant reminder of the mysteries that lie beyond our comprehension, reminding me that the realm of the supernatural is a force to be reckoned with. It's a chapter in my life that I'll never forget, a testament to the inexplicable and the unexplained, forever etched in the deepest recesses of my soul.
Story number 11, A Bloody Owl. A few months ago, an intriguing incident occurred that I feel compelled to share. You see, I reside in the heart of Wisconsin, in a place just beyond the bustling city of Milwaukee. While my surroundings may be considered predominantly urban or suburban, it's worth mentioning that the northern regions of this state harbor quite a substantial number of fervent Bigfoot enthusiasts. Fascinating, isn't it? As for me, I presently inhibit or inhabit the very same house where I spent my childhood. It's an old abode brimming with memories of days gone by. Behind the house stretches an expanse of sprawling woods, encompassing miles of pristine wilderness. During my formative years, I would often venture into those woods alone, engrossed in my own world of imagination. Admittedly, nothing overtly peculiar had ever occurred during, during these solitary escapades. Now as an adult, I have developed a peculiar habit of indulging in a brief nap before my designated bedtime. I refer to it as pre-gaming bedtime, a strategy to avoid the embarrassment of announcing my intention to sleep at an embarrassingly early hour such as 7 p.m. Consequently, I would awaken from this evening nap sometimes between 10 and midnight, allowing me to conclude the remaining activities of the day. One fateful night, however, I inadvertently overshot my intended nap duration. Abruptly roused from my slumber, I groggily glanced at the clock, only to discover it was a quarter to 3 a.m. Understanding the necessity of taking my faithful canine companion outside for his nocturnal bathroom break, I ventured into the night. As we stepped into the darkness, I could hear the distant hooting of an owl, a sound that had become somewhat of a familiar lullaby due to a family of owls that had taken up residence near the woods. Curiously, my dog's behavior deviated from the norm. He fixated his gaze on the abyss before us, emitting low, guttural growls. This was a rare occurrence as he had displayed such behavior on only a handful of occasions. As a woman living alone, one can't help but be attuned to potential threats and this deviation from the ordinary warranted my attention. Suddenly, a peculiar sound reverberated through the stillness of the night. To my ears, it appeared unmistakably as though it were my own voice. More specifically, the voice of a younger version of myself. It was as if a tiny juvenile version of me was calling out my brother's name, utilizing a peculiar mannerism I had long discarded. Initially, I attempted to dismiss this auditory anomaly as mere misinterpretation, an absurd notion conjured by a groggy mind. Consequently, I embarked upon a quest to identify any plausible sounds that could have been mistaken for a little girl's voice emanating from the depths of the darkness at such an ungodly hour. Could it have been rustling leaves? Perhaps an exotic bird with an uncanny vocalization? Alas, I stood there cascade of unsettling thoughts began to permeate my consciousness. Thoughts reminiscent of the eerie tales surrounding skinwalkers, entities capable of imitating the voices of our loved ones. Yet, according to the lore, one should hear their own name being called, not echoes of one's own voice from three decades past beckoning another's name. The chilling realization struck me, for such a voice to have been replicated an unseen observer must have scrutinized me over the period of time. My logical mind grappled with these illogical suppositions, prompting me to remain motionless. Meanwhile, my canine companion persisted in his growling, as if echoing my own unease. It was then that the hoots once more began, their calls resonating through the night, the sound so quintessentially owlish served as a backdrop for what occurred next. Abruptly, a deep, almost masculine and eerily human-like voice interjected, mocking the owls with a single word, Who? The tonality of the voice itself, distinctively non-human, dispelled any notions of encountering a malevolent human intruder lurking within my forested domain. Instead, it affirmed the opposite, presence decidedly unworldly. A single world, sorry, a single word escaped my lips, a feeble yet determined declaration of my refusal to engage further. Nope. 
Swiftly, I pivoted on my heel and nonchalantly retreated into the safety of my abode, ensuring my loyal companion followed suit. Once securely inside, I resolved to arm myself, retrieving two robust industrial flashlights from my possessions. Brimming with a sense of trepidation, I braved the threshold once more. Regrettably, my courage wavered a mere ten feet beyond the door, prompting me to choose the preservation of life over unwarranted valor. Thus, I hastily retreated indoors, securing all entrances and retrieving my trusted firearm as an additional precautionary measure. Throughout my lifetime, I've undertaken countless nocturnal sojourns, and I can count on a single hand the number of instances in which I have encountered another soul during these ethereal hours. Eventually, I rationalized that the audacious culprit behind this bizarre episode might have been none other than my neighbor's 18-year-old offspring, partaking in a clandestine rendezvous with a 3 a.m. joint amidst the woodland depths. This theory held steadfast until a serendipitous encounter on an online platform enlightened me to a bewildering revelation. It appeared that numerous individuals had shared eerily similar experiences, recounting incidents of mysterious entities skillfully mimicking the calls of owls. One user even proposed that fledgling owls, in their nascent stages of development, emit such sounds as they struggle to master the art of proper hooting. Curiosity peaked, I embarked on a thorough investigation, scouring various resources in search of audio recordings depicting these fledgling owls' vocalizations. Alas, my efforts proved in vain, as only videos I could locate depicted these avian juveniles emitting shrill, unsettling screeches. Sounds that bore no resemblance to the one I had encountered on that fateful night. To this day, the enigma remains unsolved, serving as a haunting reminder of the mysterious forces that lie hidden within the depths of the natural world. The inexplicable mimicry of my own voice from childhood, coupled with the unearthly voice mocking the owls, has left an indelible impression upon me. It's a testament to the vastness of the unknown, and a testament to the chilling notion that perhaps our perceptions of reality can be shattered in the most disconcerting and bewildering of ways. Story number 13. Anyone have any experiences with sirens, mer people, or mamiwata? I've always been fascinated by the mysterious realms of dreams, particularly the phenomenon of lucid dreaming. From the tender age of eight, I've been experiencing these vivid journeys into the depths of my subconscious. Unlike some lucid dreamers who actively shape their dreamscape, I find myself merely surrendering to the whims of my dreaming mind, allowing it to guide me wherever it may. Yet throughout these ethereal voyages, I maintain an unwavering awareness of my dream state, never losing sight of the fact that I am immersed in a realm of imagination. Interestingly enough, though, my excursions into the dream world would often serve as a gateway to another enigmatic realm known as the astral realm. It is in this mysterious astral plane that I've experienced spontaneous projections, transcending the boundaries of my dreaming mind and exploring a dimension beyond our physical reality. It's peculiar how these astral projections seem to manifest themselves, exclusively through the conduit of lucid dreaming, intertwining these two phenomena in a symbiotic dance within my consciousness. Just last night I found myself indulging in an unusually long nap, far surpassing my usual three-hour slumber. A profound sense of exhaustion compelled me to delve into a seven-hour sleep, as if some unseen force were determined to keep me in a state of deep slumber for an extended period. Little did I know that this prolonged repose would initiate a sequence of events that would leave an indelible mark on my mind. During the course of this extended slumber, a significant portion of my dream appeared as an abyss of darkness, devoid of any discernible imagery or memories. It was as if my subconscious had momentarily shut off, leaving me in a state of void where even the faintest glimmer of recollection was absent. Curiously, upon awakening from this perplexing blackout, I was bombarded with a flurry of texts on my phone. 
To my dismay, the messages hailed from a family group chat, bearing the news of my auntie's untimely passing. It seems as though the onset of this sudden fatigue coincided with this somber event, intertwining the ethereal realm of dreams with the harsh realities of life. Yet, amidst the blank expanse of my dream, a vivid segment unfolded, revealing a house that was entirely unfamiliar to me. Despite my lack of recognition, there was an uncanny sense of familiarity, as if I were intimately connected to this abode. Nestled within the house's backyard stood a magnificent sunroom, encased in glass, adorned with an enchanting patio. Adjacent to this ethereal space was a pool illuminated by a mesmerizing glow. To my astonishment within the pool, a majestic white narwhal materialized, its eyes emanating an otherworldly radiance. In a peculiar twist, the narwhal seamlessly transformed into a red-haired woman with a sun-kissed complexion. In my dream-induced haze, I immediately associated this mystical being with a mermaid, reminiscent of the legendary selkies that have captivated human imagination for centuries. Strangely, the mermaid remained silent throughout our encounter, trailing me with an unwavering gaze that pierced through the fabric of my consciousness. An undeniable desire to enter the house seemed to emanate from her, but an overwhelming sense of unease gripped me, fueling a lingering sensation of danger within the depths of my dream. Compounding my disquietude, my sister-in-law shared a cryptic revelation, recounting a reading conducted by her sister regarding the mermaid's presence. Though the details remained concealed, her cautionary words hinted at a foreboding future entwined with this enigmatic creature. Seeking solace, I retreated to my room, hoping to find respite within the sanctuary of slumber. However, sleep eluded me in the dream, for my thoughts were consumed by a relentless obsession over the potential entry points through which the mermaid could infiltrate the house. Eventually, my restless state forced me into wakefulness, but the tendrils of the dream still clung to my waking thoughts. A flood of realization washed over me, and I found myself contemplating the identity of this ethereal entity. In a flash of insight, I attributed her presence to that of a Mamiwata spirit, a concept I'd encountered through the stories circulating on social media platform TikTok. According to these accounts, Mamiwata spirits were known to project their essence into specific locations, often harboring anger and delivering ominous warnings to those who dared to trespass upon their domain. It was a haunting revelation as most narratives surrounding such dreams visitations seemed to bear an inherently hostile nature. Nevertheless, amidst the tales of wrath and retribution, stories of Mamiwata spirits saving individuals from the clutches of drowning would occasionally emerge. However, these seemingly benevolent acts were often followed by subsequent encounters, wherein the spirits returned to claim their saviors, dragging them back into the watery depths as a form of payment for their salvation. The dichotomy between their perspectives and their subsequent demands perplexed me, leaving me yearning for a deeper understanding of these mystical beings that roamed the ocean's depths. Throughout my life, I've fostered an unyielding love for the water, be it the tranquil presence of a beach or the immersive embrace of an oceanic expanse. Yet, even amidst all of my adoration for these aqueous realms, an innate fear has always lingered within me. It is not the fear of a shark's bite or the tentacles of some mythical creature that grips my heart. Instead, it's a profound dread of being ensnared by a phantom hand, dragged relentlessly downward by an unseen force. Over the past five years, this apprehension has grown to such an extent that I find myself avoiding the beach altogether. Whenever I stand next to the water's edge, an unsettling sensation of being watched and followed creeps over me, shrouding my seaside reveries in an atmosphere of unease. And now, with this haunting dream encounter, my trepidation intensifies, urging me to seek answers to uncover the truths behind the guardians of the deep. Yearning to delve deeper into the lore surrounding merpeople and their fiercely guarded secrets, I feel compelled to explore this enigma that's woven itself into the tapestry of my dreams. What compels these ethereal beings to defend themselves so fiercely? 
What connection do they perceive with me that prompts their intrusion into my slumbering mind? If there exists a community or a forum dedicated to the study of such phenomena, I implore you to guide me towards the path of knowledge, that I may unravel the mysteries that lie hidden beneath the ocean's surface. Story number six. Entity trying to attack wife during sleep. Last night as I lie in bed, I could perceive a faint murmuring emanating from my beloved wife, signaling that she was deep in the realm of dreams. Initially, I dismissed it as a typical nocturnal occurrence, the mere product of her subconscious mind weaving intricate tales. Little did I know that this seemingly innocuous soundscape would swiftly transform into a bone-chilling symphony of terror that would shake me to my very core. In the midst of this night's tranquility, a piercing scream shattered the calm, slicing through the darkness and resonating with an intensity that could rival the most jarring of alarms. It was my name, pronounced with such desperation as if each syllable carried the weight of an otherworldly terror. Instantly I was catapulted, from the embrace of slumber into a disorienting wakefulness, my senses heightened and attuned to the fear that had gripped my wife's soul. I turned to face her, my eyes heavy with remnants of sleep, and there she lay, visibly shaken and trembling under the invisible specter's grasp. Her voice quivered as she recounted the harrowing encounter that she had just endured. She described a dark, amorphous silhouette that had materialized above her, hovering with ominous intent. The mere presence of this enigmatic entity seemed to manifest a force, exerting pressure upon her thighs, attempting to pry them apart in a grotesque violation of her bodily autonomy. As she relayed her nightmarish experience, it became evident that she had been thrust into a state of night paralysis, a petrifying condition where one finds themselves trapped between the realm of wakefulness and slumber, rendering her utterly helpless and immobile. This malevolent force had effectively silenced her, rendering her incapable of summoning the vocal fortitude to scream my name and seek refuge in my protective presence. The duration of this supernatural onslaught, she estimated, lasted for what felt like an eternity, but in reality encompassed a mere few minutes. As the gravity of her words settled upon us, a palpable unease permeated the air, its tendrils of fear snaking around our hearts. We found ourselves teetering on the precipice of an unknown abyss, desperately seeking answers and solace in the face of this unprecedented and terrifying ordeal. As the first rays of dawn began to paint the sky, we embarked on a heartfelt discussion, dissecting the details of her nocturnal torment. Although the safety of our daylight provided a semblance of reassurance, the remnants of her terror lingered like a ghostly echo, haunting our every thought. With an air of trepidation, we contemplated the best course of action to prevent such malevolent intrusions from ever plaguing her dreamscape again. Together, we delved into the realms of knowledge, seeking wisdom from ancient texts, folk tales, and the annals of modern scientific research. Our journey led us to the discovery of various techniques to confront and mitigate the encroachment of night terrors and sleep paralysis. We endeavored to create a protective cocoon of safety, a bastion against the forces that sought to infiltrate her subconscious sanctuary. First and foremost, we implemented a meticulous sleep routine, prioritizing relaxation techniques such as meditation and deep breathing exercises before bedtime. This helped to cultivate a sense of tranquility, fortifying her mind against the invasive grip of fear. Additionally, we took measures to ensure the sleep environment remained conducive to restful slumber, incorporating soothing aromatherapy such as lavender and chamomile, and eliminating potential sources of disturbance, such as electronic devices emitting blue light. Embracing the power of knowledge, we explored the realm of lucid dreaming, an extraordinary state where one becomes aware of their dreams, thereby gaining control over their nocturnal narrative. Through diligent practice and the adoption of lucidity, my wife sought to harness her subconscious mind, 
empowering herself to confront any spectral adversaries that may dare to intrude upon her sacred dreamscapes. To further bolster our defenses, we embarked on a journey of spiritual exploration, drawing upon the protective energies of amulets, talismans, and prayers from various belief systems. Their symbolic potency acted as a shield, warding off malevolent forces and imbuing her psyche with an aura of safety. We also enlisted the support of spiritual guides, seeking their wisdom and expertise to cleanse our living space of any lingering negative energies that may have attracted the attention of these otherworldly entities. Simultaneously, we recognized the importance of seeking professional guidance, consulting with sleep specialists and psychologists and therapists well-versed in the intricacies of sleep disorders and night terrors. Through their expertise, we gained valuable insight into the psychological and sociological underpinnings of these phenomena, unraveling the mysteries that enshrouded my wife's experience. Their guidance proved instrumental in charting a course toward emotional healing and resilience. Armed with knowledge, spiritual fortitude, and professional guidance, we embraced a multifaceted approach to safeguarding my wife's dreams from the clutches of darkness. Although the specter of that fateful night still cast its long shadow upon our hearts, we refused to succumb to fear's paralyzing grip. Instead, we embarked on this arduous journey, united in our pursuit of peace and restoration. As the nights passed, our collective efforts bore fruit, gradually restoring a semblance of equilibrium to my wife's nightscape. The incidents of intrusive entities and nocturnal paralysis diminished in frequency and intensity, offering us a glimmer of hope and respite. While the scars of that haunting night would forever remain etched upon our consciousnesses, we emerged from the crucible of fear, stronger, wiser, and ever more resilient. In retrospect, this harrowing episode served as a testament to the boundless depths of our love and the indomitable spirit that resides within us. It was a stark reminder that even in the face of unspeakable horrors, the human spirit possesses an innate capacity to triumph, to transcend the limitations of the physical realm, and to reclaim sovereignty over the subconscious domain of our existence. So, dear reader, if you ever find yourself entangled in the suffocating grip of night terrors or sleep paralysis, know that you are not alone. Draw strength from the collective wisdom of the ages, seek solace in the embrace of loved ones, and embark on a journey of self-discovery and healing. For it is in these darkest moments that we forge an unbreakable resolve to confront the unknown and emerge resplendent into a light of a new dawn. Two visits, two nights in a row. During one extraordinary experience, my mind was suddenly awakened to a potent energy that seemed to envelop me within the ethereal realm. It was a gradual process, but eventually my entire consciousness became tuned to the spirit world. This energy manifested as a gentle, soft light, captivating my attention and drawing me closer. As I focused my senses on it, fragments of information started to seep into my awareness. At first, I sensed wariness emanating from this ethereal energy, as if it had endured a long and arduous journey. Then, its essence seemed to convey a sense of age, as if it had weathered the passage of time. Amidst my attempts to decipher this enigmatic presence, a realization struck me with the force of a revelation. Someone had recently transitioned from the earthly plane to the realm of spirits. The energy carried the essence of a departed soul, and through my intuition, I discerned that it belonged to none other than Sarah, a dear friend of our family. In this perplexing encounter, Sarah's disembodied voice resonated within my being, seeking guidance and direction. She implored me to advise her on the path that she would traverse. Though I was bewildered myself, lacking the certainty of a definitive answer, I mustered the courage to suggest that she should venture toward the beckoning light. With a profound sense of trepidation mingled with hope, I witnessed Sarah's essence slowly drifting toward the radiant glow that emanated from the spirit realm. And then, in an instant, it was over. She had crossed over into the light, leaving me both astounded and humbled. The following morning, with a lingering sense of awe, 
I descended the hill that led to my father's gas station, ready to face the day ahead. As I stepped into the familiar surroundings, little did I know a revelation awaited me. It was my father who summoned me, his countenance bearing a grave expression. I have something to tell you, he began, his voice tinged with sorrow. Sarah passed away last night. My heart skipped a beat, for I had sensed her presence, encountered her spirit in the realm beyond her physical senses. Yet, despite my profound realization, I hesitated to confide in my father, fearing that he would dismiss my encounter as mere figments of imagination. Regret gnawed at me, for I should have shared with him the truth of Sarah's visitation, the significance of our connection transcending the boundaries of life and death. Unbeknownst to me, the tapestry of the spirit world would unfold before me once more. For on the ensuing night, another extraordinary visitation awaited. This time, it was as if the ethereal energy emanated from a different direction, flowing from left to right in stark contrast to the previous encounter. As I focused my attention, a radiant light filled with exuberance came into view. The essence of this energy seemed to reverberate with the sounds of merry giggles as if unseen forces were reveling in boundless delight. Gradually, a realization dawned upon me. This ethereal energy carried the essence of an impending arrival, a forthcoming birth. The spirit of an unborn child made its presence known, conveying its imminent entry into the realm of the living. Days later, the news reached me. My second cousin had welcomed baby boy into the world. Overwhelmed with joy, I marveled at the connection I had sensed, the privilege of witnessing the miracle of life in its nascent form. In these sacred encounters with the ethereal realm, I couldn't help but acknowledge the divine presence orchestrating the intricate tapestry of existence. Praise and gratitude filled my heart, for these profound experiences had unveiled to me the interconnectedness of the spirit realm and the physical realm. I marveled at the unseen forces at work, guiding the ebb and flow of life's mysteries. It was as if a veil had been lifted, granting me glimpses into the profound depths of existence that transcend the limitations of our mortal perception. In the wake of these encounters, a newfound sense of purpose ignited within me. I yearned to explore the realms beyond the tangible, to delve deeper into the intricacies of the spirit world. Each visitation had left an indelible mark on my soul, a thirst for understanding that could not be quenched by conventional means. I became increasingly attuned to the subtle energies that permeated our reality, seeking to unravel the secrets they held. As I delved into the realms of spirituality and metaphysics, I discovered a wealth of ancient wisdom and esoteric knowledge. The journey of self-discovery became intertwined with my exploration of the unseen, as I sought to understand not only the vast tapestry of the spirit realm, but also the depths of my own being. Meditation and introspection became my companions, helping me to unlock the dormant faculties within, allowing me to connect more deeply with the ethereal energies that surrounded me. With each passing day, my senses sharpened, honed by the pursuit of spiritual enlightenment. I began to perceive subtle vibrations to decipher the whispers of the unseen, the boundaries between the physical and the spiritual blurred, and I found solace in the realization that they were not isolated beings but integral parts of a grand cosmic symphony. Guided by intuition and synchronicity, I embarked on a journey of service, seeking to share the profound wisdom that I'd gleaned from my extraordinary encounters. Through writing, speaking, and engaging with others, I aimed to kindle the spark of curiosity within their hearts, to ignite a longing for a deeper understanding of our interconnected existence. The path was not without challenges. Skepticism met my revelations, as the unseen forces I spoke of clashed with the established beliefs of many. But I remained undeterred, for I knew that the truth I had uncovered transcended the confines of skepticism. The power of personal experience, the irrefutable connection forged between souls and the spirit realm, provided the foundation for my unwavering conviction. As the years unfolded, my journey of exploration continued, each encounter with the ethereal realm brought new insights, expanding my consciousness and deepening my connection to the divine. I witnessed the profound impact of these experiences on others, and they too began to question the boundaries of their understanding and explore the depths of their own personal potential. Looking back on that first visitation, 
I realized the profound lessons it had imparted. It taught me the importance of embracing the unknown, of trusting the unseen forces that guide our lives. It instilled in me the significance of sharing our experiences, for in doing so, we offer solace and affirmation to those who have encountered the extraordinary. And so, with a heart brimming with gratitude, I continue to journey forward, ever curious and open to the wondrous mysteries that lie beyond the realm of the tangible. I walk this path with the unwavering belief that there is so much more to discover, so much more to experience, so I traverse this intricate web that connects us all in the eternal dance of life and spirit. Story number one, White Shadows versus Black Shadows. In the midst of June, a time when the vibrant hues of summer painted the world with warmth and vitality, I embarked on a new chapter of my life by moving into a splendid apartment. Nestled within the heart of a bustling city, this abode was a relatively recent addition to the urban landscape, having been constructed in the year of 2018. The promise of modernity and comfort enticed me, as I eagerly embraced the prospect of a fresh start in this pristine dwelling. However, as days turned into weeks and weeks transformed into months, peculiar occurrences began to transpire, shrouding my once idyllic sanctuary in an enigmatic veil of mystique. It all commenced with the fleeting glimpses of a spectral phenomenon, a white mist or an ethereal cloud of thick smoke, ever so fleeting, appearing as the periphery of my vision. Intrigued yet perturbed, I found myself compelled to unravel the enigma that permeated my newfound dwelling. Allow me to paint a vivid picture of the layout within my apartment, for it is crucial to comprehend the peculiar nature of these apparitions. As I recline upon my plush couch, engaged in moments of respite and reflection, my gaze naturally wanders towards the left, encompassing both the kitchen and the front hallway. It is precisely within these domains that the curious spectacle unfurls itself. Whenever my eyes unwittingly catch a glimpse of the smoky haze, it tends to manifest its ethereal presence either above the pristine expanse of the kitchen sink or directly before the majestic front door. Now, I must confess that my encounters with the supernatural realm have been varied, as I have often come face to face with the enigmatic silhouette of a dark shadow. However, such manifestations have been relegated to the distant corners of my memory, confined to dwellings far removed from the confines of this particular apartment. Consequently, the arrival of these otherworldly wisps, resembling plumes of smoke, evoked an overwhelming curiosity that demanded answers. I yearned to discern the fundamental distinctions between these specters, pondering their inherent meanings and the nature of their manifestation in a seemingly innocuous form akin to smoke. At first, I attributed these spectral visitations to the whims of my own perception, dismissing them as mere figments of an overactive imagination. Yet my skepticism was shattered when just 20 minutes prior to the present moment, I once again bore witness to the ethereal phenomenon. Determined to unravel the truth, I turned to my beloved fiancé, a trusted confidant who shared the sanctity of this dwelling with me. Casting aside any trepidation that had held me back prior, I inquired if they, too, had been privy to the elusive smoke that seemed to dance within our apartment's realm. Their response was both shocking and intriguing. My fiancé, with a subtle mix of surprise and intrigue dancing within her eyes, revealed that they too had glimpsed the swirling tendrils of the spectral smoke. However, they had remained silent, failing to utter a single word regarding this ethereal occurrence. In fact, it appeared that the bathroom was the chosen domain for these manifestations, as my beloved partner divulged that they had been born to witness the enigmatic smoke on several occasions during their tenure within this shared space. This revelation ignited within me a fervor for discovery as I combined experiences, elevated the mysterious nature of our apartment to an even higher plane. 
Together we embarked on a journey to understand the inexplicable, fervently scouring the annals of history and consulting the wisdom of various esoteric sources in an effort to unlock the secrets concealed within these spectral apparitions. As we delve deeper into our research, a fascinating theory emerged. These ethereal wisps of smoke might indeed be a manifestation of spiritual energy, lingering remnants of the unseen realm interwoven with our physical existence. We came to realize that such apparitions, be they black shadows or ethereal smoke, were not merely random or coincidental occurrences. Rather, they carried profound significances, often serving as conduits for communication from the spiritual realm. Armed with this, we began to pay closer attention to the subtle nuances surrounding these enigmatic visitations. We meticulously documented every sighting, noting the time, location, and any peculiar circumstances that accompanied each encounter. Over time, patterns emerged, weaving a tapestry of symbolism and meaning that offered glimpses into the unseen dimensions intertwining with our own. Through our tireless efforts and countless conversations, we discovered that the appearance of the smoky haze over the sink in the kitchen often coincided with moments of introspection and contemplation. It seemed to serve as a gentle reminder to nourish our souls and tend to the depths of our being, urging us to embrace the spiritual aspects of our existence amidst the daily tumult of life. Conversely, when the spectral smoke materialized before the front door, it signified the imminent arrival of new opportunities and ventures, beckoning us to seize the moment and step bravely into uncharted territories. The apparitions in the bathroom, observed by my fiancé, carried a sense of cleansing and renewal, encouraging personal growth and the shedding of old habits or stagnant energies. As we immersed ourselves in this otherworldly exploration, our bond as a couple grew stronger. Together, we navigated the ethereal currents of our apartment, armed with a newfound reverence for the unseen forces that subtly influenced our lives. We embraced the unknown, finding solace and fascination in the mysteries that unfolded within the walls of our humble abode. In the end, our journey through the realms of the supernatural within our apartment became a testament to the boundless wonders that lie just beyond the threshold of our understanding taught us to embrace the beauty of uncertainty, to revel in the enigmatic dance of shadows and smoke, and to cherish the unity that transcends the veil between the seen and unseen. And so, my dear listener, I invite you to embark on our own voyage of discovery. Open your eyes to the subtleties that surround you, for within the ordinary lies the extraordinary, and within the mundane resides the magical. May you find courage to explore the realms beyond, to seek answers in the whispers of smoke and dances of shadows, and to uncover the profound meaning that dwells within the unseen corners of your existence. My Mother's Experience with My Ill Grandmother Recently, my grandmother, who was my mom's mother, passed away around two weeks ago. It was an incredibly difficult time for both my family and my mother. She was the last remaining grandparent I had, as my other grandparents had passed away years ago. Adding to the heartache, in April of 2021, I experienced the loss of two uncles within the span of five weeks. Both of them were my mother's brothers, and while one death was anticipated, the other came as a sudden shock. These past few years have been undeniably rough for my poor mother. Although she's slowly healing, I'm certain the pain still lingers. Last night, she came over to my house and shared her experience of traveling back home to the funeral. She had to fly overseas for that. She spoke of the comfort she found in being surrounded by her family, cherishing moments of laughter and tears together. Remarkably, she arrived home just a day before my grandmother passed away, allowing her to see her one more time. During our conversation, my mother recounted some intriguing incidents that occurred while she was back home with my grandma. The first noteworthy event happened after my grandma was admitted to the hospital. She had been taken there prior to my mom's arrival. 
Mom mentioned that while the family was visiting her, my grandma, who was 97 years old at the time and mostly blind, expressed that she could see her late husband, my grandpa, and my two deceased uncles standing in the room waiting for her. Bewildered, my mom, aunts, and uncles questioned her claims, assuring her that no one was present. I've heard stories of individuals seeking their loved ones right before passing away, so this account fascinated me. Not long after, my grandmother peacefully passed away, and the funeral was held. It was a significant affair with nearly the entire town attending. Funerals carry immense importance in her hometown. Understandably, my mom was devastated, though the loss had been anticipated. That night, she had a dream in which she found herself surrounded by deceased cousins and family members, as well as some who were still living. In the dream, my mom looked at her departed relatives and questioned their presence. To her surprise, one of her cousins replied, We're just waiting for your mom. Moreover, this cousin handed over two boxes of sweets, one for her and one for her sister, apologizing for their loss. Mom woke up after this encounter, feeling a mixture of emotions. The following day, my mom visited my grandma's house and sort of threw her belongings alongside my aunt. Visitors and well-wishers flocking to pay their respects, filling the house with constant streams of people. At one point, the cousin found her dream appeared in person. He brought along two boxes of sweets, giving one to my mom and one to my aunt, leaving my mom completely astounded. She shared the details of her dream with him, and they all laughed and discussed the uncanny coincidence. The sheer resemblance between the dream and reality left my mom reeling in shock. Inquisitive as I am, I asked my mom, who's 56 years old, what she made of the grandma's vision of deceased relatives and the dream that she had. In response, she said, I truly don't know, but it must be something positive. I wholeheartedly agreed with her sentiment. From my perspective, there's something undeniably comforting about the notion that upon passing away, we may reunite with our loved ones. It feels as though they eagerly are, await our arrival, welcoming us home. Such experiences reinforce my belief that there must be something greater, something more profound awaiting us beyond this earthly life. I'm certain of it because these extraordinary occurrences witnessed by my mother and shared with me provide a glimpse into the realm beyond our mortal existence. They offer a glimmer of hope that there's an afterlife where our souls find solace and reunite with those who have departed before us. The fact that my grandmother, who is mostly blind, claimed to come see her late husband and my uncles moments before her passing raises profound questions about the nature of perception and consciousness. It suggests that there's a deeper connection that transcends our physical senses, allowing us to perceive the presence of our loved ones even when logic and reason may suggest otherwise. Furthermore, the synchronicity between my mother's dream and the subsequent real-life encounter with her cousin and the gift of sweets cannot be easily dismissed as mere coincidence. It's as if the veil between the physical and the spiritual realms momentarily lifted, offering my mom a glimpse of the interconnectedness between the two. These experiences resonate with a universal longing within us, a desire to believe that death is not the end, but a transition into a realm where love and connection endure. It gives us hope that our relationships, which hold deep significance in our lives, continue to thrive in a dimension beyond our comprehension. While these events may remain inexplicable within the boundaries of our current understanding, they ignite a spark of curiosity and wonder, urging us to explore the mysteries that lie beyond the tangible world. They remind us that our journey does not conclude with the final breath, but stretches far beyond, encompassing a vast tapestry of existence yet to be unveiled. In times of grief and loss, these stories provide a glimmer of light, a balm for our sorrowful hearts. They remind us that the bonds we forge in this lifetime transcend the limitations of time and space, and that love in its purest form endures eternally. As I reflect on my grandmother's passing, my uncle's departures, and the comforting signs experienced by my mother, I'm filled with a profound sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the lives that they lived, 
the memories we shared, and the knowledge that they continue to watch over us from a realm beyond our grasp. In the face of life's trials and tribulations, it's these glimpses into the unknown that anchor us, inspiring resilience and reaffirming our faith in a greater purpose. They offer solace to those who mourn, reminding us that the love we hold for our departed transcend the boundaries of life and death. As I continue to navigate the intricacies of existence, I carry with me the belief that there's something more awaiting us, a realm where love reigns supreme and reunions are eternal. And though the intricacies of that realm may elude our understanding, I embrace the certainty that our journey extends far beyond the confines of this earthly realm. Story number six, it's happening again. Here I am again, experiencing the same eerie phenomenon that unfolded a decade ago. Back then, I was romantically involved with a man who happened to possess an expansive 300-acre ranch, complete with a flourishing herd of cattle. It was during one of our rustic escapades that this inexplicable series of events began to unravel. On a moonlit night, we found ourselves on the ranch, engrossed in a charming country-style date. Picture blankets strewn across the grass, a delightful picnic spread, and a tranquil atmosphere. The clock struck midnight, and suddenly we heard distant drumming reverberating through the stillness of the night. At first we assumed it was merely the booming bass of a passing vehicle or nearby highway, equipped with an outrageous sound system. But our assumptions crumbled as blood-curdling screams pierced the air, sending shivers down our spines. Despite growing increasingly unnerved, our curiosity urged us to uncover the source of these haunting sounds. We rose from our cozy spot, hastily climbed into the truck, and the moment the engine roared to life, the drumming and screaming ceased abruptly. Determined to investigate, we embarked on a cautious patrol, scrutinizing every nook and cranny of the vast land. Strangely, nothing seemed amiss. The surveillance cameras displayed no sinister imagery, only footage of the peaceful bovine residents and the peculiar donkey named Dipshit. Yes, that was his actual name. The gates securing all entrances remained locked, and there was no sign of any disturbed earth, as if no vehicles had ventured there. Perplexed, we reluctantly retreated, leaving behind our unanswered questions. A few days later, as we carried out the routine task of feeding and counting the cattle, a disquieting revelation unfolded before our eyes. A cow and her newborn calf were inexplicably missing from their designated location. Determined to locate the mother and child, we hopped onto a utility vehicle and we embarked on a thorough search. Beginning from the western pasture, we traversed the sprawling expanse, making our way towards the eastern reaches. As we neared the eastern pasture, a region harboring treacherous sinkholes and a couple of cave entrances, a strange sensation washed over us. The once familiar sounds of nature had surrendered to an unnerving silence, akin to standing alone in a vacant church for an empty school building. A sense of suffocating oppressiveness permeated the air, as if an unseen multitude of eyes bore into our very souls. Furthermore, an unusual odor wafted through, a peculiar amalgamation of hospital-like cleanliness and an overwhelming presence of ozone. It was a scent that defied its rural surroundings. Compelled by the mixture of curiosity and apprehension, we abandoned the vehicle, clutching our weapons tightly and ventured into the dense thicket. The ground beneath our feet felt damp, evidence of recent rainfall. Curiously, only a single set of hoof prints marred the earth's surface, indicating that the missing cow had indeed passed his way. Or, sorry, the missing cow indeed passed this way. However, there was an unsettling absence. The tracks of her newborn calf were conspicuously absent, Determined to unveil the truth, we pressed on further into the wilderness. And then we stumbled upon her. It was a cow, number 68, cruelly robbed of her tongue, 
Her udders and reproductive organs had vanished, leaving behind wounds that appeared seared shut, devoid of blood, scent, or any sign of decomposition. The absence of insects and scavengers, typically drawn to such gruesome scenes, amplified the haunting nature of this discovery. Utter disbelief and horror washed over me, causing me to be utterly bewildered. What the fuck? Meanwhile, my ex-partner, his face a mask of resignation, muttered the unsettling phrase, Not again. According to him, a decade prior to this macabre encounter, a similar incident had unfolded on this very ranch. Another cow, in the throes of calving, has been found dead, her newborn calf nowhere to be found. The authorities had been notified, yet no meaningful action had been taken. This revelation sent chills down my spine as the gravity of the situation began to sink in. We marked the location of the disfigured cow, then hastened towards the front of the ranch to make an urgent call for our assistance. Our present whereabouts were nestled deep within the rear section of the pasture, a realm segmented by multiple fenced-off areas two of which had been rendered inaccessible due to the perilous presence of sinkholes, caves, and an abundance of overgrown brush. As we approached the second fenced-off region, approximately 150 acres away from the site of our gruesome discovery, a distant sound reached my ears. A faint, desperate cry, unmistakably belonging to the missing calf. Without a moment's hesitation, I disregarded any sense of personal safety, swiftly maneuvered under the barbed wire barrier and scooped up the defenseless creature in my arms. We had found her, the precious offspring that we had thought lost to the dark forces haunting this ranch. Cradling the calf against my chest, we returned home triumphantly, albeit an undercurrent of trepidation being present. It was then, in a feeble attempt to cloak our unease with humor, that I jokingly remarked that in another ten years the time would come for yet another sacrificial episode. Now a decade has passed since that fateful incident, and my ex-partner and I have long since parted ways. However, a recent article unexpectedly resurfaced, rekindling the suppressed memories of those haunting days. The article chronicled similar cattle deaths, bearing an uncanny resemblance to the ones that we had encountered all those years ago. The same geographical area served as a backdrop for this new wave of terror. Compelled by an insatiable curiosity and a lingering sense of responsibility, I find myself driven to investigate this sinister pattern further. Yet, an undeniable fear gnaws at the recesses of my mind, warning me of the potential dangers as I may encounter in the pursuit of truth. Nevertheless, armed with determination and a readiness to confront whatever awaits me, I steel myself for the harrowing journey that lies ahead. Story number 11. Sounds of stuff falling, but nothing fell. Today, as I sat comfortably in the cozy confines of my living room, engrossed in the captivating world of television, my tranquil existence was abruptly shattered by a cacophonous crash that reverberated through the air. It resembled the sound of a potted plant meeting an untimely demise, its fragile structure shattering against the unyielding floor. A perplexing occurrence indeed, for I am devoid of any furry companions within the confines of my humble abode. Compelled by curiosity, I swiftly arose from my seat and embarked upon a quest to unravel the enigma that had disrupted my momentary repose. My eager eyes turned toward the kitchen, the sole sanctuary of the three cherished potted plants that graced the interior of my dwelling. However, to my utmost bewilderment, none of these verdant specimens had succumbed to the clutches of gravity. They stood proudly, unperturbed and undisturbed, as if mocking my feeble attempts to comprehend the source of the commotion. Unfazed but undeniably perturbed, I reluctantly dismissed the incident as mere figments of my imagination, opting to return to the comforts of my suspended disbelief within the realm of television. Alas, my respite was fleeting for the eerie symphony of cascading objects once again pierced the tranquility of my home. This time, the sonorous tones resonated with a weightier quality, as if a myriad of substantial entities descended upon the earth with an unseen force. Intrigued and filled with a resolute determination, I embarked upon a meticulous exploration of my domicile, traversing its every nook and cranny in search of elusive answers. 
Alas, my pursuit proved fruitless, as no fallen objects or misplaced possessions met my vigilant gaze. The impeccable order of my surroundings mocked my disconcerted state of mind, amplifying the enigmatic nature of the situation. Just as I resigned myself to the inexplicable nature of these peculiar events, my attention was ensnared by an astonishing spectacle. In an act of defying the laws of physics, my own toothbrush, suspended meticulously upon its designated holder, flung itself toward the cold, unyielding floor. I stood transfixed, astounded by the sight that unfolded before my disbelieving eyes. The holder remained steadfast, unaffected by the inexplicable descent of the innocent toothbrush. It was as though an invisible hand, had, with an impish sense of mischief, had purposely liberated the toothbrush from its appointed abode. Summoning every ounce of composure within me, I gingerly retrieved the wayward toothbrush from its undignified resting place, diligently cleansing it from any signs of its unexpected journey. Once it was restored to its rightful position, I dared to exhale a sigh of relief, hoping to pacify the unrest that had beset my wary mind. Yet, fate had other plans, for as I emerged from the confines of my bathroom, prepared to traverse the family hallway, a disconcerting sound reverberated through the air. It was the unmistakable timber of a man's laughter, echoing from the recesses behind me. My heart skipped a beat, for the sole male inhabitant of this dwelling, my stepfather, was diligently toiling away at his occupation far removed from the sanctuary of our shared domicile. The haunting laughter, haunting in its familiarity yet disorienting in its ethereal manifestation, had taunted my senses on previous occasions. The perplexity of the situation became even more pronounced, amplifying the unease that had gradually permeated the very fabric of my being. I was alone, enveloped in solitude, with no semblance of another presence in this sacred space. There were no conceivable hiding places, no crevices or secret chambers that could conceal the phantom source of their haunting laughter. My mind raced with a myriad of possibilities, each more far-fetched than the last, as I struggled to reconcile the inexplicable within the realm of rationality. A chilling sensation crept up my spine its icy tendrils spreading throughout my body as I contemplated the implications of this unsettling encounter. Was I being visited by a spectral presence, an ethereal entity existing beyond the boundaries of our mortal realm? Or was there an elaborate ruse at play, carefully orchestrated to instill a sense of disquiet within the confines of my sanctuary? Reluctant to succumb to fear's paralyzing grasp, I summoned the remnants of my courage and embarked on a thorough investigation of every inch of my dwelling. I scoured the deepest recesses of my closet, probed beneath furniture, and peered into the darkest corners, desperately seeking any signs of an intruder or hidden interloper. Yet my meticulous search yielded no answers, no tangible evidence to support my growing suspicions. The walls remained steadfast, the windows sealed shut, and the doors firmly locked. It was as if my dwelling had become an impenetrable fortress, impervious to both the physical and the ethereal. As daylight waned, the shadows lengthened, I found myself immersed in a disquieting solitude. Every creak, every whisper of the wind sent shivers down my spine, so I grappled with the profound uncertainty that had seized hold of my senses. The inexplicable events had shaken the very foundation of my reality, leaving me adrift in a sea of unanswered questions. Nightfall descended, casting its cloak of darkness upon the world, further exacerbating my growing unease. Each passing minute felt like an eternity as I sat vigilantly in my living room, alert to the slightest disturbance. The ambiance of the house seemed to shift as if it had become a sentient being, taunting me with its enigmatic presence. Then, if drawn by an invisible force, my gaze fixated upon a framed photograph on the mantelpiece. It depicted a happy family, capturing a moment of pure bliss. The figures smiled warmly, their eyes brimming with joy and love. Among them, my stepfather stood tall, his infectious laughter frozen in time. It was his laughter that I had heard echoing through the halls of my dwelling. A surge of realization washed over me like a wave crashing upon the shore. The laughter was not that of an otherworldly apparition, but rather a lingering echo of the love and happiness that once permeated these walls. The memories imprinted within these cherished spaces had become imprinted upon the very essence of the house itself a poignant reminder of a bygone era. And so, 
I settled back into my embrace of my living room. The laughter of generations past mingled harmoniously with the faint hum of the television, creating a symphony of both the tangible and the intangible. In that moment, I found solace in the inexplicable, and a renewed appreciation for the immeasurable depth and complexity of the human experience. A Haunted Road Between Two Pueblos Story number two The story I'm about to share is one that I've been passed down through my family for generations. A tale that combines an eerie encounter to my father, my cousin, and my mother, all taking place on the same haunted stretch of road connecting neighboring pueblos in Mexico. These incidents occurred many years apart, yet they share a common thread of unexplained phenomena and a lingering sense of unease. Let me begin with my father's experience, a tale that still sends chills down my spine. In his younger days, my dad had a deep love for horses, jarapios, rodeos, and indulging in a few drinks. While he has long since abandoned the bottle, his affection for horses and jarapios remains steadfast. In those days, he would occasionally ride his trusted steed across the road to the neighboring Pueblo, either to socialize or attend lively parties. On fateful early mornings, after reveling in festive gathering, my dad found himself heading home on horseback, the gentle rhythm of hooves marking the stillness of the night. A slight intoxication accompanied him, his thoughts drifting aimlessly. Yet something within the air shifted, a subtle change that gripped his senses and cast an eerie pall over the road. It was as if the whole world held its breath, anticipating an otherworldly presence. My father firmly believed that a horse's ears could reveal its focus, and in this instance, his horse's ears stood stiff and alert, fixed upon an unseen point beside them and the surroundings that sprawled before them. Aware of his loyal companion's unease, my dad scanned the fields, searching for any sign of an elusive predator. Yet, to his bewilderment, the landscape remained devoid of life, lacking even a single bush for a creature to hide behind. Suddenly, a chilling gust pursed the air, pierced the air, and a shiver crawled up my dad's spine, his neck tingling with goosebumps. It felt as if an unseen presence lurked just inches away, ready to unleash its ghostly grip. Sensing the imminent danger, his horse overwhelmed by fear bolted forward, desperate to escape the invisible clutches of the unknown. My father clung onto the reins, desperately attempting to regain control, but the horse was resolute in its quest for distancing itself from whatever malevolent force they were encountering. Finally, as they reached the safety of their pueblo, a horse gradually calmed. Its panicked strides slowed to a halt. Never before or since had he, the horse, displayed such unbridled terror, leaving my father shaken to his core. Needless to say, he arrived home sober, the haunting encounter etched into his memory for eternity. Years later, my cousin, a few years senior, would experience his own unsettling encounter on the very same road. One fateful night, he found himself behind the wheel of my uncle's pickup truck, its worn seats and rustic charm enveloping him. Although the purpose of his journey remains a mystery, it led him along the infamous stretch of road. As he drove, bathed in the tranquility of the night, an unanticipated presence settled into the vehicle. The truck, an older model with a single bench-style seat for both driver and passenger, suddenly betrayed my cousin's expectations. He felt the passenger side of the seat sink beneath an invisible weight, as if an otherworldly figure had chosen that moment to occupy the vacant space beside him. Paralyzed by fear, my cousin trembled, his body drenched in cold sweat and tears streaming down his face convinced that this encounter would be his final chapter. In that moment of intense terror, he resisted the urge to turn and face the enigmatic presence, fearing that the sight of it might unleash unspeakable horrors. The ethereal being seemed palpable, 
a dark silhouette haunting his peripheral vision. Mile after mile, panic and sobs engulfed my cousin, until, merciful, until mercifully the border of the neighboring Pueblo emerged, and the spectral entity gradually dissipated, leaving him physically unscathed but emotionally scarred. Lastly, we arrive at the most recent encounter, one that involved both my cousin and my mother, and unfolded only a couple of years ago. During my mother's visit to Mexico to reconnect with our extended family, the time came for her to return home, and my aunt requested my cousin's assistance in driving her to the airport. Thus, they embarked on their journey, traversing the same notorious patch of road. As they cruised along, their thoughts filled with memories of the visit and anticipation to return home, their attention was unexpectedly drawn to a hitchhiker standing on the roadside. The sight alone was peculiar, for hitchhikers were a rarity along that desolate stretch, particularly in the early morning hours before the sun had even emerged from its slumber. In a light-hearted manner, my cousin jokingly suggested picking up the mysterious figure. Nervous laughter filled the car as they dismissed the idea and continued on their way. Yet, the atmosphere grew heavy with unease when a short while later, a haunting whistle pierced the silence seemingly originating from the desolate fields that stretched out before them. Goosebumps prickled their skin, and a newfound sense of trepidation filled their hearts. Could it be that the hitchhiker, or whatever entity he represented, was trailing behind them? An air of unease permeated the vehicle as they pressed on, their eyes darting nervously between the road and the surrounding darkness. As they finally approached the neighboring Pueblo, relief washing over them, but their respite was short-lived. Just outside the entrance, they spotted the hitchhiker, seemingly materializing from the shadows, his presence a haunting reminder of the inexplicable events that had unfolded on that haunted road. These stories, woven together by the threads of fear, uncertainty, and the supernatural, serve as a testament to the lingering presence that haunts that desolate stretch. Whether it be the distress of my father's horse, the ghostly passenger alongside my cousin, or the hitchhiker that defied reason. The road stands as a testament to the unknown, forever etching these eerie encounters into the fabric of our family's history. Story number three. A true paranormal jinn experience. Allow me to share a captivating story that's resonated with me over the years. Although I did not personally experience this tale, it was recounted to me by a dear family friend. This individual happens to be Muslim, and within the Islamic faith, there exists a belief in supernatural entities, some of which are considered benevolent, while others are regarded as malevolent. You may have encountered a similar topic while watching the popular TV show Supernatural. Now, as I should be focusing on my studies, I find myself unable to resist pondering this intriguing story and I believe it's worth recounting to you. So sit back and enjoy the following narrative that has remained etched into my memory. It all commenced in the year 2012 when my family friend's two children were in their tender years. Let's refer to the mother as Sally, her elder daughter as Emma, and her youngest son as Zach. They resided in a quaint English cottage, and up until then, Nothing out of the ordinary had ever occurred within their cozy abode. The house had no dark history to speak of, so when peculiar events unfolded, it was truly startling. Sally's husband often traveled abroad for business, leaving his wife and children behind. It was not the first time Sally and the kids found themselves in such a situation. They had managed perfectly fine during the previous trips. However, on this particular occasion... Something inexplicable transpired. While engaged in her usual household chores, Sally stumbled upon some loose change. Initially, she thought nothing of it, as misplacing a few coins is not particularly uncommon. However, soon Emma and Zack both began discovering loose change everywhere, which excited them greatly as they could use it to indulge in sweets and chocolates. Oddly enough, they soon stumbled upon more substantial sums of money, such as $50 and $20 notes. Sally knew that she hadn't left that kind of money lying around, 
which raised her concern. In a bid to address the situation, she contacted her husband, but he vehemently denied any involvement. Feeling a sense of unease, Sally decided to collect all the money and dispose of it. Convinced that something was amiss, after this incident, the appearance of mysterious money ceased, and thus, she dismissed it from her mind. However, a few days later, even more perplexing occurrences began to unfold. For instance, while Sally was engrossed in her prayers downstairs, her two children would be attending school. Upon concluding her prayers and descending the stairs, Sally would invariably find the prayer mat unfolded and placed in a different position. She began questioning her sanity, as this inexplicable event repeated itself multiple times. Another incident involved Emma, who was engrossed in playing video games, only to find her game missing upon her return from fetching something. Initially suspecting her mischievous brother, she soon realized he was fast asleep upstairs. Such inexplicable phenomena continued to manifest around the house. Then one fateful night at the stroke of 2 a.m., Sally awoke to an alarming sight. A short black figure stood beside her bed, slowly clapping and wearing an eerie smile. Overwhelmed by terror, Sally let out a blood-curdling scream, causing the figure to vanish into the darkness. Seeking solace, she rushed to her children's room, ensuring their safety. The following day, she wasted no time in reaching out to Ayman, prominent figure in the mosque who holds a position of leadership and knowledge within the Islamic community there. Sally recounted her harrowing experience, explaining the ongoing encounters with the supernatural. Ayman, well versed in such matters, suggested that Sally recite a specific surah, a verse from the Quran, in the presence of the entity if she ever came face to face with it again. Following the Ayman's advice, Sally decided that she and her children would spend the night together in the living room, creating a mini sleepover experience. Yet, the eerie encounters persisted. Once more, Sally found herself awakened in the dead of night, only to be confronted by the enigmatic figure. Urging her children to recite the designated Sora, she was taken aback when they were inexplicably unable to utter a single word. It was as though an unseen force had robbed them of their ability to speak. The mysterious figure continued to clap and smile, but eventually vanished into the murky darkness. Overwhelmed by these unnerving events, Sally confided in her husband and Imond, revealing the full extent of the encounters. Her husband, deeply concerned, made an arrangement to return home, determined to support his family in navigating this disturbing situation. Meanwhile, the Iman paid a visit to the house assuring Sally that a potent entity was indeed present, but emphasizing that there was no cause for alarm. Seeking solace and a fresh start, Sally made the decision to relocate, believing that a change of scenery would free them from these disconcerting manifestations. After moving out, the family never experienced anything remotely similar, but Sally was left scarred by the experience, developing severe anxiety and an aversion to being alone at home. Now, years have passed, and Sally's children have grown into young adults. Though they were too young to recall the events that transpired, Emma, the elder of the two, does remain vague memories of paranormal occurrences within the house. However, she chooses not to delve into those memories, preferring to leave them behind as she finds the recollection unsettling. In conclusion, this tale serves as a poignant reminder of the inexplicable phenomenon that can occur in our lives leaving lasting impressions, and shaping our perception of the world around us. It underscores the importance of seeking solace and guidance when faced with the unknown, and the power of faith and spirituality in overcoming the most daunting of challenges. May we find comfort and strength in the face of the unexplained, for it is through these experiences that we truly come to appreciate the mysteries that lie beyond the veil of our understanding. Lamp Ghost Over the past month or two, I've been experiencing a peculiar occurrence every single night. 
somewhere between the hours of 9.30 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. It revolves around my trusty lamp, which happens to possess a nifty little switch on its base. Whenever I flick this switch, whether to illuminate or darken the room, a distinctively loud click resonates throughout the space. However, here's the baffling part. Every night within the aforementioned time window, my lamp emits this click sound without actually turning on or off. Now, before I delve further into this enigma, let me provide you with some context. You see, my lamp is not an ordinary inanimate object. It has become an unwitting accomplice in the strange happenings within my abode. Its unique click has become a harbinger of something beyond the realm of rationality. I'm convinced that there is an otherworldly presence lurking within the confines of my living space. Initially, I dismissed the recurring click as a mere product of my overactive imagination. However, as nights wore on and the click persisted, I could no longer deny its existence. It was as if this eerie sound was beckoning me to unravel the mysteries that lay hidden in the shadows of the night. To ensure the authenticity of this phenomenon, I conducted several experiments. I meticulously observed the lamp, waiting for the click to manifest, and lo and behold, it happened consistently, without fail, every single night. The fact that it occurred only once during the course of the evening ruled out any external source of sound interference. This solitary click was an enigmatic symphony that played out exclusively for my ears. Curiosity gnawing at my every thought, I began to question the origins of this ghostly auditory message. Could it be a benevolent spirit reaching out from beyond the veil of the unknown to guide me on a mystical journey? Or is it merely a mischievous phantom delighting in its ability to taunt and perplex me? I couldn't say for certain. Nevertheless, I already had a brush with the supernatural in the past, solidifying my belief in the existence of otherworldly entities. Yes, dear reader, I have crossed paths with a specter before. I have felt their ethereal presence and even caught a glimpse of their spectral form. The memory of that encounter lingers vividly in my mind, fueling my fascination with the paranormal. Now, as I ponder the significance of this nightly click, Another puzzling factor enters into the equation, my feline companions. My cats, these mysterious creatures with eyes that seem to hold the wisdom of the universe, exhibit peculiar behavior in the presence of this enigmatic click. Without fail, they fixate their gaze upon the wall or the ceiling adjacent to my lamp, their unblinking eyes mirroring a profound awareness of something beyond human comprehension. Are they able to perceive what eludes my mortal senses? Do they possess an innate connection to the ethereal realm that I, a mere mortal, lack? In my attempts to decipher the meaning behind this supernatural symphony, I have developed a personal interpretation of this click. Silly as it may sound, I perceive it as a gentle nudge from the ghostly inhabitant of my home, urging me to retire from the night and succumb to the embrace of sleep. It's almost as if this spectral presence, in its own enigmatic way, cares for my well-being and seeks to guide me toward a state of restfulness. So, dear reader, as I prepare to embark on yet another night veiled in mystery, I shall embrace the click as a curious reminder of the enigmatic forces that weave their ethereal threads through the fabric of my existence. It serves as a constant reminder that our reality is not limited to the tangible and the rational. There are realms beyond our comprehension where spirits roam and secrets whisper in the wind. While some may dismiss this phenomenon as figments of an overactive imagination, I find solace in embracing the inexplicable. Each night as the clock approaches the bewitching hour, I anticipate the familiar click with a mix of trepidation and excitement. It has become a ritual, a communion between the mortal and the ethereal. I sit in the dimly lit room, my senses heightened, waiting for that moment when the invisible veil between worlds momentarily lifts. In those fleeting seconds when the click resounds through the silence, I can almost feel a shift in the air. It's as if the boundaries that confine our perceptions blur, and the presence of the supernatural becomes palpable. Shadows dance on the walls, and the flickering light from the lamp takes on a spectral quality, casting eerie shapes and forms. During these ethereal encounters, I've ventured into the depths of my own psyche, 
searching for answers that lie beyond the realm of logic. I have engaged in introspection, contemplating the nature of existence and the interconnectedness of all things. In the stillness of those nights, I felt a profound connection to something greater than myself, a vast tapestry of consciousness that stretches far beyond the limitations of our mortal coil. As I delve deeper into this enigmatic realm, I cannot help but wonder if the ghostly presence behind the click is the same spirit I encountered before. Is it a familiar face from the other side, reaching out to me once more? Or are there multiple entities, each with its own story to tell and its own purpose to fulfill? The presence of my cats adds another layer of intrigue to this mystifying narrative. Their unwavering gaze and their seemingly heightened perception hint at a deeper understanding of the supernatural forces at play. Perhaps they are guardians, sentinels of the spirit world, entrusted with the task of guiding and protecting me on this journey of discovery. In the depths of the night, as the click reverberates through my being, I am filled with a sense of wonder and awe. It's a reminder that there's so much more to this world than meets the eye, a reminder to approach life with an open mind and an open heart. The click is a gentle prod, urging me to embrace the mysteries that lie beyond the boundaries of what we perceive as reality. So as the clock strikes and the lamp emits its enigmatic click, I welcome the unknown. I invite the spirits to reveal their secrets and guide me through the labyrinth of the supernatural. With each click, I'm reminded that life is a tapestry woven with both the seen and the unseen. And it is in this exploration of the unseen that we truly uncover the depths of our own existence. Story number seven, my mother's past life. Growing up, I had always heard my mother recount a haunting tale from her childhood, a recurring nightmare that plagued her young mind. It was a vivid dream set in a bygone era, presumably the 1930s, where she found herself working as a dedicated social worker. In this dream, she was assigned to visit an orphanage, her heart burdened with the responsibility of ensuring the welfare of the children residing there. As the dream unfolded, my mother would ascend a seemingly endless staircase, surpassing the second floor and making her way up into the expansive attic. Just before entering, an exquisite stained glass window adorned the top of the stairs, captivating her gaze. Entering the attic, she was met with a disheartening sight, a multitude of frail, malnourished orphans lying on cots. Their desperate pleas for help echoing through the dimly lit space Overwhelmed with compassion, my mother hastily scribbled notes on the deplorable living conditions, assuring the children that they would be aided and their escape would be imminent. However, the nightmare took a sinister turn as the stern figure of the orphanage owner materialized at the top of the stairs. Filled with malevolence, she menacingly warned my mother against reporting the appalling state of the institution threatening dire consequences. My mother, unyielding in her determination to expose the truth and advocate for the helpless children, refused to be silenced. Defiantly, she proclaimed her intentions to report the orphanage's conditions, vowing to bring an end to the suffering. Yet, before she could make her exit, the malevolent owner unleashed a torrent of vitriol. Hurling insults at my mother and pushing her mercilessly down the stairs, with that final act of aggression, the dream came to an abrupt end, and my mother would jolt awake, her heart racing, drenched in cold sweat. The haunting dream plagued her throughout her childhood, gradually fading away as she got older. Fast forward to my mother's early twenties, a time when she had just entered marital bliss with my father. During a visit to our friend Mary's newly purchased house, my mother's eerie encounter with the past would be reignited. Mary, also a recent bride, excitedly invited my parents over for a housewarming celebration in the historic downtown area of our city. From the moment my mother set foot inside that house, an inexplicable unease settled upon her. As Mary led my parents on a tour, climbing the stairs and exploring each room, my mother's disquietude began, began to intensify. The disconcerting familiarity reached its climax when Mary guided them towards the top floor. 
With each step, my mother's heart plummeted, as if gripped by an otherworldly force, and there it was, at the top of the stairs, the exact stained glass window that had haunted her nightmares throughout her childhood. As Mary entered the attic, unveiling the hidden corners of the room, my mother's distress spiled, spiraled into a full-blown anxiety attack. Through trembling lips, many revealed that the house had once been dilapidated, its tragic history etched into the very fabric of the place. It was also an orphanage. The cot, still untouched after decades, lay nestled in the corner of the attic, a chilling reminder of the suffering endured within those walls. Overwhelmed, my mother felt her breath grow shallow as she urgently communicated her need for fresh air to my concerned father. Seeking solace outside, she reached for a cigarette she habitually tucked behind her ear, a relic of her past smoking days. Shaken and trembling, she began her descent down the stairs, with my father closely following behind, his perplexed expression reflecting the bewilderment that gripped his soul. And then in a moment fraught with unintended insensitivity, my father uttered words that shattered the fragile equilibrium my mother was trying to regain. I don't like when you have a cigarette behind your ear. It makes you look like a pig. Those seemingly innocuous words struck a nerve, an emotional blow that rendered my mother utterly vulnerable. Disoriented by the sudden emotional onslaught, she stumbled, losing her footing and cascading down the remaining steps with a resounding crash. My father's face contorted with regret and remorse as he realized the weight of his ill-timed comment. It was as if fate had conspired to recreate the climactic scene from her childhood nightmare, the moment of being pushed down the stairs by a malevolent force. Frantically, my mother made it outside her mind reeling with panic as she relayed the tale of her recurring nightmare to my bewildered father. He, overcome with guilt, offered his sincerest apologies, unable to comprehend why his words had mirrored the nightmare's haunting. Needless to say, my parents never set foot in that house again. Although they remained friends with Mary, the unwitting owner of the place where the past and present collided, a sinister dance. It would be nearly a decade later that the threads of fate wove another tragic chapter into the tale. Mary's marriage dissolved and her ex-husband, consumed with despair, chose to end his own life within the very walls that had held the echoes of the countless tormented souls. To this day, my mother firmly maintains that the house harbored a malevolent energy, an unseen force that transcended time and space, connecting her nightmares to the present reality. She believes that her childhood dream was a glimpse into a past life, a memory of her own demise within the confines of that ill-fated orphanage. As I have grown older, I have come to embrace my mother's belief in the existence of past lives and the lingering impact of negative energies. The inexplicable convergence of her recurring nightmares and the tragic events that unfolded within Mary's house can no longer be dismissed as mere coincidence. They serve as a chilling reminder of the unseen forces that shape our lives, connecting us to the vast tapestry of existence that stretches far beyond our limited perceptions. In the end, my mother's tale stands testament to the enduring power of the human spirit and its ability to transcend the boundaries of time and space. It serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us to heed the signs and listen to the whispers of the past, for within those whispers lie the secrets of our own souls, and so I carry this story with me, a fragment of a haunting past, forever intertwined with the threads of my own existence. I saw someone in a window when I was a child. This extraordinary incident took place during my blissful childhood, when the world was a boundless playground of endless possibilities. Ah, how I long for those carefree days. If memory serves me right, I must have been a sprightly little urchin of about seven or eight years old, overflowing with youthful curiosity and an unquenchable energy. The backdrop of this peculiar tale is set amidst a scorching summer when my family and I sought refuge in our idyllic vacation home. Nestled in the heart of tranquility, it was the epitome of serenity. Adjacent to our humble house lived our amiable neighbors, whose son happened to be my closest comrade in the realm of adventure and make-believe. On a fateful day, 
the sun radiated its golden rays upon us, coaxing our playful spirits to engage in a spirited game of ball. The verdant front yard became our hollowed battleground, echoing with our joyous laughter and the rhythmic thud of a bouncing sphere. Oh, those halicon days of innocence. As fate would have it, our exuberance propelled the ball to an uncharted territory, the mysterious depths of the house's rear. Brimming with determination and an insatiable thirst for retrieval, my dear friend and I embarked on a mission to reclaim our beloved plaything. It was of utmost importance to elucidate that the house harbored only the two of us and my friend's wise grandmother, while his parents and older sister had ventured out, presumably in pursuit of mundane tasks such as shopping. Navigating the labyrinth corridors of the abode, we arrived at a forsaken domain, where forgotten relics and ancient tools lay dormant. The atmosphere was heavy with the weight of time, and a sense of intrigue mingled with trepidation began to envelop my being. It was in this eerie place that the extraordinary unfolded, etching its indelible mark upon my tender psyche. In a serendipitous instant, as if orchestrated by the whims of destiny itself, I cast a furtive glance toward a solitary window. From this vantage point, a mere glimpse of the house's interior was unveiled, an ephemeral vista into the enigmatic realm beyond. It appeared to be a visage of a kitchen, or perhaps one of the ethereal bedrooms that adorned the dwelling. To my astonishment and abject horror, I beheld a sight that defied the laws of reason, and challenged the very fabric of my youthful understanding. The delicate curtains, swayed by an imperceptible force, granted me a fleeting glimpse of the face, a face unlike any I had ever encountered. Its eyes, dear reader, were stark white orbs devoid of color, innocence, and warmth. A specter of the ethereal beauty, its gaze met mine for the briefest of moments before vanishing into the abyss of the unknown. Petrified, I stood rooted in the spot, grappling with the incomprehensible. Naturally, my instincts were to dismiss this uncanny occurrence as a figment of an overactive imagination. After all, I was but a mere child, susceptible to flights of fancy and whimsical illusion. With an ardent desire to regain my youthful verve, my playmate and I resumed our quest for the elusive ball, letting the tendrils of that otherworldly encounter dissipate into the recesses of our consciousness. Minutes turned to hours, and eventually, our fervent search bore fruit. The ball, once lost amidst the labyrinth of memories, was safely ensconced within our grasp. Triumph surged through our veins, rekindling the flame of youthful jubilation that only innocent victories can bestow. In the afterglow of our success, a curious thought seized my mind, a simple query born out of the nagging curiosity. Turning to my companion with wide-eyed wonder, I inquired about the whereabouts of his sisters. In my fleeting moment of introspection, I had been seized by a peculiar notion, an inkling that the ethereal apparition I had glimpsed could be none other than his sibling, frolicking within the confines of her bedroom. But alas, my conjecture was swiftly dispelled by my dear friend who reminded me that his sister, along with her parents, had departed for greener pastures, leaving behind a void within the home, a void that echoed with silence and solitude. Now, dear reader, I beseech you to accompany me on this journey through the corridors of time. Twenty-two years have passed since that mystical encounter, and yet its memory lingers within the chambers of my consciousness. Resurfacing from the depths of my reminiscence on the occasion, the significance of that fleeting moment remains shrouded in an impenetrable mist, evading my attempts to unravel its enigma. I have pondered upon the peculiarities of that day, revisiting every minute detail etched into the tapestry of my recollections. It is with conviction that I declare the visage I beheld was not that of my friend's sister or any other known acquaintance, nor could it have been his venerable grandmother whose gentle demeanor and wise countenance had always bestowed upon her an air of undeniable authenticity. Nay, the spectral countenance that graced my vision was an enigma, a riddle 
that defied the boundaries of rationality and continues to elude my comprehension. So, dear reader, here I stand, traversing the realms of memory and time, my soul burdened by the weight of that inexplicable encounter. The passage of years has not diminished its hold upon me, nor has it dulled the curiosity that resides deep within my heart. The incident serves as a constant reminder, a reminder that our world is a vast tapestry, interwoven with the threads of the extraordinary, waiting to be unraveled by the intrepid souls who dare to venture beyond the veil of the mundane. Mayhaps, in the realm of the ethereal, there exist answers to the questions that plague my mind, and so the chapter of my life unfolds, imbued with the ceaseless yearning to comprehend the unfathomable, to seek solace in the knowledge that there are mysteries yet to be unraveled, and the human spirit, no matter how frail, is destined to wander the labyrinth corridors of the inexplicable, forever in pursuit of truth. Story number two. Is my house haunted, or am I just paranoid? I must admit, I've been feeling quite unsettled lately. You see, I might be the type of person who tends to be a bit paranoid and overthink things. It's just who I am, and I can't seem to help it. But lately I can't shake the feeling that there's something wrong with my house. I know it sounds crazy considering it was constructed only a few years ago. In fact, our previous house was in the exact same spot, but we decided to tear it down and rebuild it. After the construction was completed, our grandparents and uncle's family moved into the home while my family and I lived elsewhere. It was only recently that we added another floor and we moved into the first floor about two months ago. Ever since then, I had this nagging suspicion that something isn't right. Let me recount some of the instances that have contributed to this feeling. Mind you, these aren't terrifying horror stories. They're simply a compilation of experiences that have occurred in my house, which may not sound scary at all. Even before the first floor was constructed, the house only had one ground floor. My father had an eerie encounter, though. He was alone in the house when he heard a sound resembling an ankle bracelet. It was as if someone was wearing one and walking around the rooms, particularly the room designated for prayer. Now my father is a sensible and unwavering man, not easily spooked. After checking the room, he found no one there. Now let me share an incident that happened to me. This occurred while the construction on the first floor was still underway and we hadn't moved in yet. It was around 7 p.m. when my grandma thought she heard doors shutting on the first floor. She asked me to go and check, despite my fearful nature, and reluctantly I agreed and I made my way upstairs. The moment I stepped into the floor I heard a voice, a loud, quick breath, as if someone was right behind me. I assure you there was no one there. In a panic I rushed back downstairs, ensuring that all the doors were securely shut in case it was a burglar. Just yesterday, something unsettling occurred to my aunt. She was studying in the guest room, lying on the bed, when she suddenly felt as if someone tightly was holding onto her legs. Startled, she assumed it was our grandpa playing a prank, but when she turned, there was no one. Our grandma was fast asleep in a different room at the time. This incident took place on the ground floor, and additionally, my uncle occasionally feels as if someone is touching his feet or standing in front of him, observing him while he sleeps in the same room. Let me mention a few smaller occurrences as well. My father and I have heard things falling on the first floor, though we couldn't identify what fell or where it fell. We don't have any mice or insects, so that's not a plausible explanation. And this happened approximately two weeks ago. Last week, a peculiar incident involved a plate placed on a closed gas stove. I had set it there about 20 minutes prior, but when my mom checked on it, the plate was broken on all sides except for the center. Perhaps it was the temperature that caused it to crack, but it seemed unusual. A couple of days ago, I thought I heard someone knocking on my room's door twice around midnight. However, I attributed that to my paranoia coupled with the fact that I was playing Joji's music on a speaker. 
But today, something truly unnerving happened. I was using my laptop in one of the empty rooms. Our house is quite spacious. Recording something with my camera on, and out of nowhere, the door right in front of me slammed shut with a loud bang. Simultaneously, an opposite side of the floor was slowly closing. Facing the opposite direction, my mom tried to brush it off as the wind's doing. But how could the door shut in different directions if it was the wind? When I reviewed the recording on my laptop, I could see the genuine terror in my eyes. That moment made me question whether there might be something in this house. Of course, everything could merely be a series of coincidences with reasonable explanations, but the frequency of these occurrences feels too significant to dismiss. I'm terrified at night now. I've been experiencing frequent episodes of sleep paralysis and struggling with insomnia. The experiences are genuinely horrifying, and it doesn't take much to scare me. Adding to my concern is the fact that our neighboring house has a reputation for paranormal activity. In fact, our uncle and grandparents rented that particular house when our own was being rebuilt. Perhaps there's some connection between the two locations. It's been two months since my parents moved into this house, and I returned home after completing my exams about four weeks ago. However, for some reason I'm always on edge. It's as if I'm hypersensitive to everything around me, even when there's no apparent reason to be. Whenever I pass a room, I feel compelled to double-check and confirm that nothing's inside. Before settling into a room, I meticulously inspect every corner. And I swear, this isn't how I used to be. I used to be carefree, especially in our previous home. It was located in an old area of town, surrounded by lush greenery, low-density housing, trees, and ponds. Despite its rustic nature, I never felt uncomfortable there. On the contrary, our new home is in a bustling urban area filled with people, yet there's not a single moment of peace. Although my family is deeply religious, attributing everything to the work of God, I can't help but have genuine concerns. So you see, I'm caught in this web of unease, constantly questioning whether my house is haunted. The experiences I've recounted may seem insignificant on their own, but when viewed collectively, they paint a disconcerting picture. I'm desperately seeking answers, searching for logical explanations and hoping to find a way to put my mind at ease. Until then, I'll continue to navigate the halls of my house with trepidation, fearing what I might encounter around each corner. Story number 13. Can spirits attach to humans? When I was a child, one thing our parents would often stress was that we shouldn't play at night. According to them, that's when spirits and other supernatural beings would come out. They warned us that by playing at night, we might be inviting ourselves to be seen or interact with these entities. My wise grandma used to say that we never truly know their intentions toward us and that it's better not to take any chances. We were taught to respect their space, and in return, they would respect ours. But, as curious children, we always wanted to push the boundaries and scare ourselves. I remember summoning up a little bit of courage and venturing out to play at night a few times, just to test the waters and see if the stories were true. And then came that one last time. I still remember it vividly. As I set foot on the playground, a wave of uneasiness washed over me. I felt nauseous in certain parts of the playground, as if something unseen was following me. I tried to shake off the feeling, but it only grew worse. Eventually, I couldn't bear it any longer, so I left and confided in my cousin, telling them that I believed that we should heed the warnings and not play at night anymore. Fast forward a week later, and things were already starting to happen. I began seeing fleeting shadows at the corners of my eyes, feeling the unmistakable sensation of being watched even when no one was around. Certain items would mysteriously go missing, only to reappear in unexpected places. I knew deep down that it was a consequence of my previous reckless actions. I had messed up big time, and the repercussions were unfolding now before me. In those moments I recalled my grandma's words without knowing the true intentions of these supernatural beings. 
So I resisted the urge to overthink and panic. After all, the occurrences thus far seemed harmless. I didn't want to provoke whatever was responsible for them, but I also didn't want to hurt its feelings if it meant no harm. I know it sounds strange, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that there was more to this entity than met the eye. One night, my mom had some friends over for a hangout session. I had already retired to bed sharing a room with my sister. Normally she despised when I left the door open, but that night she didn't seem to mind. Our house layout consisted of a living room that led to a hallway with our bedrooms. My mom's room was located at the end of the hallway, meaning that you had to pass by my room before reaching hers. The laughter and gossip from my mom's friends filled the air, making it difficult to fall asleep. As I lay there, my eyes fixated on the hallway, ready to succumb to slumber. Just as I was about to drift off, I heard faint footsteps approaching from the hallway. Assuming it was my mom, who probably needed to use the restroom, I paid little attention. However, when I glanced towards the hallway, I was taken aback. It wasn't my mom. Instead, it was a little girl wearing a vibrant red dress, adorned with white boughs in her hair. She wasn't walking. She was skipping along the hallway, giggling with childlike innocence. Strangely, I didn't feel any fear or apprehension. I simply assumed that she was one of my mom's friend's children, playing a game. I waited for the moment, and then called out to her, jokingly warning her about the trouble she would get into for entering my mom's room without permission. Finally, I decided to investigate further, convinced that she was hiding somewhere. I entered my mom's room, scanning every corner, but there was no sign of the little girl. Perplexed, I ventured back into the living room asking the group of friends who had brought the child into my mom's room. To my surprise, they looked at me as if I'd lost my mind and insisted that none of them had brought any children with them. That's when it hit me, a realization that sent shivers down my spine. The little girl had vanished into thin air. I was scared, no doubt, but at the same time I felt a strange sense of relief. It seemed that the girl meant me no harm, but her presence still made me nervous. From that moment on, I started seeing her throughout my childhood. She seemed to have a penchant for hiding things, as if playing an eternal game of hide-and-seek with me. She would startle me by running past me and disappearing into one of the rooms, always giggling mischievously, as if she found immense joy in our interactions. Despite the initial fright she evoked... I couldn't help but appreciate the innocence and purity emanating from her presence. As the years went by, these encounters became less frequent. I grew older and moved on with my life. However, I still firmly believed that this little girl simply wanted to be seen, to assure me that she meant no harm. Perhaps she was a lonely spirit seeking companionship, or just a playful entity longing for connection. Whatever her true nature was... She left an indelible mark on my childhood memories. It wasn't until I moved in with my boyfriend's mom a few years later that I finally shared this hidden chapter of my life with someone. Little did I know that my now mother-in-law was also sensitive to supernatural phenomenon, just like me. One day out of the blue, she approached me with a look of uncertainty, cautiously admitting that she had witnessed a little girl following me around the house on several occasions. She described how the girl would hide yet desperately wanted me to acknowledge her presence. As she revealed this, I was rendered speechless. The fact that someone else had also seen her confirmed the validity of my experiences. Strangely enough, after that conversation, I stopped seeing the little girl. It was as if she understood that I had moved on, that I was no longer interested in playing our childhood game. To this day, I ponder the true nature of that little girl, and the unspoken connection that we shared. Perhaps she was a guardian spirit, watching over me during my vulnerable years. Or maybe she was a figment of my imagination, brought to life by a child's curiosity and longing for adventure. Regardless of the truth, her presence left me with a profound sense of wonder and a belief that there is something much more to this world than what meets the eye. And though she's faded from my life, I will forever cherish the memories of our encounter and the innocent joy that she brought into my world. Story number four. This might be dumb, 
but I'm unnaturally attached to a doll I've had for about seven years. About seven years ago, or perhaps even longer, forgive me my memory and sense of time, tend to be quite unreliable. An extraordinary event took place in my life. I was bestowed with a remarkable gift, a stuffed doll of Link, the iconic hero from the Legend of Zelda video game. Now, I must confess I've never been one to develop strong emotional attachments to inanimate objects like dolls or toys. Admittedly, there were a few cherished possessions to which I am somewhat attached, but nothing quite compares to the bond I formed with this particular doll. At the time, my family and I resided in a double-wide trailer situated on our very own property. Financially, we were relatively comfortable back then, a situation that unfortunately changed since. Nevertheless, I digress. The property upon which the humble abode stood held a haunting history. A former house had once occupied the land before succumbing to the devastation of fire, claiming the lives of several unfortunate family members. It was whispered among the locals that the property may be haunted, and as it turns out, both my mother and I had experienced inexplicable phenomenon that could only be ascribed to the paranormal. When I first received the Link doll, I cannot say that I harbored any profound attachment towards it. It was undeniably thrilled to possess a doll representing one of my beloved you know, video game franchise members, but beyond that initial excitement, my sentiments were rather lukewarm. However, as time elapsed, an extraordinary metamorphosis transpired within me, and my connection with the doll grew increasingly potent. On occasion, I wouldn't inadvertently leave it in my room while attending school, only to return and find that my diligent mother had tidied up the space. Strangely, she held an aversion towards the doll, recounting instances where she would be engrossed in cleaning only to momentarily step away, and upon her return, discover the doll had inexplicably shifted its position, despite her being the sole occupant of the room. Even my sister-in-law, during her occasional visits, attested to similar inexplicable occurrences. Gradually, the doll became an inseparable companion to me, accompanying me wherever I ventured. Unbeknownst to me, I would instinctively clutch it whenever leaving the house, and this ritual endured for an extended duration, during which the doll seemed to emanate an aura beyond inanimacy. Whenever it was near, an uncanny sensation of being observed enveloped me, although far from pleasant. It was as though a benevolent presence, hovering in its proximity, safeguarding and witnessing my every move. Approximately four years ago, our circumstances forced us to relocate to a diminutive one-bedroom apartment, a space compared to the size of the average kitchen within a modest home. It was within this cramped house that the doll inexplicably vanished from my possession, defying all logic in the process. Given the spatial constraints, I scoured every nook and cranny in search of my beloved companion, yet it eluded my desperate pursuit. Then, a mere two days ago, a miraculous event unfolded. My mother approached me, triumphantly presenting the long last doll that she had discovered beneath my bed. This revelation left me dumbfounded, as I frequently rummaged beneath my bed in search of items such as journals or even my cherished Pokemon cards. It may strike you as odd considering my age of 24, but I still derive immense pleasure from indulging the nostalgia of Pokemon and the like. The sheer relief and unbridled joy that overwhelmed me upon the being reunited with the doll were utterly disproportionate to the emotions I'd ever experienced toward any other possession in my life, be they expensive electronics or treasured childhood toys. There was something inherently special about this doll, something that transcended the realm of material value. Its reappearance into my life brought about an immense sense of solace and contentment that I'd never felt before. It was around a year ago when I finally secured my first stable job, an achievement that I'd proved, or rather an achievement that had proved elusive due to the challenges posed by my mental disabilities. The timing of the doll's return couldn't have been more fortuitous, as I promptly reintegrated it into my daily routine, carrying it with me wherever I went, including my workplace. Fortunately, I was blessed with the understanding and support of co-workers and a compassionate boss who were well aware of the significance this doll held in my life. I had shared with them the tale of its disappearance in my ongoing search. 
and they had accompanied me on this emotional roller coaster in the process. Oddly enough, despite the passage of two years, each day brought with it a flicker of hope that the doll would serendipitously reappear, and my thoughts often drifted back to it. In truth, I possess a myriad of stuffed animals and toys from my childhood, some of which I hold dear and I've cherished since infancy. However, the attachment I feel towards this particular doll defies all rationality. Since its return, that familiar sensation of being watched has resurfaced, but it is no longer disconcerting. On the contrary, it is a comforting presence, a reassurance that I'm never truly alone, even in the mundane moments of daily life. As I embark on my daily commute, the doll nestled securely in my embrace, I can't help but reflect upon the inexplicable nature of our bond. Its soft fabric, the touch of its felt hat, and the embroidered Triforce symbol on its tunic evoke a profound sense of nostalgia and companionship. It serves as a constant reminder of the enduring magic that can be found within the simplest of objects. So, with this beloved doll by my side, I traverse the realms of both the mundane and the extraordinary, secure in the knowledge that I am not alone. Together we embark on one countless adventure, bridging the gap between reality and imagination, reminding me that sometimes the most extraordinary experiences can be found in the simplest of companions. Story number eight, Scary Ouija Board Experience. On my 14th birthday, which was a few years ago since I'm now 17, I've had a memorable gathering with some close friends. We had an absolute blast devouring junk food and being glued to the television, binge watching movies. However, after a good three or four films, we were eager to switch things up and embark on a new adventure. Luckily, I had purchased a Ouija board just a few months earlier, and I was itching to give it a try. It's worth noting that I was the sole bearer of knowledge about how it operated, and its supposed mystical abilities. Gathered in a circle, each of us placed a finger on the planchette, forming a group of around six people. It took about five or ten minutes to explain the mechanics of the Ouija board, and what they could come to expect. I patiently fielded numerous inquiries from my friends, clarifying any confusion and doubts, and ensuring that we were adequately prepared for the session. Our first question to the spirits was a simple one. Is anyone here with us? Unfortunately, the initial moments yielded no response, leaving us growing increasingly impatient. Determined, we posed the question once more. Surprisingly, after approximately two minutes, we noticed the planchette slowly gliding toward the yes marker. At that point... Everyone couldn't help but mock the situation, convinced that one of us was manipulating the board, assuming it was all a prank due to the lack of supernatural occurrences. Seeking further interaction, we decided to inquire, What's your name? Expecting a fabricated and humorous response since someone would have had to invent a name on the spot, we were unprepared for the answer that sent shivers down our spine. Rawl, R-A-U-L. Even now, recalling the name sends chills. Intrigued, we delve deeper, asking the age of the spiritual entity. To our astonishment, the Ouija board spelled out 25. We were captivated by this peculiar interaction and decided to dig further. Asking about Rawl's cause of death, with suspense building, the planchette formed the words, Car Crash. The atmosphere grew tense and a sense of unease crept over us prompting a collective decision to halt the session. It was as if the situation had become uncomfortably real, surpassing the boundaries of a mere parlor game. Strangely, even without posing any additional questions, the planchette began moving on its own accord. We stood there frozen, anxiously awaiting the message to spell out, and it happened. Jackie. Feeling sufficiently spooked, we unanimously agreed that it was time to cease our ghostly encounters. We bid farewell to the lingering spirit and promptly packed the Ouija board away, ensuring that it wouldn't disturb us any longer. Later that night, approximately an hour after my friends had departed, I found myself alone. A message appeared on my phone from one of my friends. Curiosity piqued, I opened the message, revealing a link to an online article. Below the link, she had written the foreboding words, 
you're not going to believe this. Intrigued and somewhat apprehensive, I clicked on the provided link and began reading the article. To my astonishment and terror, the piece detailed the tragic account of a male car crash victim named Rawl. Regrettably, I couldn't recall his last name, and my attempts to retrieve the article by scouring past conversations with my friend proved fruitless, as I had since changed my phone number. But what chilled me to the core was a crucial revelation further in the article. It mentioned that the individual driving the car at the time of the fatal accident was none other than Rawl's mother, Jackie. The synchronicity between the name revealed through the Ouija board and the real-life tragedy was uncanny and sent shivers down my spine. The eerie connection between the supernatural encounter and the actual events were just too real. Unable to shake off the unsettling experience, I continued to discuss it with my friends in the days that followed. We dissected every detail, trying to make sense of what occurred. Deep down, we couldn't help but entertain the possibility that one of us had manipulated the planchette, dismissing the idea of a genuine supernatural presence. However, the correlation between Rawl's name and his age and the circumstances of his mother's demise was too improbable to be dismissed as mere coincidence. As time passed, the memory of that chilling night remained etched in our minds. We shared our thoughts and theories, grappling with the inexplicable nature of the Ouija board session. Some of us delved into research trying to uncover any historical information about the tragic accident or any ties to paranormal phenomena. Others sought solace and skepticism, choosing to believe that our collective imagination and subconscious desires had fueled the responses on the board. Despite our attempts to rationalize the events, a lingering sense of mystery and intrigue prevailed. It became a story that would recount on late nights or around campfires, forever pondering the possibility of a genuine encounter with the spirit realm. The uncertainty and lingering doubts only fueled our fascination with the supernatural, pushing us to explore other avenues of the occult and the paranormal. Years later, as I reflected upon the fateful birthday gathering, the impact of that Ouija board session remains profound. It served as a catalyst for my interest in the unknown and the mysteries of the universe. Though skeptical at times, can't help but wonder if there are forces beyond our comprehension that brushed against us that night. The experience taught me to approach life with a sense of open-mindedness and curiosity, understanding that sometimes the inexplicable occurrences defy logical explanations. To this day, when the topic arises during conversations with my friends, we revisit that night, each sharing our own interpretation and memory. Though we may never know the absolute truth, the experience remains a haunting reminder of the mysteries that surround us, forever fueling our sense of wonder and sparking the flame of curiosity within each of us. Story number 10. I think my woods are haunted, and I don't know what to do. I remember vividly the day I moved into my new house, a cozy abode that became my sanctuary for the past two years. Nestled on a vast expanse of land spanning 14 and a half acres, the property boasted a decent size and offered a sense of tranquility. However, despite its inherent calm and charm, I couldn't deny the eerie aura that permeated the wooded area on the premises. It was as if an invisible force cast a shadow over that part of the property, leaving me with an overwhelming unease. Venturing into the park alone was something that I vehemently avoided. The mere thought of it sent shivers down my spine, evoking a deep-rooted fear within me. I realize this may sound childish, but trust me when I say there's a reason behind my trepidation. Within the depths of those woods stood a small, dilapidated structure, an abandoned cottage or shed of sorts, that held an inexplicable power over me. Every time I neared its vicinity, a wave of dizziness would wash over me, threatening to plunge me into unconsciousness. At first glance, the building appeared unremarkable, devoid of any peculiar features or signs of life. Yet, its presence alone instilled a profound sense of faintness in me, acting as an ominous beacon within the dense foliage. Months passed, and my determination to confront my fear grew stronger. I resolved to venture into the woods alone, 
to face whatever haunted my psyche and reclaim a sense of tranquility within my own property. With hesitant steps, I followed the trail leading to the enigmatic structure, determined to remain composed and not succumb to the disorienting spells that awaited me. As I approached the building, my heart raced within my chest, each beat echoing the adrenaline coursing through my veins. And then, I saw her. A woman, ethereal and otherworldly, circled the building with an eerie grace. She hummed haunting lullabies, her ethereal voice resonating through the trees, and called out for someone or something unseen. The sight of her sent a chill down my spine, her presence both captivating and terrifying. Standing tall at a height between 5'10 and 6 foot, her dark hair cascaded down to her hips, a stark contrast against her unnaturally pale skin. Draped in a flowery white dress that sort of brushed against her ankles, she clutched a children's toy in her delicate hand. Summoning the courage within me, I called out a hesitant, Hello? to the mysterious woman, her gaze locked onto mine, yet she remained silent, her melodic humming persisting, as she continued her haunting dance around the building. It was at that moment, perhaps fueled by curiosity or foolishness, that I made the fateful decision to step within the dreadful five to ten foot radius. As if sensing my intrusion, the woman abruptly lunged towards me, her movements swift and ethereal. Panic seized my heart and I fled for my life, sprinting through the undergrowth as if pursued by a vengeful spirit. I could feel her presence hauntingly close behind me, her desperate pursuit echoing through the silence of the woods. But as soon as I emerged from the oppressive tree line, I dared to glance back, only to find her vanished into thin air, leaving no trace of her haunting figure behind. From that moment on, I discovered that the enigmatic woman was not a constant presence in the woods. Sometimes she would manifest, appearing amidst the whispers of the wind, clutching a different children's toy in her delicate grasp. Each time, however, these toys held a haunting familiarity, an uncanny resemblance to cherished playthings from my childhood, a collection of memories tethered to my past. Among them I spotted a plush pig, a beloved companion since my earliest days, a fateful source of comfort in times of distress. Witnessing my treasured pig in her spectral possession sent shivers down my spine, evoking a chilling realization that this encounter was no mere coincidence. The implications of these sightings filled me with dread. What connection did this enigmatic woman have with the cherished toys of my youth? Was she a specter of my subconscious, manifesting to confront me with forgotten memories and fears? Or was there something more sinister at play, an ancient curse or a restless spirit trapped within the depths of the woods, longing to bridge the gap between our realms? The questions swirled within my mind, tormenting me with their elusive answers. As days turned into nights, I found myself torn between the desire to unravel the mysteries of the haunted woods and the fear that consumed me at the prospect of delving deeper into this ethereal realm. Though the woman's appearance remained sporadic, her ghostly presence forever etched into my consciousness, I knew that confronting the truth was inevitable. And so... The moon rose high in the midnight sky, casting an ethereal glow upon the land. I steeled myself for yet another encounter with the enigmatic woman and the secrets that lay shrouded within the haunted woods of my home. Armed with courage and curiosity, I vowed to unravel the enigma that bound me to this cursed property, to face the specter that haunted my every step. Little did I know, the journey that awaited me the labyrinth corridors of forgotten memories, the echoes of forgotten lullabies, and the spectral dance of a woman tethered to the past. It was a path that would test my resolve, challenge my perceptions, and force me to confront the demons lurking within the deepest recesses of my own soul. So with trepidation and a glimmer of hope, I ventured forth into the woods, ready to embrace the unknown and unravel the tangled web of my haunting existence.
Story number nine. Did my grandmother kill her grandson? Bizarre occurrences have always been an integral part of the tapestry woven by the maternal side of my family. It is within the depths of this enigmatic lineage that I've come to witness the inexplicable intermingling of the supernatural and the mundane. One particular summer, when the sun was at its zenith and the world was cloaked in the embrace of warmth, I found myself spending a fortnight with my beloved grandmother, whose advancing age had begun to take its toll on her once sharp mind. It was during this time that the peculiar nature of her family's heritage unfurled before me in the most unsettling manner. In an act of benevolence, my cousin Robbie had beseeched my grandmother for permission to park his recreational vehicle in the vicinity of her humble abode. Being a widow for the past four years, she had developed an unwavering sense of fear that had firmly rooted itself within her heart, especially when the sun would descend beneath the horizon, leaving behind a cloak of darkness. Robbie's offer was driven by his desire to assuage her worries and provide a sense of security. However, my grandmother perceived this act as an invasion of her personal space, failing to recognize the good will behind his intentions. The ensuing tension served only to exacerbate the apprehension, thereby weaving a web of discord within our family's dynamic. To compound the situation further, a curious delusion took hold of my grandmother's fragile psyche. An insidious whisper entered her ear, convincing her that Robbie was serend are surreptitiously siphoning off her precious electricity. In her mind's eye, she envisioned him connecting an extension cord from her property to the nearby pole, clandestinely stealing the energy that was fueling her existence. These unfounded accusations birthed a stream of murmured threats, which gradually transformed into a venomous word that she hurled at Robbie's mother, who also happened to be my aunt. The impact of these caustic tirades left behind a trail of wounded emotions for my grandmother had never known for her gentle tongue. Yet the sinister saga continued its malevolent dance, with my grandmother's ire finally fixating solely on my unfortunate cousin. Her vengeful cries grew louder, punctuated by a chilling declaration that reverberated within the depths of my cousin's soul. I'll get you, you little bastard! Alas, such words were not wholly unfamiliar in the context of our tumultuous family history, where the realm of reality and superstition had always flirted with each other, leaving us to question the boundaries of what lay beyond the veil of the scene. It wasn't long after these calamitous events transpired that my cousin's well-being began to falter. Though he possessed a robust constitution in his youthful years, numbering a mere thirty-four, an unexplained malaise seized him by the heartstrings. Chest pains like sinister whispers from the abyss invaded his body, sending shockwaves of distress through his veins. Concerned for his welfare, he sought solace within the confines of a doctor's chamber, eager to uncover the elusive source of his ailment. Yet, much to everyone's bewilderment, the results of the thorough medical examination yielded naught but a clean bill of health. Ever the proponent of a healthy lifestyle, my cousin engaged in daily walks as a means to maintain his physical vigor, particularly during the enchanting season of hunting, when nature's magnificence unfolded before him. Having recently welcomed a beautiful baby boy into the world, he had become acutely aware of the fragility of life, thereby developing a deep reverence for the delicate balance between existence and mortality. Thus, it was amidst this backdrop of paradoxical circumstances that I found myself visiting my mother one fateful day, only to be greeted by the somber arrival of the county sheriff at her doorstep. A shroud of sorrow descended upon her hearts as the sheriff conveyed the unfathomable news. Robbie, our cherished cousin, had been discovered lifeless in the depths of his beloved hunting grounds, succumbing to a sudden heart attack at the tender age of thirty-four. The cruel hand of fate had reached out and extinguished the flickering ember of his life, leaving us to grapple with the profound weight of grief and disbelief. However, the macabre tale didn't end there. In the aftermath of these tragic events, as we diligently sifted through the remnants of my grandmother's earthly existence, a startling discovery awaited us within the dimly lit recesses of her abode. 
nestled amidst forgotten trinkets and faded photographs, lay a voodoo doll, crafted with meticulous care, fashioned from Robbie's very own hair and adorned with a significant Carhartt garment. A patch in the shape of a heart, embroidered with loving precision, adorned the overalls that encased the doll's delicate form, while a single pin ominously driven through its center hinted at malevolent intent. The weight of this revelation pressed heavily upon our souls, and a collective decision was made to shield my aunt, Robbie's grieving mother, from the tormenting knowledge of this sinister artifact. For what good would it serve to awaken dormant demons within her heart, to burden her already shattered spirit with this realization that the forces beyond her comprehension had conspired to weave a tale of tragedy and despair? And so, this woeful chapter within the annals of our family's history drew to a close, its unsettling mysteries forever etched in the depths of our memories, the bizarre tapestry of our lives interwoven with the inexplicable events, had unfurled yet another enigmatic narrative, leaving us to contemplate the delicate dance between the realms of the seen and the unseen, the fragility of existence and the enduring power of ancestral forces that forever shape our destinies. Story number five. What was this? About 12 years ago, amidst the tranquility of the late night, my dear friend and I embarked on a leisurely stroll through the familiar streets of our neighborhood. The clock struck a remarkably unusual hour, hovering between the depths of two and three in the morning. The area itself, a product of the bustling developments that emerged in the resplendent 1980s, was our cherished house. It had welcomed both our families with open arms during the late 90s, and until this enigmatic encounter transpired, not a single peculiarity had dared to taint its ordinary facade. During that night when we were brimming with youthful exuberance at the tender age of 15 or 16, engrossed in deep conversation while savoring the nocturnal ambiance, an extraordinary occurrence disrupted our otherwise uneventful journey. As we rounded a corner and set foot onto a seemingly unremarkable street, the two of us came to a sudden and abrupt halt, our eyes ensnared by an inexplicable sight that materialized beneath the flickering glow of a lone streetlight. There, bathed in an ethereal halo, stood two enigmatic figures, shrouded in an obsidian veil that transcended the realm of mere shadows. Their forms unequivocally corporeal, lacked discernible features or defining characteristics, rendering them an enigma that defied comprehension. Standing side by side, their bodies positioned to face our bewildered countenances, their heads turned inwards, engrossed in an unfathomable dialogue that resonated with an unfathomable silence. An eerie stillness permeated the air, enveloping us in a stifling atmosphere that stifled even the faintest whisper. Time seemed to relinquish its grasp, elongating those precious moments of disbelief as my friend and I stood rooted to the spot, our gazes locked on the otherworldly pair. Although mere seconds might have transpired in the realm of our perception, it appeared as though the minutes themselves had stretched into an eternity. Then, as if scripted by some surreal performance, the dual entities pivoted their heads in perfect unison their inscrutable conversations momentarily abandoned. In an uncanny display of coordinated motion, they embarked upon an ethereal advance, gliding effortlessly over the ground toward our quivering forms. Their movement defied the conventional gait of walking, and instead it bore semblance to an otherworldly glide, accentuating their mystique and intensifying the shroud of ambiguity that enveloped them. Fear gripped our hearts with an iron grasp, propelling us into an instinctive flight. Our legs sprung into action fueled by an adrenaline-fueled surge as we sprinted back toward the sanctity of our humble house. Our lungs strained with each breath, our strides quickened by the unparalleled urgency as we sought refuge from the disconcerting anomaly that had infiltrated our serene existence. The relentless pounding of our feet against the pavement reverberated in the stillness, an echo of our mounting terror. 
Finally, as we managed to put a considerable distance between ourselves and the enigmatic duo, we reached the sanctuary of my home, our hearts pounding within our chests, desperate to unravel the perplexing riddle that had manifested before our very eyes. I turned to my companion, eager to share in the reassurance that we had witnessed the same inexplicable spectacle. With bated breath, he recounted the same harrowing encounter, mirroring every detail that had etched itself into my memory. The confirmation left us both stupefied, grappling with the bewildering reality of what we had just experienced. How could two individuals witness such an unfathomable event, an event that defied all logical explanation? In the aftermath of that surreal encounter, life resumed its mundane rhythm, as if our brush with the extraordinary had been naught but a feeling aberration in the tapestry of our existence. Time passed, and the grip of that enigmatic encounter began to loosen, relinquishing its hold on our consciousness. Never again did we encounter a phenomenon so inexplicable, leaving us to ponder the nature of the enigmatic figures that had momentarily intruded upon our lives. Their presence remained an unsolved enigma, a haunting question mark that perpetually lingered within the recesses of our minds, begging for an answer that eluded us. Today, as I reminisce upon that fateful night, the passage of time serving only to deepen the mystery that enshrouds our encounter, a relentless curiosity surges within me, a yearning to unearth the truth propels me forward, driven by an insatiable thirst for answers. I embark upon a quest, delving into the realms of folklore, mythology, and the occult, seeking fragments of knowledge that may shed light upon the inexplicable. Desperately, I sift through dusty tombs and traverse winding paths of arcane wisdom in search of a semblance of understanding that may quell the restless curiosity that still dwells within. But alas, the enigma remains elusive, defying the grasp of human comprehension. The riddle persists, suspended in the realm of the unexplained. And so, my journey continues, fueled by an unwavering determination to decipher the truth, to unravel the enigma that forever haunts my memory. For beneath the veneer of the mundane lies a world of endless wonders, where mysteries abound and truth lay concealed, awaiting discovery by those intrepid enough to delve into the depths of the unknown. And I... In my unwavering pursuit of answers shall remain resolute, my heart aflame with an insatiable curiosity that refuses to be extinguished. Story number seven, Strange Noise. Amidst the ongoing perplexities that have invaded my life, I found myself grappling with a myriad of challenges. As an owl, my nocturnal tendencies persistently keep me awake until the wee hours of night, diligently immersed in my arduous studies. However, in recent times, a disconcerting occurrence has disrupted the tranquility of my evenings, leaving me puzzled and slightly unnerved. At unpredictable intervals... I've become privy to a faint yet persistent sound, reminiscent of a stone churner grinding or an iron ball rolling. Its origin eludes me as it seemingly materializes out of thin air, enveloping my surroundings with an eerie ambiance. Curiosity and a tinge of trepidation often propels me to investigate the source, for I'm compelled to unravel the enigma that engulfs my abode. Adding to this enigmatic nature of these nocturnal disturbances, I occasionally hear faint calls from my beloved grandfather or my caring mother, beckoning me from their respective chambers. Alas, when I dutifully respond to their summons, eagerly entering their rooms, I'm greeted by naught but a serene visage of their slumber. The mysterious echoes of their voices dissipate into the ethereal realm, leaving me with a sense of bewilderment and a longing for answers. But the perplexities did not cease there. Oftentimes I'm startled by the sound of disembodied footsteps echoing through the hallways of our house, resonating with an otherworldly quality that sends shivers down my feathery spine. 
the very notion of spectral entities traversing the same space as I inhabit is enough to send a chill down my feathers. Driven by an insatiable curiosity, I decided to consult my wise father regarding these nocturnal disturbances. To my surprise, he confessed that he too had occasionally borne witness to the peculiar sounds that had been plaguing my nights. His admission only served to intensify my longing for clarity, for even he, the pillar of strength and rationality in our family, had succumbed to this auditory enigma. Then it was undeniably a matter worthy of serious consideration. Seeking solace and guidance, I approached my aunt, whose wisdom and life experiences have always offered a comforting embrace. Much to my astonishment, she revealed that she had encountered similar happenings during our own nocturnal sojourns. It was as if a veil of mystery had been lifted, connecting the disparate threads of our family's experiences stretching across time and generations. While the revelation didn't immediately bring forth an answer to the riddle that had consumed my nights, it did offer a glimmer of hope and a shared camaraderie in our collective search for understanding. We delved into family archives, unearthing fragments of tales from yesteryears that hinted at an ancestral connection to the supernatural. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, as we meticulously combed through dusty tomes and faded photographs, piecing together the fragments of our family's haunted past. We discovered that our ancestral home stood atop a land that held ancient secrets, Tales whispered among the villagers of apparitions and ethereal beings that roamed the very grounds we treaded upon. As we delved deeper into the annals of our lineage, a sense of both fear and fascination began to intertwine within our hearts. We unearthed stories of long-lost spirits seeking solace and resolution, their ethereal footsteps and phantom calls serving as a testament to their lingering presence in our lives. The nocturnal disturbances that had once haunted me now revealed themselves as the brides of restless souls, yearning to be heard and acknowledged. Armed with this newfound knowledge, my family embarked on a journey of reconciliation and compassion. We sought the guidance of spiritual leaders, engaging in ancient rituals to appease the wandering spirits that had inadvertently become intertwined with our lives. Through prayer, meditation, and acts of kindness, we hope to bridge the gap between the realms of the living and the departed, offering solace to the ethereal visitors that haunted our nights. The path we embarked upon was not without challenges and setbacks. Our resolve was tested, and doubts crept into our hearts, threatening to overshadow the flickering flames of hope. Yet we persevered, bolstered by our shared determination and the unwavering belief that compassion and understanding could transcend the boundaries of the seen and the unseen. Months turned into years, and gradually the nocturnal disturbances that had plagued our lives began to subside. The stone churner's grind and the rolling iron ball receded into distant memories, no longer punctuating the silence of our nights. The phantom calls of loved ones became faint echoes, replaced by serenity and undisturbed slumber. Though the mysterious occurrences may forever remain a part of our family's lore, they've taught us the power of empathy, compassion, and the unyielding spirit of familial unity. Our journey through the realms of the supernatural has forged an unbreakable bond, reminding us that even in the face of the unknown, Love and understanding can transcend the boundaries of the mortal realm. As I reflect upon the tumultuous odyssey that unfolded within the confines of our ancestral home, I am reminded that life's most profound mysteries often reside in the shadows, awaiting our courage to explore and illuminate them. And while the nocturnal disturbances may have dissipated, their legacy lives on within our hearts forever guiding us towards a deeper understanding of the unseen forces that shape our lives. Story number seven. No one else saw it but me. Black human-like figure. Last week on a Thursday afternoon, I found myself amidst a dismissing my... Uh, Afternoon, I found myself amidst 
of my dismissings, Kalila. Story number eight, hauntings in my apartment. I currently reside in a charming apartment nestled in the heart of Pennsylvania. The building has a rich history spanning over a century, and it possesses a rather unique neighbor, an ancient funeral home. For the majority of my time here, I've never encountered any peculiar occurrences until the past couple of weeks. Allow me to provide a bit of context. I'm a parent of a lovely child who splits her time between living with me and her mother. Now let me recount the series of events that unfolded during this unsettling period. One fateful evening as I lay in bed, drifting into a peaceful slumber, an unexpected sensation began to overwhelm me, the onset of sleep paralysis. It felt as though an invisible force was gradually seizing control over my limbs, rendering them stiff and immovable. Panic surged through my veins as I desperately sought any means to escape from this nightmarish state. By a stroke of luck, my hand instinctively reached for the nearby object within my reach, which happened to be my trusty phone. Summoning all of my willpower, I managed to break free from the clutches of sleep paralysis, feeling an immense sense of relief wash over me. Subsequently, I was able to rest peacefully for the remainder of the night. Approximately a week later, an incident occurred that shook me to my core. It was late at night and my daughter was soundly asleep in her room, which adjoins mine through a doorway conveniently positioned across from my bed. In the eerie stillness, my eyes fluttered open, only to be met with a spine-chilling sight. A childlike silhouette ominously lurking against the wall, adjacent to the entrance of my daughter's room. This enigmatic figure stood as pitch black, a pitch black mass, darker than the surrounding room, devoid of any discernible features such as a face, limbs, or hair. It appeared as though it were fixated on me, gazing intently from its shadowy stance. Though an overwhelming sense of fear washed over me, I made a conscious decision to ignore the presence, averting my gaze and forcing myself back into a restless slumber. Upon awakening a few hours later, to my immense relief, the apparition had vanished without a trace, as if it were nothing more than a figment of my imagination. Days passed and the weight of this haunting encounter continued to weigh upon my mind. In an unexpected twist of fate, my girlfriend and I found ourselves perusing the local flea market. As we leisurely wandered among the vendors and their wares, we happened upon a stall where a medium was engaged in conversations with the intrigued visitors. Driven by an overwhelming curiosity mingled with a growing concern, I decided to share my eerie experiences with the medium, hoping to gain some insight into the matter. The medium's countenance changed, a hint of worry etched upon her face, as she urged me to purify my living space by means of burning sage, a traditional practice known for its spiritual cleansing properties. Furthermore, she presented me with a small vial of holy oil, urging me to anoint the entrance of my apartment with it, as a protective barrier against malevolent spirits, apparently. Additionally, she advised applying a gentle dab of the oil onto my daughter's forehead in order to safeguard her from any potential harm. The following day, armed with sage and the holy oil, my girlfriend and I ventured into my apartment, determined to embark on this cleansing ritual. As I meticulously cleansed each room, my girlfriend stationed herself in the kitchen, situated near the front door, a location that would soon become the focal point of an inexplicable occurrence. In a truly chilling turn of events, both my girlfriend and I suddenly became acutely aware of a sharp, resounding slam emanating from the front door, echoing through the apartment. To our astonishment, my girlfriend witnessed the door forcefully shutting on its own accord, the sight sent shivers down our spines, leaving us momentarily frozen in disbelief. However, despite the initial shock, an unexpected tranquility seemed to settle upon the apartment thereafter. The once unsettling aura that pervaded the space dissipated, replaced by a newfound sense of serenity. It was as if the cleansing ritual had successfully banished the malevolent energies that had plagued us. Since that fateful day, the apartment has exuded a peacefulness I had longed for, and the ominous vibes have become a distant memory. Yet, even with this newfound tranquility, I have made up my mind to expedite my plans of relocating. However, it's important to note that my decision to move is not solely driven by the paranormal encounters I've experienced. 
Instead, it stems from a variety of unrelated reasons that have coincided with these unsettling events, leading me to seek a fresh start in a different environment. While the mysteries surrounding the old Pennsylvania apartment and its connection to the neighboring funeral home may forever remain unanswered, I cannot deny the profound impacts these experiences have had on my life. They have ignited a curiosity within me, compelling me to explore the realms beyond the ordinary, delving into the enigmatic world of the supernatural. I find solace in the knowledge that I have taken measures to protect myself and my daughter from any potential harm, knowing that the remnants of whatever presence loomed within those walls has been dispelled. As I prepare to embark on a new chapter in my life, I carry with me the lessons learned from this ethereal encounter. I have developed a newfound appreciation for the fragility of our reality and the vast unknown that lies just beyond the surface. The experience has instilled in me a deep respect for the unseen forces that intertwine with our daily lives, urging me to remain vigilant and open-minded to the extraordinary. Story number 13. Funeral Workers' Only Paranormal Experience for six long years, I've been immersed in the somber world of the funeral industry. Working within the corporate setting, my role revolves around a local care center that caters to eight distinctive funeral homes and two cremation societies. The sheer volume of bodies passing through our doors is staggering, averaging close to 4,000 a year. While I have dabbled in various aspects of the industry, such as embalming and directing, my primary experience lies in what they refer to as removal tech. Essentially, my duty entails venturing out into hospitals, facilities, and even private residences to retrieve the deceased, bringing them back to the care center for proper handling and storage. During my time in this profession, I've encountered countless stories and witnessed a full spectrum of human emotions surrounding death. Yet, amidst the countless encounters with the departed, there is one particular experience that continues to send shivers down my spine, even as I write this very account. Curiously enough, the incident occurred not once, but twice, leaving an indelible mark on my memory and leaving me pondering the mysteries of the afterlife. It all unfolded roughly a year after I embarked on this melancholic journey. On a typical workday, as I prepared to fulfill my night shift duties, I received a distressing call from a residential home nearby. The deceased was described as a woman in her late 50s, and the director who had initially taken the call had made a point of emphasizing the heightened sensitivity of the family during this difficult time. I promptly arrived at the residence and engaged in conversation with the grieving daughter and son. It became apparent that the woman had passed away in the back bedroom, tragically succumbing to fate. Adding to the complexity of the situation, her substantial weight, clocking in at around 320 pounds, had resulted in her body inadvertently obstructing the bedroom door. In order to retrieve her, the fire department had been forced to break the door down, unveiling a scene fraught with sorrow and despair. Assessing the logistical challenges posed by the narrow hallways and tight corners that plague our line of work, I regretfully informed the family that maneuvering the gurney into the bedroom was unfeasible. Instead, I proposed setting up the gurney in the living room and respectfully requested that the family step outside, allowing my partner and me to carry out the delicate task of transporting their loved one. Little did I know that this seemingly ordinary day would soon take an eerie turn. As we gently positioned the sheet beneath the lifeless body and carefully brought her into the living room, I established the gurney at the center of the space. Just above us, a chandelier hung, illuminating the room with a warm, comforting glow. With concerted effort, my partner and I lifted the deceased woman and tenderly placed her on the gurney. In that precise instant, a sudden darkness enveloped us as the light bulb above inexplicably flickered and extinguished itself, plunging us into unexpected abyss. In that moment, I found myself devoid of fear or trepidation, there were no ominous or malevolent sensations coursing through my being, rather an unexplainable sense of connection materializing between my partner and me as we exchanged bewildered glances. It was as though the departed woman from the realm beyond 
had chosen that precise moment to make her presence known, acknowledging her transition into the afterlife as we handled her mortal remains. It was a silent scream, a gentle whisper from the other side, affirming her acceptance of her own mortality. Upon returning to the care center, my partner and I logged the case, still grappling with the enigma that had unfolded before us. Our minds were plagued with questions, and yet we remained without any logical explanation for the inexplicable phenomenon that had occurred in the living room. A month later, while visiting some friends, I recounted the incident in vivid detail. As I regaled them with the story, seated outdoors enjoying a casual evening and partaking in refreshing beverages, I reached the pivotal moment in my narrative, the precise instant when the light had faded. In an impulsive gesture, I snapped my fingers, emphasizing the synchronicity of the light's demise with the placement of the deceased woman on the gurney. To our collective astonishment, as if guided by an unseen force, all the little plastic lawn lights that adorned the surroundings extinguished simultaneously with the snap of my fingers. It was an inexplicable occurrence that defied rational explanation, deepening the mystery of the initial encounter. Since that fateful day, I have shared the story with numerous individuals hoping to glean insights or perhaps encounter similar paranormal activity. Yet, to my disappointment, no further occurrences have transpired. Was it the lingering spirit of the deceased woman that remained intertwined with my life for that subsequent month? Or could it have been an entirely different entity, seizing a momentary opportunity to interact with our mortal realm? As I reflect upon my extensive experience, spanning the retrieval of thousands of bodies and the countless unsettling situations, this singular encounter remains an anomaly. It serves as a constant reminder of the boundless wonders that lie beyond our realm of understanding, prompting us to contemplate the existence of an ethereal plane intertwined with our own. Truly, the enigmatic nature of such encounters invites us to question the fabric of reality and embrace the unfathomable depths of what lies beyond our mortal existence. In a profession so intrinsically connected to mortality, it is through these inexplicable experiences that we catch a glimpse of the inexplicable, reminding us that there is much more to our world than meets the eye. Story number one, my first paranormal experience. That was until I had my first experience, and little did I know that it would mark the beginning of a series of extraordinary occurrences that would continue to unfold in my life. It all started when I was a mere eight or nine years old, spending my days at my grandparents' house, a place filled with cherished memories and a sense of comfort. Though my grandparents have long since departed from this world, their presence remains etched in my heart. At that time, my grandparents had a faithful canine companion named Buster, a lively rat terrier whose infectious energy brightened every corner of the house. I had formed a special bond with Buster, his wagging tail and playful antics never failing to bring joy to my young heart. However, as time passed, the inevitable toll of age caught up with our dear Buster, and he eventually passed away, leaving behind a void that seemed impossible to fill. It was in the wake of Buster's passing that I encountered an inexplicable phenomenon that would forever change my perception of the world. One evening while I was navigating the halls of my grandparents' house, I distinctly heard the unmistakable sound of paws treading on a hardwood floor. Intrigued, I searched for the source of the noise, only to find myself perplexed by the absence of any visible presence. I stood there puzzled my young mind unable to comprehend the enigma unfolding before me. As the enigmatic footsteps weren't enough to stir my curiosity, a jingling sound reverberated through the air, capturing my attention. My initial assumption was that my grandmother's van keys were responsible for the metallic melody, playfully dancing on a nearby countertop, perhaps. However, much to my astonishment, the keys were right where they should be, motionless on the kitchen counter. Confusion mingled with a sense of anticipation as I struggled to rationalize the inexplicable events unfolding within the walls of my grandparents' home. 
As the days went by, the ethereal sound grew more frequent, their proximity drawing closer to my own presence. And then, on one unforgettable day, I felt a gentle brush against my leg, as if something soft and warm had momentarily embraced me. Startled, I instinctively reached down, my hand extending to explore the intangible entity that had crossed my path. To my astonishment, my fingers met a texture that was both familiar and comforting, a sensation akin to caressing a velvety fur, such as my beloved pet. It was as if I was petting a dog, though no physical dog could be seen. Brimming with a mixture of excitement and trepidation, I rushed to share my bewildering encounter with my grandmother, fully aware of the skepticism that might greet my words. Yet, to my immense relief, my grandmother not only believed me, but also revealed that she, too, had been experiencing inexplicable phenomena within the confines of the house. The veil of doubt was lifted, replaced by a newfound sense of wonder and unity between us. Together, my grandmother and I embarked on a journey of exploration, trying to unravel the mysteries that enveloped our lives. We discovered that we were not alone in our experiences— other family members had encountered similar manifestations, validating the inexplicable occurrences that we had encountered. As time went on, our encounters with the unexplained took on new dimensions. We would catch glimpses of fleeting shadows dashing across the corners of our vision. Whispers too faint to discern of their origin would sometimes reach our ears, filling the air with an otherworldly presence. Objects would move seemingly of their own accord, defying the laws of physics. The presence of our departed loved ones lingered within those walls, reminding us, reminding us of the enduring bonds that transcend the boundaries of life and death. Our shared experiences with these ethereal phenomena opened our minds to the vastness of the unseen world. We delved into books, seeking answers within the realms of the paranormal, spirituality, and metaphysics. Our understanding grew, expanding our perception of reality and cementing our belief in the interconnectedness of all things. Years passed, and the inexplicable occurrences gradually subsided. The house that once served as a conduit for the spiritual realm returned to its peaceful stillness. And this left behind a legacy of wonder and introspection. Although the ethereal encounters have become fewer and far in between, the impact that they had on our lives remained indelible. Today, as I reflect upon those extraordinary years spent in my grandparents' home, I'm filled with gratitude for the unique experiences that shaped my understanding of the world, the profound bond I shared with Buster, the playful rat terrier who first opened the door to the supernatural, remains etched in my heart, and the validation and shared experiences with my grandmother fortified our connection and forever united us in the tapestry of the unexplained. While the skeptic may dismiss our encounters as mere flights of fancy or figments of an overactive imagination, I know the depths of my soul that are there is a realm beyond what our senses can perceive, a realm where the spirits of our loved ones continue to exist, their presence gently reminding us of the eternal nature of love. And so... I carry forth the memories of those extraordinary experiences, sharing the tale with eager listeners, knowing that someone out there, someone else might find solace in the knowledge that there are mysteries in this world that defy explanation, a reminder that even in the ordinary, there exists the extraordinary. There's something living in my woods. Living on our expensive 13-acre property, nestled in the outskirts of my state where the transition from the suburbs to rural farmland occurs, has been a unique experience. My parents residing in the main house near the road, and my beloved fiancé and I, who decided to transform one of the barns situated on the back half of the property into our cozy abode, have truly embraced this unconventional lifestyle. Surrounded by a picturesque landscape of a wide and clearing of the pasture, we found ourselves encircled by enchanting woods on three sides. The seclusion and tranquility offered by our idyllic setting 
ensured that her humble, our humble dwelling was not frequented by many visitors. Ever since we embarked on this venture almost a year ago, I've encountered inexplicable bouts of terror during my nocturnal ventures outdoors. As an individual accustomed to residing in the woodland environments for the entirety of my existence, having previously inhabited locations far more remote than our current, this situation was entirely foreign to me. Unusually, the woods have always felt like an extension of myself, a place that resonates as my woods wherever I have dwelled. However, within this particular realm, an unsettling notion continually gnawed at me, suggesting that I was an intruder trespassing on someone else's domain, an unwelcome presence. It was on one fateful evening, as I stepped outside with my loyal canine companion for his customary final stroll, that the eerie events reached their crescendo. The clock struck 11 p.m., shrouding the surroundings in an inky blackness beyond the meager illumination cast by the floodlights adorning the sides of our house. As I proceeded towards the fringe of the tree line, where my faithful pup habitually completed his nighttime rituals, a peculiar sound resonated through the air. It mimicked the distant hoot of an owl, emanating from the direction of the other barn. Positioned approximately 30 yards to our right, Instinctively, I believed it to be a clever ruse orchestrated by my father, endeavoring to startle me as he closed the barn for the night. Anxious to uncover the source of this charade, I involuntarily called out, Ha ha, funny, Dad. Regrettably, no response echoed in the darkness. Curiosity quickly gave way to a surge of trepidation when at that moment, my loyal companion ceased his exploratory sniffing raising his head abruptly. Fixated in the barn's direction, his hair bristled along his spine, while a low, menacing growl escaped his lips. It was an unprecedented display, for his canine harbored an unyielding fascination for all creatures and humans alike, considering each one a prospective friend waiting to be made. I had never witnessed him exude aggression towards any one or anything, not even in encounters with hostile canines. Moreover, my father held a special place in his heart, ranking as his most cherished individual. Thus, it became inconceivable that my dog's ire was directed at him. As my own body reacted to the harrowing atmosphere with every hair on my neck standing erect, a chilling wave of fear washed over me, striking with the force of a weighty brick. Positioned at the precipice where light surrendered to the unyielding grasp of darkness, my canine companion halted. Ordinarily, the gentle transition from light to shadow allowed for discernible outlines of trees and shrubs, enabling modest visibility. However, this time, an impenetrable barrier of obsidian greeted us, as if a solid wall materialized where light should have prevailed. Suddenly, the replication of the artificial owl call reverberated mere feet away, originating from the abyss concealed beyond the shroud of darkness. My loyal companion jumped, startled by the proximity of the sound, and immediately abrupted into a furious chorus of barks, positioning himself valiantly between me and the enigmatic noise. Fully aware of his petite stature, I instinctively lunged forward, scooping up scooping him up protectively, before embarking on a frenzied sprint toward the sanctuary of our dwelling. Retreating from that eerie scene, I discerned a distinct, a distinct alteration in the sound this time, a peculiar undulation resembling malicious laughter. With the dawn of a new day, curiosity propelled me toward the barn, eager to uncover evidence that might elucidate the enigma of the previous night. Upon arrival, a disconcerting sight greeted my eyes. The doors hung askew, partially unhinged from their sliding mechanisms, as if subjected to a forceful intrusion. Each door swung past each other, affixed in an incorrect orientation, as if an unknown entity attempted to pry them open in an unfamiliar manner. Surprisingly, the sea of sawdust and dirt surrounding the area betrayed with no signs of footprints or other signs of indicating the presence of an intruder. 
To this day, the inexplicable nature of that night continues to haunt my thoughts, the unanswered questions lingering. What entity of, or force lurked within the depths of those woods? Regrettably, this disconcerting incident prompted me to modify my nocturnal activities, confining our excursions exclusively within the protective embrace of the floodlights that grace our property. Story number 11. Hearing church bells randomly at night in the Ozark Mountains. It was around a year ago when my mom first told me about the peculiar incident that had left her feeling unnerved. She shared with me that she had heard the sound of church bells ringing late at night, somewhere between midnight and 1 a.m. What made it particularly eerie was the fact that it happened on a random weekday not a typical Wednesday when church services are commonly held in the southern parts of the United States where we reside. Living here for several years, my mom had never encountered the sound of church bells before, whether during the day or at night. It was truly an anomalous occurrence that left her puzzled. Fast forward to the present, and I find myself staying with my mom for a while. It was only about an hour ago when I stepped outside onto the porch for a smoke break, as I stood there enveloped in the tranquil night, I suddenly became aware of the faint sound of church bells chiming in the distance. The melodic peals echoed through the air for approximately 30 seconds before fading away. Intrigued, I remained on the porch for another five minutes, straining my ears in an attempt to catch a glimpse of those ethereal notes once again. Unfortunately, my efforts proved fruitless, and the silence prevailed. Glancing at my watch, I realized it was precisely 12.29 a.m., eliminating the possibility that these were mere echoes carried by the wind from a distant church. There was something more mysterious at play. Being unable to contain my curiosity, I promptly shared my recent encounter with my midnight church bells to my mom, who had woken up about 45 minutes prior, believe it or not. Her response was rather nonchalant as if she had come to expect such phenomena. She nodded, acknowledging my experience, and revealed that she too had heard the enigmatic bells on a few occasions. Much like my encounter, she explained that they typically occurred between the hours of midnight and 1 a.m. However, she remained equally perplexed, unable to discern the reason behind these unexpected serenades. Having spent my entire life in the southern regions, where the resonant sound of church bells are a familiar occurrence, I found it peculiar that I had never encountered them in this particular town. Even when church bells do ring, they typically serve a purpose. They mark the passage of time, herald of the commencement of a service, or accompany significant events like weddings or funerals. Yet, the intermittent chiming of these bells on random weekdays, somewhere between midnight and 1 a.m., in the tranquil retirement town where even the house colors are regulated by the homeowners association defied any logical explanation. Naturally, my curiosity led me to delve deeper into the matter. I began researching the significance and lore surrounding church bells, hoping to uncover some hidden clues that might shed light on this mysterious phenomenon. Could it be a part of some old age tradition or forgotten custom specific to the Ozark Mountains where our town was nestled? As I embarked on my quest for answers, I stumbled upon intriguing stories and fascinating legends associated with the enchanting tolling of church bells. Tales of ancient rituals, protective charms, and even supernatural occurrences captured my imagination. I discovered that in many cultures the ringing of church bells was believed to ward off evil spirits or announce the presence of a divine entity. They were said to possess the power to purify and cleanse the surroundings, infusing them with an air of sanctity and protection. Delving further, I unearthed tales of phantom church bells where their ethereal melodies would fill the night air, often without visible source. These spectral chimes were attributed to restless spirits trapped between realms, or mysterious energies permeating sacred grounds. Legends whispered of hidden churches, long forgotten, existing in realms beyond our perception, where spectral priests would offer midnight prayers. 
Could it be possible that our town concealed such a forgotten church, lost in the annals of time, its chimes echoing through the mountains during the witching hours? Or perhaps, as some local lore suggested, there existed a connection between the church bells and the mystical heritage of the Ozarks, intertwining the spiritual and natural realms in ways that we could not comprehend. The more I delved into the stories and mysteries surrounding the church bells, the more I realized that our encounter with the midnight serenades was far from isolated. Numerous accounts from other towns and communities in the region spoke of similar experiences, where church bells would resonate mysteriously in the depths of the night, defying conventional explanations. It seemed as though the phenomenon transcended time and space connecting people across generations in an enigmatic symphony of sound. As I pondered the implication of these findings, a sense of awe and wonder washed over me. The inexplicable ringing of church bells at irregular intervals began at midnight and 1 a.m. in our seemingly unremarkable retirement town, and this became a gateway to a world beyond our understanding. It was a reminder that mysteries and wonders still lingered, waiting to be discovered in the most unexpected of places. So, while I couldn't provide a definitive explanation for the midnight church bells that resonated through our town, I came to appreciate the beauty and intrigue that they brought into our lives. They served as a gentle reminder that there are realms yet unexplored, where the boundaries of the ordinary and extraordinary blur, and where the symphony of the unseen continues to play. Story number seven, Haunted Instruments. This incident that I'm about to recount took place an eternity ago, back in the distant year of 2006 when I was just a tender 16-year-old. Picture this. I found myself meandering through one of those vibrant markets that brimmed with an eclectic assortment of goods, ranging from exquisite handmade garments to delectable street food and even potted plants. It was a cornucopia of sights, sounds, and smells. Among the myriad of stalls that dotted the market, there was one that stood out to me, beckoning me with its peculiar allure. This particular stall showcased a mesmerizing collection of intricately carved African musical instruments and captivating gifts. It was an enchanting sight, especially considering the fact that such a stall was an unusual find in my hometown. Unable to resist the allure, I found myself irresistibly drawn towards it. My youthful curiosity got the better of me, and before I knew it, I had made two unique acquisitions from this enchanting stall. The first was a diminutive wooden contraption, which I affectionately dubbed the bird whistle. Its design was intricate, featuring a rod that one could blow into while simultaneously manipulating it up and down to produce an array of melodious, varying pitches. The second instrument was a small hand-painted object that bore a striking resemblance to an ocarina, evoking a sense of nostalgia and intrigue. Eager to explore the potential of my newfound treasures, I brought them home and spent the afternoon experimenting with their sounds and capabilities. After my initial amusement, I left them idly in the comfort of our lounge room, thinking nothing more of them as I went about my daily teenage routine. However... Destiny had something far more perplexing in store for me that fateful night. In the eerie darkness at around 2 a.m., I was startled awake by a distinct melody that seemed to emanate from the very heart of the lounge room. The tune, haunting and persistent, played on a loop, perpetuating its enchanting cadence throughout the stillness of the night. Petrified and ensnared in fear's icy grip, I lay motionless in bed, unable to fathom the origin of this inexplicable symphony that seemed to transcend the realm of the ordinary. The melody persisted, seemingly stretching on for an eternity, etching itself into my memory with an indelible mark. As I contemplated the uncanny situation, I found myself acutely aware of the geographical distance separating my bedroom, located on the second floor from the lounge room. The daunting hallway stretched over 20 meters, acting as a physical and metaphorical chasm between myself and the source of the haunting tune. Moreover, with only my mother and brother present in the house that night, both slumbering soundly in their respective downstairs bedrooms, the situation became increasingly enigmatic. 
Summoning every ounce of courage within me, I eventually resolved to confront the inexplicable, embarking on a treacherous journey down the stairs to my parents' quarters. Hastily traversing the hallway, my gaze steadfastly averted from the lounge room. I reached their room and roused my mother from her deep sleep. Disoriented and bleary-eyed, she struggled to comprehend the gravity of my distress, unable to discern the melodious specter that had held captive in the darkest hours of the night. The haunting melody, though faint, lingered on for a few more agonizing minutes before dissipating into the ether, leaving behind a chilling silence. With the dawn's gentle caress, the enchanting music finally ceased its haunting refrain. Yet to my utter dismay, my horror reached its zenith as I discovered the bird whistle, the very instrument that had orchestrated the spectral serenade, perched inconspicuously in the kitchen. The mere sight of it, relocated by some unseen force during the night, sent shivers coursing through to my very core. The morning light brought with it an inevitable confrontation with my elder brother, who, at the ripe age of 18, awoke to confront me about my alleged midnight escapades of, as he puts it, playing that fucking whistle. His accusation caught me off guard, for I vehemently denied any involvement in the haunting performance, my voice tinged with both fear and truth. Sadly, my protestations fell on deaf ears, and my brother dismissed my claims as lies, convinced of my guilt in the supernatural symphony that had ensnared our humble abode. Years have passed since that eerie encounter, but the memory of that ethereal tune refuses to fade. Even now as I recount this tale, a chill courses down my spine, a poignant reminder of the inexplicable events that unfolded in the summer of 2006. I must confess that, overwhelmed by fear and the lingering sense of the otherworldly, I ultimately made the decision to part ways with the bird whistle, discarding it as far away from my presence as possible. The mere thought of its presence became an indomitable source of trepidation, haunting my every waking moment. In hindsight, it remains a singular occurrence of the supernatural within the confines of my childhood home, an anomaly that defies rational explanation. To this day, I wonder if anyone else has encountered such enigmatic circumstances, where inanimate instruments, seemingly imbued with a life of their own, transform into conduits for ethereal melodies. The memory of that fateful night serves as a constant reminder of the mysteries that lie just beyond the realm of our understanding, forever etching themselves into the fabric of my being. Story number four. Two shadow-like beings. What the hell are these? When I was 12 years old, a terrifying incident unfolded in my household. It was during a time when my dad would frequently indulge in alcohol-fueled weekends. These were the moments when his behavior became increasingly volatile. Although he never physically harmed any of us, my mother, my big brother, or myself... However, his drunken state would often lead to heated arguments and confrontations. On that particular night, my dad was stationed in the living room, drowning his sorrows in a haze of alcohol. My mother and I sought refuge in our respective bedrooms while my brother was absent from home. As the night wore on, my father's consumption escalated, and the ominous signs of an impending clash began to emerge. His voice grew harsh and his demeanor aggressive, indicating that he had succumbed to one of his violent, drunken states. Suddenly, my father stumbled into his bedroom with an alarming purpose to retrieve his gun. Sensing the imminent danger, my mother confronted him, her voice trembling with concern. She implored him to explain why he felt the need to wield such a weapon. In response, he callously reported, Because I want to. Do you have a problem? The chilling tone in his voice sent shivers down our spines, solidifying our fears. In an attempt to grasp the severity of the situation, I joined my mother in the living room, nervous and scared. I clung to her side, seeking solace amidst the brewing chaos. However, she tried her best to assuage my anxieties, dismissing my father as an attention seeker. She insisted that there was no cause for worry, as he wouldn't dare cross the line into insanity. 
Though her words were meant to comfort me, they failed to pacify my escalating fear. Reluctantly, I returned to the refuge of my bedroom, hoping for a swift resolution to this nightmarish ordeal. But the fate, at least this particular fate, had a different plan in store for us. Before long, the tranquility of our home was shattered by the unmistakable sound of three gunshots resonating from outside. Panic surged through every fiber of my being, prompting me to sprint towards my mother's room in a frantic bid for safety. As I locked the door behind us, my mother's instincts urged her to venture outside and check on my father. Terrified for her well-being, I pleaded with her, desperately begging her to remain within the confines of the bedroom. My fear of losing her was consuming me, overpowering any rationale or self-control. Finally aware of my distress, she consented to stay by my side. In that terrifying moment, she reached out for her phone and dialed my brother's number, recounting the horrors unfolding before us. Consumed by anger and worry, my brother vowed to return home immediately. When my brother finally arrived, he skillfully managed to approach my dad with a deceptive facade of calmness. Engaging him in conversation, he subtly maneuvered toward the gun, seizing it just as it seemed all hope was lost. In a whirlwind of emotions, my brother's anger took hold, and he unleashed a furious assault upon my father. Despite the chaos unfolding before my eyes, my brother's physical strength prevailed, subduing our father and keeping him immobilized. Amidst the frenzy, my brother didn't hold back his fury, berating our father for his reckless behavior. He vehemently condemned him for brandishing a loaded weapon while inebriated, endangering the lives of both my mother and me. In the midst of my father's profane outbursts and desperate pleas for release, my mother added her own desperate plea for peace, attempting to quell the escalating conflict. In the background, I sobbed uncontrollably, my tears mingling with the cacophony of the night. Unbeknownst to us, our apartment perched upon the fourth floor had become a stage for this harrowing drama. The echoes of gunshots, the piercing screams, and the turmoil undoubtedly reached the ears of our neighbors, stirring their concern. Alarmed by the commotion, they swiftly summoned the police, urging them to investigate our dire circumstances. Responding promptly, the law enforcement officers arrived on the scene, their presence both a reassurance and a source of trepidation. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, the police swiftly apprehended my father, escorting him from the premises of the remainder of the night. They sought to distance him from the intoxicated state, allowing for a momentary respite from the chaos that had consumed our lives. By the time the officers whisked him away, it was the early hour of the morning, around 4 a.m. Exhausted and emotionally drained, my brother, who had endured the turmoil alongside us, realized that he hadn't eaten anything throughout the night. In an attempt to find solace and nourishment, he decided to venture out, scouring the deserted streets for an open drive through And as he ventured out, I couldn't help but feel a mixture of relief and worry, grateful for his strength but fearful of what further dangers lurked beyond our, sh our sheltered haven. Thus, this night, which began with the ominous specter of my father's drunken rage, unfolded into a symphony of fear, anguish, and resilience. It tested the limits of our familial bond and plunged us into a maelstrom of uncertainty. From the depths of despair emerged a glimmer of hope, the knowledge that in the face of chaos, we could find solace and support within the arms of our loved ones, even in the darkest of nights. Story number eight, A Night Drive to Remember. I reminisce about the days when I was the proud owner of a trusty Fiat Florino pickup. It may have been an older vehicle, but it had its own unique charm, complete with fog lights mounted on the hood. For some reason, I never bothered fixing those lights during the three years I owned the car. After all, I never found myself in a situation where I needed them while driving around the well-lit city during daytime. However, as fate had a different plan in store for me one fateful evening, it was time when my then-girlfriend, who is now my beloved wife, resided in a remote rural property nestled amidst the mountainous region outside the bustling city. 
Determined to surprise her with an unexpected visit, I embarked on a journey to reunite with my love. Little did I know that this adventure would test my driving skills and push me to my limits. As I set out on the road towards her abode, I failed to consider the driving time and underestimated the distance. Time slipped away and the sun gradually descended, casting its final rays before surrendering to the darkness of the night. To add to my predicament, the remote area I found myself in had no cell phone signal, leaving me disconnected from the outside world and devoid of any navigational aid. The absence of streetlights along the winding roads further compounded my difficulties. I had no choice but to rely solely on the feeble illumination provided by my regular headlights. Each curve and bend seemed more treacherous than the last, and anxiety began to take hold of me as I realized the gravity of my situation. Desperation soon engulfed my being as I continued to navigate through the uncharted darkness. The heaviness in my heart grew with every passing moment, and I longed for a guiding light to lead me out. It was then amidst the sea of blackness that a beacon of hope shimmered in the distance. A flickering light emitted from a distant property, and it caught my attention. Without any other option, I steered my fiat toward the solitary lamp, hoping that its occupants would lend me their assistance. As I approached, the light grew brighter, revealing a quaint house perched on the edge of the road. Filled with anticipation and a touch of apprehension, I mustered the courage to knock on their door, hoping that they could provide me with directions to my destination. A kind-hearted couple welcomed me inside, their warmth a stark contrast to the chilling darkness outside. They patiently listened to my tale of misadventure and offered me the guidance I desperately sought. Their directions led me down a narrow road that ran perilously parallel to the sheer cliff. Fear gripped my heart as I gingerly maneuvered my vehicle, inching forward with utmost caution. Each turn of the steering wheel felt like a dance with destiny as I found myself whispering prayers to the saints. In a moment of desperation, a wild idea struck me, recalling the long-forgotten fog lights in my fateful fiat. I wondered if they could somehow alleviate my plight. In a last-ditch attempt to enhance visibility, I mustered every ounce of hope, and I flipped the switch that controlled the roof fog lights. And then, a miracle unfolded before my eyes— the once dormant fog light suddenly burst to life, casting a brilliant glow that pierced through the enveloping darkness. I could finally see the treacherous path that I'd been treading so precariously. It was a heart-stopping realization. I had been mere meters away from a deadly plunge into the abyss. With a newfound clarity, I continued my journey, propelled forward by the radiant beams of light from those resurrected fog lights. Their illumination became my guiding star, leading me to safety. The relief that washed over me was indescribable, but it was overshadowed by the anxiety that awaited me on the other end. As I pulled up to the remote rural property where my girlfriend awaited my arrival, the sudden burst of light from the fog light startled her. Unmistakably anxious and frightened by the unexpected luminosity in the pitch black night, she rushed outside to greet me relieved that I had made it safely. Grateful for the sanctuary of the property, we decided to spend the night there before embarking on our journey home. The peace and serenity of that rural retreat were a welcome respite from the harrowing ordeal that we had just endured. However, what transpired on that treacherous night still baffles me to this day. Despite their miraculous revival and life-saving role, the fog lights on my Fiat never worked again after that incident. It was as if they had fulfilled their duty, their purpose served, and now retired to a realm of eternal darkness. And so, I bid farewell to my faithful companion, that Fiat pickup, for it had been a witness to a tale of peril and salvation. It may have been an older vehicle with faulty fog lights, but its presence in my life has left an indelible mark. The memories of that night, the fear and uncertainty, the guiding light that saved me from a disastrous fate, all of it will be forever etched in the annals of my personal history. As I reflect upon this extraordinary chapter of my life, I'm reminded that sometimes in the darkest of moments, a glimmer of hope can emerge unexpectedly, wherever it may be.
The flicker of a lamp might even penetrate the deepest abyss, and it's in these moments that we discover the strength within ourselves to overcome the most daunting of challenges and emerge stronger, wiser, and forever grateful for the gift of life. Story number two. I saw my girlfriend's double. About a month ago, an incident occurred that left me bewildered and questioning the very fabric of reality. It was a seemingly ordinary day, and I found myself engaged in conversation with my father near the doorway of her humble little abode. Little did I know that this encounter would unravel a perplexing chain of events. As I stood there engrossed in our discussion, my gaze wandered towards the adjacent living room. To my astonishment, I caught sight of a woman who bore an uncanny resemblance to my beloved girlfriend, making her way toward the bathroom. In that fleeting moment, my heart skipped a beat, and without a second's thought, I impulsively uttered something rather foolish. I called out to her, expressing my surprise at her sudden presence in her home. Curiosity piqued, I hastily made my way towards the bathroom, eager to join her and inquire about her unexpected visit. However, upon arrival, I was greeted by a perplexing sight, a vacant and desolate space, devoid of any human presence. Confusion enveloped me as I scanned the room, desperately searching for any sign of the woman who had seemingly vanished into thin air. Puzzled and slightly unnerved, I retraced my steps and ventured toward the bedroom, hoping to find solace in familiar surroundings. Yet, as I stepped into the room, my eyes were met with an unexpected scene. There, seated comfortably on the edge of the bed, was my girlfriend, engrossed in the captivating glow of a television screen. The inexplicable had become a reality. She had somehow managed to traverse the distance between the living room and our bedroom in a matter of seconds. Needless to say, my mind was filled with a whirlwind of thoughts and questions. How could someone be in two places at once? Was there some sort of supernatural phenomenon at play? Or perhaps a glitch in the Matrix? this peculiar occurrence was not the first of its kind to transpire within the confines of my life. In retrospect, I recalled several instances in which reality seemed to twist and contort, blurring the boundaries between the tangible and the ethereal. It was as if the very fabric of my existence had been woven with threads of uncertainty, leaving with me perpetually teetering on the precipice of bewilderment. As the days passed, I found myself embarking on a quest for answers, a journey into the realm of the inexplicable. I delved into the depths of scientific literature, poring over countless theories and hypotheses, hoping to unravel the enigma that had befallen me. From quantum physics to metaphysics, no stone was left unturned in my pursuit of understanding. Yet with each passing day, my inquiries seemed to yield more questions than answers. The nature of reality, it appeared, was an elusive mistress, forever shrouded in mystery. Was I merely a witness to the interdimensional crossover, or was there a deeper, more profound significance to these perplexing occurrences? The seeds of doubt were sown, and my mind became a battleground for opposing theories, vying for dominance. In my quest for comprehension, I sought solace in the experience of others. Countless hours were spent scouring the depths of the internet, fervently combing through the forums and discussion boards in search of individuals who had encountered similar things. I yearned to find solace in the company of those who could validate my experiences, to know that I was not alone in my journey through the Twilight Zone. Through these virtual encounters, I discovered a vast community of individuals who had traversed the labyrinth corridors of the inexplicable. They shared stories of encounters with doppelgangers, eerie apparitions, and unexplained phenomena that defied all rational explanation. Their words resonated deeply within me, providing a glimmer of hope that someday I might uncover the truth that lay hidden in the shadows. And so armed with the collective wisdom of these kindred spirits, I embarked on a personal odyssey, an exploration of the metaphysical realms that lay beyond the confines of everyday perception. I delved into ancient scriptures and mystical texts, seeking clues that would shed light on this enigmatic occurrence that had plagued my existence. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months as I dove deeper into the rabbit hole of esoteric knowledge, 
Each revelation unveiled a new layer of complexity, pushing the boundaries of my understanding to their limits. The more I learned, the more I realized how truly little I knew. Yet, amidst the labyrinth of uncertainty, a newfound sense of wonder and awe began to blossom within me. I discovered that the inexplicable and extraordinary were not mere anomalies to be feared, but gateways to a realm of boundless possibilities. The enigmatic encounters that had once left me bewildered now became sources of fascination, offering glimpses into the infinite tapestry of existence. As I pen these words, I find myself in a state of profound gratitude for the mysteries that have challenged my perceptions, the questions that have ignited my curiosity, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge that has propelled me forward. Though I have yet to uncover the ultimate truth behind the peculiar occurrences that unfolded that fateful day, I remain steadfast in my belief that the answers I seek are waiting patiently to be unveiled. And so, dear reader, I implore you to embrace this enigmatic tapestry of life, to question the boundaries of reality, and to embark on our own voyage of discovery. For it's in this realm of the inexplicable that we truly find ourselves, and it is through the pursuit of understanding that we become one of the ever-unfolding mysteries of the universe. Story number eight. My recent experience with a demon and a ghost. This morning as the dark enveloped the world outside, I slowly emerged from the depths of slumber, my eyelids heavy with the weight of sleep. Groggily, I peered into the mirror, only to be greeted by a bewildering sight. A peculiar, translucent shadow lingered before me, a ghostly figure with an ethereal presence. Despite my half-awake state, a shiver ran down my spine, causing me to instinctively reach for my phone and activate the flashlight function. As the beam of light pierced through the dimness, the mysterious specter swiftly dissipated, fading away into the unknown after a mere ten seconds. Yet, in that fleeting moment, I managed to capture a glimpse of its spectral form, etching the image into the recesses of my mind, although muddled by my drowsy haze. Feeling a mix of curiosity and trepidation, I allowed my wary body to succumb to the allure of sleep once more, hoping that the bizarre encounter would fade into the realms of forgotten dreams. Yet, to my astonishment, my respite was abruptly interrupted by a haunting sound, a child's voice echoing through the stillness. Distinct words eluded my memory, lost in the veil of drowsiness that draped over my mind. But the tone was unmistakable, a mixture of desperate pleas, anguished screams, and inconsolable sobbing. The sheer terror that gripped my heart tightened its hold as the chilling sound reverberated within the confines of my room, unsettling me to my core. Once more, I sought solace in the realm of slumber, praying for respite from the uncanny occurrences that plagued my waking hours. However, as the night waned and the dawn approached, I found myself jolted awake yet again, only to find my body imprisoned in immobility. Panic surged through my veins as I realized I had succumbed to sleep paralysis, a horrifying phenomenon that rendered me defenseless against the unseen forces that now tormented me. Within the dimly lit room, a colossal black shadow loomed, casting a sinister presence upon my trembling form. Its elongated arms stretched out impossibly, its frame slender yet towering in height, and where a face should have been, there was nothing but an abyss of darkness. Hovering menacingly in the corner of my bed, it fixed its intangible gaze upon me, its intentions veiled in a shroud of malevolence. Though my body remained unyielding, my mind cried out in desperation, tears streaming down my face, mingling with palpable fear that consumed my every fiber. Uncertainty plagued my thoughts. Was I wailing aloud, or was it merely the agonizing weeping of my innermost self, drowned by the suffocating weight of this sinister encounter? Trembling and overwhelmed, I clutched onto the sliver of hope, seeking refuge in the only solace I could fathom. I closed my eyes, summoning the strength to pray. 
with every ounce of conviction, I beseeched a higher power, calling upon God's protection in my moment of vulnerability. Time seemed to elongate as I pleaded for deliverance, and as the seconds ticked by, a faint glimmer of respite crept into my consciousness, and then, as if by divine intervention, the oppressive hold that bound me began to loosen, gradually relinquishing its grip on my body and mind. Finally, liberated from the clutches of immobilization, I surged upwards, propelled by a newfound surge of strength and determination. Gasping for air, my heart racing like a wild stallion, I surveyed the room, still shrouded in an eerie ambiance, though devoid of the menacing shadow that had taunted me moments before. The weight of the experience settled upon me, leaving me trembling in its aftermath. The gravity of the ordeal was further compounded by a realization that reverberated through my consciousness. I had endured three distinct interactions within the confines of this haunted night. To compound my growing unease, I recounted a peculiar phenomenon that had plagued my morning for the past two years, waking up to discover mysterious scratches etched upon my legs and at times my arms. The inexplicable nature of these markings, combined with the chilling encounters I had just witnessed, left me questioning the boundaries of reality and the unsettling possibilities that lay beyond the realm of human comprehension. As the sun timidly began to bathe the world in its golden hues, dispelling the remnants of darkness, I found myself caught between the realms of skepticism and belief, grappling with the enigmatic events that had unfolded before my very eyes. Though the sun has risen, its warmth failed to penetrate the lingering chill in my bones as I pondered the veracity of the supernatural forces that had invaded my sleep and stalked my waking hours. Uncertainty and a sense of foreboding now cloud my every thought, for I am but a hapless witness to the inexplicable. The specter in the mirror, the tormented cries of an unseen child, and the looming shadow that tormented me in the confines of my bed, all serve as a haunting reminder that the veil between our reality and the ethereal realm is thinner than we dare to imagine. Welcome to the world of the unexplained and the supernatural here at Paranormal M. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be the first to know about our latest mysterious stories. We hope you're ready to be taken on a journey into the unknown. Story number one. Too scared to leave my room. I'm a 22-year-old student, and my life revolves around my studies and living in a smallish apartment with a roommate and her adorable cat. Little did I know that my perception of reality was about to be challenged in a way I had never experienced before, starting just about an hour and a half ago. It all began when I was diligently working on an assignment in the comfort of my room. Suddenly I heard a series of thumps emanating from the living room. Naturally assuming it was the mischievous feline knocking something over, I prepared myself to rectify the situation. However, as I made my way toward the living room, an indescribable sensation of unease washed over me, sending chills down my spine. It was an eerie feeling unlike anything I'd ever felt before, as though something ominous was lurking nearby, ready to disrupt the tranquility of my humble abode. A peculiar mixture of curiosity and trepidation consumed me as I was cautiously retrieving a makeshift weapon just in case the situation turned out to be more than just an innocent mishap. With bated breath, I stepped into the living room, my eyes darting around searching for any sign of disturbance. That's when I caught sight of something peculiar, a black triangular object, reminiscent of a hood, swiftly descending behind the table. However, to my utter surprise, it never made contact with the floor. Bewildered, I glanced at the slumbering cat, who seemed completely undisturbed by this enigmatic event unfolding before me. Barely containing my racing thoughts, I couldn't help but consider the alarming possibility that my sanctuary had been invaded by an intruder. 
Determined to uncover the truth, I mustered the courage to approach the opposite side of the table. As I drew closer, my heart pounding in my chest, I realized with a mixture of relief and confusion that there was absolutely nothing there. No fallen objects, no signs of disturbance whatsoever. It was as if the incident had evaporated into thin air. Perplexed, I embarked on an exhaustive search of every nook and cranny, combining through the, or sorry, combing through the apartment meticulously in pursuit of an intruder that simply didn't exist. Returning to the solace of my room, a lingering sense of unease continued to gnaw at my consciousness. Seeking solace and rituals passed down through generations, I reached for a bundle of sage, intending to cleanse the space of any lingering negative energy. However, just as I was about to ignite the fragrant herb, my ears detected the distinct sound of bare footsteps resonating from the bathroom. Gradually making their way into the kitchen, it was a sound that sent shivers down my spine, raising the hairs on the back of my neck, amplifying the inexplicable unease that had settled within me. Reflecting on the events that had unfolded, I couldn't help but acknowledge that our apartment had been a hotbed of inexplicable occurrences over the last two years that I resided here. Knocking on doors that seemingly came from nowhere, light bulbs flickering without any rational explanation, these phenomenon had become an integral part of our daily lives. Admittedly, the apartment's proximity to an ancient graveyard had always served as a source of curiosity and speculation among our circle of friends. Yet, despite the occasional oddities, we had all managed to rationalize these incidents, attributing them to coincidences or quirks of an old building. Being someone who prided myself on skepticism and logical reasoning, I found myself grappling with the undeniable reality of what had just transpired. That mysterious object, dropping behind the table and disappearing without a trace, had appeared almost sentient, as if it possessed an awareness of my presence and sought to conceal itself. The overwhelming sense of anxiety that had accompanied the encounter was inexplicable, surpassing the boundaries of reason. It mirrored the visceral fear one experiences when walking alone on a dimly lit street, sensing an unseen presence trailing behind, or the impending dread that envelops you moments before a catastrophic car accident. As I sat in the stillness of my room trying to make sense of it all, I couldn't deny the presence of an otherworldly force that had infiltrated the realms of my reality. Questions swirled in my mind, each one more elusive than the last. What had I witnessed? Was it a ghost, a specter from beyond the veil of mortality? Or was it some form of supernatural entity whose true nature defied the boundaries of human comprehension? Regardless of my skepticism, I was left with an undeniable truth. I had encountered something inexplicable, something that challenged the very foundations of my understanding of the world. And so, with a newfound curiosity and a lingering sense of trepidation, I embarked on a journey to unravel the mysteries that shrouded my apartment, delving into the enigmatic realms of the paranormal in search of answers that may forever alter the trajectory of my life and the understanding of existence itself. Story number four, Lady in the Window. Years ago, it feels like a lifetime now, I found myself embarking on a Christmas visit to my ex-wife's childhood home in the charming state of Illinois. It was a trip filled with mixed emotions, as these family gatherings tend to be. We arrived fashionably late, as always, and we were graciously offered the comfort of her parents' guest room for the duration of our stay. It was a chilly winter night, and exhaustion weighed heavily upon my weary bones as I settled into the plush bedding. The clock read 2 a.m., the hour when the world seems to hold its breath, when the veil between reality and dreams is at its thinnest. As I began drifting into a peaceful slumber, a peculiar sound danced through the air and tickled my ears. It was the sound of children laughing, their, their youthful joy echoing them through the night. Intrigued by the commotion, I slowly opened my eyes. 
adjusting to the dimly lit room. The laughter continued, emanating from just beyond the bedroom window. Curiosity overcame me, and I glanced in that direction, seeking to identify the source of the mirth. What I saw, however, chilled me to the core. There, standing in the darkness, illuminated only by a soft glow of the moon, was a figure. It was unmistakably my mother-in-law, peering out at the children with a serene smile on her face. My heart skipped a beat, my mind racing to comprehend the situation. Had I awoken to find her amidst a sleepwalking episode? It seemed plausible enough, given the late hour and peculiar circumstances. Feeling a mixture of concern and confusion, I decided to address the issue the following morning during breakfast. The sunlight streamed through the windows, casting a warm glow upon the dining table as we sat to break bread together. With a glimmer of anxiety in my voice, I broached the subject, asking my mother-in-law about her midnight escapade into our room. To my surprise, she looked at me with genuine bewilderment and responded, I didn't come into your room last night. I would never invade your privacy while guests in our home. A perplexed expression crossed my face as I turned to my ex-wife, seeking confirmation of my own locked door claim. Her response mirrored her mother's, leaving me utterly dumbfounded. Puzzled and desperate for an explanation, I inquired as to the entity of the woman that I had witnessed standing at the window. It was then that my mother-in-law exchanged a glance with her husband, a look filled with understanding and recognition. With a solemn tone, she uttered the words that would forever change my perception of the supernatural. He saw her, she confessed, her voice filled with an eerie mixture of acceptance and mystery. My eyes widened in anticipation as I implored her to elaborate. Her? Who is she? I asked, my curiosity tinged with equal parts of skepticism and fascination. In a hushed tone, my mother-in-law revealed the family secret that had eluded me until that moment. We have a ghost, she admitted, her words hanging heavy in the air. Countless ghosts have been reported seeing her, or countless guests have reported seeing her, standing at that very window, her gaze fixated on the outside world. We don't know who she is or why she haunts us, but we believe she means no harm. The reality of her words sank deep into my consciousness, shattering the skepticism I had clung onto for so long. Until that visit, the existence of ghosts had been nothing more than a figment of imagination, relegated to the realms of folklore and superstition. Yet, what I had witnessed with my own eyes defied any rational explanation. The weight of this newfound knowledge pressed heavily upon my soul, leaving me with a haunting sense of unease. Despite the reassurance of my in-laws, my ex-wife and I chose to seek refuge in the safety of a hotel for the remainder of our visit. The once familiar house now carried an otherworldly air, every creak of the floorboards echoing the ghostly presence that had revealed itself to me in the dead of the night. In the wake of that fateful encounter, my perception of the supernatural forever shifted. I had become a believer, unable to dismiss the existence of spirits that walk among us, bound to the mortal realm by unfinished business or unbreakable ties to the places that they once called home. To this day, the image of that apparition remains etched into the recesses of my mind, the memory of my mother-in-law's serene continence, gazing out at the world beyond continues to haunt my dreams. It serves as a constant reminder of the enigmatic forces that exist beyond our comprehension, forever shaping our perceptions of reality and challenging the boundaries of human understanding. As I reflect upon that unforgettable Christmas visit, I find solace in the knowledge that some mysteries are not meant to be solved. They serve as reminders of the vast tapestry of life, woven with threads of the inexplicable and the unexplained. And so, I carry this tale with me, a testament to the supernatural realm that lingers just beyond the edges of our everyday existence, waiting to reveal itself to the most unexpected of people in the most unexpected of ways. The Day I Seen the Devil 
Story number three. It all began when my precious little son, who was just a tender five-year-old at the time, and I found ourselves in the cozy confines of our living room on a particularly starlit night. As he happily immersed himself in playful endeavors, his innocent laughter echoed throughout the hallway. However, the tranquility was abruptly shattered when he suddenly came rushing towards me, his tiny body trembling with fear. With his tiny fingers trembling extended, he pointed toward the room and hallway, and his voice quivering as he described an encounter with a truly grotesque apparition that had sent shivers down his spine. My heart skipped a beat as I witnessed the genuine terror etched into his cherubic face. I quickly made my way toward the room, a mix of concern and trepidation coursing through my veins. Upon entering, I meticulously scanned the surroundings, hoping to find nothing more than a figment of his imagination. To my relief, there was no sign of any sinister presence lingering in the room. My son assured me that the mysterious figure had departed through the window, vanishing into the night. Assuaged by his innocent explanation, I dismissed the incident as mere childhood fright, choosing not to dwell on it any longer. Yet as the night progressed, the darkness enveloped our abode. I found myself unable to quell the persistent nagging in the depths of my mind. What had my son truly witnessed? The enigmatic encounter continued to haunt my thoughts, refusing to dissipate into the recesses of forgetfulness. Driven by an insatiable curiosity mixed with a tinge of apprehension, I resolved to uncover the truth. That very night, with an uncharacteristic air of restlessness clinging to me, I cautiously settled into bed, positioning myself on the side opposite the window. A feeble attempt to reassure myself, perhaps, by placing a physical barrier between the eerie unknown and my vulnerable state of slumber. However, as sleep tentatively embraced me, I was unaware that this would be the night that forever altered my course of perception. In the midst of my dream-laden journey, abruptly my eyes flew open, startled awake by the inexplicable force that surged through my being. Panic coursed through my veins as I instinctively turned my gaze toward the source of my alarm, and there it stood, like a nightmarish tableau etched into the fabric of reality itself. Before me loomed a pair of legs, grotesquely distorted, bearing an amalgamation of features reminiscent of a mythical creature. These legs, or rather hooves, appeared to be a perplexing blend of equine majesty and caprine peculiarity. I beheld a sight both mesmerizing and macabre, as the appendages seemed to defy the laws of nature with their twisted existence. As my bewildered eyes moved upward, I became aware of a long, sinuous tail reminiscent of the panther's grace and agility. It curled and twisted, a surreal extension of this otherworldly entity. The tail, much like the fiery hues of a blazing sunset, sported a rich deep red hue akin to the vibrant colors of freshly laid brickwork on a grand architectural masterpiece. Captivated yet horrified, I couldn't bring myself to avert my gaze from this haunting spectacle. My mind raced, struggling to comprehend the existence of such an aberration. My survival instinct kicked in, compelling me to shield my eyes from this unearthly sight. Trembling, I summoned the courage to silently beseech this inexplicable apparition, pleading with it within the depths of my thoughts, urging it to leave our dwelling and cease its intrusion upon our lives. I made it abundantly clear that its presence was unwelcome and unwarranted within the sacred confines of our humble home. And then just like that, the haunting specter vanished into the ethereal realm from whence it came. The room, once ensnared by an otherworldly presence, slowly returned to its familiar tranquility. I dared not believe my own eyes, questioning the authenticity of the spine-chilling encounter I had just experienced. Yet deep down, I knew that what I had witnessed was not a mere figment of my imagination. Since that bewildering night, the grotesque apparition with its amalgamation of equine and caprine features has remained elusive, keeping its distance from our lives, 
Its enigmatic presence, once a source of terror and curiosity, has become nothing more than a haunting memory etched into the annals of my family's history. And so, dear reader, or dear listener in this case, this is the tale of my son's encounter with the macabre and the subsequent revelation that forever altered my perception of the world. It serves as a reminder that in the darkest corners of our existence, there are mysteries that defy explanation, lurking just beyond the realm of our understanding. It's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit as we confront the inexplicable and find solace in our ability to overcome the supernatural terrors that sometimes permeate our lives. Story number 15, No Longer a Skeptic After Close Encounter with a Plasma Orb In April of 2011, a dear friend and I embarked on a mesmerizing adventure that would forever leave an indelible mark on our memories. It was a splendid night, dry and clear, as we climbed up to my rooftop in the enchanting region of New Jersey. Our purpose? To immerse ourselves in the ethereal beauty of the Lyrid's meteor shower. Eagerly anticipating the celestial spectacle of shooting stars cascading across the heavens above. Though the meteor shower didn't end up living up to our lofty expectations, we remained steadfast, our gazes fixated upon the celestial tapestry, hopeful that we would witness a few fleeting meteors every now and then. Several hours had passed, and our dedication to the celestial spectacle had not wavered. Suddenly a burst of radiance caught the periphery of our vision, diverting our attention from the celestial expanse to the earthly surroundings. We turned our heads in unison only to be greeted by a sight that defied explanation, a luminous beam resembling a brilliant blue-white LED flashlight traversing the dense forest beyond the boundaries of our humble abode. In the depths of our subconscious, our initial instinct led us to believe that perhaps law enforcement personnel were pursuing a miscreant, wielding their flashlight as a beacon of justice. However, our perception swiftly shifted as we observed the light ascending, weaving its way through the leafy canopy, far above the forest floor. Bewildered and perplexed, we repeated the phrase, What the fuck is that? Incessantly, struggling to comprehend the otherworldly phenomenon that was unfolding before our eyes. Gradually, the enigmatic light altered its course, aligning itself with the meandering path of the river flowing serenely behind my residence. It seemed as though the ethereal radiance acknowledged our presence, for as it traversed the rear of my house, it decelerated, eventually coming to a gentle halt. Then, in a breathtaking display of cosmic curiosity, the radiant entity executed a precise 90-degree turn, embarking upon the open expanse of our property a mere 40 feet from our quivering frames. A sense of imminent scrutiny permeated the air, as if, as if the enigmatic presence had detected our presence and then sought to investigate further. It was at this climactic juncture that we were granted an awe-inspiring glimpse into the heart of the inexplicable. What materialized before us was an immaculately spherical entity, exuding an ethereal luminescence akin to a radiant basketball. Its core appeared to churn and undulate with flowing plasma, emanating an icy blue-white hue that pervaded the surroundings, casting an otherworldly glow in the process. Despite its captivating radiance, not a single sound emerged from this enigmatic sphere, further intensifying the inexplicable nature of the encounter. Overwhelmed by astonishment and trepidation, our vocal cords unleashed a torrent of terrified screams, unable to contain the flood of emotions that surged within us. With each passing moment, the enigmatic presence advanced towards us, albeit at significantly slower pace than when it had glided seamlessly through the verdant foliage. Its movements now exuded an air of caution, an unexpected juxtaposition to the initial swift traversal. Inexplicably, it seems as though the entity possessed an intention, a peculiar intelligence that manifested in its calculated approach. This realization intensified our already profound horror as the inexplicable truth dawned upon us. We were in the presence of an incomprehensible force, something that defied the boundaries of our knowledge and understanding. 
Sensing the inherent danger that lurked within this enigmatic encounter, we scrambled hastily off the rooftop, propelled by a primal instinct to seek shelter and solace within the confines of my home. Trembling like terrified children, we found refuge beneath the comforting blanket, though the cloak of fear shrouded us despite our advancing age. Conversation regarding this extraordinary event became a taboo as we were unable to fathom, let alone explain, the unfathomable force that had invaded our lives that fateful night. Approximately a year has passed since our nerve-wracking encounter with the enigmatic luminosity, when a neighbor, gripped by sheer panic, relentlessly pounded upon my door. His frenzied pleas for sanctuary resonated through the hushed ambiance of my abode, his words revealing a startling revelation. He and a companion had ventured into the very same patch of woods, nestled alongside the meandering river, and they had witnessed our inexplicable encounter. To their dismay, they too had found themselves pursued by a silent, ethereal orb of luminosity, a hauntingly familiar apparition that sent shivers cascading down my spine. This revelation startled me to the core, for I had never before divulged the details of my own encounter to this neighbor. In that moment, a profound realization gripped me. The enigmatic force that had trespassed upon our lives was not an isolated incident, but a recurring presence, traversing the boundaries of our perception and leaving behind a trail of bewilderment and trepidation. Story number 13, Creature. So let me begin by recounting the unsettling experience that unfolded in the confines of my own bedroom. It all started when I retired for the night, seeking solace in the embrace of sleep. However, an inexplicable sensation of being watched plagued my senses, casting a veil of unease over my tranquil sanctuary. As a remedy to my restless state, I resorted to my usual course of action. I reached for my phone and activated its flashlight, allowing its beam to pierce through the darkness that shrouded my room. And there, lurking by the threshold of my closet, stood a creature unlike anything I had ever encountered before. It possessed a gaunt frame, characterized by elongated limbs that seemed to defy the natural proportions of a human body. Its fingers stretched out, elongated and ghastly. While its limbs extended into an otherworldly length, the creature's skin resembled delicate porcelain, lending an eerie pallor to its existence. Its eyes, reflective and piercing, bore into my very soul, while its emaciated form seemed to lack any semblance of muscular tissue, its skin draped loosely over the stark prominence of its skeletal structure. Immobile and unyielding, it maintained a crouched position, fixating its gaze upon me without the slightest hint of movement. It did not blink, nor did it display any discernible signs of respiration. Its unwavering stare unsettled me to the core, but in a desperate attempt to dismiss it as a figment of my imagination, I extinguished the beam of light. Yet when I summoned the courage to rekindle the illumination, the haunting creature remained rooted in its place, its piercing eyes still locked onto mine. Feeling an inexplicable blend of fear and curiosity, I turned over and succumbed to the beckoning call of slumber. I don't know how you could do that. To my dismay, the following night revealed a disconcerting recurrence. The creature had relocated itself, positioning itself just outside the confines of my closet, all the while casting an unrelenting gaze upon me. In addition, it had taken up a secondary position adjacent to the cabinet housing my collection of dolls. Its intentions remained shrouded in enigma, mirroring its previous vigil. I, however, chose to dis disregard its presence once more, allowing sleep to claim dominion over my consciousness. But the relentless observation that had plagued my nights began to wear down upon my sanity. It seemed apparent that this ethereal entity had developed a peculiar fixation with watching me during my slumber. Filled with the resolve to confront the intruder, I sought refuge in my sister's quarters, yearning for a sympathetic ear. I meticulously recounted the haunting encounters, describing the creature in vivid detail, 
as we engaged in this exchange, an inexplicable shift in the room's atmosphere occurred. The once comforting ambiance swiftly transformed into a maelstrom of wrathful energy emanating from beyond the confines of my sister's chamber. Our conversation abruptly halted, silenced by the oppressive aura that descended upon us. It was as if the malevolent force resented the notion of its secrets being laid bare. Despite the palpable tension, we chose to continue our dialogue, whispering our fears in hushed tones. It was a testament to the bond between siblings, united in our shared experience of the inexplicable. Eventually, our collective wariness prompted us to seek respite within the realms of dreams yet again, hoping to find solace in the sanctuary of sleep. The following day brought with it a glimmer of hope. My sister, motivated by her concern for my well-being, crafted a small protective pouch intended to ward off the supernatural entity that plagued my nights. Though initially skeptical of its efficiency, I graciously accepted her heartfelt gift, assuring her that its usage may not be necessary. As nightfall once again descended upon the world, a sense of trepidation took hold of my senses. I could feel the lingering presence of the creature, its spectral essence permeating the air I breathed. And then, driven by a mix of curiosity and desperation, I seized the pouch my sister had crafted, clutching it tightly. In that pivotal moment, the weight of the pouch of my grasp seemed to evoke a sliver of courage within me. Empowered by this newfound resolve, I embarked upon a quest to confront the enigmatic presence that had tormented me for nights on end. To my astonishment, the moment I clasped the pouch, the creature ceased its vigil. It vanished, dissipating into the ether, leaving behind an eerie stillness that seemed to echo with relief. The wards crafted with love and care by my sister had somehow succeeded in dispelling the otherworldly intruder that had invaded my nights. Since that fateful night, though, the creature hasn't returned. The pouch, now a precious keepsake, serves as a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the power of familial bonds. It is a testament to the mysterious forces that exist beyond our comprehension, forever reminding me of the inexplicable nature of our world. Story number 10. Ghost told me to stay quiet. I have been immersed in a world, a world of paranormal investigation, for over a year now, and I must say, it has been an exhilarating journey. Throughout my time as a paranormal investigator, I have been fortunate enough to encounter numerous hair-raising experiences that have left both my team and me in utter disbelief. Our latest adventure took us to the heart of Athens, where we explored the eerie confines of an abandoned Greek hospital. Little did we know that this investigation would push the boundaries of our courage and test our beliefs in the supernatural. As we arrived at the location, a sense of foreboding lingered in the air. The dilapidated hospital loomed before us, its weathered facade whispering tales of countless lives lost within its walls. Determined to capture subsequent evidence, we decided to split up and conduct our investigations individually. Fate, or perhaps misfortune, had chosen me to venture into the basement alone, while my fellow investigators wielded the spirit box and thermal cameras. Armed with a voice recorder and an EMF, I descended into the abyss beneath the hospital, Initially, the atmosphere seemed relatively calm with no significant spikes in the EMF reading or disembodied voices echoing through the corridors. However, as the minutes ticked by, I couldn't resist the urge to provoke whatever entities might be lurking in the shadows. It was a risky move, one I knew I shouldn't have made, but the tantalizing possibility of capturing something extraordinary compelled me to take the chance. My tongue lashed out, uttering words that were both audacious and disrespectful, all while the voice recorder faithfully documented my audacious behavior. The tension in the air became palpable, as if unseen eyes were watching my every move. Suddenly, without warning, the EMF detector surged to its maximum limit, sending shivers down my spine. The erratic spike lasted only momentarily before subsiding, 
leaving behind an unsettling stillness. Feeling an unnerving presence close at hand, I hastily decided it was my time to retreat from the basement. Exhausted and mentally drained, I trudged home, the clock striking 4.40 a.m. Determined to unravel the mysteries that awaited us, I immediately embarked on the arduous task of reviewing the footage that we had captured, starting with the video recordings. I meticulously combed through every frame, searching for any trace of the supernatural. To my astonishment, the video footage revealed eerie occurrences that occurred while we were investigating as a team. The EMF spikes visible on the screen coincided with the moments that we were experiencing inexplicable phenomenon and hearing strange noises emanating from the spirit box itself. Furthermore, one of the thermal cameras had captured a peculiar figure, an apparition seemingly trapped between our world and the realm of spirits. The evidence was mounting, cementing our conviction that we had indeed ventured into a place teeming with paranormal energy. While the video footage provided undeniable proof of the supernatural, it was the audio recording of our EVP that truly sent chills down my spine. In my initial assessment, I had dismissed it as uneventful, but I was about to be proven wrong. Eager to delve deeper into this auditory realm, I slipped on my headphones and I pressed play. The first 18 minutes dragged on monotonously, devoid of any notable activity. However, as the recording approached the 22nd minute, my heart skipped a beat. A voice, quiet yet tinged with an indescribable terror, pierced through the silence, commanding me, Don't speak, stay quiet! At that precise moment, the EMF detector once again exhibited a surge of red, as if echoing the urgency of the voice's command. Was this a mere coincidence, or was it a sinister message from the ethereal entities that inhabited the basement? Compounding my growing sense of unease with the pounding headache that had plagued me throughout my time in the basement, was a mere coincidence, or were the spirits playing tricks on me, using my physical discomfort as a means of communication? The question swirled in my mind, blending the boundaries between the rational and the supernatural, leaving me grasping for answers. In the end, this haunting investigation left me with more questions than answers. The inexplicable events we witnessed, the eerie voices that permeated the air, and the relentless headaches I endured all merged into a tapestry of the paranormal, defying conventional logic. As a paranormal investigator, I've come to accept that there are forces at play in this world that surpass our comprehension. The abandoned Greek hospital had revealed its secrets but its mysteries remained ever elusive, shrouded in darkness, beckoning the curious and brave to explore further into the realms of the unknown. Story number 10. Hospital Visit. When I reached the remarkable milestone of being two years seizure-free, my doctors recommended that I undergo a test known as an epilepsy monitoring unit. The concept behind it was rather intriguing. I would spend a total of five days and nights within the confines of the hospital, ceasing the intake of my medication and intentionally depriving myself of sleep. The objective was to monitor my brain activity closely during this period, hoping to gain valuable insights into my condition. Luckily, my father accompanied me throughout this challenging process, providing unwavering support and comfort. The hospital staff assured us that we could bring along any personal items that would make our stay more comfortable, and they made sure to emphasize that a nurse call button was readily available should I require any assistance. As I settled into the unfamiliar hospital room, something peculiar began to transpire. Although I couldn't perceive her with my physical eyes, I sensed the presence of a ghostly figure. It was as if I could both feel and visualize her ethereal form. She appeared to be a young nurse, dressed in a white uniform, consisted of a button-up blouse and a skirt. What struck me as particularly unusual was her hat, a square-shaped cap adorned with a red cross, reminiscent of a bygone era. 
I pondered the time period from which she originated, perplexed by her youthful appearance and her lingering presence within the hospital room. Despite my confusion, this ghostly nurse would make occasional visits, diligently tending to her duties. She would check on me, inquiring about my well-being and offer assistance whenever needed. Although I found the whole situation somewhat absurd, to her, these interactions were undoubtedly genuine. There was an unmistakable melancholy that emanated from her presence. Over time, I observed her actions. I began to form a hypothesis. It seemed that there was another character in her spectral realm, a young boy, aged between five and eight, whom she attended within the confines of this very room. It became increasingly apparent to me that she had been unable to save this child's life, and perhaps this unfortunate circumstance was the reason she remained tethered to this space. The weight of her past seemed to burden her spirit, rendering her a compassionate but sorrowful entity. One fateful night as the clock struck 2 a.m., fate intervened, and I found myself thrust into the throes of a seizure. The experience remains a hazy memory, with only fragments of consciousness and fragmented images lingering in my mind. However, I distinctly recall awakening from the seizure's clutches, my eyes meeting the worried gaze of my father. By my side stood an physical nurse, holding an oxygen mask, her presence a tangible reminder of the gravity of the situation. Once she ensured that I was stable and on a path to recovery, she quietly exited the room, leaving my father and me to process the enormity of the events that had unfolded. It was at this moment that my father finally revealed the harrowing truth. He had witnessed my heart ceasing to beat. Gripping me tightly in his arms, he recounted the panic that he felt, relentlessly pressing the nurse call button, desperately seeking help as I teetered on the precipice of life and death. The fear of losing me engulfed him entirely, leaving an indelible mark on his soul. He vowed never to allow anyone else to experience the sheer terror that he had endured during those precarious moments. In the aftermath of this ordeal, I struggled to fully comprehend the magnitude of what had occurred. The shock and gratitude mingled within me, leaving little room for coherent thoughts. However, as time elapsed, a realization dawned upon me, one that brought both solace and a bittersweet understanding. I noticed that the ghostly nurse whose presence had been a constant companion throughout my time in the hospital, had vanished without a trace. She had seemingly departed from my realm of existence since that crucial moment when my heart had stopped beating. It became clear to me that although she had been unable to save her former patient's life, she had undoubtedly played a vital role in saving mine. In that pivotal moment, her ethereal presence had intertwined with the physical world, ensuring that I remained among the living. Having fulfilled her purpose, she could finally find peace, resting after what seemed like an eternity of wandering and unfulfilled responsibilities. This poignant experience left an indelible mark on my journey, forever etched in the tapestry of my memories. The epilepsy monitoring unit test, fraught with challenges and uncertainties, had brought forth an unexpected supernatural encounter. Through the presence of this ghostly nurse, I witnessed the complexities of life and death converge in a remarkable fashion. It served as a poignant reminder of the interconnectedness of our existence and the enduring impact that we can have on one another, even across the boundaries of time and realms. My gratitude for that spectral guardian remains immeasurable, forever intertwined with the profound relief of knowing that I had been granted a second chance at life. Story number eight. Remember a boy no one remembers. I grew up in this quaint little town nestled in the south. It was a place that boasted a paper mill as its industrial backbone and an air force base nearby. Growing up in such a dynamic environment meant that kids came and went quite frequently as families were constantly being transferred in and out of the area. Most of us, the local kids, had fathers who worked diligently at the paper mill contributing to the town's economic prosperity. However, there was a notable group of youngsters whose parents served at the Air Force. They brought a different flavor to our tight-knit community. Among these Air Force kids 
There was one in particular who left a lasting impression on me, Adam. He was a close friend of my younger brother, sharing mischievous adventures and always landing themselves in trouble due to their propensity for pulling off pranks. Adam's infectious spirit and comedic nature made him an unforgettable presence in our lives. Back then, I had the privilege of being involved in mass media, which meant I had access to various camera equipment. On occasion, I would bring home a video cassette, recorder camera, a real novelty at the time, to indulge in creative endeavors. Adam and my brother seized this opportunity to join forces and craft silly videos, drawing inspiration from the popular TV show Saturday Night Live. We would spend countless hours capturing hilarious moments, completely immersed in our youthful imagination. However, as time passed, around three decades to be precise, those cherished tapes have mysteriously vanished into the depths of time. It's disheartening to realize that those tangible memories are now lost. Recently, in a bout of nostalgia, I initiated a conversation with my brother about our long-lost friend Adam. To my utter surprise, he seemed utterly clueless about whom I was referring to. It was as if Adam's existence had been erased from his memory. Determined to unravel this perplexing enigma, I turned to another childhood friend named Corey, hoping that he could provide some clarity. Alas, his response mirrored my brother's as he too responded with a baffled, Who? Driven by an unrelenting curiosity, I embarked on a mission to uncover any trace of Adam's presence in our shared history. Scouring through dusty old yearbooks, my fingers delicately flipped through the brittle pages, desperately seeking a glimpse of the friend that we had seemingly forgotten. And there it was, a single photograph tucked away in the background of a shot, captured in the bustling lunchroom. As I stared at the image, there he was, seated at a round table, surrounded by a few of our mutual friends. The clarity of my memory contrasted sharply with my brother's disbelief as he adamantly denied recognizing this young man named Adam. Undeterred by my brother's lack of recollection, I took the virtual realm of social media, specifically our high school alumni Facebook page. I shared the photograph I had discovered, accompanied by a heartfelt plea for anyone who might remember Adam to come forward. The response, however, was disheartening. Despite the collective efforts of my peers to recall our shared past, no one seemed to have any memory of Adam. It was as if he had faded into the ether, leaving behind only a hazy reminiscence. Frustrated yet unwavering in my conviction, I snapped a picture of the yearbook page to my trusty phone and I uploaded it onto Facebook. To my dismay, the image was deemed too blurry to draw any definitive conclusions. People scoured their own yearbooks comparing the faces in question, but their discoveries only added to the confusion. Some insisted that the person in the photograph was indeed a different individual, further deepening the enigma. In the midst of this bewildering quest, doubt began to creep into my mind. Was it possible that I had fabricated this entire existence of Adam? Was I slowly losing my grip on reality? The more I pondered, the more I realized that this experience may not be as unique as I had initially believed. Surely others must have encountered similar instances of forgotten friendships and blurred memories. So I beseech anyone who has undergone such perplexing situations to come forth and share their stories. For now, though, I remain steadfast in my conviction that Adam was indeed a virtual, rather a vital part of our lives, a friend who shared countless laughs and misadventures with my brother, despite the collective amnesia that has plagued those who were once acquainted with him. I hold on to the fragments of memories that have withstood the test of time. The memory of Adam, the Joker who moved away when we were in ninth grade, remains indelibly etched within my mind. I'm almost certain that his father was a member of the Air Force, but the details surrounding his departure remain shrouded in ambiguity. In this world of fleeting connections and transient encounters, it's disconcerting to witness the erosion of memories that were once so vivid and clear. I refuse to surrender to the mists of forgetfulness. The quest to unravel the truth behind Adam's existence will continue, fueled by my unwavering determination to unearth the enigmatic tale of our long-lost friend. Until then, I implore you, fellow seekers of forgotten connections, to share your own experiences and offer solace in the knowledge that we are not alone in our journey through the labyrinth of fading memories. 
moving back to Asia to be with my sick grandmother was a decision that I made without hesitation. All of my relatives and I felt like I was the only grandchild who had actually taken time to visit her. Her apartment, although old, held a certain charm with its creaking doors and occasional flickering lights. It wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It added character to the place. It had been a decade since my grandfather passed away, leaving behind a void that could never be filled. The last memory I had of him was when he kicked my relatives and me out of the house. Overwhelmed by emotions, I was only 14 at the time, unsure of how to react when my grandfather was yelling at my uncles, urging them to leave. Looking back, my biggest regret was not reaching out to him, not holding his hand and comforting him. For years, I had been distant from the apartment, avoiding the memories that it held. However, since my return, I couldn't ignore the heavy sadness that seemed to weigh upon me. It was an indescribable feeling, a constant burden on my heart. It was as if someone wanted to communicate with me, to convey a message that needed to be heard. One night after a particularly stressful day with customers, I arrived home past midnight, exhausted and seeking solace. I found myself conversing with a friend on the phone. As I entered the room adorned with my grandfather's picture, a wave of sadness washed over me, intensifying the weight on my heart. This emotion wasn't entirely mine. It felt as though someone or something was trying to reach out and share their sorrow. Memories of my grandfather flooded my mind. The last time I saw him, the moment he kicked us out, and it was all too overwhelming. My friend, sensing my distress, suggested that I speak aloud about what I was experiencing, as if addressing my grandfather directly. Intrigued and somewhat apprehensive, I decided to give it a try. I poured out my thoughts, my regrets, as if I were having a heartfelt conversation with my grandfather. I expressed my deep sadness, particularly my regret for not holding his hand during that chaotic farewell. And then it happened. The lights in the room began to flicker uncontrollably, like a wild dance of illumination. It was an astonishing display, one that could have made anyone lose their composure. Startled, I attempted to rationalize the phenomenon, attributing it to faulty wiring or a mere coincidence. But my friend, undeterred, urged me to continue speaking to my grandfather, convinced that there was a connection to be explored here. Taking a deep breath... I resumed my conversation, pouring my heart out into the empty room. Sharing stories of my travels and life outside of Asia, time seemed to blur as I spoke, and a sense of comfort enveloped me. I concluded my monologue with the words filled with love, assuring my grandfather that he would forever hold a special place in my heart. Just as I finished speaking, the lights flickered back on with a renewed intensity, as if they were affirming the connection forged between my grandfather and me. It was an awe-inspiring sight, a testament to the inexplicable forces at play. And then, in an almost poetic manner, one of the lights blew out, shrouding the room in darkness. It was as if the lingering sadness had been replaced by a profound sense of peace. In that moment, I couldn't help but feel a profound love, a warmth, a homely embrace that transcended the physical realm. I was convinced that my grandfather's spirit lingered in that apartment, patiently awaiting the reunion with my grandmother. Perhaps he had been listening all along, waiting for someone to acknowledge his presence and offer solace and love. From that day forward, the weight of sadness that had burdened me lifted, replaced by a renewed sense of purpose. I embraced the apartment and its quirks, finding solace in the belief that my grandfather's spirit resided within its walls. And as I cared for my grandmother, I knew that I wasn't alone. My grandfather's loving presence surrounded us, providing strength and comfort during our difficult times. In the end, my journey back to Asia was not only an act of compassion, but also a catalyst for discovering the hidden depths of my family's unique abilities. The aura of reading and connection with the spirits that my relatives and I possessed became more apparent as time goes on intertwining our lives with the spiritual realm in ways that we couldn't have imagined. Now, as I reflect upon my experiences, I am grateful for the opportunity to reconnect with my roots, 
to rediscover the love and support that transcends even death. The apartment, once a place of sorrow and distance, has transformed into a sanctuary of love, where the presence of my grandfather serves as a constant reminder that family bonds are unbreakable, even in the face of adversity. So, as I continue to reside in the apartment, cherishing each day with my grandmother, knowing that my grandfather's spirit watches over us, and as we navigate life together, I'm comforted by the knowledge that love endures, bridging the gap between the living and the departed. Story number five. What is wrong with me? The first chilling incident that I experienced took place a couple of years ago when I was diligently working on my local cinema. It was well past midnight and I found myself tasked with the responsibility of cleaning a massive screen all by myself. The vast auditorium was completely empty, devoid of any human presence. As I went about my duties, the ambiance grew eerie by the minute. Especially when the music abruptly ceased, leaving behind a haunting silence. To steady my nerves, I began singing a familiar tune, opting for Chim Chimney from the classic film Mary Poppins. Amidst my attempts to maintain composure, a distinct male laughter abruptly pierced the stillness, emanating from somewhere right beside me in the dimly lit seats. The inexplicable sound sent shivers cascading down my spine as it became increasingly evident that no one else was present. If anyone had entered the cinema, the creaking door and their footsteps would surely have alerted me, given the unusual cacophony they produced. Filling with a sense of foreboding, I swiftly descended the stairs, desperately seeking the solace of my colleagues. To my dismay, I could not locate any of them as if they were preoccupied with various tasks elsewhere in the building. It was only later that I discovered the tragic truth. An unfortunate man had lost his life during the construction of the cinema. May his soul rest in peace. The second inexplicable occurrence, the undeniably and most bewildering transpired during my granddad's 70th birthday celebration at a rented accommodation. The entire family had gathered, merrily conversing and sharing laughter downstairs, keeping my granddad company. In the midst of the festivities, I decided to retreat upstairs for a moment of respite. As I ascended the staircase, one could catch a glimpse inside the room across the corridor. To my astonishment, I beheld a figure perched upon the bed, a figure adorned in my granddad's distinctive shirt and pants. Its appearance was an uncanny replica of my beloved granddad right down to the minutest details. Without hesitation, I called out to him, bewildered by his presence in the upper quarters. Why are you up here, Grandad? Everyone's waiting downstairs, I implored. However, to my profound dismay, the figure merely remained transfixed, gazing pensively out the window. It neither responded to my inquiries, nor made any movements indicative of acknowledging my existence. An inexplicable sense of unease washed over me, as if an unspoken intuition warned me against drawing closer. Struggling to recall my original purpose for ascending the stairs, I momentarily averted my gaze from the peculiar apparition. Yet, as I turned my attention back to the room, I had vanished into thin air. It had vanished into thin air, leaving no trace behind. Descending the staircase, I entered the front room where my granddad's jovial laughter filled the air. Still shaken from my encounter, I recounted the strange apparition to my family, convinced that my granddad had momentarily retreated upstairs. However, to my utter disbelief, each family member assured me that my granddad had been present with them the entire time. It dawned upon me then that the figure I had seen was not a living being, but rather an ethereal presence imitating my granddad's form. It was a moment of realization that my granddad had passed away at the age of 80, plunging me into a profound grief that continues to haunt me to this day. In retrospect, it almost feels as though something otherworldly was attempting to convey an impending tragedy that awaited my beloved granddad. In addition to these inexplicable encounters, 
I've also grappled with episodes of sleep paralysis, a harrowing phenomenon that has plagued me on numerous occasions. During these distressing episodes, I find myself immobilized, trapped within the confines of my own body, as if an invisible force holds me captive. It is during these paralyzing moments that I have been confronted with a peculiar revelation. Upon stumbling across photographs from the era of World War II, I have discovered the existence of a woman who bears an uncanny resemblance to myself, down to the very contours of her smile. The uncanny resemblance has left me pondering the enigmatic nature of the human experience and the inexplicable connections that span across time and generations. In conclusion, these series of inexplicable events, ranging from the eerie laughter in the deserted cinema to the apparition of my granddad's doppelganger, along with the disconcerting episodes of sleep paralysis and the mysterious resemblance to a woman from the past, all of this has left an indelible mark on my psyche. They serve as haunting reminders that the realm of the unknown, the supernatural, and the unexplained often interweave with their everyday lives, adding an ethereal dimension that defies rational explanation. These encounters have forever altered my perceptions of reality, reminding me that the world is teeming with enigmas, waiting to be unraveled, even as they continue to perplex and confound us. Story number 10. Former jail deputy saw a ghost at work during night shift. After I graduated last May, I made the decision to take up a job at my local jail. It wasn't meant to be a long-term plan, I simply wanted to work for a year and save up some cash before heading off to college. Little did I know that this temporary gig would lead me on an extraordinary journey filled with spine-tingling encounters and revelations. Fast forward a bit and I find myself only a few weeks into the training program. I've always been intrigued by the idea of ghosts, secretly harboring a belief in their existence. However, up until that point, I couldn't claim to have ever seen one with my own eyes. All that was about to change, during one eventful night while I was on post duty. The clock showed a little after 5 a.m. and there I was, sitting behind my desk, utterly bored out of my mind. As a diligent deputy, I was doing my best not to succumb to the drowsiness that had settled in after 11 hours of my 12-hour shift. To keep myself awake, I resorted to spinning around in my chair, hoping to combat the encroaching fatigue. Little did I know that this mundane act would mark the beginning of an extraordinary experience. To set the scene, let me paint a visual picture for you. I was stationed in a massive room filled with numerous cells. At one end of this room stood the officer's desk, complete with a large window behind it. These windows were highly reflective, allowing officers to monitor the pod from the hallway without the inmates being able to peer out. On the other end of the pod were the cells, some of which were situated behind a second pane of glass. Stay with me because this detail becomes crucial, I assure you. So there I was, spinning in my chair at my desk, when something caught my eye in the reflective windows behind me. I glanced up and noticed movements upstairs. Someone was walking around, out of their cell but still behind the glass. At first, disbelief washed over me, but in an instant, sheer panic replaced it. Thoughts raced through my mind, a whirlwind of expletives and frantic assessments, Oh my goodness, who on earth is out of their cell at this ungodly hour? Oh no, I'm in deep trouble. I swiveled around in a hurry, only to find no one up there. Anxious and bewildered, I rushed to the control panel that governed the cell doors and verified that they were all securely locked, which they were. I even ascended the stairs to the upper level myself, ensuring every nook and cranny was as impenetrable as possible. Amidst my fervent attempts to avoid getting fired, a realization dawned upon me. I had just witnessed a bona fide ghost. There was no mistaking it. I had unequivocally seen someone up there. This wasn't a fleeting shadow or a suspicious speck of dust. It was a genuine person in an orange jumpsuit, casually strolling about. I could vividly describe this apparition's haircut, height, general build, and even the type of beard that he sported. To be honest... I had always harbored a suspicion that the place was riddled with supernatural occurrences. From my very first day, I had sensed an otherworldly presence in the air. 
So without skipping a beat, I dialed my corporal and excitedly shared the news. I had seen a ghost. But the story doesn't end there. Following my otherworldly encounter, I couldn't help but boast about it to anyone who would listen. Reactions were mixed as you would expect. My sergeant confessed to not being a believer in the paranormal while other fellow deputies shared their own accounts of witnessing inexplicable phenomena during their shifts. However, it was the sergeant on the day shift who revealed something that left an indelible mark on my memory. He informed me that a few years ago an inmate had tragically taken their own life in that very same pod. That wasn't news to me as a few seasoned colleagues had mentioned it in passing. Intrigued, we decided to delve further and compare the description I had provided with the records of the deceased inmate. Lo and behold, it was an exact match. The individual I saw walking upstairs, down to the slender face and distinctly billy goat beard, was undoubtedly the late inmate. The realization sent shivers down my spine, solidifying my belief in the supernatural. Eager to gather more information, I engaged in conversations with some inmates. Surprisingly, I received corroborating accounts from multiple sources. They, too, had experienced instances where they could hear footsteps and catch glimpses of someone peering into their cells during the late hours of the night. It couldn't have been a correctional officer, as they're always more, you know, they always wore standard orange jumpsuits. This mind-boggling series of events has left an indelible impression on me. It expanded the understanding of the world, compelling me to embrace the inexplicable and acknowledge the existence of phenomena beyond the realm of the ordinary. As I continue my journey, both in my career and in life, I remain ever open to the mysteries and wonders that lie just beneath the surface, waiting to be discovered and explored. Story number seven, Scary Ghost Encounter. So I downloaded the Spirit Talker application because I've been engrossed in countless paranormal videos on YouTube lately, and I wanted to verify its legitimacy for myself. It was an ordinary day when I had an appointment at the hospital, so I figured it would be the perfect opportunity to test out the app. Without further ado, I launched the application and it allowed to run in the background. At first, it started spewing out a stream of seemingly random words, which immediately made me skeptical. My initial reaction was to dismiss it as mere fabrication. Nevertheless, my curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to play around with the app a little bit more. I summoned the courage to ask the app for a name and a story, fully expecting it to provide me with another generic response. To my surprise, it offered two distinct names and claimed that one of them had been a witness to a devastating car crash. The eeriness of the situation sent shivers down my spine, but I still couldn't shake the notion that it might all be a clever ruse. However, the app continued to pique my interest as it started mentioning peculiar words like patience, knife, and injection. Coincidentally, I happened to be at the hospital for an injection myself, which intensified the uncanny atmosphere surrounding me. As I left the hospital, I felt compelled to address whatever entity or entities were allegedly following me through the app. I sternly notified them that they had no permission to accompany me back home and expressed my gratitude for their interaction but requested them to leave me be. Just as I was about to exit the hospital's doors, a chilling voice emanated from the app, pleading, Please leave here. A sense of unease washed over me, but I decided to leave the application running as I embarked on my journey homeward. The entire trip back was remarkably silent. The once chatty Spirit Talker app fell eerily dormant, leaving me in an unsettling state of anticipation. Finally, upon reaching the sanctuary of our home, the app suddenly came back to life, uttering the bone-chilling words, I'm home, and ashes. My heart skipped a beat as I realized that my boyfriend had been keeping his late brother's ashes, a tragic reminder of his sibling's untimely demise by suicide. It was an emotional, charged moment, and the app's subsequent responses began to align directly with my thoughts, actions, and inquiries. As I cautiously passed by the table adorned with cherished photographs and the urn containing the ashes, the Spirit Talker app seemed to intrude into my reality 
blurting out phrases like don't move, recognize, and relative. Overwhelmed with a mixture of trepidation and curiosity, I gingerly took a seat and mustered up the courage to ask the app a poignant question. Where are you? To my utter astonishment, the app responded with a single word. The hall. A wave of profound sadness washed over me, and my heart sank to the depths of my being. Suddenly the app spoke in an unexpected name. Eric. I was taken back as I had never mentioned Eric before, and my boyfriend had never discussed him either. It was a name that held great significance within my boyfriend's family, forever intertwined with the tragedy that had shaped their lives. In that vulnerable moment, the app's eerie messages continued, revealing fragments of a story that only Eric could know, declaring, I'm dead, and evoking feelings of sorrow and anguish. Overwhelmed with a profound mixture of emotions, I couldn't contain the floodgate of tears streaming down my face. The weight of the experience pressed heavily on my heart as I found myself inexplicably connected to a realm beyond our understanding. I knew in my soul that it was my boyfriend's departed brother communicating through the app. The sheer authenticity of the app's knowledge, with its mentions of real names and personal details, left me astounded and convinced of its otherworldly nature. In the midst of my emotional turmoil, a flicker of apprehension settled within me. While I had substantial evidence to support the legitimacy of this haunting encounter, I hesitated to divulge the full extent of this experience. My desire to protect the privacy of those involved, shielding them from potential distress or unwanted attention, weighed heavily on my mind. The evidence and corroborating accounts would serve as a personal testament to the genuineness of the Spirit Talker app, but I knew that sharing it could potentially upset someone deeply. And so, this remarkable journey filled with inexplicable connections, profound sadness, and a brush with the supernatural, remains a closely guarded secret within the confines of my heart. The Spirit Talker app, with its chilling accuracy and inexplicable insights, has forever changed my perception of the unseen world, leaving me with a profound appreciation for the mysteries that lie beyond our tangible existence. It serves as a constant reminder that there are realms yet explored, waiting to be unveiled, and that sometimes the most extraordinary experiences are meant to be kept hidden, cherished only by those who are fortunate enough to have been touched by their enigmatic embrace. Story number one, A Weird Coincidence. Let me tell you about my family's summer home in Finland. It's a quaint place situated in the countryside, passed down through generations. Constructed back in 1900 by my ancestors, it exudes an eerie atmosphere that's hard to escape. The walls are adorned with old photographs capturing moments frozen in time. As you can imagine, many peculiar and unsettling incidents have occurred within those aged walls leaving an indelible mark on anyone who has had the fortune or misfortune of visiting. In the year of 2014, I had a horrifying nightmare that still haunts me to this day. It was a vivid depiction of the living room in our ancestral house, where I often found solace and slumber. However, in this dreadful dream, something was amiss. Instead of the familiar couch positioned beneath the window, there stood a bed. I had never encountered a bed in that room before. It simply did not belong. Curiosity compelled me to sit on the edge of the unfamiliar bedding, and it was then that my world descended into a chilling nightmare. From between the layers of the mattress, a hand emerged, falling ominously into view. My heart raced as I hesitantly lifted the top mattress, revealing a gruesome sight that seared itself into my memory. Before me lay the decomposed remains of a woman, adorned in antiquated clothing from a bygone era. The image was so distressingly vivid that I could almost smell the putrid scent of decay, while maggots wriggling their way out of the vacant sockets that once housed her eyes. In a state of sheer terror, I awoke from the nightmare, my screams echoing through the stillness of the night. The trauma of that experience lingered for days, leaving me shaken and disturbed. Yet, time eventually eroded the vividness of the dream, allowing me to push it to the recesses of my mind. 
Fast forward a few years and I found myself back at our ancestral summer home, accompanied by my family. It was during this visit that my grandmother began recounting stories of her own grandmother, a woman shrouded in mystery and perhaps plagued by severe mental afflictions. I listened intently as my grandmother revealed that this enigmatic ancestor had spent the entirety of her remaining days within the walls of our family home after her husband's untimely passing. Refusing entry to all but her own son, she guarded the secrets of her secluded existence with great fervor. The mere thought of her reclusive nature sent shivers down my spine, each revelation deepening the chilling atmosphere that clung to the very fabric of her ancestral abode. As we perused the old photographs stored within the house, I stumbled upon a picture that froze me in my tracks. There, captured in black and white, sat an elderly lady at a table in the living room. It was unmistakable, the same living room from my tormented dream. Behind her stood the window, and beneath it rested the exact bed that had invaded my slumber. The sheets, the single bed frame, the solitary pillow perched at its edge, all were identical to the haunting imagery that had plagued my subconscious. A surge of dread coursed through my veins as I shared the discovery with my grandmother, desperate for an explanation. To my astonishment, she met my revelation with a strange smile, a glimmer of knowing in her eyes. With an air of whispered secrecy, she uttered the words, You saw her. The weight of those three simple words hung in the air, suffocating the room with an otherworldly presence. It was as though my grandmother touched the spirit of her own grandmother and had confirmed the impossible truth that my dream had somehow tapped into the realm of the supernatural. I watched in disbelief as her smile faded into a mask of confusion, as if the conversation had never even taken place. It was a disconcerting moment that was leaving me unsure of what to make of this unsettling revelation. Recently, I summoned the courage to revisit the topic with my grandmother, hoping to shed further light on this enigmatic occurrence surrounding our ancestral summer home. To my surprise, her demeanor had transformed from nonchalant dismissal to genuine fear. The memory of our previous conversation had seemingly eluded her, leaving her apprehensive and visibly shaken. It was then that I realized the profound impact this revelation had on her reawakening a long-forgotten specter that lurked within the depths of our family's history. In conclusion, my family's summer home in Finland harbors more than just memories and nostalgia. It guards a dark secret intertwined with the echoes of a tormented past. The nightmares that once plagued my sleep now bear an uncanny connection to the stories of my grandmother's grandmother, a woman lost to time and mystery. As I reflect upon these unsettling events, I can't help but wonder what other hidden truths lie dormant within the walls of our ancestral abode, waiting to be unearthed by those courageous enough to venture into its hollowed walls. Story number eight, late night voice outside in our yard. It was another one of those routine weekends when my step-siblings, as they often did, came over to spend time with us. We were accustomed to their regular visits, and this time was no different. However, something peculiar occurred on that particular night, a series of events that would forever linger in my mind. As the night wore on, I found myself roused from slumber, compelled to make a trip to the bathroom. Reluctantly, I left the warmth of my bed and made my way down the hallway. The house was quiet, save for the occasional creaking of floorboards beneath my feet. After attending to my needs, I decided to return to the comfort of my bed and resume my uninterrupted sleep. With summer in full swing, I had left my window ajar, allowing a gentle breeze to permeate my room. As I nestled myself back underneath the covers, my mind began drifting into the realm of dreams. But just as I was about to slip into blissful slumber, a faint whisper pierced through the stillness of the night, beckoning my attention. Help me! The voice pleaded, barely audible but impossible to ignore. Curiosity overwhelmed me, and I found myself compelled to investigate the source of this mysterious cry. After all, we lived in the countryside. 
far removed from the bustling noise of the city. Unless someone had trespassed onto our property, such sounds shouldn't have reached my ears. Driven by an unexplicable urge, I rose from the bed once more to approach the open window. I strained my senses, hoping to catch another hint of the distressing plea. Moments later it came again, louder this time, seemingly originating from the vicinity of our garage. It was a chilling invocation that sent chills cascading down my spine. The voice repeated itself twice more, each time growing slightly more desperate. Uncertainty gnawed at me as I grappled with the decision of whether to venture out into the night or dismiss it as a mere figment of my imagination. Ultimately, I opted to close the window, shutting out the eerie whispers, and convinced myself that it was nothing more than a product of my tired mind. Just as I settled back into bed, ready to surrender to the embrace of sleep, an abrupt and blood-curdling scream shattered the tranquility of the house. It reverberated through the corridors, awaking every occupant from their peaceful slumber. My heart raced and a surge of adrenaline surged through my veins as it instinctively leaped out of my bed. Following the source of the commotion, we all congregated outside my little stepsister's room. Her terror-stricken face told a tale of the unimaginable. She recounted how she had been roused from her sleep by the distinct sound of someone or something attempting to manipulate the doorknob, desperately trying to gain entry into her sanctuary. The revelation struck fear into my heart, for my own room was situated closest to the door in question. Yet, strangely, I had not heard the telltale click of the doorknob being manipulated. Steph, visibly shaken, admitted that she had only heard the eerie jingling sound and the subsequent panic that had consumed her. The air became heavy with a mix of anxiety, and we contemplated the chilling events that had unfolded throughout the night. Thoughts raced through our minds, wondering who or what could be lurking outside. Attempting to breach her haven for safety, the possibility of an intruder sent shivers, conjuring images of the worst possible scenarios. Together we mustered our courage and decided to thoroughly inspect the premises. With trepidation, we tiptoed through the dimly lit hallways, wielding a mix of household objects to use as makeshift weapons. Every creak of the floorboards heightened our senses, amplifying the tension that hung in the air like an ominous fog. Our search provided fruitless, as no trace of an intruder could be found. The house remained as it was, silent and seemingly undisturbed. We questioned our own sanity, doubting the authenticity of the events that had unfolded. Could it all have been a vivid nightmare, playing tricks on our vulnerable minds? As dawn broke, casting its gentle rays through the windows, we collectively breathed a sigh of relief. The ordeal had passed leaving behind a lingering unease that would take time to dissipate. Though we may never fully comprehend the events of that fateful night, it served as a reminder of the fragility of our sense of security and the ever-present mysteries that can unravel even within the confines of our homes. From that night onward, the faint cry for help, the chilling jiggling of the doorknob, and the harrowing scream would forever be etched into our memories. They served as a haunting reminder that darkness can encroach upon the most seemingly tranquil settings and that the veil between reality and the unknown is often thinner than we care to acknowledge. Story number three. Just Happened. It was a peculiar night, a night that would forever be etched in my memory. The clock struck 2.26 a.m., the darkness embracing the room as my wife and I lay in bed, engulfed in a state of blissful slumber. Little did we know that this night would bring forth a series of inexplicable events that would leave us perplexed and astounded. Just a few days prior, we had welcomed a new addition to our family, a delightful little kitten we affectionately named Dougie Jones clever nod to the renowned television series Twin Peaks. Dougie Jones had become the embodiment of joy in our household. He was a precious creature with vibrant orange fur and a charming white belly. 
However, due to his mischievous tendencies and penchant for wreaking havoc, we rarely allowed him to share our sleeping quarters. His proclivity for causing destruction and indulging in his wild moments of feline frenzy, often referred to as the Zoomies, had led us to enforce strict boundaries when it came to bedrooms, you know, our bedroom sanctuary. However, fate had other plans for us on that eventful night. My wife abruptly woke from her slumber, her voice filled with bewilderment as she uttered, Bro, what the fuck? Startled by her sudden awakening, I turned my gaze towards her, only to be greeted by a perplexing sight. Resting upon her chest, partially concealed beneath the covers, was a kitten. It was as if Dougie Jones himself had defied the laws of reality and materialized right before our eyes. I swiftly directed my attention toward the closed bedroom door, curious as to the source of the faint meowing that reverberated from the other side. As I returned my gaze to my wife, the mysterious feline that had rested on her chest had vanished, leaving no trace of its existence. Perplexed and filled with a sense of trepidation, I reached for a flashlight, determined to uncover the truth hidden within the shadows of our room. I meticulously combed every nook and cranny, my heart pounding with each passing moment. I checked under the bed, examining the side, and meticulously searched every corner of the room. Alas, there was no sign of the enigmatic apparition that had bestowed itself upon us. In the midst of my confusion and disbelief, a sudden realization dawned upon me, a revelation that sent shivers down my spine. The kitten I had witnessed on my wife's chest albeit fleeting, was not Dougie Jones. It was an ethereal manifestation, an otherworldly specter that had taken on the form of a cat. The vivid image of its pristine white fur, veiled beneath the covers, was etched into my mind. How could such an inexplicable phenomenon occur within the sanctity of our own bed? As my bewilderment grew, so did my resentment towards this audacious entity. The audacity of this spectorial interloper to infiltrate the sanctity of our slumbering quarters was simply unfathomable. Anger welled up within me, fueled by the invasion of our personal space. How dare this apparition manifest itself within the confines of my cherished resting place? The weight of the unexplained occurrences bore heavily upon my consciousness, the questions multiplying within my mind. Why had this cat-like entity chosen my wife as its ephemeral resting spot? What purpose did it serve and what message did it seek to convey? The walls of my rationality began to crumble as I delved deeper into the realms of the unknown, seeking answers to the enigma that had unraveled in our midst. In the days that followed, my wife and I embarked on a quest for understanding. We consulted friends, sought advice from experts in the paranormal, and delved into the annals of folklore and mysticism. Each inquiry, each conversation, only served to deepen the mystery surrounding the spectral feline that had graced our bed that fateful night. Time passed, and the spectral visitation remained an unsolved riddle in the tapestry of our lives. However, amidst the confusion and unanswered questions, one thing became clear— we were forever changed by this inexplicable encounter. The boundaries of our perceptions had been stretched, our minds opened to the vastness of the unknown. It served as a stark reminder that in the realm of existence, there were forces at play that defied conventional understanding. As I recount this tale, the memories resurface with vivid clarity, and the room fills the air with an intrigue and a wonder. The enigmatic visitation of that spectral feline continues to linger in the recesses of my mind, an enduring testament to the mysteries that lie just beyond the veil of our everyday reality. And so I carry this experience with me, forever intrigued by the extraordinary, forever searching for the elusive truths that hide in the shadows of our world. Story number four. I saw my dead friend. Completely lucid, fully conscious, I found myself standing beside my door, and there he was, head lowered in a grim posture. It was only when he lifted his gaze that I realized it was him. 
recognizable by his distinctive silhouette. He was shrouded entirely in darkness, with piercing yellow eyes that seemed to emit an otherworldly glow, reminiscent of a radiant starburst. A haunting sight, indeed. Recently, a few weeks ago, I had another encounter with him. This time, he materialized before me as a complete apparition, though slightly blurred around the edges. He walked through the living room, his attention solely fixed on me. It was an unsettling experience, witnessing his ethereal presence so vividly. The strange thing is that his influence lingers in my life every single day. Whether I'm drifting off into slumber or awakening to the next day, his spectral essence trails behind me like a shadow. There's an unexplainable connection that binds us, and it becomes particularly pronounced during moments of sadness or anxiety. It's as if he assumes a protective role, drawing closer and enveloping me in his presence, amplifying his force. Deep within me a curiosity begins to stir. I feel an innate desire to establish a stronger connection with him, to communicate beyond the bounds of our spectral encounters. It's not just the sense that he's watching over me, but an intuitive understanding that he yearns to convey something of importance, something that weighs heavily on his ethereal existence. His silent messages beckon me, enticing my soul to delve into the realms of the unknown. Perhaps there's a story untold, a message of guidance or solace awaiting revelation. In the depths of my being, I feel a profound need to reach out and establish a bridge between our worlds, to explore the dimensions that separate the living from the departed. Every day as the sun rises and sets, as the ebb and flow of life continues its eternal dance, I find myself increasingly drawn to the mysteries that surround him. The allure of deciphering his purpose, his intentions, has become an inescapable pull, a quest that consumes my thoughts and occupies my waking hours. This enigmatic presence, this spectral guardian, holds the potential to unlock secrets beyond our comprehension. His very existence challenges the boundaries of the tangible world, beckoning me to embrace the enigma and unravel the threads that connect us. Through the veil that separates the living from the ethereal, I yearn to embark on a journey of discovery, to transcend the limits of human perception and unearth the truths that lay hidden. With each passing day, my longing to contact him intensifies, fueled by profound belief that our connection extends beyond the realms of the physical. It's a connection that transcends mortality, defying the constraints of time and space. His presence resonates within me, intertwining our spirits and urging me to venture further into the unknown, where answers and enlightenment may wait. There is a whisper in my soul, a whispered invitation to explore the realm of the supernatural. It's an invitation to unlock the secrets held within the glowing yellow eyes of this mysterious apparition, to delve deeper into the mysteries of existence and uncover the truths that lie dormant. While the world around me may perceive him as an eerie specter, I sense his protective aura, a guardian spirit guiding me through life's turbulent tides. It is a bond that transcends the limitations of the mortal realm, an ethereal companionship that imbues my existence with a profound sense of purpose. As I think, I strive to decipher the cryptic messages. I yearn to unravel this enigma, to unravel the whispers that linger in the ether, and to decode the language of the beyond. It's a quest that demands courage, curiosity, and an unwavering belief in the possibility of interdimensional connection. In this profound union of the living and the dead, I embark on a voyage of self-discovery and enlightenment. With every breath, I inhale the essence of the unknown, embracing the enigma that manifests before me. Through the blurred boundaries of the ethereal, I reach out, ready to unlock the secrets whispered by the spectral guardian who has chosen to reveal himself to me. For in the depths of his luminous yellow gaze, I perceive the yearning for communion, the desire to impart wisdom that transcends mortal understanding. It is an invitation to explore the uncharted territories of existence, to bridge the gap between the corporeal and the intangible, 
and to uncover the profound truths that await our joint exploration. Story number 12, Knocking in the Middle of the Night. I can't even begin to describe the sheer bewilderment and utter disbelief that washed over me as I found myself amidst an inexplicable phenomenon, unlike anything I had ever experienced before. It was a night like any other, where the moon cast its ethereal glow upon the world, and a silence enveloped the household as everyone in my abode slumbered peacefully their dreams weaving intricate tales into the realms of their unconscious minds. The solitude of the night should have provided solace, but little did I know that an otherworldly encounter awaited me, shattering the tranquility and leaving me questioning the very fabric of reality. As I lay in my bed, surrounded by darkness, the sound of an unexpected disturbance pierced through the stillness, reverberating through the corridors of my home. It was a noise that sent chills down my spine, a door being forcefully slammed shut, emanating a deep thud that echoed in my ears. My heart skipped a beat, pounding against my chest like a wild beast yearning for freedom. Panic surged within me as I frantically tried to make sense of the situation. No one else was awake at this hour, and even if they were, the force required to create such a sound seemed far beyond the capabilities of any human inhabitant of the house. My mind grappled with the possibilities, but rational explanations seemed to dissolve into thin air, leaving me suspended in a state of apprehension. As if in response to my bewildered thoughts, the door which had been so violently disrupted was subject to a strange and inexplicable force once more. It seemed as though an unseen presence was pressing up against it, exerting pressure with a suddenness that defied logic. The door rattled under the unseen weight, producing an unnerving symphony of creaks and groans. Yet, what followed this eerie occurrence was even more perplexing. Two distinct knocks pierced through the air, gentle in nature but possessing an uncanny power to send shivers cascading down my spine. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end as the realization sank in. I was not alone in this inexplicable ordeal. The knocks, delicate yet deliberate, seemed to be a message of sorts, a subtle attempt to gain my attention. Fear and curiosity waged a battle within me, and I found myself torn between seeking answers and seeking refuge. Summoning whatever courage I could muster, I made a hasty decision to reach out of my lock my trembling hands struggling to perform a task that should have been a second nature. With the resounding click, the door was secured, as if barricaded against the unknown force that lurked in the shadows. It was a feeble attempt at self-preservation, a futile act that sought to shield me from the inexplicable terrors that lie beyond. As moments turned into minutes, the quietude that followed was almost deafening. The air grew heavy with anticipation, as though time itself had been stretched thin. Suspending me in this unnerving limbo. And then, as if the universe conspired to test the limits of my sanity, another knock reverberated through the silent expanse of my room, and this time it was a single delicate tap that resounded with a haunting elegance, as if a ghostly hand had gently brushed against the door. My mind raced trying to comprehend the incomprehensible. I searched for any semblance of rationality, scouring the depths of my memory for instances of similar encounters. Yet I found no solace in my quest for answers. For never had I witnessed or heard of such a surreal sequence of events. It was uncharted territory, a realm untouched by the bounds of human understanding. A surge of curiosity mingled with fear coursed through my veins, tempting me to embark on a journey of discovery, to delve deeper into this enigma that had permeated my existence. I pondered the existence of countless stories and experiences shared by others on the vast expanse of the internet, yet none mirrored the peculiarity of my own plight. It was as if the universe had conspired to test the limits of my belief thrusting me into the surreal narrative that defied explanation. 
And so, here I am, recounting the extraordinary tale, striving to capture every intricate detail and every flicker of emotion that unfolded in those fleeting moments of the unexplained. As the night stretches on, shrouded in mystery, I find myself grappling with the unknown, simultaneously captivated and terrified by the enigmatic force that toy with my reality. I can only wonder what awaits me beyond that door, what secrets lie hidden in the abyss of the night. Story number five. Strange happening in the middle of the night. It was a typical evening as my wife and I put our kids to bed around 9.30 p.m. We followed our usual routine, settling into bed ourselves between 10.30 and 11. However, on this particular night, something extraordinary happened that left me both bewildered and intrigued. As we lay side by side in a spooning position on the mattress, I realized that our sleeping posture was different from our usual arrangement. It was a result of me washing my hair before bed, as I wanted my dreadlocks to hang to the side and allow any excess water to drain off. Little did I know that the seemingly inconsequential decision would play a role in the events that unfolded. Sometime during the night, in a state of half-sleep or semi-consciousness, I perceived our bedroom door opening slowly. My drowsy mind registered the movement, but I quickly drifted back into slumber. However, soon after, I felt a set of tiny hands clasping my own, playing with my fingers and palms, just as my children would do. Initially, I entertained the thought that it might be my nine-year-old son seeking comfort, but the likelihood seemed remote. Neither of my kids ever ventured into our room. They always stayed in their own. Exhausted and lacking full cognitive capacity, I dismissed it as a fleeting imagination and succumbed to sleep once more. But then something inexplicable occurred. I became aware of a pulsating force on my back, accompanied by a gentle buzzing in both my ears. This peculiar sensation nudged me to partially open my eyes, and to my astonishment, I beheld a mesmerizing display of colorful lights, squinting against the overwhelming brightness. I could discern the shifting hues and patterns akin to the effects of a hallucinogenic experience. Allow me to provide some context. I am not a consumer of any substances, whether prescription drugs, street narcotics, or recreational enhancers. The last drink I had was a simple combination of Coke and whiskey, which I indulged in, you know, on the previous weekend. Thus, any explanation rooted in substance-induced hallucinations was implausible. The duration of the luminous display eluded my perception. It wasn't akin to a typical episode of sleep paralysis, where anxiety and a sense of entrapment often accompanied the ordeal. Strangely, I did not experience any fear or apprehension. Instead, I found myself in a state of curious observation, as if witnessing a phenomenon beyond the boundaries of ordinary existence. Shortly after these inexplicable events, my wife's voice pierced the silence. Who opened our door? she questioned, her tone tinged with perplexity. We both pondered how the door could have opened without one of us turning the doorknob. The mystery deepened. As the alarms blared at 6 a.m., signaling the start of a new day, our consciousness gradually returned. It was time to rouse our children from their slumber, prepare their lunches, and assist them in getting dressed. During the morning rush, I confided in my wife about the peculiar occurrences I had experienced during the night. Her eyes widened, reflecting a mix of surprise and intrigue as she revealed her own encounter. She had sensed movement on the bed, a weight akin to that of our cat, despite our deliberate efforts to keep the door shut and the feline out of our sleeping quarters. Seeking further clarity, I decided to casually inquire about the children's sleep, in hopes that one of them might confess to entering our room, potentially explaining the sensations of the hands touching and the weight on the bed. I posed the question. Their response was unanimous. They had slept soundly and had not ventured beyond the confines of their own rooms. It was worth mentioning that neither of our had a history of sleepwalking or engaging in similar nocturnal escapades. 
Deeply puzzled by these events, I resolved to gather myself and prepare for the task of driving the kids to school. As I stood before the bathroom mirror, toothbrush in hand, I caught a glimpse of my reflection. Startled, I found myself captivated by the vacant emptiness in my eyes. The sight disturbed me to such an extent that I averted my gaze, unable to withstand the disconcerting scrutiny any longer. Perhaps I'd inadvertently psyched myself out, but the disquieting image lingered in my mind, shrouded in an, enig- in an enigmatic aura. And so my tale concludes. I share this account in the hopes of receiving various perspectives, ranging from light-hearted humor to profound contemplation, or spiritual interpretations. The event of that night were undeniably significant, leaving an indelible mark on my consciousness. I felt compelled to share this extraordinary occurrence, yearning for insight and understanding in the face of the inexplicable. Possibly magic, mischievous entity, didn't notice it in my food. I had just returned from a brief trip to relieve myself and freshen up by rinsing my mouth with water. Little did I know that this seemingly innocuous act would soon thrust me into a perplexing and bewildering situation. As I began swishing the water around in my mouth, an abrupt and unexpected hardness made its presence known, causing me to pause in confusion. My initial assumption was that one of the brackets on my braces had come loose, which often led to unexpected discoveries in my mouth. However, upon closer inspection, I realized that it was not a fragment of unorthodox, or sorry, orthodontic hardware that had captured my attention, but rather a solid flake of old wall or ceiling drywall. Ew. To my astonishment, this peculiar flake of drywall was approximately the size of a nickel, leaving me utterly perplexed as to how it found its way into my mouth. My mind raced with questions, desperately seeking answers to this enigma. How had such an inconspicuous object ended up in my mouth? Had it somehow infiltrated my food without my notice? The thought of inadvertently consuming a fragment of drywall was both disconcerting and unfathomable. As I pondered the baffling origins of this intruder, my attention turned to the faucet itself. It boasted peculiar features, an aerator, a seemingly harmless addition, designed to enhance the water flow and control the formation of splashes. However, in light of recent events, this seemingly innocuous device now assumed an air of suspicion. Could it be that this aerator held the key to the mysterious appearance of the drywall flake in my mouth? Intrigued and determined to solve this puzzle, I retraced my actions meticulously, hoping to find any shred of evidence that would shed light on the situation. I replayed the moment in my mind, reliving each step of my endeavor to rinse away the day's remnants. And then, like a stroke of genius, a theory began to form within the recesses of my mind. Perhaps when I took my initial handful of water to commence the rinsing process, the drywall flake had appeared as if by magic. The prospect of such a fantastical occurrence both intrigued and bewildered me. Could it be that the drywall flake had materialized within the water stream itself, as if guided by an unseen force? I mulled over the possibility, considering the various elements at play. The aerator, with its intricate design and purpose, became the focal point of my inquiry. Could it have inadvertently transported this mysterious object into the water flowing from the faucet? My curiosity propelled me forward, and I decided to inspect the aerator more closely. With great care, I dismantled the apparatus, exposing its inner workings to the naked eye. Each component revealed itself, offering clues and insights into the attended functionality. It was then that I noticed a minuscule gap within the aerator structure, a potential gateway for foreign objects to enter the water stream. With an air of cautious optimism, I peered into the small crevice, hoping to uncover any remnants or traces of the enigmatic drywall flake. However, my search proved fruitless, as no evidence of its passage through its hidden passage could be found. 
Frustration mingled with fascination as I contemplated the elusive nature of this bizarre occurrence. Hours turned into days, and my quest to unravel the mystery persisted. Countless theories and scenarios flooded my thoughts, each one more fantastical than the last. I consulted experts in plumbing and construction, seeking their professional insights into the matter. Yet, despite their collective wisdom, no conclusive answers could be found. The drywall's flake origin remained shrouded in ambiguity, its journey into my mouth an unsolved riddle. As time wore on, I resigned myself to the fact that perhaps this incident would forever be regulated, or sorry, relegated, to the realm of the inexplicable. It would remain a tale to share with my friends and family, a captivating story that defied rational explanation. The drywall flake had become part of my personal folklore, a testament to life's penchant for presenting us with enigmatic occurrences that defy conventional understanding. And so, dear reader, I leave you with this tale of the unexpected, an account of a routine act gone awry, leaving me with a drywall flake in my mouth and a sense of wonderment in my heart. For in life, it is often in these inexplicable moments that remind us of the boundless mysteries that surround us, urging us to embrace curiosity and welcome the unknown. Story number 12, The Shadow Man and the Paranormal Experiences in the Apartment I Stay At Currently. I've always been a skeptic when it comes to the existence of ghosts. I mean, I'm a 23-year-old guy living in L.A., standing tall at six foot two, and I never believed in anything supernatural. That was until last year when something happened that changed my perspective completely. It was a chilling experience that I'll never forget. It was just an ordinary day and I was casually walking down the hallway of my apartment building. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a shadow. Now, shadows are pretty normal, but this one was different. It wasn't on the wall like most shadows would be. Instead, it was right in the middle of the hallway, moving as if it were a person. The strange thing was that there was nobody around. This shadow figure stood at about six foot one and had an imposing size, as if it belonged to a person weighing around 200 pounds. It made a sharp turn around a corner leading to the neighboring apartments. Naturally, I was intrigued, but also somewhat frightened. I didn't want this mysterious entity following me home, so I decided not to chase after it. I quickly retreated into my apartment, feeling a rush of unease. Opening the window for some fresh air, I was hoping to calm my nerves. However, what happened next only intensified my fear. From the apartment adjacent to mine, I could hear my neighbors engaged in a heated argument. The timing was uncanny and I couldn't shake off the feeling that there was something paranormal causing the disturbance. Curiosity got the better of me and I cautiously opened my front door to take a peek. To my surprise, there was nothing there. The eerie silence only added to the mystery. That incident took place in March of last year, but it was not the last time that I encountered something unexplainable. Several months later, I found myself assisting an on-site manager in removing a homeless lady who had been digging through the recycling bins, making a mess of everything. Once she left, I decided to record the aftermath on my phone, intending to send the footage to the building manager as evidence of the situation. Little did I know that this video would haunt me in more ways than one. When I played back the recording, everything appeared normal visually. However, the audio was a different story. Instead of the expected sounds of the environment, I heard what sounded like distant screams. Goosebumps covered my arms and a shiver ran down my spine. I was alone in my garage with no cars or bikes passing by, yet the screams echoed throughout the audio. In a panic, I bolted out of the garage, never daring to watch that video again on my phone. Months went by and I had almost convinced myself that these bizarre incidents were just figments of my imagination, but in December, during a gathering with my Russian friends, the supernatural made its presence felt once more. We were huddled around an expensive gaming setup, engrossed in a session of Resident Evil. Nice choice. Now, let me tell you, my friends are some of the bravest people I know, but what happened that night tested even their courage. 
Feeling a mix of curiosity and trepidation, I decided to show them the haunted video footage I had captured months ago. As they listened to the audio, one of them remarked that it sounded like someone burning in a fire. Suddenly all the lights and monitors and my friend's console shut off abruptly, plunging the room into darkness. Panic ensued as we struggled to restore power and fix the technical issue. It was a baffling situation because, as computer technicians, we were well equipped to handle such problems. However, this time we were stumped for a good five minutes. What struck me as even more unsettling was that the power outage and technical malfunction were only occurring in my friend's apartment, which happened to be directly across from mine. Fear gripped me as I contemplated the implications of the strange occurrence. Despite my unease, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was lurking in the darkness of my friend's room. Unable to ignore my instincts any longer, I decided to return home, which conveniently was just across the hall. Throughout the entire night, I was plagued by worry and an overwhelming sense of dread. I couldn't help but keep an eye on my friend's apartment, convinced that I saw movement within the darkness. It was a sleepless night filled with unease and a constant feeling of being watched. To this day, I still possess the haunted footage, saved on my old Instagram stories. However, I dare not open it again. I have learned that strange things start happening whenever I do. It serves as a chilling reminder of the inexplicable events that have unfolded in my life, events that have shattered my skepticism and forced me to confront the possibility that there are forces beyond our understanding. Ghosts may have once been an absurd notion to me, but now... They are a haunting reality that I can't easily dismiss. Story number nine. I think I'm going insane. Back in the 1980s, I embarked on a memorable hiking trip along the Appalachian Trail. Being from Virginia, I felt a deep connection to the natural beauty that surrounded me. It was a sunny day, and as I continued my trek, I came across a peculiar sight. There, amidst the wilderness, sat a rough-looking man, dressed as if he belonged to the late 19th or early 20th century, strumming a banjo with delicate notes that resonated through the air. Intrigued by the scene, I approached the man cautiously. He extended a friendly invitation for me to rest at his fire, and feeling a mixture of curiosity and wariness, I accepted. Taking a, well, taking a seat beside him, I couldn't help but notice that he never once glanced in my direction. Instead, he broke the silence with the enigmatic statement, You don't belong here. Confusion clouded my mind as I responded, What do you mean? Sensing my bewilderment, he continued without shifting his gaze. They've been watching you from the trees for a long time. You need to be careful where you wander. Unease settled in my bones as I scanned the surrounding trees, but I saw nothing out of the ordinary. Still, his words lingered in my mind. Unable to shake off the eerie encounter, I decided to bid him farewell and resumed my hike. Nightfall arrived and I set up my tent seeking solace within the confines of my bivy sack. The day's exertions and a few drinks consumed before bed had left me wary. However, as I lay there, whispers seemed to dance in the darkness, invading my thoughts. At first, I dismissed them as figments of my imagination, perhaps a side effect of fatigue and libations. Yet, the whispers persisted, growing louder and more distinct. After enduring a few minutes of torment, I mustered the courage to emerge from my sack, although I remained safely ensconced within my tent. Straining my ears, I picked up the unnerving sound of something drawing closer to my campsite. Fear gripped me tightly and my heart raced in my chest. Determined to defend myself, I reached for my trusty knife, my only immediate means of protection since my shotgun lay outside, leaning against a nearby tree no less. With a knife in hand, I cautiously stepped out of my tent, intently listening to the rustling of leaves and the ominous footfalls approaching. Panic surged through me when a bone-chilling screech pierced through the air, further confirming the presence of danger. Without delay, I made a split-second decision, 
Grasping my shotgun, I slung it over my shoulder and swiftly sought refuge in the sturdy branches of a nearby tree. Trembling with a mixture of fear and adrenaline, I perched myself in the tree, tightly clutching my weapon. In that unsettling moment, I strained my eyes to make sense of the shadows lurking among the trees. Suddenly, I beheld a sight that defied all reason. My heart nearly stopped as I struggled to comprehend what I was witnessing. Towering before me, bathed in an otherworldly white glow, stood a creature so monstrously intimidating that it seemed plucked from the depths of a nightmare. It was an entity unknown to me, a horrifying presence that sent shivers cascading down my spine. Summoning whatever courage remained within me, I shouted into the darkness, my voice quivering with a mix of desperation and determination. Oi, whatever the hell you are out there, back away and leave, or I swear I'll shoot. Silence greeted my plea, but then an unthinkable sound shattered the stillness of the night. The creature, unfathomably, let out a bone-chilling laugh that echoed through the forest. The sheer terror that gripped my soul at that moment was indescribable. My mind raced, urging me to take immediate action. Without a second thought, I hastily abandoned the relative safety of the tree branches, hastily grabbing my backpack and my trusted bottle of Jack Daniels. Fear propelled me into a frenzied sprint, my legs carrying me as fast as they could away from that nightmare come to life. The only thought that consumed me was escape. Looking back, I can't say with certainty that I have no intention of returning to those woods without a rifle firmly by my side. The events that unfolded on that fateful night forever etched themselves into the fabric of my being, a constant reminder that there are realms within this world that defy explanation and should be approached with the utmost caution. The mysteries that dwell within the wilderness continue to haunt my dreams, serving as a chilling reminder of the unseen dangers that exist just beyond the veil of our understanding. The Dresser and the Wooden Hand When I was around three years old, my family and I lived in an old farmhouse from the 80s. It had two stories and a rather eerie basement. You might recall my previous story about the Cheshire Cat, which I shared about a year ago. During that time, my room was situated upstairs, the second door on the right. Let me describe the layout of my room to you. As soon as you entered, you'd see a dresser straight ahead, with the closet door to its right blocked by some furniture. My bed was positioned against the wall on the left side of the dresser, and an armoire stood on the right of the bed. Other than these pieces of furniture, my room was devoid of any other items. Interestingly, my middle brother's room was located right next to mine, to the left. One night, it was getting late, and I had fallen asleep on the couch downstairs in the living room, wearing nothing but a t-shirt and underwear. Suddenly, my mom woke me up and instructed me to go to bed. I didn't have any objections to this, as I was feeling tired, so I sluggishly made my way upstairs, passing by the first door on my right, and finally arriving at my bedroom. To my surprise, the door to my room was wide open. As I attempted to step over the threshold and enter my room, I encountered an unexpected obstacle. I couldn't move forward. It felt as if an invisible wall was blocking my path, preventing me from entering. Frustrated and frightened, tears started streaming down my face as I began calling out for my mom. Luckily, she came upstairs in response to my cries. I managed to convey to her that my room wouldn't allow me to enter. She looked at me with a bemused expression and let out a small laugh. Curious, she asked me to explain what I meant. Through my sobbing, I told her about my unsuccessful attempts to enter the room and the invisible barrier that seemed to prevent me from doing so. While I continued bawling, feeling utterly exhausted and confused, I mustered the courage to ask my mom if I could sleep in my brother's room instead. My brother, awakened by my cries, glanced at my mom, then at me, before retreating back into his room and closing the door. 
Seeking to comfort me, my mom proposed the idea of checking my room for any lurking monsters. I nodded in agreement, surprised by her willingness to venture into the room herself. How could she do that when I couldn't? With a mix of trepidation and hope, I watched as she entered my bedroom. I stood at the doorway, unable to summon the courage to follow. Inside, she opened the armoire and peered inside, then proceeded to inspect the area under my bed. It's worth noting that my room was impeccably tidy, aside from a lone white sock with two red stripes lying on the floor in front of my dresser. While my mom was occupied searching under the bed, my attention fixated on the abandoned sock, visible from my vantage point at the threshold. Suddenly, to my shock and horror, a wooden hand emerged from underneath the dresser. It swiftly reached out and snatched the sock, disappearing back into the shadows beneath the furniture. I couldn't contain myself any longer. I screamed at the top of my lungs, my fear overwhelming me to the point of losing control. As my cries intensified, I even found myself involuntarily wetting my underwear. My brother emerged from his room, now exasperated by the commotion, and attempted to quiet me down. Meanwhile, my mom rushed over to kneel in front of me, desperately trying to calm me down as well. She inquired about what I had witnessed. Tearfully, I recounted how a wooden hand, matching the same medium brown color as the dresser, had emerged from beneath it and snatched the sock right before retreating back into hiding. At that moment, my mom burst into laughter. However, she then turned around on her knees, apparently intending to inspect underneath the dresser herself. A wave of fear washed over me as I envisioned her being grabbed by the mysterious hand. Without thinking, I lunged at her, desperately trying to pull her away from the dresser. Of course, being a child, my efforts were in vain. However, upon seeing the sheer terror in my eyes, my mom finally understood the depth of my fear. In an attempt to reassure me, she decided to prove that there was nothing sinister lurking beneath the dresser. With a determined expression, she pulled the furniture away from the wall, revealing the space beneath it. To my relief, no hand was to be found. Instead, there sat the white sock with two red stripes, as if it had been forcefully pulled right up against the wall. Story number six, a memory I can't shake. All right, let me share this story from my perspective, providing detailed insights and expanding on various aspects. It was a remarkable summer, the one before my freshman year of high school when I was around 14. This particular incident revolved around my best friend at the time and me, as we had exciting plans to attend a concert together. However, Fate had dealt her a devastating blow just two days prior to the show, with the unexpected passing of her beloved grandmother. Despite the heartache, my friend decided to join me for the concert, which turned out to be a memorable experience. As the event approached, our anticipation grew. We spent the entire afternoon preparing ourselves, immersing in the band's music and even indulging in some nostalgic activities like creating musical... L.Y.S. Looking back, it's funny to think how outdated that platform seems now, making me feel a tad old. Nevertheless, those moments were filled with laughter, excitement, and the innocence of teenage companionship. As the time to leave drew near, we settled in my living room, waiting for my dad to take us to the concert venue. Little did we know that a peculiar incident awaited us. Suddenly, without warning, the power in the living room went out struck us as odd since our house followed a ranch-style layout, with the kitchen directly attached to the living room. Strangely enough, the power supply in the kitchen remained unaffected, casting an eerie glow into the dimly lit living room. Being curious and carefree, the sudden blackout elicited both giggles and a hint of genuine fear. In an attempt to lighten the mood, my friend jokingly remarked, Thanks, Grandma, referring to her deceased grandmother. We laughed and playfully bantered about the possibility of supernatural influences, all the while eagerly awaiting my dad's arrival from outside. Then, unexpectedly, my friend's expression turned serious, 
as if struck by a profound thought. In a half-joking, half-serious tone, she addressed the darkness surrounding us, saying, Blink if you're my grandmother. It was at this precise moment when a chilling sensation crept into the depths of my chest, sending shivers down my spine. Every light source in the room, every lamp, every bulb, blinked on simultaneously, staying illuminated for a fleeting moment before plunging us back into darkness. The suddenness of the event, coupled with the timing of her remark, sent a surge of unease through our young souls. At first we attempted to rationalize the eerie occurrence, convincing ourselves that it was merely a coincidence. The two of us nervously laughed off the inexplicable incident, hoping to find solace in the realm of normalcy. Trying to test the boundaries of this unusual phenomenon, I playfully urged, blink twice if it's really you, as if responding to my request, every light source in the room remained dormant, except for the lamp closest to us, which flickered on and off twice, a chilling response to our innocent yet audacious inquiry. In that moment, a potent mixture of awe, fear, and curiosity consumed us. We couldn't help but contemplate the inexplicable forces at play. Was it truly the spirit of my friend's grandmother manifesting itself within the confines of our living room? Or were there logical explanations obscured by the veil of mystery? These questions danced through our minds, intertwining with the bittersweet memories of our departed loved ones. Although that incident left an indelible mark on our young minds, it also served as a reminder of the profound, unfathomable nature of life and the mysterious forces that may exist beyond our understanding. As we embarked on our journey to the concert, the flickering lights acted as a reminder of the interconnectedness between the living and the departed, as if bridging the gap between the realms of the known and unknown. That night, as we immersed ourselves in the vibrant energy of the concert, the specter of our encounter lingered in our thoughts. Amidst the pulsating rhythms, electrifying melodies, and the euphoric cheers of the crowd, we couldn't help but steal glances at each other, sharing silent acknowledgments of the inexplicable events that we had experienced. Looking back on that fateful summer, I realized that it was not just a concert that we attended together. It was a journey of self-discovery, a glimpse into the enigmatic tapestry of life's mysteries. The memory of that night remains etched in my mind, serving as a testament to the unfathomable and extraordinary moments that can shape our lives and leave us forever changed. Something tried taking me. A few nights ago, as I was preparing to go to bed, I couldn't help but notice the stifling humidity in my room. It was unbearable, and I knew I needed to do something about it. In an attempt to create some ventilation, I decided to open my window wide open and left my bedroom door ajar to allow a constant breeze to flow in. Little did I know that this decision would lead to a series of strange and unsettling events that would leave me questioning my own sanity. Before I could even drift off into a peaceful slumber, I sensed an unusual restlessness in my German Shepherd. It was as if he too had detected something amiss. To my surprise, my other two canine companions seemed equally agitated, adding to the growing unease in the room. Suddenly, when I was rudely awakened by a peculiar sound, like something attempting to pry open the screen of my window, startled I jolted upright in bed, only to witness my faithful shepherd growling fiercely at the window. My mind was still foggy from sleep, and I struggled to make sense of the situation unfolding before me. Summoning every ounce of courage I could muster, I sprang out of bed and rushed to the window, and there, to my astonishment, stood a figure clad in dark blue, a cloak, reminiscent of the attire worn by devout Christian monks. Instinctively, I forcefully shut the window, causing the mysterious being to bolt towards my backyard fence and disappear into the adjacent alleyway. What truly unsettled me about this intruder was his grotesque hand, resembling that of a reptile with only three fingers, each adorned with thick menacing nails. 
My mind raced with fear and confusion, desperately seeking a solution to the bizarre events unfolding around me. In a moment of clarity, I realized I needed to contact my brother, who happened to be upstairs and possessed a firearm. Hastily, I reached for my phone, only to be met with frustration. It malfunctioned inexplicably, and to my dismay, most of the contacts had vanished. Only the names of those residing within my household remained, including my brother's. As I struggled to make sense of my malfunctioning phone, another one of these lizard-like beings emerged. This time, however, it was taller and leaner than its stocky companion. It stood motionless, simply observing me with its cold, piercing gaze. Fear coursed through my veins, yet somehow I managed to maintain a semblance of composure, though it was rapidly slipping away. To my utter astonishment, the creature's face began to morph and contort, eventually taking on the likeness of someone I knew. It was a chilling sight as the alien being smiled menacingly with the visage of an acquaintance. Acquaintance. And then, everything went black, and I succumbed to the unconsciousness. The last image burned into my mind, that haunting, shape-shifting smile. When I finally regained consciousness, I found myself drenched in sweat, disoriented and utterly confused. I questioned the reality of what had transpired during the night. Although my window remained partially open, it was evident that it hadn't been fully closed. My dogs, usually full of energy but never violent, exhibited an unprecedented level of anxiety as I let them out. They attempted to leap into the alleyway, their behavior alarmingly aggressive. Throughout the remainder of the day, I struggled with a peculiar brain fog, making even the simplest of tax, tasks feeling arduous and confusing. It was a disconcerting experience, one that left me searching for answers and longing for clarity. Desperate to make sense of the bewildering events that had unfolded, I turned to the vast depths of the internet. In my quest for understanding, I stumbled upon references to lizard men, alien beings purportedly aiming to seize control of our world. However, I soon discovered that this theory was primarily propagated by David Icke, a well-known conspiracy theorist whose ideas were deeply rooted in anti-Semitism. Here, in this online community, I've come seeking your thoughts and opinions on this extraordinary and disconcerting encounter. I yearn for any insight that might shed light on the inexplicable events that unfolded in my life. As I delve deeper into the rabbit hole of speculation, I can't help but wonder, was I truly visited by otherworldly creatures, or did my mind concoct an elaborate fabrication influenced by external factors? Only time and further investigation will reveal the answers I so desperately seek. Story number eight, Ask Reddit. I'm a long haul trucker, traversing the vast highways and bypasses of this great land. The life of a truck driver is filled with adventure, solitude, and countless miles of open road. We are the unsung heroes of the modern world, delivering goods and keeping the wheels of commerce turning. There is, however, a secret that most people don't know about us truck drivers a constant state of discomfort that plagues us on our journeys. Diarrhea. Yep, you heard it right. Diarrhea. It's a problem that we face day in and day out, a persistent companion on our travels. But let me tell you a tale about one fateful day, a day when luck was on my side. The summer's warmth embraced the world around me. It was during this season, as I drove through the bustling city of Buffalo, that an unexpected urge hit me like a bolt of lightning brown lightning to be specific. My stomach churned and I knew I couldn't hold it any longer. Panic set in as I realized I didn't have any convenient place to relieve myself in town. So with grit and determination, I decided to push through and hold it until I could reach the nearest truck stop, a daunting 35 miles south of Buffalo. As I arrived at the truck stop, relief washed over me, but it was quickly replaced by an unsettling discovery. My trusty GPS, would have, which faithfully guided me on my journeys thus far, turned out to be a bit outdated. The truck stop, supposedly bustling with life and amenities, 
stood abandoned before my eyes. My heart sank as I contemplated my predicament. Desperation gripped me tightly. Ignoring the locked door, I cast my gaze upon the desolate back lot of the truck stop. There amidst the overgrown grass, two peculiar sights caught my attention. A broken-down school bus and a beaver statue standing proudly on four-foot-tall plinth. Being a Floridian, raised in ingrained concerns about venturing into high grass due to the ever-looming threat of snake bites, I hesitated. However, my bodily needs overrode my apprehensions. I made my way toward the beaver statue, with its wooden form silently beckoning me. Leaning against the plinth for balance, I dropped my overalls and assumed a rather compromising position, determined not to soil my back flap. It was a moment of vulnerability, a dance with destiny, you could say. As I focused on my business, a rustling sound from the nearby bushes startled me. My eyes darted toward the commotion, only to witness a beaver slowly retreating backward, as if it had witnessed the ultimate desecration of its sacred domain. A wave of curiosity washed over me. Was the statue I was leaning on created by this industrious beaver? Had the place had been abandoned due to a beaver takeover? Perhaps it was a memorial erected for fallen beaver soldiers. My mind filled with speculation, but the pressing matter at hand demanded my attention. I completed my mission of necessity, my shameful act fading into the annals of time. Little did I know that my journey had only taken an unexpected turn. In my haste to evacuate the confines of my temporary brown hotel, I realized to my dismay that I'd left behind my trusty paper towels and baby wipes in the confines of my truck. A moment of decision loomed before me. Should I embark on a waddle of shame, traversing the 200 yards back to my truck to retrieve the, ne the necessary supplies? Alas, such a venture would require me to subject my bare feet to the remnants of my unfortunate predicament. The thought of becoming a shit-ass was simply unbearable. Left with no other option, I mustered the courage to tear the shelves off, or sorry, tear the sleeves off my shirt, converting them into makeshift wipes. As I meticulously cleaned myself, I couldn't help but reflect on the consequences of my beaver blasphemy. Did my lack of respect for the beaver statue lead me to this karmic punishment? It was a humbling experience, a lesson etched into my soul. With my makeshift wipes discarded and my modesty restored, I climbed back into the haven of my truck and continued my journey, forever changed by this extraordinary chain of events. And so, dear friend, you may wonder why truckers often adorn themselves with sleeveless shirts. It's a reminder a daily testament to the unexpected twists and turns that life throws our way. It serves as a symbol of resilience, adaptability, and the ability to triumph over even the most challenging situations. The sleeveless shirt is our armor, our badge of honor, as we navigate the unpredictable roads that stretch before us. The haunted house near me. People don't scream like that for no reason. I had witnessed the sheer terror etched on my friend's face, and it was a sight that I couldn't easily dismiss. The incident left me shaken to the core, questioning the true nature of the malevolent force that resided within that accursed house. From that point onward, I vowed to never venture past that haunted dwelling after nightfall. Broad daylight became my sole refuge the only time I felt safe to pass by its eerie facade. Time pressed on, and years slipped away like grains of sand through an hourglass, yet the echoes of the inexplicable events continued to reverberate within my mind. One fateful day, as fate would have it, found myself in the company of the same courageous friend who had shared my harrowing experiences. We strolled leisurely immersed in the warmth of the sun's embrace, unaware of the imminent revelation that awaited us. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a colossal insect materialized before our eyes, its wings fluttering in erratic patterns. Startled, I emitted a startled cry, a mixture of surprise and residual anxiety. My friend turned to me, her eyes widening with alarm, 
and with tremor in her voice she uttered words that sent chills coursing through my veins. Oh God, what happened? Have you seen the old woman too? I froze, the blood draining from my face, and the words struck a disconcerting chord within me. The old woman? What old woman? I managed to stammer, my mind racing to connect the fragmented pieces of this haunting puzzle. My companion hesitated for a moment, as if grappling with the weight of her own memories. Then, with a resigned sigh, she merely replied, It was nothing, just a passing thought. But I could see it in her eyes, the flicker of fear that mirrored my own. There was more to this cryptic statement, a hidden truth that she chose to shield from me. The pieces began to align, forming a terrific mosaic. The spectral voice of gratitude, the foreboding darkness that consumed the street, the unexplained phenomenon that had shaken us to our very core, everything pointed towards the presence of an enigmatic old woman, lurking within the confines of that ominous house. Over the span of a decade, and then some, my encounters with the inexplicable remained intertwined with that haunting abode. And it wasn't just my friend and I who fell prey to its sinister allure. Other acquaintances, neighbors, and unsuspecting visitors also shared their own tales of unsettling experiences. It became abundantly clear that the malevolence that permeated that place was growing stronger with each passing year, as if feeding off the fear, that apprehension that it was evoking. With a heavy heart, I came to the realization that this was a battle I couldn't fight alone. The time for amateur sleuthing and amateurishly dismissing the inexplicable had passed. It was evident that a professional, someone well-versed in the realm of the supernatural, was needed to confront the malevolent force dwelling within those haunted walls. We made the decision to move away, seeking solace in a new environment far removed from the clutches of that house's haunting legacy. Still, the memories lingered, and I couldn't help but wonder about the fate of those who had come after us. Would they too succumb to the same inexplicable occurrences, forever entwined in a web of fear and uncertainty? As the years wore on, my hope for a resolution remained steadfast. Perhaps one day, that house would receive the cleansing it so desperately needed, a ritual of purification to release the tormented souls that it held captive. Until then, the dark secrets and chilling encounters would remain etched in my memory, an indelible mark of the supernatural realm that encroached upon our lives. Time had not diminished the unnerving power that emanated from that house, nor had it erased the lingering questions that haunted my thoughts. Years have passed since that fateful cleansing, and the house has now become a symbol of hope, a testament to the human spirit's ability to confront and overcome the supernatural. It stands as a beacon of resilience, reminding us that even in the face of inexplicable phenomenon, there's always a glimmer of light that can pierce through the darkest of shadows. While the memories of my encounters with the paranormal will be forever etched in my mind, I take solace in knowing that we were able to bring closure to the restless spirits and grant peace to the house that held us captive for so long. The tales of the haunted house had become a reminder that sometimes, facing our deepest fears and embracing the unknown, is the only way to free ourselves from the clutches of darkness. And so, I continue to walk forward, forever grateful for the lessons learned and the bonds forged in the crucible of the supernatural. Phone call to dead mom. My mom passed away four years ago, and the void she left in my heart is still as vast as ever. The profound absence of her presence in my life is a constant reminder of the immense love and warmth that she brought into our family. And it's in those moments of longing that my sister comes to my rescue, sending me cherished old photos of her mom that I've never had the chance to lay my eyes on before. The flood of emotions that washes over me when I see these precious glimpses of her is indescribable. There's a bittersweet joy that accompanies the discovery of these unseen snapshots. As I witness her radiating happiness in a way I had never witnessed before. During my monotonous work days, I found solace in stealing glances at these treasured photographs. They became a source of inspiration and a tangible connection to the past. As the hands of the clock inch closer to midnight, signaling the end of yet another exhausting day, 
I finally find myself back home. Weary from the demands of the outside world, I begin the ritual of shedding my work clothes and slipping into comfortable clothes and embrace the entire house. Absent-mindedly, I place my phone down on the dresser in front of the television, oblivious to the mysterious events that would soon unfold. In search of sustenance, I navigate my way to the kitchen, my footsteps echoing through the house. Engaging in brief conversation with my ever-supportive wife, I share a few moments of respite and affection before the outside world is momentarily forgotten. It is during this ephemeral respite that my subconscious mind reminds me of the phone left unattended in the other room. Returning to my sanctuary, I enter the dimly lit room and catch sight of my phone, its screen illuminated as though someone is desperately trying to reach me. Puzzled and intrigued, I approach the device, only to realize that it's not receiving any incoming calls, but is instead initiating one. My mom's name, Grace, is on the display, shimmering with an otherworldly aura. The sheer impossibility of the situation left me dumbfounded my mind struggling to comprehend the inexplicable. How could my phone, a mere inanimate object, dial my mother's number spontaneously? With trepidation and curiosity intertwining within me, I gingerly bring the phone to my ear, eager to grasp even the faintest whisper from the past. Silence envelops me, filling the void left by my mom's absence once again. And just as abruptly as it began, the enigmatic phone call ended leaving me grappling with the myriad of emotions and questioning all these things that seem to have no answers. Attempting to rationalize the inexplicable, I consider the possibility that I might have accidentally pressed some random digits when retrieving my phone from my pocket. However, a wave of realization crashes over me as I come to comprehend the absurdity of that notion. For the phone to dial my mom's number... I would have had to consciously navigate through my contacts and deliberately initiate the call. There are no accidental explanations to be found, only a profound mystery shrouded in an eerie ambiance. Left in a state of unease, my mind races to make sense of the bewildering occurrence. Could it be a sign from my dear departed mom, a way for her to reach out and remind me of her eternal love and presence? Or was it a mere glitch in the fabric of our technologically advanced reality? an inexplicable anomaly without any greater significance. Uncertainty swirls around me like a tempestuous storm, refusing to grant me respite or clarity. Regardless of the cause, one thing remains certain. The call has stirred within me an unyielding desire to delve deeper into the realm of the unexplained. Perhaps there are forces at play beyond our comprehension, fleeting glimpses of a world beyond the veil of mortality. The mysteries of life and death intertwined in an intricate dance. And these continue to elude my understanding, leaving us humbled and forever yearning for answers. As the night draws to a close, I find solace in the knowledge that my mother's, uh, that my mother's spirit, whether through supernatural intervention or an enigmatic technological mishap, has found a way to bridge the chasm between our realms. Her memory lives on in my heart, guiding me through the labyrinth of life and reminding me that love transcends the boundaries of time and space. Though the unanswered questions may linger, I cherish the profound connection I shared with my mom, knowing that even in her absence, she continues to shape the course of my life and provide comfort in the face of the unexplainable. Story number six, Deceased House. Nothing has truly happened yet. I haven't been able to get inside the home. This afternoon, finally, I'll have the opportunity to set foot inside its hollowed halls. The anticipation has been building within me ever since my husband, in-laws, and I embarked on our venture into the bustling southern city that we call home. The real estate market is thriving, especially in the neighborhood town nestled closer to the majestic mountains. It's become a coveted destination for many, including us, driving the property prices to unprecedented heights. We as a family decided to try our hand at the lucrative business of flipping houses. Whenever we successfully sell a property, we immediately set our sights on the next one, 
searching for the perfect prospect to transform into a new gem. It was during one of our zealous quests that our mother-in-law stumbled upon a house in the coveted town, listed for auction. Eagerly, my husband informed me about his exciting find last Friday, proudly presenting the exterior of the house as a potential future abode for our family. The catch, of course, was that auction rules dictated that we couldn't view the interior before the bidding commenced. The moment my eyes landed on the house, an inexplicable wave of certainty washed over me. It was as if a vision of our future unfolded before me, depicting all of us residing in that very place, brimming with happiness and contentment. However, alongside that, a profound sense of melancholy engulfed me. The house seemed to emanate a silent sorrow, as if it held within its walls a tale of profound loss and solitude. Driven by an unwavering belief in fate, we mustered our determination and serendipitously ventured into the backyard, hoping to glean some insights into the previous owners. The meticulous landscaping, marked by mature trees and carefully tendered flower beds, hinted at a touch of age. Perhaps a couple of, maybe a couple of people, rather, in their sixties, maybe called this place home. A time in life that I considered to be midlife. Time ticked away, and the day of the auction arrived, bringing with it a mix of anxiety and excitement. Our bidding strategy paid off and we emerged victorious as the new owners of the house. However, as we delved deeper into the history of this property, a somber truth was unearthed. It turned out that both husband and wife had passed away, leaving behind a poignant tale of love and loss. The wife had departed first, and the husband followed suit a year or two later, his final moments transpiring within the very walls of the house that we now called our own. Being from out of state, their demise went unnoticed by the community for an extended period, with only a vigilant neighbor finally uncovering their sad fate. Now, the weight of their entire existence rests upon my shoulders. Every possession they cherished, every memory they held dear, now lies within the confines of this house. The realization fills me with an overwhelming sadness as I contemplate the man's solitary passing. My heart aches at the thought of him departing this world without the comfort of loved ones by his side. The neighbors who had a glimpse into their lives spoke highly of the couple, describing them as exceptional ind individuals who had touched many lives. In my search for more information about the man, I stumbled upon his digital footprint, a testament to his benevolence. It seems that he dedicated his time to volunteering at a local soup kitchen, selflessly serving those in need. As I prepared myself to enter the house for the first time, armed with boxes and a heavy heart, I realized that I'm not merely inheriting a property, I'm inheriting the remnants of a life, an existence marked by love, generosity, and perhaps a touch of sorrow. The story of this house, woven with the threads of the previous owners' lives, now intertwines with ours, creating a tapestry of intertwined destinies. I can't help but feel the weight of their presence, a silent reminder of the transient nature of our own existence and the profound impact that we can have on others. With every step I take, traversing the threshold into the unknown, I carry within me a profound sense of responsibility. I vow to honor their memory, to breathe new life into these walls, and to create a haven where happiness can flourish once more. In this symphony of past and present, I embark on a journey of discovery, one that will unveil not only the secrets of this house, but also the depths of my own soul. Story number 11. I've seen my fair share of UFOs, but I believe I was abducted once. Let me begin by explaining that my life has been significantly affected by my chronic illnesses, which manifest itself in the form of debilitating fatigue. Despite being relatively young, it's become quite common for me to retire to bed early, surrendering to the overwhelming wariness that plagues my body. However, there was a fateful day, etched deeply in the corridors of my memory, where the intensity of my exhaustion reached unprecedented heights. Around 6 p.m., 
On that evening, I sought refuge in the sanctuary of my bed, seeking solace in the pages of a captivating book or mindlessly traversing the vast realms of information on my trusty smartphone. Little did I know that this unremarkable evening would soon become shrouded in an enigma as the hands of the clock continued their relentless march. It's at this point that my recollection becomes ominously hazy, almost as if a curtain had been drawn over my consciousness, obscuring the events that transpired during the intervening hours. It was not until the gentle embrace of dawn's early light gracing the sky, caressing my still sleeping form, that I regained consciousness once more, startled to find myself roused from the uninterrupted slumber at 3 a.m. The grogginess and overwhelming fatigue that greeted me were not entirely unfamiliar, as I attributed them to potential flare-ups of my chronic conditions, dismissing the peculiarity as the situation of being nothing more than a mere consequence of my fragile health. Yet, as the day unfurled its tapestry and I ventured forth to commence my daily rituals upon awakening once again at approximately 9 a.m., an unsuspecting twist of fate awaited me. While preparing to dress myself, I inadvertently cast my gaze downward, only to have a chill course through my veins, leaving me frozen in a state of disbelief. My eyes fixated upon a colossal bruise that sprawled across my inner thigh, its appearance resembling that of a giant hand with three discernible fingers and an opposing thumb. In the realm of reason, where skepticism reigned supreme, my initial inclination was to dismiss this peculiar mark as self-inflicted, an unintentional consequence of my proclivity to bruise easily. Yet the nature of this bruise, so distinctive and unfamiliar, defied the rational explanations I attempted to construct. Regret began to weave its tendrils through the fabric of my thoughts as I recalled the missed opportunity to preserve tangible evidence of this extraordinary occurrence. In retrospect, I chastised myself for not capturing a photograph of the bruise, for failing to document this mysterious testament to the unknown and share it with organizations such as the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON, an entity dedicated to investigating and documenting UFO sightings. You see, my fascination with extraterrestrial phenomenon has long been ingrained within my being, and I've encountered a few instances of inexplicable sightings in the past. However, this encounter, with its amalgamation of lost time and inexplicable physical evidence, has instilled a perpetual unease within me. While I've always harbored a profound curiosity and admiration for all things extraterrestrial, the visceral impact of this encounter has surpassed the realms of mere fascination, leaving an indelible imprint on the fabric of my existence. The thought of those elusive eight hours of lost time and the indomitable bruise on my thigh may serve as irrefutable proof of an otherworldly abduction, and it reverberates through my mind incessantly. I grapple with the perplexing amalgamation of emotions that it elicits as well. It is not fear that clutches my heart when contemplating the prospect of extraterrestrial beings, but rather a disconcerting mix of awe, curiosity, and a lingering sense of vulnerability. As the hours turn into days and the days into months, this unexplained encounter continues to haunt me, inspiring introspection and a perpetual yearning for answers. The cosmos, vast and mysterious, beckons to my inquisitive soul, and I find solace in the pursuit of knowledge that maybe one day I'll illuminate this enigma surrounding that unforgettable night. Until then, I remain vigilant, my eyes scanning the heavens and my thoughts intertwined with the possibility that our universe, with all its wonders and inexplicable phenomenon, may extend far beyond the boundaries of our terrestrial existence. Story number two. I have this vivid memory as a kid, and nobody believes me when I tell them about it. Growing up, my life was a whirlwind of uncertainty and instability as I found myself constantly shuffled in and out of foster care. The absence of a stable family had a profound impact on my young mind, leaving me with a sense of longing and a deep yearning for a place to call home. However, when I was around five years old, 
a glimmer of hope appeared in the form of adoption. I vividly recall my first permanent week with my new family, a time that was both exhilarating and nerve-wracking. The transition brought about an overwhelming amount of stress and anxiety, making it difficult for me to find solace even in my own bed. Sleep eluded me, and when it did come, it brought with it a reoccurring nightmare that haunted me relentlessly. One fateful night, I awoke from the clutches of my reoccurring nightmare, tears streaming down my face. Sitting up in bed, I gazed into the dimly lit hallway, my heart pounding in my chest. To my astonishment, I witnessed a peculiar sight. People walking up and down the hallway, their presence both ethereal and mysterious. Amidst the parade of figures, there was one that stood out, a lady who possessed the lower body of a human but the upper body of a shark. She glided into my room, her eyes meeting mine with a sense of familiarity and compassion. Sitting down beside me on the bed, she gently reassured me that everything would be okay and urged me to go back to sleep. From that moment on, whenever I found myself crying, well, rather crying myself to sleep, or awakened by nightmarish visions, the shark lady would be there. She would silently appear in my room, her calming presence enveloping me in a cocoon of security. With her watchful eyes fixed upon me, she would softly utter words of comfort, assuring me that I was not alone and that I would be safe. Curiosity finally got the better of me, and I mustered the courage to confide in my adopted mother about the enigmatic presence that visited me each night. In response, she dismissed it as nothing more than a dream, an illusion of my restless imagination, However, I vividly remember the way the shark lady sat on my bed, her gaze piercing into my soul, her voice resonating deeply within me, leaving an indelible imprint. Oddly enough, despite the skepticism from my mother, the encounters with the shark lady were the only instances during my childhood where I felt truly secure within the confines of our house. While the outside world remained a tumultuous place, filled with uncertainty and constant change, the night spent under the watchful eyes of the shark lady offered me respite, a fleeting sanctuary where I could briefly escape my troubles. To this day, the memory remains etched in my mind with remarkable clarity. The images of the people pacing the hallways, their distinct features and mannerisms have not faded. I can still visualize the tall, lanky man who always seemed to be on the move, as well as the old lady with curly hair who patiently lingered near my doorway, awaiting the departure of the shark lady. The emotions that accompanied these encounters have transcended time as well. I can still feel the tinge of fear mingled with the profound sense of solace wherever the shark lady appeared. Her presence served as a beacon of hope, a reminder that there was someone who cared, someone who believed that I could overcome my deepest fears and find peace within myself. In the quiet moments of reflection, I can almost hear her voice, the soft cadence of her words echoing in the depths of my soul. It's a voice that soothes, a voice that guides me through the trials and tribulations of life. The memory of the shark lady forever etched in my heart serves as a constant reminder that even in the face of adversity, there are hidden sources of strength and comfort that can emerge when we need them the most. As I journey through life carrying the scars of my tumultuous past, I find solace in the knowledge that the shark lady, with her enigmatic presence and reassuring words, was not merely a figment of my imagination. She was a guardian, a protector who bestowed upon me a sense of security that shaped the person I am today. And though the years have passed, her memory remains, an enduring symbol of resilience and hope that continues to guide me on my path. Story number 12. What am I supposed to think about this? Last summer, during the delightful days of 2022, a peculiar incident occurred in my household that left me bewildered and seeking answers. It all began when my brother and I decided to exchange rooms for a night, driven by our desperate preferences and room temperature. 
You see, while I relish in comfort of a colder environment for a good night's sleep, my brother prefers the warmth that accompanies his slumber. Thus, we struck an agreement to swap rooms temporarily, hoping to indulge in our preferred atmospheric conditions. As I stepped into my brother's room, the layout greeted me with familiarity. Upon entering, no one would encounter a dresser situated immediately on the left, a solid wall adorning the right side, and a neatly arranged shelf stationed directly in front. Moving further into the room, one would discover the closet positioned on the left side, a desk beckoning in the forward direction, and to the left of it, the bed in which I planned to drift off into dreamland. Adjacent to the desk, situated on top left corner, rested my uncle's unoccupied bed, as he happened to be away on a trip at the time. It was during the depths of the night, approximately around 4 a.m., that I was abruptly roused from my slumber, my senses abruptly awakened. As I groggily opened my eyes, I noticed the figure of my ten-year-old sister standing at the front of my bed. Befuddled, I inquired about her purpose for being there, seeking an explanation for her unexpected presence. Much to my surprise, my query was met with an eerie silence, as if the very air refused to carry her response to my ears. Undeterred, I informed her of my intention to fetch a glass of water and she promptly shifted her position to stand beside a nearby desk, casting an enigmatic shadow in a dimly lit room. With a curious mix of apprehension and curiosity, I reluctantly left the room, traversing through the familiar corridors until I arrived in the cozy confines of the living room. Yet, as my eyes scanned the surroundings, I beheld an unexpected sight. My sister sound asleep, peacefully sprawled across the length of the couch, my heart raced with a sudden surge of adrenaline as I sprinted back to the bedroom, hoping to unravel the enigma that unfolded before me. However, upon my return, the apparition that had resembled my sister was nowhere to be found, evaporating into the night like a phantom's ethereal whisper. Baffled by the inexplicable nature of this encounter, I began to analyze the situation meticulously, scrutinizing every detail. The room's layout itself offered no plausible explanation for the puzzling event. There simply was no feasible way for my sister to have stealthily passed me, making her way to the couch and assuming a comfortable slumber before my eyes caught sight of her. This paradox confounded me further, rendering my mind restless with unanswered questions. In my relentless pursuit of answers, I swiftly dismissed the notion of sleep paralysis, for I had actively moved out, traversing the house and ultimately returning to bed, without any hindrance or immobilization. The presence that resembled my sister had appeared to me on several occasions during the day as well, each encounter imbued with an unsettling stillness. I vividly recall the instances when I chanced upon it. Once I ventured into the kitchen, another time within the sanctity of my own room, and even once in the confines of the bathroom. Yet, whenever I attempted to communicate with this enigmatic figure, my words were met with an impenetrable silence, as if it were an embodiment of the void. Curiously, whenever my gaze momentarily averted, or I briefly exited the room, this enigma would vanish, leaving no trace of its existence behind. Adding further complexity to this enigma was the fact that none of the other six individuals residing in my household seemed to perceive or acknowledge the presence that I had encountered. It appeared that I stood alone in this perplexing experience, grappling with an inexplicable phenomenon that defied the comprehension of those around me. The isolation of my plight only intensified my yearning for understanding, fueling my desperation for any form of guidance or assistance that could shed light on this confounding mystery. Thus, with a glimmer of hope in my heart and an insatiable thirst for knowledge, I humbly beseech your aid in deciphering the enigma that has plagued me since that fateful night. Any insight or assistance you may provide would be nothing short of extraordinary, potentially unraveling the veil that shrouds this perplexing occurrence and granting me respite from the enigmatic presence that haunts my home. Story number three. Hard to explain. Have I spoken to a ghost? I used to work as an ambulance dispatcher, and let me tell you, it was a job that exposed me to some truly grim situations. 
Every day I found myself dealing with emergency calls, coordinating with medical teams, and trying to save lives over the phone. Most of the time I didn't have direct contact with the patients, except for a few gathering crucial information like their location or ensuring that the ambulance crew could reach them. But there is one particular night that still haunts me to this day. It started like any other shift, with the usual flurry of incoming calls and urgent requests for assistance. However, there was this one call that stood out from the arrest. An elderly woman had fallen and was now lying on the floor, thankfully uninjured. We dispatched an ambulance to her location, expecting them to arrive promptly and provide the necessary help. Little did we know that this seemingly straightforward situation would take an unexpected turn. As the hours ticked by, I became increasingly concerned. It was taking on an unusually long time for the ambulance crew to reach the elderly woman. Worried for her well-being, I decided to call her directly. The phone rang, and to my surprise, she answered. Despite the ordeal that she had been through, she sounded remarkably alert and composed. She assured me that she was doing fine and apologized for the inconvenience that she had caused. She didn't want to make a fuss, bless her kind heart. Relieved to have finally made contact, I requested the code for the key safe at her front door, where she had been patiently waiting. Once I had the code, I quickly related to the crew through the radio. I hoped that they would now be able to swiftly gain access and provide the assistance that she desperately needed. However, what happened next sent shivers down my spine. Within minutes, the crew radioed back to inform me that something was terribly wrong. The moment they entered the house, they discovered the elderly woman lifeless, her body as cold as ice. It was as if she had been dead for quite some time. The news shook me to my core, and I couldn't help but question the sequence of events that had unfolded. Initially, I tried to rationalize the situation in my mind. Perhaps an elderly woman lying on the floor would naturally feel cold, even if she were still alive. Maybe she had passed away in the short span of time between our conversation and the crew's arrival. But the thought lingered, gnawing at me, refusing to be dismissed. Compelled by a nagging sense of responsibility, I relayed the eerie details to the crew, hoping they would take immediate action. In my heart, I believed that if the woman had only recently passed, performing CPR could potentially bring her back to life. After all, every second counted in life-or-death situations. However, the licensed healthcare professionals on the scene made a different judgment call. They decided against CPR, but did connect the electrocardiogram, the EKG, or sorry, ECG, electrocardiogram, to confirm their suspicions. To my astonishment, the ECG yielded no trace of any activity. It was as if the woman's heart had stopped long before we even spoke on the phone. I went through with my due diligence, meticulously verifying every piece of information, address, job details, the patient's name, and everything matched up perfectly. It was undeniably the right place, the right person, and the right phone number. Feeling a deep sense of unease, I dialed the very number I had spoken to the elderly woman to earlier. To my dismay, the crew at the scene confirmed that it was indeed her phone, which now belonged to a deceased woman. The realization hit me like a tidal wave. There was nothing it. This incident has always haunted me, lingering in the depths of my mind. Even though I had never had the chance to speak directly to that elderly woman from beyond the veil, I heard her last words, her voice resonating in my memory. I couldn't help but wonder if things would have turned out differently had we arrived at her doorstep earlier, despite the clinician's assessment over the phone that she seemed perfectly fine. The weight of that unanswered question continues to bear down on me. It's a reminder of the unpredictable nature of life, the fragility of our own existence. In this profession, we strive to save lives, but sometimes, despite our best efforts, we are left grappling with the haunting echoes of what might have been. Story number 13. Ghost came back to haunt me 11 years later. When I was 11 years old, my family and I made the life-changing decision to leave Puerto Rico 
and embark on a new adventure in America. We settled into an apartment where my grandparents happened to work. It was an exciting but also slightly unsettling time for me as I navigated the challenges of adjusting to a new country and environment. One peculiar incident stands out in my memory. It was a regular day, or rather night, as I found myself abruptly awakened at the precise hour of 3.33 a.m. Feeling an intense thirst, I groggily made my way to the kitchen, only to encounter a sight that sent shivers down my spine. There before my eyes stood a tall figure, with its paper-white skin and dressed in a black suit. What disturbed me even more was the absence of a face. It resembled a store-bought mannequin, devoid of any facial features such as a nose or mouth. Strangely, the entity didn't emanate any malevolence. Instead, it seemed lost, like a bewildered child. Its vacant gaze met mine and for a brief moment stood still. It merely stared at me, as if seeking solace or direction. However, this eerie encounter was just the beginning of a series of inexplicable events. Soon after, peculiar knocks became a regular occurrence in my life. Every day without fail, I would hear three distinct knocks. It didn't matter where I was, in the apartment, at school, or even when I ventured outside. The entity with this enigmatic appearance would manifest itself, hovering above me, and continuing its unnerving ritual. The height of the creature was unmistakable, towering at approximately 8 foot 1 inches. Just as quickly as it had appeared, it would vanish, leaving me perplexed and mystified by its intentions. Years passed and I managed to adjust to the persistent presence of this mysterious being. Eventually, my family decided to move out of that apartment, which marked the end of that particular chapter of our lives. Little did I know that the tale was far from over. Recently, to my astonishment, the same creature re-emerged in my life. However, it had undergone a transformation. Gone was the black suit and tie it once wore. Instead, it now adorned a striped long-sleeved shirt, coupled by a beige jacket and baggy tan shorts. The familiarity of its presence both comf comforted and unnerved me. Curiosity consumed me and I embarked on a journey to uncover the true nature of this enigma that had haunted me for so long. It was during this time that my friends and I decided to conduct a Ouija board session in the eerie woods known for their tragic history of suicides. We hoped to make contact with supernatural entities and find answers to our burning questions. To our surprise, as the Ouija board planchette moved across the board, a force unlike any other surged through the room. The entity identified itself as Charlie, claimed to be the very being that had plagued me all these years. With cautious excitement, we asked Charlie if it was indeed the one responsible for haunting me, and to our astonishment, it confirmed our suspicions. In a strange turn of events, my perception of Charlie began to shift. I started to view this ghostly presence as something more than a malevolent force. It seemed to harbor a protective quality, almost like a guardian watching over me. Gradually, I developed a sense of friendship and trust towards Charlie, embracing its role in my life. However, my desire to communicate with Charlie more effectively grew. I yearned for a deeper connection. Yet, I felt apprehensive about resorting to a spirit box or Ouija board. Fearing that such methods might inadvertently invite malevolent entities into my home, right? As I embark on this ongoing journey of understanding and friendship with Charlie, my benevolent ghostly companion, I am determined to find alternative means of communication. Perhaps through meditation, intuitive listening, or exploring the realms of metaphysics, I can establish a stronger connection with Charlie without compromising the safety of my surroundings. Though the path ahead is uncertain, I find solace in the knowledge that Charlie's presence, once a source of fear and confusion, has transformed into a mysterious yet reassuring force in my life. Together we continue to unravel the depths of the supernatural realm, forging an unconventional bond that transcends the boundaries of the physical world. Story number four, The Light Under the Doorway. One fateful night, 
within the eerie confines of that same ancient and unsettling house, my slumber was abruptly interrupted by a cacophony of clamor emanating from the floor below. It resembled the boisterous revelry that accompanies a grand soiree, yet I had not been informed of any such festivity taking place. Intrigued and somewhat perplexed, I mustered the courage to extricate myself from the comforting embrace of my bed and embark upon a quest to ascertain the source of this enigmatic commotion. Gingerly, I flicked the switch, flooding my bedroom with a warm glow as the light fixture obediently responded to my touch. Venturing into the dimly lit hallway, I leaned over the wooden banister, my eyes fixed upon the descending staircase that led to the heart of the clamor. Strains of animated conversation floated upward, permeating the air, like an orchestral ensemble practicing an intricate symphony. However, the peculiar aspect was that I, the unsuspecting protagonist, had not been privy to this grand performance. Driven by an insatiable curiosity, I decided to eschew the illumination in the hallway, opting instead to navigate the obscurity with caution. My footsteps, hushed and tentative, carried me down the flight of stairs towards the dining room, the source of the radiant glow that emanated from beneath the floor. The flickering light served as a guiding beacon, urging me onward on my quest for answers. With bated breath and a sense of trepidation, I approached the door, anticipation coursing through my veins. Strains of raucous laughter mingled with unintelligible chatter grew louder with each passing step, drowning out the thoughts that raced through my mind. The chorus of voices, overlapping and intertwining, formed an incomprehensible tapestry of sound. As I summoned the courage to turn the doorknob, a surge of adrenaline coursed through my veins and I flung the door open with an audacious flourish. To my astonishment and dismay, darkness greeted my expectant gaze, a vast expanse of pitch-black void stretched before me, devoid of any semblance of life or revelry. Confusion etched itself upon my features as my bewildered mind struggled to reconcile the vivid auditory experience with the stark absence of physical presence. It was as if I had stepped into the realm of the ethereal, where reality and illusion danced an intricate tango. Overwhelmed by the profound sense of disorientation, I pivoted on my heel and retraced my steps, desperate to escape the enigmatic emptiness that had engulfed the room. Hastily, I sought solace within the confines of my parents' chamber, guided by muscle memory and instinct. The door, a portal to familiarity and safety, yielded to my trembling hands, and I stumbled into the familiar embrace of their bed. As I nestled into the familiar contours of their resting place, seeking solace within the soft embrace of the covers, my mind raced with unanswered questions. What phantom gathering had taunted my senses, teasing me with a semblance of mirth and festivity? How had the palpable energy dissipated into the abyss, leaving me bewildered and yearning for an understanding that seemed perpetually out of reach? In the stillness of that moment, I contemplated the enigmatic nature of the house, with its secrets hidden within the walls and its whispers carried on the breeze. Perhaps it was the embodiment of the Cheshire cat from the tales I'd previously encountered, its mischievous grin lurking just beyond the threshold of comprehension. Or perchance, it was the wooden hand, concealed beneath the dresser, beckoning me towards a realm where reality melded with fantasy. Thus, I found myself ensnared in the tapestry of the unexplained, caught between the realm of the seen and unseen, the events that might forever linger in the recesses of my memory, a haunting reminder of the mysterious wonders that inhabit the shadows. And as I sought solace amidst the comforting familiarity of my parents' bed, the enigma of that house continued to unravel, begging me to explore its labyrinth depths and uncover the truth that lay hidden within. Story number eight. Loud crashing glass sound, but nothing broken. 
Around 18 years ago, a momentous time in my life was unfolding as I eagerly anticipated the arrival of my first child. The days were dwindling, and I found myself growing more and more anxious. Our cozy abode was a small house that housed not only my husband and me, but also our beloved cat and dog, who completed our little family. One evening, with my due date fast approaching, I sought solace and relaxation in my bed. The air was serene and the peaceful presence of our slumbering dog, cat, and husband provided a sense of tranquility. Unfortunately, sleep eluded me, leaving me restless and wide awake. To fill the time, I resorted to reading, hoping to tire my mind and finally drift into a peaceful slumber. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a cacophonous noise reverberated through the house. It resembled the sound of a large glass vase, bowl, or even a window pane being carelessly dropped from considerable height. The unexpected jolt startled me to the core, causing an instinctive physical reaction that sent a sharp pang of pain coursing through my belly. I scrambled out of bed momentarily surprised by the fact that my reaction didn't result in a puddle, considering my advanced state of pregnancy. Waddling as quickly as I could manage, I made my way toward the source of the commotion, which appeared to originate from the living room, dining room, and kitchen area, all seamlessly interconnected within our modest abode. The mystery unfolded before me as I diligently searched for any sign of the disturbance that had disturbed the peace of our humble house. With great trepidation, my eyes fell upon the exquisite extra-large Waterford vase that occupied a prominent spot in my room. I half expected to find it toppled over, the mischievous handiwork of our mischievous cat or energetic dog. To my sheer surprise, the vase stood undisturbed, flawlessly maintaining its designated place. Perplexed, I embarked on a thorough investigation, scouring every nook and cranny for potential clues. Yet, to my dismay, not a single object seemed out of place. Being a self-proclaimed neat freak, cleanliness and orderliness were ingrained in my nature, particularly during the nesting phase of pregnancy. I had anticipated discovering the culprit responsible for the disturbance almost instantaneously. However, much to my disbelief, everything remained impeccably organized, as if time itself had frozen within our house. Even the dishes in the dishwasher were neatly arranged, further perplexing me. Puzzled and disoriented, I retraced my steps, returning to the sanctuary of my room, hoping to find solace and clarity within its confines. As I pushed the door open, a peculiar sight greeted me, a solemn tableau of the cat and dog fixated on me with an inexplicable intensity. Uncharacteristically, neither of them budged an inch from their respective spots. It was as if they were waiting, patiently anticipating my return. To this day, the memory of that perplexing night haunts me, and the origins of that thunderous sound elude my comprehension. I had been wide awake, and there was no one else in the house but the four of us, like four chickens cooped up inside our abode. Curiously enough, my husband remained undisturbed by the chaos, blissfully lost in his own realm of slumber. It was as if he possessed the sleeping habits of a troll, impervious to the disturbances of the mortal realm. Initially, my annoyance had been directly towards the mere possibility of the prized vase being shattered into fragments, thus necessitating the arduous task of cleaning up broken glass, an endeavor that, given my condition, would have fallen to my husband. The late night hour added another layer of inconvenience to the equation. However, as I stood at the threshold of the hallway, contemplating whether to investigate further, a profound sense of appreciation washed over me. Something deep within my gut warned me against proceeding, cautioning me to leave the enigma unsolved. Despite this inexplicable hesitation, my inner neat freak revolted against the idea of leaving a potential disaster unattended. The notion of shattered glass lingers in the house, demanding immediate attention, clashed with my ingrained need for orderliness. Story number 12. Something was in my bathroom. 
during my junior year of college, an incredible opportunity presented itself, studying abroad in London. With great excitement, I embarked on this adventure, ready to immerse myself in a new culture and broaden my horizons. Little did I know that this experience would be accompanied by an unexpected encounter with the supernatural. Our accommodations were situated on the top floor of an 18th century home, which had been transformed into several flats. As my roommate and I settled into our studio flat, an eerie feeling began to envelop us. It seemed that a ghost had taken up residence in our bathroom, as objects inexplicably flew off shelves and an unsettling atmosphere pervaded the room. Despite our uneasiness, our fellow students dismissed our claims, attributing them to the overactive imagination of attention-seeking girls. However, two events occurred that convinced us of something truly peculiar was definitely unfolding. One morning, when preparing for classes, I stepped into the shower, relishing in the soothing warmth of the water, and suddenly I felt a gentle tap on my shoulder. Startled, I turned around, but there was no one else in the bathroom. Frozen with fear, I stood there, attempting to comprehend what had just occurred, when abruptly the water ceased to flow. Panic surged through my veins, propelling me to flee the bathroom in a frantic rush. It was later revealed that the water breaker had been mysteriously switched off. Considering my roommate's growing trepidation regarding the potential presence of a ghost, I opted to withhold this chilling incident from her. However, after enduring a week of mounting anxiety, I could no longer bear the burden alone and decided to confide in her. To my astonishment, her eyes widened as she divulged that a similar occurrence had transpired on the very morning of my encounter. She had refrained from sharing her experience, fearing that it would amplify my already heightened apprehension. Several weeks passed, and the specter's activities persisted, intensifying our distress. Engrossed in a conversation with my mother, seeking solace and guidance, I sought refuge in the stairwell. Seated on the steps, facing a wall, the other side concealed our haunted bedroom. My phobia of encountering an actual apparition drove me to voice my fears to my mother, uttering the desperate words, If this entity were to reveal itself, I swear I would promptly vacate this place. No sooner had those words left my lips than the darkness descended upon the stairwell, shrouding it in an impenetrable blackness. For a few harrowing seconds, I was submerged in a terrifying void. Later, research informed me that when ghosts attempt to manifest themselves, they often draw energy from surrounding sources, resulting in an abrupt extinguishing of lights. Gripped by fear, I shared this unnerving incident with my mother, who offered a suggestion that would alter the course of our ghostly encounters. My mother proposed that my roommate and I visit the bathroom together and respectfully address the apparition. She advised us to say, we acknowledge that our stay in this space is temporary, and after a few more months, we will be returning home. We kindly request that during our visit, we may coexist harmoniously within this dwelling. Intrigued and desperate for a solution, we followed her advice, hoping to restore tranquility to our lives. Miraculously, from that moment onward, all paranormal activity ceased within our flat. No objects were jostled off shelves, the lights functioned as they should, and the shower poured water consistently, and we were never again touched by invisible hands. It appeared that our plea had resonated with the ghostly entity, and it had chosen to respect our presence, and so, for the remainder of our time in that peculiar flat, peace reigned supreme. Reflecting on this extraordinary experience, I couldn't help but marvel at the peculiar circumstances that had unfolded. It was indeed disconcerting to contemplate the presence of a ghostly observer while engaging in the most mundane of activities, such as using the toilet. Nonetheless, this encounter with the supernatural served as a reminder of the mysteries that permeate our world and the unexplained phenomena that lie just beyond the realm of our comprehension. Comforting Dream from Deceased Grandpa 
ever since the year 2019, when the heartbreaking news of my dear grandpa's passing reached my ears, my nights have been filled with an enchanting tapestry of dreams. In these nightly reveries, I find solace and comfort, for I am able to see and embrace my beloved grandfather once again. It's become a regular occurrence, a precious ritual that unfolds at least three times a week. Yes, one might argue that with such frequency, as being, you know, measured as being quite substantial, yet I've come to cherish these ethereal encounters as rare gifts from the realm of slumber. Lately I've been grappling with the heaviness in my heart, weighed down by the burdens and trials that life so often presents. Stress has become an unwelcome companion, doggedly following my every step, casting a shadow upon my weary soul. But today, as I succumbed to the fatigue of the day and surrendered myself to a gentle nap, an extraordinary event unfolded within the realm of my dreams. There he was, my grandfather, appearing before me in all his glory, as if summoned by the depths of my longing. In that ethereal landscape he stood before me, radiating a warmth and love that transcended the boundaries of time and space. Without hesitation I embraced him with all the strength that resided within my being. It was a hug that surpassed the limitations of physicality. It was a merging of spirits, a convergence of love. As our embrace persisted, I felt a peculiar sensation, as if I had the power to determine the duration of our reunion, to dictate the length of this ephemeral respite from reality. The comfort of his presence enveloped me, gently eroding the worries that had plagued my waking hours. I looked into his eyes, and to my astonishment, they glistened with a knowing twinkle. It was as if he possessed an understanding of my melancholy, a profound awareness of the weight that burdened my soul. In that sacred moment, the aura surrounding my grandfather emanated an undeniable positivity, a force so strong that it dispelled any remnants of fear or trepidation that might have lingered. He leaned in closer, his voice resonating with the wisdom that transcended the boundaries of earthly existence. With gentle reassurance, he spoke words that seeped into the very fabric of my being. After four years, he said, his voice carrying a faint echo, all struggles and negative thoughts shall be forgotten. The significance of his words struck me like a bolt of lightning, electrifying my consciousness with newfound hope. Four years, a seemingly distant future, held the promise of liberation from the burdens I now bore. It was as if my grandfather, in his ethereal wisdom, sought to remind me that time possesses a peculiar ability to heal and mend even the most broken of spirits. As our embrace gradually dissolved, I felt a profound sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the dreams and the gift of the precious opportunity to see my grandfather again. Gratitude for the solace and strength that his presence imparts, and gratitude for the enduring love that binds us across the boundaries of existence. Though his physical form may have departed this realm, the essence of his being remains eternally intertwined with mine, offering guidance and comfort in times of need. And so, with a renewed sense of purpose, and the knowledge that my grandfather's spirit watches over me, I awaken from my slumber. The weight upon my shoulders feels lighter, and a flicker of optimism begins to illuminate the path ahead. I carry with me the memory of our embrace, the sparkle in his eyes, and the profound message he delivers. It's a message of resilience, of faith in the passage of time, and the enduring power of love. As I navigate the winding road of life, I find solace in the knowledge that one day, just as my grandfather promised, the struggles and negativity throughout all of this existence will fade into oblivion. Until then, I will treasure the dreams that gift me these precious moments with him and hold tightly to the lessons that he imparts. For in the realm of dreams where the boundaries of possibility blur, I find comfort, strength, and the unwavering presence of a love that transcends the boundaries of time itself. Are you drawn to the inexplicable, eager to uncover the secrets that lie beyond our understanding, 
look no further than Paranormal M. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to be the first to witness the most compelling supernatural stories. Starting with story number one, The Woman with No Face. When I reminisce about the year 2005, a chilling memory resurfaces, one that sends shivers down my spine and still haunts my thoughts to this day. It was a cold morning. As an 18-year-old with my car impounded for some ridiculous reason, I had to rely on my mom for rides to work. This particular day I had the early morning shift, which meant that I had to be at work by 5 a.m. Consequently, my mom and I had to leave our house no later than 4.30 a.m., a time when darkness blanketed the world, shrouding everything in an eerie, impenetrable blackness. I climbed into the car, feeling the chill of the early morning air settle into my bones. The faint glimmers of streetlights were the only sources of illumination as we embarked on our journey. As we made our way through the dimly lit streets, a peculiar sight caught my eye in the distance. There was a figure seemingly preparing to cross the road just as we approached. With each passing moment, the image became clearer, revealing a young girl standing there. Curiosity mingled with amusement as I speculated about the girl's situation. I couldn't help but chuckle inwardly, thinking that she might be embarking on the infamous walk of shame. Her attire certainly suggested so. Clad in a man's oversized white shirt, resembling a makeshift dress, she appeared to be pantless, save for the glimpse of short jean shorts peeking out from underneath the large garment. To add to the peculiarity, she was barefoot, trudging along the cold pavement. My mother, never one to shy away from speaking her mind, began to express her disapproval in Spanish, questioning the audacity of the young girl wandering the streets at such an ungodly hour dressed so inappropriately. However, the girl's unhurried pace now positioned directly in the middle of the road, forcing my mom to bring the car to a halt. We found ourselves just ten feet away from this mysterious figure, utterly perplexed by her actions. As we drew closer, my senses sharpened, allowing me to discern more details. A chill ran down my spine as I noticed the bluish-gray tint of her skin, accentuated by her jet-black, damp, and tangled hair, resembling someone who had just emerged from a shower. It was then that the girl, still facing the direction she intended to cross, turned her head slowly to meet our gaze. In that heart-stopping moment, time seemed to stand still. The girl's face, concealed by her wet locks, mirrored the haunting character from The Ring, a horror movie that had sent chills down my spine in the past. What transpired next is forever etched into my memory, a sight that defies any logical explanation. As she moved her hair away from her face, what I saw left me utterly speechless and my heart plummeted into the depths of my stomach. The girl, if one could even call her that, had no face. Not a single feature adorned her smooth countenance. There were no eyes, no mouth, no nose. Just an expanse of flawless skin, like the eerie entity known as Slender Man, whose existence I had only encountered in tales of the supernatural. It was a sight that defied the boundaries of reality, leaving my mother in the throes of a panic attack and myself grappling with a mixture of terror and disbelief. Amidst the overwhelming shock and fear, my primary focus shifted to consoling my distressed mother, who was now desperately gasping for air. I frantically attempted to calm her down, all the while struggling to make sense of what we had just witnessed. The girl with her featureless face continued to stare at us for what felt like an eternity, but in reality, it lasted merely two or three seconds. And then, without warning, she bolted into a sprint, vanishing into the darkness. To this day, my mother and I remain unable to rationalize or comprehend the nature of that otherworldly encounter. It remains an enigma, an inexplicable phenomenon that continues to baffle us. The incident served as a stark reminder that there are mysteries in this world beyond our comprehension, lurking in the shadows and defying all logical explanation. Story number five, possible skinwalker sighting. 
I have a loyal and loving companion in my life, a four-legged bundle of joy named Toby. Toby, my dog, holds a special place in my heart, and our bond grows stronger with each passing day. One of our cherished rituals is that every night without fail, Toby comes bounding into my room, jumps on my bed, and curls up beside me to sleep. Yesterday was no exception to this endearing routine. As dusk settled and darkness enveloped my surroundings, Toby's gentle presence graced my room. We nestled together, finding solace and warmth in each other's company. The room was filled with tranquility, and sleep gently beckoned us into its embrace. However, as the night wore on, an unexpected disruption shattered the peaceful silence. It started as faint echoes, barely discernible at first, a distant, ominous barking reverberating through the air. Toby, my faithful companion, stirred restlessly at the unfamiliar sound, his ears perked up and his eyes wide with apprehension. Confusion tinged with the concern knotted in my stomach, and I shared Toby's unease. What could possibly be causing such a disturbance outside my room? A stray dog, perhaps? Lost and disoriented in the dark abyss of the night? Or maybe it was something more ominous, a harbinger of danger lurking just beyond the safety of my door. Driven by curiosity and a desire to protect my cherished pet, I mustered the courage to investigate. Slowly I made my way toward the source of the commotion, my steps tentative and cautious. Toby followed me, his tail tucked between his hind legs, instinctively seeking refuge and distance from whatever unknown force lay beyond. Finally I reached the door, its presence towering ominously in front of me. My hands trembled as I fumbled with the lock, an inexplicable sense of foreboding clouding my mind, and with a deep breath I mustered the resolve to swing the door open, stealing myself for whatever awaited me on the other side. What I beheld in that fleeting moment defied all reason and understanding. There, sitting on the cold, hard floor, was Toby, my dear Toby, who moments ago lay peacefully on my bed. Confusion washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to sweep me away in its relentless current. Instinctively, I slammed the door shut, my mind racing to comprehend the inexplicable. How could this be? How could Toby be in two places at once? My heart pounded in my chest, its rhythm an erratic symphony of fear and disbelief. A shiver running down my spine as I grappled with the eerie implications of what I had just witnessed. It was as if reality had unfolded upon itself, warping the boundaries of time and space. Questions flooded my mind, but answers remained elusive, and they were tantalizingly out of reach. Toby, sensing my distress, approached me cautiously his eyes filled with unwavering loyalty and trust. His mere presence offered solace amidst the inexplicable. I held him close, seeking solace myself and in the warm embrace, and finding comfort in the familiar rhythm of his breath. The events of that night would forever remain etched in my memory, a bewildering enigma that defied logical explanation. Toby, my steadfast companion, had become an unwitting participant in a cosmic mystery one that would haunt my thoughts and ignite my imagination for years to come. As time passed, I delved deeper into the realm of the inexplicable, seeking answers to the unanswerable. I scoured books and consulted experts and delved into ancient tales and legends, all in pursuit of the truth. Yet the mystery of Toby's doppelganger remained firmly entrenched in the realm of the unknown. In the end... I resigned myself to the fact that some questions are simply beyond our comprehension. Sometimes it's the inexplicable moments that define our lives, casting shadows that reveal the boundless depths of the universe and our own limited understanding. Toby, my dear friend, continues to sleep beside me every night, his warmth, sorry, his warmth and love a constant source of comfort. And while the enigma of his mysterious doppelganger remains unsolved, it serves as a reminder of the profound mysteries that exist in this vast tapestry of existence that we call life. Story number two. Friendly spirit or something else? Let me take you back to Valentine's Day in the year of 2010 
time when I was just an innocent 11-year-old kid. The day holds a special place in my heart because it was when my dad bestowed upon me a delightful puppy plushie, complete with a vibrant red ribbon and a tiny felt heart that proudly proclaimed, I love you, in bold capital letters. Little did I know that this seemingly innocent gift would lead to a series of inexplicable events that would forever leave a mark on my memory. It was a chilling evening, and my parents had decided to venture out into the local grocery store to gather supplies for our dinner. Unfortunately, I was unable to join them on this outing, as I had succumbed to a fever. Determined to make me feel better, my parents left me at home with the promise of returning soon. I obediently took my prescribed medicine and reluctantly retreated back to the comfort of my bed. The puppy plushie clutched tightly in my feverish hands. Before succumbing to sleep's embrace, I distinctly remember placing the adorable dog plushie on the kitchen table. With a heavy head and a body weakened by illness, I drifted off into a restless slumber. It was only a couple of hours later that I was roused from the uneasy sleep by the sound of my parents returning home. However, what awaited me was a perplexing sight that defied all logical explanation. There, sitting next to my head on the bed, was the very same puppy plushie that I had left on the kitchen table. Confused clouded my fevered mind as I pondered how it had made its way from the table to my bedside. My bedroom door stood wide open, a silent witness to this eerie phenomenon. It was evident that my parents couldn't have been the culprits behind this mysterious occurrence since they had departed before I had even retired for the night. In fact, they had unlocked the front door as I stumbled into the living room utterly bewildered by the inexplicable chain of events. You see, our house had always been a hotbed of unexplained activity. It seemed to harbor not just one, but two distinct entities. One, a spectral figure that roamed our residence, taking the form of a man with a face that remained forever blurred and indistinguishable. I had encountered this ethereal presence on numerous occasions, its ghostly appearance sending shivers down my spine. However, this particular incident involving the displaced plushie presented a new enigma altogether. The second entity, although never seen with my own eyes, made its presence felt continuously, particularly within the confines of my own room. It was as if a dark, hunched figure lurked in the shadows, observing my every move from behind furniture and around corners. Following the inexplicable relocation of the puppy plushie, this unseen force seemed to intensify its presence, casting an ominous aura over my personal space. The weight of these bizarre occurrences led me to confide in a close friend, desperate for some semblance of understanding or reassurance. Upon recounting the tale, my friend offered a thought-provoking hypothesis. Could it be possible that the entity residing in my room was responsible for the peculiar incident involving the plushie? After all... Following that unnerving event, my life took a sinister turn. I began to witness a sinister dark figure perpetually hunched over, lurking in the periphery of my vision. It seemed to revel in tormenting me, revealing itself from behind furniture and sulking around corners, a constant source of unease. As I reflect upon these inexplicable events from my childhood, I am left with a lingering sense of wonder and trepidation. The true nature of the entities that inhabited our home and their motivations remain a mystery to this day. Perhaps there are forces at play in this world that defy our understanding, lurking just beyond the veil of our perception. Or maybe, just maybe, the power of imagination and the potency of childhood fears can give rise to supernatural experiences that haunt us long into adulthood. Regardless, the memory of that Valentine's Day in 2010 will forever be etched in my mind, serving as a reminder that sometimes the inexplicable forces that shape our lives are the very ones that leave us questioning our reality. Greetings, curious souls. Are you ready to explore the realm of the unexplained? Join us with Paranormal M, your ultimate destination for spine-chilling tales. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for our latest videos. 
Story number one. I had an encounter with the black-eyed children at work. I've been working the overnight shift at a 7-Eleven for quite some time now, and the other night, specifically on the 4th of April, I was going through my usual shift change routine at around 2.47 a.m. As I was wrapping things up, the door chime suddenly went off, causing me to instinctively look up. To my surprise, I noticed that the door was wide open, slowly creeping shut. The sight beyond the door, on the other side of my gas pumps adjacent to the air pump, startled me even more. There were two kids, a boy and a girl, just standing there. The boy was dressed in ordinary clothes, wearing a black t-shirt, while the girl had on a peculiar outfit, a white top half-dress with the black bottom. This caught my attention and a sense of confusion started to creep in. At this point, it was already 2.50 a.m., and despite my best efforts to finish counting the money quickly, the kids were still lingering outside. They hadn't moved an inch. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was about to go off with this whole situation. Anxiety started to build up within me, and I couldn't help but notice that the hair on my arms stood up, as if charged with static electricity. I decided to step outside and address the kids, hoping to find out what they were doing alone at such an odd hour. Hey guys, what are you doing out here all by yourselves? I called out to them. To my surprise, there was no response. The lack of any verbal reaction sent a wave of fear crashing over me. It was a bone-chilling moment. The older girl, who appeared to be a year or two older than her brother, stepped off the curb and extended her hand. Her brother took it and playfully hopped off the curb, seemingly following her lead. Come inside where it's warm, I suggested hoping that they would take my advice. But as soon as those words left my mouth, something within me snapped and an overwhelming terror took over. It was as if I had turned a corner only to find myself face to face with a ferocious bear. I had never experienced such an intense fear in my entire life. I mustered every ounce of strength and pulled myself back inside, clinging to the door handle as if my life depended on it. The moment I crossed the threshold and entered the store, the fear subsided, providing me with a much-needed sense of relief. I hurriedly ran behind the counter, seeking refuge in its perceived safety. From that vantage point, I watched the two kids as they crossed over to the next curb at approximately 3.05 a.m. They seemed to be heading toward a nearby building. However much to my bewilderment, they never emerged from the other side. It was as if they vanished into thin air. The whole experience left me shaken to my core. I had been off work since that encounter, but now, as time approached for me to return to my shift, an overwhelming terror gripped me once again. I couldn't help but feel an inexplicable sense of dread. It was as if I had a premonition that something terrible awaited me at work. The weight of this feeling bore down on my chest, consuming me with worry. Even when I'm home alone, my cat's been hissing at seemingly nothing further adding to my unease. I can't help but ponder the repercussions of inviting those kids inside the store. Did I unwittingly put myself in danger? I shared my unsettling experience with my boss and requested her to review the surveillance footage from that night. However, upon reviewing the tapes, she saw nothing out of the ordinary. In fact, she believes I've lost my sanity, and in some sentiment, is shared by everyone else around me, apparently. I feel isolated and misunderstood, except for those who have encountered similar inexplicable phenomena. I know that I'm not alone in this. As the time draws near for me to return to work tonight, my apprehension only grows stronger. It's as if I have an innate sense that I'm marching towards my own demise. The fear gnaws at my chest, devouring my peace of mind. I can't shake off the feeling that something sinister awaits me, lurking in the shadows of that convenience store. Story number nine. It was really scary and annoying. So let me take you back maybe 10 or 15 years, although the exact timeline is a bit hazy. In my memory for reasons I'll explain later. At that time, I was a teenager living with my mom because my dad had kicked me out for my affinity for weed. But hey, no regrets there. 
My younger sister was also living with our mom because for her, our mom was the preferred parent. Meanwhile, my older brother was off serving the military, so we were widely separated as a family, each going on our own separate ways. Our living situation was in a smaller house with two floors and a total of three bedrooms. The biggest room was on the second floor, which we all referred to as the master bedroom. Then there was the front bedroom. And toward the back of the house, there was a room we called the guest room, which was intended to be mine. During that period, I was in my junior year of high school, and my mom had laid out a specific set of rules for me to follow. No drugs or alcohol, no closing the door when I had company over, and no making loud noises. I wouldn't say I was a bad kid, although I did enjoy smoking weed quite a bit. I sometimes resorted to lying to avoid trouble, but overall, I wouldn't classify myself as a troublemaker. Unfortunately, my parents didn't hold the most favorable opinion of me. During the first few nights in that house, everything seemed relatively calm. Occasionally, my sister's sleepwalking adventures would echo down the hall, but funny enough, her sleepwalking isn't relevant to the story I'm about to share. About two weeks or so into our stay, I hadn't experienced anything out of the ordinary, but then came that fateful night that would haunt me for years to come. I was sound asleep, as if nothing in the world could wake me up. Suddenly, I was abruptly jolted awake by an intense force tugging on my ankles, nearly pulling me halfway off the bed. Now let me emphasize that I've always been a big guy, heavy set and strong, so it would have taken considerable strength to move me like that. The experience was beyond unsettling, and I couldn't help but burst into tears because I simply couldn't explain or comprehend what was happening. From that moment on, such occurrences became a consistent part of my life in that house. I confided in my mom, hoping to find some understanding and support, but since she didn't really want me there in the first place, she simply brushed off my concerns. This lack of validation only intensified the fear, plunging me into a deep spiral of depression and anxiety. Nights became a dreaded ordeal as I struggled to sleep, knowing that I would likely experience another terrifying incident. I delved into researching the history of the house, desperately seeking any clues or explanations for these supernatural events. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any prior incidents or documented phenomena associated with the house, despite my efforts to dig deep. The haunting continued relentlessly, persisting until the end of my junior year. It all began roughly a month into the second semester, adding to the mounting stress and pressure I was already experiencing as a student. During one particularly distressing night, as the mysterious force once again made its presence known, I couldn't bear it any longer. Overwhelmed with despair, I screamed out in desperation, For the love of God, please stop! I can't endure this anymore! The reaction that followed was nothing short of horrifying. The entity or whatever it was violently rattled my door, almost tearing it off its hinges, leaving me paralyzed with fear. I didn't sleep for the remainder of that night, paralyzed by the terror that had consumed me. After that traumatic incident, I made the decision to sleep upstairs from then on. My mom would occasionally instruct me to go back to my designated room whenever she found me sleeping elsewhere in the house, but after that night, I refused to budge. In fact, I withdrew into myself, speaking barely a word and retreating into a shell of fear and anxiety. It's an experience that will forever be etched in my mind, evoking tears whenever I recall it, and I rely on my partner's calming presence to soothe my troubled emotions. Most nights, sleep eludes me, forcing me to resort to heavy doses of melatonin just to find some semblance of rest. So there you have it, the harrowing tale of my teenage years, filled with an inexplicable and terrifying occurrence that continue to haunt me to this day. Story number 10. I saw and heard it at the same time. Well, all right, let me tell you this crazy story that happened to me recently. It was one evening and I was engrossed in a lively online call with my dear friends. I had set up a little haven in my cozy bedroom, sitting at my trusty purple table with my laptop right in front of me, illuminating the room with its warm glow. The lights were on, creating a vibrant ambiance. 
As we chatted and laughed, completely immersed in our conversation, something bizarre occurred. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of movement, and I heard a distinct sound. My initial perception was that my dark brown leather tissue box had toppled over the edge of the table. Now, this had happened once before when I accidentally nudged it off, so it instantly registered in my mind as a familiar occurrence. Curiosity peaked, I glanced towards the source of the sound, expecting to see my trusty tissue box lying on the floor. However, to my utter surprise, my hand found nothing but empty air. It was then that the realization struck me like a bolt of lightning. My tissue box was never there to begin with. In fact, it was peacefully resting in the living room, in the possession of my dear mother. For a fleeting moment I paused, attempting to comprehend the inexplicable phenomenon that had unfolded before me. A chill coursed through my spine and an unsettling feeling crept over me, tingling my senses. I couldn't fathom how I could have heard the distinct scratching sound of the box against the table's surface if it had never existed in the first place. Fueled by a mix of curiosity and fear and confusion, I quickly abandoned the comfort of my bedroom and dashed towards the living room, where my family members were gathered. Bustling into the room, my heart pounding in my chest, I could hardly catch my breath. Without hesitation, I dressed them urgently, my voice trembling with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. Guys, I stammered, trying to remain keep my composure. You won't believe what I just saw and what just happened. I swear with every fiber of my being I heard and saw something extraordinary. It was as if there was a dark hand or some mysterious object, roughly the size of a tissue box, right there on my table. I heard it slide from the edge, scratching the surface, so vividly that I instinctively bent down to retrieve it, thinking I must have accidentally pushed something. My family members exchanged concerned glances, clearly taken aback by the intensity of my words. They knew me well enough to discern that I wasn't one to easily succumb to fanciful tales or exaggeration. Yet, there was an undeniable earnestness in my voice, a profound conviction. As we huddled together sharing our thoughts and speculations, a sense of unease settled upon us. The notion that an invisible force had manifested in my room, imitating the presence of an object, sent shivers down our spines. We contemplated the possibility of a supernatural occurrence, a lingering spirit or an unexplainable glitch in the fabric of reality itself. The incident left an indelible mark on my psyche, fueling my fascination with the unknown and prompting countless hours of research into the paranormal and metaphysical realms. I delved into books, articles, and online forums, hungry for answers, desperate to unravel the enigma that had unfolded in my own bedroom. Months passed, and though I never encountered another incident quite as perplexing as that late fateful night, the memory lingered, forever etched into the tapestry of my life. It served as a constant reminder that the world is far more mysterious and inexplicable than we may have ever comprehended. I became a staunch believer in the existence of unseen forces, forever fascinated by the ethereal and the unexplained. So, that's my extraordinary story, one that I continue to ponder and share with others, hoping to connect with those who may have encountered similar inexplicable phenomena. Life has a way of surprising us, unveiling its inexplicable secrets when we least expect them. And for me, that unforgettable encounter was just the beginning of an endless quest for understanding in the face of the unknown. Story number three, Kitchen Chair Moving By Itself. It's been approximately four months since I moved into my new house, and for the most part everything's been rather uneventful, no peculiar occurrences or paranormal experiences to speak of. However, in the past month a rather unsettling phenomenon has begun to take place. Whenever I return home from work, I'm confronted with an inexplicable sight that sends chills down my spine. My kitchen chair, which is normally positioned neatly at the kitchen table when I leave in the morning, mysteriously relocates itself to the very center of my living room, directly above the ceiling fan. 
Now, it's important to note that I live alone, with no pets or mischievous chimpanzees that could be responsible for this strange activity. Initially, I dismissed it as a mere coincidence, as it didn't happen every time I returned home from work. However, upon closer observation, I realized that it occurred a staggering 11 or 12 times over the course of the past month. Needless to say, the bizarre phenomenon has begun to unnerve me. The fact that the chair moves itself a distance of approximately 45 feet to reach its new spot in the middle of the living room is nothing short of perplexing. I've never actually witnessed the chair in motion, so I'm left wondering whether it possesses the ability to teleport or if it somehow drags itself across the room. What adds to the disconcerting nature of this situation is that the chair always ends up in the exact same position, facing my television and the ceiling fan. Its consistency is both eerie and unnerving. I've racked my brain trying to come up with logical explanations, but I've been unsuccessful in finding any reasonable answers. The peculiar chair relocation is the only paranormal activity that's occurred in my house thus far. Other than this inexplicable phenomenon, no other strange occurrences have taken place. It's a pretty much just as perplexing to me as to why this object seems to possess a supernatural propensity while everything else remains perfectly normal. Is there something about this chair itself that attracts these inexplicable forces? Or is there something else entirely at play? Curiously, I recall visiting a cemetery approximately a month ago. Around the same time, the chair started displaying its strange behavior. Could it be possible that I unwittingly brought something back with me from the cemetery? Is there a connection between my visit to the burial grounds and the subsequent movement of the chair? These questions weigh heavily on my mind, and I find myself increasingly concerned about the nature of this occurrence. In an attempt to find some answers and seek solace, I've begun researching paranormal phenomena and consulting experts in the field. However, the information that I gathered thus far has only deepened the mystery surrounding my situation. There are accounts of haunted objects, possessed artifacts, and even poltergeist activity, but none of them precisely mirror the peculiar movement of my kitchen chair. While I'm generally a skeptic when it comes to supernatural events, I can no longer ignore the undeniable evidence before me. There is something inexplicable happening in my house, and it's centered around this seemingly ordinary chair. The daily anticipation and fear that grip me upon returning home have become overwhelming and I find myself questioning my own sanity. As days turn into nights and the chair continues its inexplicable relocation, my curiosity and unease grow exponentially. I've become hyper-aware of every creak and every whisper within the house, wondering if there are other subtle signs of paranormal activity that I've overlooked. The thought of sharing my home with an unseen presence is chilling, and it weighs heavily on my daily existence. Perhaps it's time for some drastic measures, seeking the assistance of a paranormal investigator or a medium. Or maybe the next step. Maybe that'll unravel the mystery of this perplexing chair. I yearn for answers, and I yearn for closure, and for the restoration of peace within the walls of my home. And until then... I will continue to document every occurrence meticulously, hoping that one day I will uncover the truth behind this eerie phenomenon and put an end to the unsettling mystery that's taken hold of my life. Story number 14, Jin Encounter. I've always had an intriguing relationship with my grandparents' house in Nairobi, Kenya. Whenever we went there for our vacations, there was this peculiar room on the second story that emanated an eerie vibe. It was as if an invisible presence resided within those four walls. Even my mother, while growing up in that house, used to hear faint baby cries coming from that room, despite there being no baby present. She even claimed to have witnessed strange Arabic writings on the walls. However, I never paid much attention to these tales, dismissing them as mere exaggerations or figments of imagination. One fateful night, the room's mystery decided to reveal itself to me and three of my cousins. We found ourselves inside the enigmatic chamber, unaware of the unusual events that were about to unfold. 
It began with the door slowly creaking open, catching our attention with its eerie sound, and then abruptly it swung wide open and slammed shut with a force that startled us. It was perplexing because the door was designed in such a way that it couldn't be easily closed without pressing down the door handle to release the hinge. We exchanged bewildered glances, trying to make sense of what had just occurred. However, before we could gather our thoughts, the door repeated its strange behavior a minute later. It opened slowly, then forcefully shut. The cycle continued four more times. Fear gradually crept into our hearts, and we instinctively hurtled together, seeking solace and reassurance in each other's presence. Something was undeniably amiss, and we couldn't comprehend the sources of these inexplicable occurrences. In a state of panic, I reached for my cell phone and hastily dialed my mother's number, hoping she would rescue us from this unsettling situation. I whispered urgently, explaining the eerie events that unfolded in the room, while she was sound asleep in another part of the house completely. I could feel the tension in her voice as she assured me that she would come to our aid immediately. As we anxiously awaited our savior, a peculiar hush fell over the room. Suddenly we heard my mother's soothing voice shushing from the other side of the door. Relief washed over us as we anticipated her arrival, hoping that her presence would dispel the mysterious occurrences. Slowly, she turned the doorknob and with a gentle push, the door swung open. We eagerly looked up at her, eager for answers and a sense of security. However, what she revealed left us dumbfounded. Outside the room stood a cat, a pure white feline gazing innocently at us with its piercing eyes. It was a sight that defied logic because my grandparents did not own a cat. Furthermore, the time was around 2 a.m., adding an extra layer of peculiarity to the situation. Confusion mingled with curiosity as the cat swiftly darted down the stairs, disappearing into the shadows. We were left speechless, unable to comprehend the significance of this unexpected visitor. Was it a mere coincidence, or did it hold a deeper meaning? Questions swirled in our minds, but answers eluded us, leaving us to ponder the enigma that had unfolded within the confines of that haunting room. From that day onward, the room on the second story of my grandparents' house held a newfound mystique. It became a subject of endless discussions and speculations among our family members. The inexplicable incidents we experienced served as a constant reminder that we're, or sorry, served as a constant reminder that there are realms beyond our comprehension where unseen forces may reside. Our encounter with the supernatural, whether it was a jinn or otherworldly phenomenon, left an indelible mark on our memories and ignited a sense of fascination for the unknown. In retrospect, that eerie room and the strange occurrences within its walls served as a reminder that the world is a vast and mysterious place, brimming with inexplicable phenomena waiting to be unraveled. It taught us to approach life with an open mind and an appreciation for the unexplained. While the events of that night may forever remain a mystery, they've enriched our lives with a sense of wonder and a newfound respect for the realms beyond our senses. Story number 11. A Spiritual Lover? When I find myself in the solace of my bedroom, enveloped by the tranquility of solitude, a peculiar sensation occasionally envelops me, as if another entity is in my midst. This enigmatic presence, if I may call it such, emanates an aura of profound affection and tenderness. It permeates the air, embracing me in its ethereal embrace. In the moments when I am touched by its essence, a surge of warmth courses through my veins, infusing my very being with an inexplicable joy. It is during these intimate encounters with this ineffable force that my mind becomes a canvas, embellished with vibrant hues and contentment and delight. Happy thoughts dance like flickering flames in the recesses of my consciousness, and dreams unfurl their delicate wings transporting me to realms of pure enchantment. It's as if this otherworldly entity, whose essence intertwines with my own, 
bestows upon me a gift, a respite from the mundane constraints of reality. Yet amidst this euphoria, a twinge of trepidation often creeps into the recesses of my thoughts. Am I teetering on the precipice of madness? Has the fragility of my sanity been compromised? Could this be a mere fabrication of my imagination, a figment conjured by the depths of my subconscious mind? In search of solace and understanding, I've delved deep into the labyrinth corridors of knowledge, seeking a plausible explanation for this enigmatic phenomenon. And in my quest, I've stumbled upon the theories of parapsychology, a realm that embraces the inexplicable and the supernatural, where the conventional boundaries of science are stretched and tested. Some parapsychologists posit the existence of entities known as spirit guides or guardian angels, ethereal beings who are said to watch over or guide us on our earthly journey. These benevolent entities are believed to offer support, solace, and wisdom from realms beyond our own. Could it be that the mysterious presence that graces my solitude is a manifestation of such an otherworldly being? A celestial guide assigned to accompany me through the labyrinth of life? Others hypothesize that what I perceive as a separate entity could be an aspect of my own subconscious mind, an embodiment of my deepest desires and longings. In this paradigm, the entity becomes a conduit through which my subconscious communicates with the conscious, a bridge forged by the yearning and aspirations buried deep within me. As I continue to ponder, an alternative perspective presents itself, one that straddles the realms of metaphysics and neurobiology. Could it be that my brain in its intricate complexity is generating these sensations and experiences? Neuroscientists have long unraveled the intricate dance of neurons, synapses, and neurotransmitters, yet the depth of human consciousness itself remains an enigma. Could it be that within the intricate tapestry of my neural networks, a phenomenon occurs, a convergence of neural activity, a release of chemicals that manifests itself in an otherworldly presence, as love personified? Alas, the true nature of this enthralling encounter remains elusive, obscured by the veil of uncertainty. In my search for answers, I've embarked upon a voyage, not only into the vast expanse of external knowledge, but also into the uncharted terrain of my own introspection. It is a journey of self-discovery, appealing back the layers of my own consciousness in pursuit of the enigmatic truth that resides within. Until that moment of revelation arrives, I shall continue to cherish these ethereal rendezvous in the sanctuary of my bedroom. Whether born of supernatural, the subconscious, or the intricacies of my own mind, this entity brings forth an irrefutable gift, a respite from the banalities of life, a reminder that love in all its forms transcends the confines of the tangible world. And so, I embrace this enigma with open arms, for in its presence I find solace, inspiration, and an unyielding belief that there is more to this existence than meets the eye. Story number nine. Pain in my body, a night before my father's death. During those challenging months, my father battled with his critical condition, requiring constant medical attention. The arduous journey finally culminated in a devastating event that would forever be etched in my memory. The day prior to his passing, I mustered up the courage to visit him at the hospital. To my relief, my mother informed me that he was doing remarkably well. He had undergone a therapy session and had actively participated, even moving his legs and tongue with great effort. However, as fate would have it, I found myself grappling with an unexpected predicament during that visit. As I sat by my father's side, a wave of hunger overwhelmed me, prompting me to venture out of the hospital in search of sustenance. Little did I know that this seemingly innocuous decision would lead to a series of inexplicable events that would forever haunt me. After satiating my appetite, I was suddenly overcome by the overwhelming sense of fatigue. The exhaustion enveloped me, and I longed for nothing more than a moment of respite. Hastily returning to my room, I began to undress, eager to find solace in the embrace of sleep. 
However, as I removed my clothing, a sharp pang of pain coursed through my neck, shoulders, and arms, jolting me from my wariness. Instinctively, I rubbed my neck, hoping for to alleviate the discomfort that had taken hold of me. To my surprise, I discovered small, palpable nodules scattered beneath the surface of my skin. Perplexed and disturbed by the discovery, I pondered their origin and the torment that they caused me. Despite my body's cry for rest, sleep eluded me that night. Instead, I found myself plagued by different agony altogether. A throbbing ache surged through my knee, immobilizing it and rendering movement impossible. With great effort, I attempted to massage the joint, desperate to restore its function. Only then could I find solace and release from the torment that held me captive. As the night wore on, the pain seemed to migrate, finding its new dwelling within the confines of my groin. Agonizing and persistent, it left me bewildered and deeply concerned. The implications of this inexplicable suffering weighed heavily on my mind, clouding my thoughts and leaving me grasping for answers. Seeking solace and understanding, I confided in a close friend who had experienced the loss of her own father. In recounting the events of that dreadful night, I shared my physical afflictions, hoping she might offer some insight or familiarity with such an ordeal. To my astonishment, she revealed that she had endured a similar encounter. Like me, she had experienced unexplained pain following her father's passing, a revelation that struck a deep chord within my soul. Driven by an insatiable need for understanding, I embarked on a quest to seek out others who might have encountered similar circumstances. Desperately scouring the depths of the internet, I meticulously searched for accounts of individuals who had endured comparable physical and emotional trials following the loss of a loved one. Yet, to my dismay, my efforts yielded no fruit, leaving me disheartened and yearning for the solace of shared experiences. It is in this context, dear reader, or listener, that I turn to you now, in search of solace and enlightenment. Have any of you, in the vast expanse of your lives, encountered a similar phenomenon? Have you experienced unexplained pain, both physical and emotional, following the passing of a loved one? This quest for understanding and connection transcends language barriers, as I had sought similar experiences in Spanish but found none. In sharing my history and story, I hope to find solace in the collective wisdom of those who have treaded similar paths. The human experience is vast and profound, encompassing a myriad of tribulations and triumphs. By shedding light on our shared vulnerabilities, we can find solace in knowing that we are not alone in our suffering. Together, we can forge bonds of empathy, offering support and understanding to those who yearn most for it. Story number 11. Bizarre Encounter. Let me take you back to a nostalgic moment from my teenage years, a memory that still lingers in my mind. It was a time when my best friend and I resided in a quaint little village, surrounded by vast fields and enchanting woods. Our days were filled with the simple joys of climbing trees during summer breaks, relishing in the adventurous spirit that youth bestowed upon us. We were inseparable seeking thrills in every nook and cranny of our idyllic countryside. As we grew older, our penchant for excitement led us to venture into daring escapades. One such escapade involved trespassing into a nearby quarry, convinced that we could find amusement within its rugged terrain. We were both just 14 years old at the time, brimming with the mischievousness that was characteristic of adolescence. On that fateful day, we found ourselves perched upon a stile, positioned between the woods and an expansive field. The landscape stretched out before us, delineated by a hedgerow that separated the two fields. From our elevated vantage point, we engaged in animated conversation, blissfully unaware of the peculiar turn of events that would soon take. Our attention was suddenly drawn to the distant field where the few individuals were tending to their tasks with the aid of a tractor. The rumble of the machinery reached our ears, mingling with the tranquil symphony of nature. Given the agricultural nature of the area, 
the sight of the people working in the fields didn't strike us as particularly unusual. Curiosity, however, prompted me to inquire of my friend whether she believed that they were aware of our presence, or if they perceived us as mere onlookers peering at them from an air of voyeurism. While we gazed at these indistinct figures in the distance, our minds shrouded in a veil of uncertainty, an inexplicable occurrence unfolded before our eyes, the laborers so minuscule in size due to the vast expanse that separated us abruptly ceased their activities and began to wave in our direction. Confusion and surprise mingled with us, for we were certain that our remote location concealed us from their view, and the distance made any form of communication impossible, yet there they were, gesturing in our direction with an eerie persistence. An unsettling chill cascaded down our spines, permeating the air around us, as a friend couldn't help but exclaim, Forget about this, let's get out of here! Sensing her unease, I concurred, realizing that it was time to retreat from this mysterious tableau. We retreated back into the comforting embrace of the woods, our footsteps hastened by the instinctual fear that had taken hold of our beings. As we glanced back, the figures in the distance continued their strange waving motion, devoid of any natural fluidity. It was as though they were trapped in a perpetual state of repetition, devoid of life and vitality. From that moment onward, we vowed to never return to that disquieting area, opting instead to confine our explorations to the familiarity of the quarry. The mysteries surrounding those distant fields remained unresolved, buried deep within the recesses of our youthful memories. In recent times, however, I stumbled upon accounts of similar unexplained phenomena happening to others. It reignited that dormant curiosity within me, impelling me to seek answers. So, dear friends, I turn to you with a lingering question. What could possibly explain that eerie encounter from our past? Perhaps there's more to this enigma than meets the eye. Let it be known that we were true children of the 90s, embracing the simplicity of life amidst fields and woods. Our means of communication involved the virtual realm of MSN, where we would gather in the digital realm, eagerly inviting our friends to join us in our tree-cleaning adventures. Climbing, excuse me. Ah, the nostalgia of those carefree days when the internet was a gateway to a virtual connection and endless possibilities. As I delved deeper into my quest for answers, I realized that the bizarre encounter that we had experienced might not be an isolated incident. Stories began to emerge from various corners of the world, tales of inexplicable sightings and eerie interactions with unknown entities. It seems that our encounter was merely a drop in the vast ocean of unexplained phenomenon. Story number four, Small Occurrences in My Apartment. Let me tell you the intriguing story of my experience in this apartment. It all began back in December of 2019 when I moved in with my longtime friend as my roommate. We were excited about this new chapter in our lives, and upon moving in, we quickly decided that he would take the master bedroom while I settled in the other bedroom. Little did we know that peculiar occurrence would soon capture our attention. My roommate confided in me about two incidents that left him puzzled and unnerved. The first incident took place in his closet, where he distinctly heard a noise resembling something falling. Upon investigating, we discovered that it was his clothes hangers, the ones that he had carefully placed his clothes on. We were both perplexed as we couldn't fathom how the hangers could have knocked off inside a closed closet especially with no one inside and no mischievous cats roaming about. The second incident occurred a few days later when a bag of cat food, which had been leaning against the wall for nearly three days, suddenly toppled over while my roommate was present with his girlfriend. I immediately questioned if there were any open windows or fans that could have caused the disturbance leading to the bag falling. However, my roommate assured me that there was no external factors that could have caused the bag to lose its balance. It seemed as though these events defied any rational explanation. Fast forward about two weeks, and my former roommate decided to move out in November of 2022. Now it's just my girlfriend and me in the apartment, accompanied by our two beloved cats. Since the departure of my roommate, we decided to move into his old room, 
which boasted a larger size and a private bathroom, little did we know that this decision would bring forth a series of chilling encounters. One evening, as I was busy preparing dinner in the kitchen, my girlfriend found solace on the bed, engrossed in a television show. The blankets were haphazardly scattered on the floor by the foot of the bed, leaving her as the sole occupant in the middle. Adjacent to her, on their left side, rested the PlayStation controller, seemingly innocuous. The strange turn of events came when she informed me the next day that she had witnessed the controller slide off the bed and crash into the floor. She described the incident with a tinge of fear, as if it defied the laws of nature. It dawned on me that she had experienced something potentially paranormal. To fully comprehend the peculiarity of this incident, I must elaborate on the layout of our bed. We own a queen-sized bed, which over time has developed a slight dip in the center where we both lay together. With the controller's position on the bed nestled near to the left side, it should have naturally gravitated toward the center due to the dip. However, against all expectations, it defied gravity and slid off the bed, effortlessly crossing the dip in the mattress. The inexplicable nature of this event sent shivers down our spines. Curiously, my girlfriend had chosen not to disclose the incident immediately, opting to keep it to herself until the following day. She confessed that she felt uneasy discussing it within the confines of our apartment. Strangely enough, I had noticed her acting differently after that incident, refraining from eating her food. This detail only became clear once she finally shared her harrowing encounter. It was evident that her experience had profoundly affected her. What perplexed us even more was the fact that neither my former roommate nor I had ever disclosed our experiences to her. Therefore, she couldn't have conjured up such a tale merely to grab our attention. It seemed that everyone who had spent time in that room had encountered something similar except for me. This realization added an eerie layer to the already mystifying circumstances. As we reflect on these unexplained occurrences, we are left with a profound sense of curiosity and apprehension. The strange incidents that unfolded in our apartment continue to linger in our minds, challenging our understanding of the world around us. We remain uncertain about the cause of these phenomenon, and the unanswered questions keep us on edge. Ghost Soldier in El Salvador In the year 2015, an unforgettable experience took place. It was a serene night when three of my closest friends and I decided to indulge in the beauty of the night sky. We found ourselves on the outskirts of the city, nestled in a vast field that faced the majestic presence of a towering mountain. Our car was parked discreetly enveloped in darkness, with only the faint glow of distant streetlights illuminating the surroundings. This particular location was known as Santa Elena, a place that is now transformed into an exclusive residential area, mostly inhabited by the affluent elders. As a result, criminal activities were virtually non-existent. However, it hadn't been this way. In the 80s, the mountains encircling the area served as a tumultuous battleground, witnessing the tragic loss of over 220,000 lives during the 12 years of intense conflict. As we stood there, captivated by the celestial wonders above, an unexpected sight caught our attention. A solitary figure emerged from the shadows, gradually drawing closer to our group. My initial assumption was that he must have been one of the security guards that may be assigned to gate that community and guard it. After all, it was customary to pay guards in this dangerous country to carry shotguns for protection. The possibility of encountering a guard seemed plausible, and I dismissed the situation as inconsequential. However, one of my friends astutely pointed out that if the mysterious individual truly belonged to the security team, he would not be approaching us from the direction of the mountain. Intrigued and slightly perplexed, we found ourselves contemplating the nature of this encounter. With every step the man took, his appearance became clearer. Clad in worn and tattered military attire, his shirt betrayed the unmistakable signs of a long-lasting stand of dirt and aging. 
His haircut bore an uncanny resemblance to the styles prevalent in the 80s, while his sturdy boots and crimson bandana completed the nostalgic ensemble. The most disconcerting aspect, however, was that the weapon he carried, a formidable assault rifle that appeared to have witnessed to its own share of battles and hardships in his hand. In his wariness, the man approached one of my companions. His countenance reflected exhaustion and despair. Gasping for breath, his voice trembled as he posed a seemingly innocuous question. Hey, what time is it? Without hesitation, my friend responded. It's 10 p.m. Gratitude shimmered momentarily in the stranger's eyes as he uttered a heartfelt thank you and resumed his solitary trek toward the looming mountain. His figure gradually dissolved into the enveloping darkness, leaving us overwhelmed with emotions. In that poignant moment, an indescribable surge of emotions swept through our beings. Tears welled up in our eyes, propelled by a whirlwind of bewilderment and disbelief. To this day, the enigma surrounding that encounter remains unresolved, and the identity of that perplexing figure eludes us. As he vanished into the abyss of the night, a profound sense of melancholy washed over me. I couldn't shake the feeling that the man we had just encountered was lost, burdened by an unseen weight that only he carried. An innate desire to extend a helping hand lingered within me, an unspoken wish to alleviate his wariness and offer solace to the soul that seemed trapped in the labyrinth of time. Reflecting upon that fateful night in 2015, I find myself oscillating between awe and sorrow, the memory of the man with his tired eyes and the haunting aura he exuded remains etched in my consciousness. The unanswered questions and the unexplained circumstances continue to occupy my thoughts, reminding me of the inexplicable mysteries that lie dormant in the depths of our existence. Perhaps one day, the truth behind that encounter will be unveiled, and the lost soul that we met on that starlit night will find the peace and redemption he so desperately seeks. Number 13. Flashbacks Visions Every now and then, in the midst of my daily activities, a peculiar phenomenon occurs, almost like a sudden unexpected flashback that transports me into another time. It's as if a curtain is drawn, revealing visions of people from a bygone area, the Victorian area to be precise. These individuals adorned in their frilly collars and impeccably tailored attire materialize before my eyes, engaging in various activities that capture the essence of their time. Sometimes I witness them gracefully dancing as if reveling at a grand party filled with mirth and elegance. On other occasions, different scenes unfold. But it is this image of the joyous soiree that remains etched in my memory most vividly. These visions are astonishingly real, so vivid that I'm transported back in time, perceiving the world through the eyes of someone else. It's as if I've become an observer, peering into the past with an uncanny clarity and depth. The sights, sounds, and even the subtlest details of that era come alive before me, captivating my senses and leaving an indelible impression on my mind. Yet, when these moments abruptly come to an end, snapping me back to reality, a peculiar sensation washes over me. It's as though the last few seconds of what I was previously engaged in have been wiped away from my memory, leaving me disoriented and unsettled. The transition between the ethereal world of the Victorian area and my present surroundings feel jarring, almost as if I've been rudely awakened by an enchanted dream or sorry, rudely awakened from an enchanting dream. In the aftermath of these encounters, I often find myself grappling with conflicting emotions. On one hand, there's a deep fascination and curiosity about the lives of those individuals who inhabited that time, so different from our own. I wonder who they are, what stories they carried, and what their dreams and aspirations might have been. The allure of the past beckons me, tempting me to delve deeper into the annals of history to uncover the secrets that lie hidden beneath the layers of time. Yet simultaneously, there's a sense of unease that accompanies these experiences, the sudden disorientation and loss of temporal continuity, and the nausea that washes over me after each episode raise disconcerting questions. 
What is the origin of these visions? Why am I chosen to witness this particular era? Is there a deeper meaning or purpose behind these glimpses into the past? Or are they merely figments of an overactive imagination? The ambiguity surrounding these occurrences lingers in my thoughts, captivating my mind during quiet moments and infiltrating my dreams when sleep comes to me. I find myself yearning for answers, for a deeper understanding. In pursuit of clarity, I've immersed myself in countless books delving into the intricacies of Victorian society, its customs and its idiosyncrasies. I've spent hours poring over historical records piercing together fragments of information in an attempt to discern any connection between my present self and the lives I witnessed through these inexplicable time slips. As these visions persist, I've also sought solace in art and creativity, inspired by the elegance and beauty of the Victorian area. I've taken up painting attempting to capture the essence of those bygone times on canvas. Through the strokes of my brush, I endeavor to recreate the scenes that have unfolded before my eyes, hoping to unravel the mystery that binds me to that era. As time goes by, the dissonance between my normal life and these times slips become increasingly unsettling. The world around me continues to march forward, propelled by the relentless march of progress, while I remain anchored to the past. And so I continue this journey of discovery, grappling with the enigma that's become an integral part of my existence. The Victorian era, with its frilly collars and resplendent parties, still holds sway over my thoughts and aspirations. I yearn to uncover the secrets that lie buried with the annals of history, to understand the connection that binds me to the bygone time. Until then, I shall embrace these fleeting visions, these brief glimpses into a world long past, and remain ever vigilant for the next moment when the veil is lifted, and I'm transported once again to that captivating era, for within those moments I find a sense of purpose, a connection to the forgotten past, and a glimpse into a reality beyond my own. Story number 11. Doll. So let me start by telling you about the intriguing doll cabinet that resides in my room. It holds a collection of dolls, a gift from my beloved grandmother. It was just another typical night during the weekend and I decided to explore the contents of the cabinet. Nestled among the dolls were some old cameras, adding a touch of vintage charm to the collection. Curiosity got the better of me and I reached for one of the cameras, carefully inspecting it to ensure I hadn't accumulated too much dust over time. As I examined the camera, I noticed a peculiar sight. A few strands of vibrant orange doll hairs were delicately wrapped around the dial that spun on the device. It struck me as odd because the camera was positioned between two dolls, and there seemed to be no logical reason for the doll hair to be entangled in the camera's mechanism. Unperturbed by this mysterious occurrence, I gently removed the doll's hair from the camera and proceeded to open one side of the cabinet to investigate further. Once satisfied with my inspection, I returned the camera to its original position, ready to place it back where it had belonged. As I withdrew my hand, however, something inexplicable happened. The head of one of the dolls suddenly whipped over, as though someone had forcibly grabbed it and swiftly turned it in an eerie fashion. Taken aback by the spine-chilling sight, I hastily pulled my hand away and stood frozen by my desk, attempting to gather my thoughts and calm my racing heartbeat. Just when I thought the unsettling ordeal was over, a distinct knock resonated from within the cabinet. At that moment, I had reached my threshold of fear and decided I had endured enough for one night. I yearned to escape the unsettling atmosphere and sought refuge in my sister's room, hoping for a night of respite from the inexplicable events unfolding around me. It's important to note that the doll responsible for this disconcerting display was a porcelain doll, its head not easily movable by mere coincidence or contact. This fact only added to the sheer strangeness and inexplicability of the situation. It was a hair-raising experience that occurred precisely at midnight, amplifying the eerie ambiance and leaving me in a state of both fascination and panic. The night wore on as I found solace in my sister's room, seeking comfort in the presence of another person. Sleep eluded me as my mind raced with questions and possible explanations for the unsettling phenomena I had witnessed. Was it the restless spirit of a long-forgotten doll seeking attention, or perhaps some inexplicable force that defied logical comprehension? 
The hours ticked by slowly, each minute seemingly laden with the unexplainable weight. Dawn finally broke, and with that came a sense of relief, albeit tinged with lingering apprehension. As the daylight flooded the room, casting away the shadows of the night, I gathered the courage to return to my own room and confront the enigmatic doll cabinet. Taking a deep breath, I stepped back into the room that had been the stage for the bizarre occurrences of the previous night. As I approached the doll cabinet, a sense of unease washed over me, but determined to face whatever awaited me, I stood before the cabinet and gently opened its doors. To my surprise, the dolls stood motionless, as if frozen in time, their vacant gazes fixed upon a world beyond their glass enclosure. It seemed as though the events of the previous night had ceased, leaving no trace of the inexplicable happenings that had haunted my thoughts. With a mixture of relief and curiosity, I examined each doll closely, searching for any clues that might shed light on the peculiar incident. Yet, despite my thorough inspection, no answers presented themselves. The dolls appeared innocent and lifeless, devoid of any hidden secrets or signs of their nocturnal escapades. And so, dear listener, that is the tale of the doll cabinet in my room, which continues to captivate and perplex me to this very day. It's a haunting reminder that there are realms beyond our understanding, where the supernatural and the mundane intertwine, leaving us with more questions than answers. Story number three, first time experience. I find myself at the ripe age of 25, embarking on an unexpected journey that led me to take up residence in my grandmother's old abandoned house. The circumstances that brought me here are shrouded in personal reasons that I prefer to keep kind of concealed. Allow me to paint a vivid picture of the dwelling that now surrounds me. This house, a standard two-story abode, stands with an eerie allure, boasting an attic teeming with spiders and a basement door that stubbornly refuses to lock, leaving direct access to the outside deck. Neglect has taken its toll on this once vibrant exterior, leaving behind a haunting visage of peeling blue paint. The windows, small and square-shaped, are reminiscent of days gone by, with one gracing each bedroom. In my quest for solace within these walls, I have chosen to occupy the very room my sister once slumbered in. The decision was born out of an unsettling event that transpired many years ago. You see, my dear grandfather, a victim of congestive heart failure, met his untimely demise within the confines of his own room. The thought of sleeping in a space where a life had ended sent shivers down my spine, so I sought refuge in my sister's former sanctuary. One fateful night as I lay in bed, cocooned by the covers, I was abruptly startled by a distinct sound that permeated the air. It was unmistakable, an unmistakable echo of what appeared to be a grown man of considerable size traversing the creaky wooden steps that led into the living room. Panic flooded my senses for I assumed an intruder had breached the feeble defenses of the unlocked basement door. Beads of perspiration formed on my brow as a surge of adrenaline coursed through my veins, propelling me to grasp my late grandfather's weathered hunting knife, my newfound weapon of defense. Without hesitation, I mustered every ounce of courage within me, and as the sound reached its crescendo, I mustered the strength to kick open the bedroom door, poised to confront the intruder with an unwavering resolve. To my bewilderment and disbelief, the empty space that met my eyes provided no evidence of an unwelcome visitor. It was as though the ethereal footsteps had dissipated into thin air. I struggled to comprehend the surreal experience that had unfolded before me. It seemed inconceivable, defying all logic and reason. A mixture of relief and disorientation washed over me for the realization that there was no living being to confront offered a respite from the immediate threat that I had anticipated. However, the mystery remained, taunting my curious mind. Seeking answers, I turned to my mother, who posited a theory that sent shivers down my spine. She proposed that the footsteps belonged to not an earthly intruder, but to the spectral presence of my departed grandfather, lingering within the walls of this desolate dwelling. 
The notion was simultaneously comforting and unsettling, blurring the boundaries between the tangible and the otherworldly. In the days that followed, the enigmatic occurrences persisted. Once again, the heavy footsteps reverberated through the hollow halls, echoing with an eerie persistence. Determined to seek solace and a semblance of normalcy within the spectral realm, I sought the guidance of spirituality. Incense, fragrant with its ethereal smoke, wafted through the house, mingling with fervent prayers uttered in the hopes of quelling the supernatural unrest that pervaded every corner. As if appeased by these rituals, the phantom footfalls ceased their haunting serenade. Silence once again embraced the old house, imbuing it with an air of tranquility. Whether the ethereal presence truly belonged to my grandfather, or whether it was a figment of my imagination, remains an enigma that may never be fully resolved. Yet one thing remains clear. The weight of those heavy footsteps and the echoes of the intangible presence have etched themselves into the fabric of my consciousness, forever reminding me of the thin veil that separates the living from the departed. Heard my name. I've been living in our current house for over a decade now. And throughout these years, we've had a series of intriguing experiences that seem to occur sporadically, usually every few months. While these incidents are generally minor in nature, they've managed to pique my curiosity and leave a lasting impression on me. You see, our house has a rich history. It was once owned by a single family for more than half of a century, and the couple who resided before us have since passed away. It's not uncommon for homes with such a long lineage to retain a certain essence or energy, and our house seems to possess its fair share of residual effects. The peculiar occurrences we've encountered are seemingly innocuous, yet undeniably eerie. For instance, we've heard peculiar sounds echoing through the halls, unexplained footsteps resonating from upstairs, and even the distinct noise of drawers opening when no one is present. These incidents have become part of our everyday lives, leaving us with a lingering sense of intrigue and wonder. However, nothing could have prepared me for what I, what I guess I saw that night. It was around 11.30, and I was preparing to retire for the evening in the comfort of my bedroom. As I was going about my nightly routine, an unexpected event unfolded. Shattering the relatively calm atmosphere, it was a moment that will forever be etched in my memory. In the midst of preparing myself for a peaceful slumber, a voice, unmistakably that of a woman, rang out with startling clarity. It called out my name, causing me to instinctively whirl around in a state of shock and disbelief. The room was shrouded in silence, devoid of any external disturbances. The television remained turned off, and I was the only occupant within that space. The utterance of my name from an unseen presence sent shivers down my spine, leaving me perplexed and unnerved. In all my years residing in this house, this was the first time I had encountered such a direct and personal interaction. While my wife might dismiss it as a figment of my imagination or the product of an overactive mind, I find it challenging to disregard the multitude of unexplained phenomena that have unfolded over time. This inexplicable incident specifically the enunciation of my name, surpassed anything I had previously experienced. Perhaps there is a lingering energy within these walls, remnants of the couple who had once called this house their home, or maybe it's a manifestation of something beyond our current understanding, a glimpse into the realm of the supernatural. Regardless, the encounters left me contemplating the nature of our existence and the unseen forces that may exist parallel to our own. While my, might, while my wife sorry, may, may attribute these occurrences to mere chance or coincidence, I found myself compelled to explore the depths of this enigma further. I yearned to uncover the secrets hidden within these walls, to understand the true nature of the whispers and footsteps that reverberate through the rooms. Each unexplained incident adds a layer of mystery to the narrative of our lives, compelling me to seek answers and delve deeper into the unknown. As I reflect on the multitude of inexplicable events that have transpired throughout our time in this house, 
I can't help but marvel at the intricacies of the human experience. We are often confronted with phenomena that challenge our preconceived notions and force us to question the boundary of our knowledge. Our house, with its enigmatic history and ethereal occurrences, serves as a constant reminder that there is so much more to this world than what meets the eye. So as I lie in bed tonight, listening to the faint creaks and murmurs that permeate the air, I find solace in the fact that I am part of something greater, something beyond the realm of the mundane. And as I close my eyes, I eagerly await the next chapter of this ongoing tale, eager to unravel the mysteries that lie within the very fabric of our existence. Story number nine, Strange Encounters with the Spiritual Realm, I think. The story which I'm about to share is so recent that I find it difficult to confide in anyone just yet. However, I feel compelled to document my experience here for the time being. It all began yesterday when I found myself alone in the comfort of my room, indulging in the mindless entertainment offered by TikTok. It must have been around 11 a.m. or perhaps even later when an extraordinary occurrence unfolded before me. As I mindlessly scrolled through the app, my attention was abruptly seized by a peculiar sound, a low hum that echoed faintly in the distance. Curiosity mingled with a tinge of unease as the hum gradually grew louder, its resonance intensifying until it pierced the sanctuary of my left ear. It was an otherworldly sound, unlike anything I'd ever encountered within the confines of my home or the realm beyond. Strangely, it seemed to emanate from somewhere simultaneously enveloping me in its enigmatic embrace. Naturally, the suddenness of this phenomenon startled me, causing my heart to race and a ripple of panic to course through my veins. In that fleeting moment, my imagination ran wild conjuring images of extraterrestrial beings attempting to establish contact with me. The duration of this bewildering occurrence was mercifully brief, lasting only about 10 or 15 seconds before subsiding into silence, leaving me alone with my racing thoughts. When I later shared the incident with my boyfriend, he offered a rational explanation. He suggested that it might be a manifestation of tinnitus, condition characterized by phantom sounds in the ears, yet being young and having never encountered such auditory oddities before, I found it difficult to fully embrace this rationalization. The mysterious hum remained an enigma, an unsolved puzzle that continued to haunt my consciousness. The following day at around 1 p.m., I sought solace in the familiar embrace of my video game console. As I immersed myself in the virtual realm, delving into epic adventures and an unsuspected sensation was washing over me. A profound feeling of comfort, as if a warm blanket had been draped around my soul. The abruptness of this emotion and the shift that it caused caught me off guard, causing a flood of inexplicable emotions to surge. I couldn't help but succumb to the overwhelming surge of tears that cascaded down my cheeks. It was an indescribable experience, a sense of security that transcended the boundaries of rational comprehension. How could I explain this overwhelming feeling of safety that penetrated the very core of my being? Words failed to capture the essence of this ethereal phenomenon, leaving me grappling for understanding in the midst of this tumultuous sea of emotions. In my solitude, with no one to witness my vulnerable state, I found myself impulsively uttering words aloud, not expecting them to be heard by anyone but the empty walls surrounding me. If an angel truly seeks to communicate with me, I whispered, my voice trembling with uncertainty, could you please refrain from subjecting me to that disconcerting hum? It frightened me immensely, and I misinterpreted its purpose. This plea, this whispered request, reverberated throughout the room, lingering in the air like an unanswered question. The time was somewhere between 10 and 12 p.m., fragile moments suspended between the familiar embrace of morning and the vibrant hues of afternoon. My mind toyed with the idea that these remarkable incidents couldn't be mere coincidences. They defied rational explanation and ventured into the realm of the extraordinary. For now, dear reader, I leave this account here, 
a testament to the inexplicable occurrences that have shaken the foundation of my existence. Whether they bear the mark of the supernatural or remain mere figments of my overactive imagination, one thing remains clear. I am forever changed by these inexplicable events, forever haunted by the enigma that dances on the precipice of my consciousness. Story number 10. The family farm animals are reacting to something, and I don't know what it is. So for context, I'm from the rural parts of Scandinavia. I'm a hunter. I'm 20 years old, and I currently live with my family due to becoming very ill. And well, since moving in, I've noticed the farm animal's behavior has changed alongside odd happenings. Here we're talking about horses, cats, and dogs, as well as some now dead chickens. So I'll start out by explaining the horse's behavior. So these are two castrated mustangs and a mare, all fair-tempered animals, who are very friendly. So recently they've been getting absolutely frightened by something. We've seen them staring into the woods, snorting before blasting a gallop at high speeds trying to flee. And sometimes they've fled their pasture. Inside their stables they've also been suddenly snorting and standing in the corners of their enclosures. The cats have all been seemingly awfully anxious. We have two that are barn cats. One is a mix inside, an outside cat, and the last one is an inside cat. The two outside cats are usually quite fond of people and are usually very comfortable in their environment. But ever since December of last year, they've stayed in their room and saddle room almost constantly. When they don't leave, they seem to be on edge. and I've seen them posture up and hiss from what I can see is nothing. Nothing but a creepy feeling, which may just be from listening to the cat. But now the mixed cat usually doesn't go off as much, but will at times seem fearful and will stick to us, which is quite odd since it sent quite a, you know, thought people were friendly. And the trouble for it, and the inside cat, has started to refuse to be downstairs at night and sometimes they've hissed at something. The dog's a lovely golden retriever who's the biggest, kindest goofball who usually just gets on people's nerves with his stealing and his strong belief in his fits. And it usually sits, usually on people. So, he's not at all well, an ill-tempered dog, or badly socialized. With him, it started with him sometimes staring for long amounts of time at the scullery where he usually sleeps. The scullery has a door into the stable or barn, and it would slowly progress to him barking and growling at the scullery. This continued along with him starting to do it at the living room and dining room. He started growling at all these areas as well. All this kept to being one day, a one-time thing, up until January, and then he would sometimes do it around 2 or 5 in the morning with his barking and growling becoming more intense. He would also start the same front door, and he started the same front door that had a huge glass panel in it, so the dog could see through it. The chickens didn't really have any problem. Their behavior didn't really change much except for them foraging further away from the barn and house. Suddenly in December, we woke up all of them, and they were gone. Or sorry, we woke up to all of them gone from the chicken coop where they had always returned. Now, I do think that this may be a predator-based thing, but I still find it odd that we didn't find anything suggesting a predator took them. No feathers, no blood, no sign of entry. I've also had experiences with something I can't explain happening alongside the rest of my family. I'll gladly share our experiences, but not in this post, since this is focusing on the animal's behavior. So, I will ask you, the person reading this, what are your thoughts on what's happening? And what could it be since I can't explain it? Update. We are currently having below zero, and on the edge of being below zero weather, and the house has been infested with flies. I've seen a lot of people suggest predators, which is definitely a possibility, but we've not had any large predator kills since 2017, and I've not seen nor documented any since 2018. Foxes have not been spotted since 2019, but we did find a dead badger last summer, but nowhere near our property but within 3 or 4 kilometers of it. The human aspect is definitely a possibility as well since we've dealt with some oddballs through time, but the last time we did was back in 2014. Living alone in an 1800s bookbinder building. 
living in the old bookbinder building, which was constructed back in the 1800s, has been quite an experience for me. Strange occurrences have become a regular part of my life ever since I moved into this house. Initially, everything seemed fine and there were no signs of anything amiss. However, as time went by and years passed, peculiar things started happening around me and even to me. Now, let me clarify that I firmly believe in the existence of the paranormal. I hold the belief that spirits of those who have not found peace after passing away might linger in certain places, and it seems that such a presence has made its way into my home. One of the eerie phenomenon I've noticed is objects moving on their own accord. It's not a dramatic scene with things flying through the air, but rather subtle movements. For instance, an item placed on a flat surface would shift slightly without apparent cause. These objects are usually heavy enough that even a gust of wind from an open window wouldn't be able to move them. Additionally, I have an aversion to closed doors, so all the doors in my house, except the entrance door, remain wide open and adorned with door curtains and insect nets. Despite my efforts, I'm observing these curtains occasionally swinging as if an invisible presence is brushing against them. Even as I sit at my computer, Focused on the screen, I catch glimpses of the curtains moving behind me in the distance, beyond the reach of my PC's fan's gentle breeze against the wall. But that's not all. Every now and then, I experience an unsettling smell that seemingly emerges out of nowhere. It's as if I suddenly detect the odor of rotting, moldy, burning wood in my room. However, upon thorough investigation, I find no traces of decaying or moldy wood in my home. The only wooden elements present are my old furniture pieces, which, when inspected closely, exude a faint scent of leather and wood polish that's barely noticeable. Furthermore, my dreams have taken a turn for the bizarre. They lack any logical sequence or coherent storyline, leaving me perplexed upon waking. Day or night, I occasionally sense a penetrating gaze fixed upon me, even when I'm alone. It's an indescribable feeling that I struggle to shake off. One particular incident stands out in my memory. While standing in my kitchen, my attention was drawn to the doorway by an inexplicable in instinct. To my astonishment, I caught a sight of a pale white face peering at me from the top right corner, partially hidden behind the string curtain. The moment our eyes met, the face vanished as swiftly as it had appeared. Since that encounter, I've noticed a disturbing change within myself. I've become easily irritable and prone to anger, causing strain on my friendships. These newfound emotions even led me to entertain thoughts of inflicting harm upon others. An utterly alien notion to my inherently calm and kind nature. As I walk through the city, a passing stranger can trigger an inexplicable urge to hurt them, and I find solace in the fact that I've refrained from acting upon these impulses. In a desperate attempt to find solace, I've tried burning sage and displaying a cross and various other remedies, but nothing seems to alleviate the growing presence that haunts me. Despite the turmoil, I have a deep attachment to this place. Moving is not an option I want to consider. Instead, I find myself contemplating the idea of seeking assistance from a medium or someone well-versed in ridding homes of unwelcome entities. Naturally, I'm wary of resorting to a Ouija board or any other means that may inadvertently danger the spirit or invite even more malevolent beings into my home. My primary concern is resolving this issue in a safe and peaceful manner that respects both the spirit and my own well-being. Entities on the Stairs Lately, whenever I find myself in the confines of the kitchen, engrossed in mundane tasks such as washing dishes and baking delectable treats, or meticulously cleaning every nook and cranny, my attention is repeatedly drawn towards a peculiar entity lurking upon the stairs that led down to the dreary abyss of our basement. It's a phenomenon that's become a disconcerting regularity a spectral presence that refuses to escape the periphery of my vision. It is as if this enigmatic being deliberately seeks to capture my gaze, 
teasing my senses with its ominous presence. In the midst of my daily chores, an eerie sensation enveloped me, and I suddenly perceive a flicker of movement from the corner of my eye. Turning my head over so slightly, there it is, perched menacingly atop the staircase. A shiver races down my spine as I take in its haunting figure. With bated breath, I observe its peculiar behavior. Crouching low, it cunningly extends its long skeletal fingers through the iron bars of the baby gate, which serves as a barrier between its realm and ours. A grotesque dance ensues, as if playfully wiggling around its elongated digits, taunting both me and my dog. This enigmatic presence exhibits an uncanny duality in its actions, fluctuating between frenetic bursts of energy and languid, desperate strides. Sometimes it propels itself up and down the steps with astonishing speed, as if chasing phantoms only that maybe it can perceive. On other occasions, it adopts a maddeningly measured gait, slowly traversing the staircase, relishing every step as if savoring our growing trepidation. Its pallid, oval countenance possesses an ethereal quality, contrasting sharply against the dark cloak that sways with an otherworldly grace. To my utter astonishment, there are moments when this spectral apparition stands resolute upon the steps, peering down into the abyss below. I have borne witness to this unnerving sight while venturing downstairs to retrieve forgotten items. It gazes down unsuspecting souls with an intensity that chills one's bones, as if harboring some malevolent intent that remains inexplicable to mortal comprehension. The lingering dread it instills within us is palpable, prompting my own brothers to steadfastly refuse to descend into the foreboding depths of our basement, unaccompanied. Even my dear grandmother, who often finds solace in the tranquility of our kitchen, has attested to the peculiar manifestations of this supernatural entity. As she sits immersed in her own thoughts, the faint echoes of its presence reverberate through the air, reaching her delicate ears. She, too, has become a witness to the enigma that torments our household, and our beloved canine companion, once brave and boisterous, has succumbed to a state of abject terror, whimpering and recoiling at the mere prospect of venturing near the ominous stairs that lead to the abyss. Regrettably, this is not the first encounter that we've had with this unnerving apparition. In the annals of the year 2021, we found ourselves embroiled in a similar predicament. Alas, we naively believed that its existence was vanquished through the collective effort of purging our dwelling and invoking the blessings of divine intervention. The subsequent year, 2022, provided respite from its menacing presence, leading us to believe that our our ordeal had come to an end. Yet, as if awakened from a dormant slumber, the supernatural specter has once again emerged, tormenting our very souls. In our valiant attempt to preserve our sanity, we endeavor not to allow this insidious entity to undermine our daily lives. Story number 14. There is a shadow man in my room. Since I was a mere seven years old, I've been plagued by an eerie phenomenon that continues to haunt me even to this day. It all begins when darkness descends upon my surroundings and a chilling presence lingers in the air. It's a tall silhouette of a man, an enigmatic figure whose origin and purpose remain shrouded in mystery. There's something about his mere existence that sends shivers down my spine, filling me with an unexplained fear. For a staggering two years of my childhood, I found myself unable to find solace in slumber unless a comforting light permeated the room. The absence of illumination would invite the unwelcome presence of the shadow man, who would stand silently, ominously, watching over me as I desperately sought sleep. It was as though he had an unbreakable connection to my very being, forever intruding upon my vulnerable state. As the years passed and I reached the tender age of twelve, a new terror entered my sleep, 
sleep paralysis. The shadow man's image became distorted, his face contorted and riddled with hauntingly grotesque holes. Though I was well aware that dreams did not mirror reality, the encounters I had with this enigmatic figure were exceptionally vivid. The lines between the dream world and the waking life blurred, and I could feel his presence enveloping me with an unsettling intensity. One of my most recent nightmares transported me to a familiar forest, a place I often found myself during my slumbering hours. But this time the shadow man was there, his presence immediately palpable. With a terrifying hunger, he lunged towards me, sinking his ethereal teeth into my chest. The pain I experienced in that vivid dream was so realistic, so tangible, that it transcended the boundaries of my subconscious mind. I could almost swear I felt the agony coursing through my very being. Now as I find myself amidst adolescence, the shadow man has taken on a new level of malevolence. He's made his way from the realm of dreams and nightmares to the physical space of my bedroom. Each night I lie in my bed, pretending to be sound asleep, consumed by a genuine fear of what might befall me if he were to discover my wakefulness. On rare occasions, curiosity gets the better of me and I dare to steal a glance in his direction. To my dismay, he is always perched on the ceiling directly above my bed. The way my room was constructed places him at a mere meter's distance from my vulnerable form. It's a constant reminder that my life hangs precariously in the balance, teetering on the edge of an abyss of terror. I am held captive by the ceaseless torment of his presence, my every waking moment plagued by the fear of what might transpire if he were to manifest himself fully. Speaking of the Shadow Man to anyone, attempting to unburden myself from this unbearable weight only serves to exacerbate the intensity of the haunting influence. It's as if the act of acknowledging him amplifies his power over me, ensuring that his grip on my reality remains unyielding. The fear of his response, the potential repercussions of exposing his existence to others, leaves me paralyzed with trepidation. Thus, I find myself in a state of perpetual anxiety, living a life overshadowed by the dark presence of this enigmatic figure. Night after night, I navigate the intricate dance of feigned sleep and silent desperation, all the while grappling with the inescapable truth that I'm teetering on the precipice of a reality fraught with unspeakable horrors. The Shadow Man looms over my existence, an ever-present specter of fear and torment, rendering every moment of my waking life a restless battle against an encroaching darkness. Story number six. Let's clear up the confusion. These three things are not the same creature. In the rich tapestry of cultural beliefs and mythologies around the world, there are captivating tales of supernatural creatures and entities that have fascinated generations. One such enchanting folklore exists within the Navajo culture, where the intriguing figure of the skinwalker, known as Yinaldulushi in Navajo, sorry if I can't pronounce that, <laughs> holds both fascination and fear. As a prominent aspect of Navajo mythology, the skinwalker is believed to be malevolent, which possesses extraordinary abilities. This nefarious being possesses the power to shapeshift, either into an animal or by disguising themselves as one. However, it's important to note that the term skinwalker is never attributed to healers within Navajo society, but instead refers exclusively to those who harbor ill intent. Across vast territories of North America, specifically among the Algonquin tribes dwelling in the northern forests of Nova Scotia, the east coast of Canada, the Great Lakes region, and Wisconsin, another haunting presence looms large, the Wendigo. This mythological creature, or evil spirit, is deeply entrenched in the folklore of these First Nation communities. Depicted as a monstrous and malevolent spirit, the Wendigo possesses a distinct combination of human and spirit-like characteristics. 
It is believed to inhabit or possess an unfortunate human being, its dark influence driving them towards committing heinous acts. The allure of insatiable greed, murder, and even cannibalism becomes irresistible under the sway of this menacing entity. The Wendigo's terrifying presence reinforces the cultural taboos and societal prohibitions against such abhorrent behaviors. Among the myriad legends that continue to captivate our imagination, the werewolf emerges from the annals of folklore, leaving an indelible mark on our collective consciousness. Rooted in ancient tales, this creature of myth has been known by many names throughout history, including werewolf in Old English and lycanthrope, derived from the Greek term leucanthropos, meaning wolf person. According to these legends, a werewolf is essentially a human gifted with the extraordinary ability to shapeshift into a wolf. This transformation can occur intentionally or as a result of a curse or affliction, even triggered by a bite or a scratch from another werewolf. In pop culture, werewolves are frequently depicted as therianthropic hybrid creatures with attributes of both human and wolves, particularly in modern films. The concept of lycanthropy, the ability or affliction to transform into a wolf or wolf-like creature, finds its roots in historical accounts. Early sources that attest to believe in the supernatural phenomenon include the works of Petronius, a Roman author who lived from 27 to 66 AD, and Gervais of Tilbury, an English scholar and writer from the 12th and 13th centuries. Across time and continents, these captivating tales have been passed down through generations, captivating listeners and evoking a myriad of emotions. The allure of the skinwalker, the chilling presence of the wendigo, and the transformative power of the werewolf continue to ignite our imaginations, leaving us pondering the enigmatic forces that dwell beyond the boundaries of our mundane existence. As long as humans are captivated by the mysteries of the supernatural, these stories will endure, fascinating and enthralling all who hear them. Story number 12, Shadow Figure. It was an ordinary summer day with the sun shining brightly and a hint of excitement in the air. My sister and I found ourselves engulfed in boredom, desperately seeking an adventure to break free from the monotony. As evening fell and we finished devouring our dinner, a spark of spontaneity ignited within us. We exchanged mischievous glances, silently agreeing on our plan for the evening. A joyous ride on our trusty four-wheeler. After a brief debate, we decided that we would take the reins first, and it would be me. Eagerly, I hopped onto the vehicle, the engine humming to life as I revved it up. The wind tussled my hair and a surge of exhilaration coursed through my veins as we began our thrilling expedition. Our house served as the epicenter of this mini-adventure, the perfect arena for our escapade. Navigating the terrain, I skillfully maneuvered the four-wheeler, feeling the jolts and vibrations as we sped along. We darted around the corners, laughing and hollering without or with unrestrained joy. Everything seemed peaceful and ordinary until we approached a small tree standing about five, maybe six feet away from a weathered old barn. As fate would have it, at that premises, my eyes caught sight of something peculiar, a hunched figure like a shadow in the dimming light, bolted out of the barn. It moved with an eerie swiftness, disappearing into the vast expanse of the adjacent field. The sight sent a shiver down my spine, and I couldn't help but slow down, awestruck and bewildered by this unexpected apparition. Seeking reassurance, I turned to my sister, my voice filled with a mix of curiosity and trepidation. Did you see that too? I asked, my eyes wide with disbelief. Yet to my relief, she nodded vigorously, confirming that she too had witnessed the enigmatic figure darting across her path. We exchanged a glance, our hearts pounding in unison, realizing that this was not a figment of our imaginations, but a genuine encounter with the inexplicable. Uncertain of what to make of this spine-chilling incident, we knew that conveying our experience to our parents would be met with skepticism and disbelief. 
Silently, we shared an unspoken agreement, deciding to keep the encounter to ourselves, our secret to cherish. The four-wheeler was safely parked, its engine silenced, as we made our way back to the sanctuary of my sister's room. As we lay on her bed, adrenaline still coursing through our veins, we discussed the strange phenomenon that we had witnessed. The room was filled with hushed whispers, speculations, and theories about the mysterious figure and its origins. Hours slipped away, but our conversations continued, fueled by curiosity and a desire to unravel the inexplicable events of that fateful evening. We debated the possibilities, conjuring tales of ghosts, time travelers, and elusive creatures that lurked within the barn's depths. Each hypothesis spawned new questions, opening doors to uncharted territories of the supernatural. We delved into folklore and urban legends, drawing parallels to our own eerie encounter, attempting to decipher its hidden meaning. As the night wore on, fatigue finally caught up with us, and we succumbed to sleep. Dreams mingled with reality in our minds embarked on fantastical journeys, traversing dimensions beyond our comprehension. The events of that summer day continued to haunt our thoughts, leaving an indelible mark on our young souls. Days turned into weeks and weeks transformed into months, yet the memory of that peculiar encounter never faded. We matured, our perspectives widened, but the mystery remained unsolved. To this day, the tale of that shadowy figure and the exhilarating ride on the four-wheeler serves as a constant reminder of the inexplicable wonders that lie hidden beneath the surface of our ordinary lives. Story number 10. Mimic Ghost. Back in the year 2020, during the lockdown period, a peculiar incident occurred, which continues to bewilder me to this day. At that time, I was a mere 13 years old, and both of my parents happened to be essential workers, tirelessly carrying out their duties amidst the stringent measures in place. Consequently, they were absent from home for a significant portion of the lockdown. This left me in the company of my 16-year-old sister and our faithful canine companion. On that particular day, my sister decided to take our beloved dog for a refreshing walk outdoors. While I remained upstairs engrossed in the captivating world of my phone screen, as she departed through the black gate, which emitted an audible creak and clank when opened or closed, I continued to indulge in my virtual pursuits. However, approximately ten minutes later, my attention was seized by the distinct sound of the back gate swinging open. Accompanied by the rhythmic jingle produced when my dog enthusiastically shook his head, causing his ears to slap against his head. Curiosity piqued, I hastened downstairs, eager to reunite with my sister and our, and our dog. To my astonishment, I discovered an empty courtyard, devoid of their presence. Perplexed, I dismissed the incident as a figment of my imagination, convincing myself that my senses had momentarily deceived me. Subsequently, I sought solace in the familiar surroundings of our garage. As fate would have it, the saga continued to unravel itself the following day. Once again, my sister and I found ourselves occupying our separate domain upstairs, while I luxuriously sprawled across my parents' bed, captivated by the digital wonders within my grasp. My sister sought refuge in the confines of her own room, accompanied by her ever-loyal canine companion, the clock hand gracefully embraced the hour of 2.30 p.m., the very moment my mother typically returned from her arduous day of work. Suddenly I heard the front door swing open with an air of familiarity. Accompanied by the melodious resonance of my mother's voice as she cheerfully greeted us, a tradition she maintains even to this day. Intrigued and yearning for a glimpse of her familiar countenance, I eagerly ascended the staircase, anticipation building within me. Yet, once again, I was confronted with an empty landing, devoid of any signs of life. Perplexed and slightly unnerved, I immediately sought solace in the presence of my sister, eager to unravel the perplexing mystery that shrouded her humble abode. To my surprise, my sister affirmed that she too had distinctly heard our mother's voice resonating through the walls, an eerie testament to the bizarre nature of our shared experience. 
The unsettling events of the past two days had left both my sister and me on edge, struggling to comprehend the inexplicable phenomenon that had invaded our lives. It was crucial to note that our residence, an architectural relic of the past, had been erected in the year of 1907, harboring within its time-worn walls the vestiges of forgotten tales. It seems almost fitting that such a historic abode would become the stage upon which the enigmatic presence would unveil itself. Since that disconcerting encounter, I am relieved to recount the mimicry which haunted our once tranquil sanctuary has not reared its perplexing head again. As I sit here reflecting upon those bewildering days, the question lingers like an indomitable specter. What or who was responsible for the auditory illusions that plagued our humble dwelling? To this day, me and my sister remain confounded, with no plausible explanation to appease our curious minds. The inexplicable mimicry continues to defy rational comprehension, an enduring mystery woven into the fabric of our lives forever intertwined with the chapters of our shared history. Story number four, why I don't mess with Ouija boards. Seems like a lot of people have scary experiences with Ouija boards, but let me tell you about mine. It was Halloween night in 2019 and I found myself at a party with my friend Alex and a couple of his friends. We were all having a great time jamming out to spooky Halloween music and enjoying the festive atmosphere. As the night progressed, some of us started feeling a bit tired but we didn't want the fun to end just yet. We decided to play a board and card game to keep the excitement going. That's when one of Alex's friends, whom I'll refer to as Lexi for privacy reasons, suggested that we try a Ouija board. You know, like in the movies, she said with a mischievous grin. Now, growing up in a fairly standard Christian home, I had always been warned about the dangers of Ouija boards, especially around Halloween. The stories I had heard were filled with cautionary tales of evil and spiritual unrest. However, I never really gave them much credence. None of us had a Ouija board, nor did we know where to find one in such short notice. Lexi, ever resourceful, proposed that we make our own. So, like a group of naive teenagers, we searched for a design online and used a sharpie to draw one out in a piece of cardboard. For the pointer, we repurposed an old guitar pick, Excited and a little bit apprehensive, we gathered around the makeshift Ouija board, ready to experience something otherworldly. At first, the questions we asked were silly and light-hearted. We inquired about trivial matters like, Who among us is the dumbest? Or, Who will be the wealthiest after high school? To our disappointment, the board responded with a resounding no to most of the inquiries, as if it were irritated by our juvenile approach. Undeterred, Lexi suggested that we take things up a notch. She asked the board if there was anyone who would like to communicate with us. Suddenly, the atmosphere in the room underwent a drastic change. It felt as though the temperature dropped and an indescribable uneasiness settled upon us. The pointer on the board began moving slowly but deliberately towards yes. A wave of discomfort swept through the room, affecting everyone except for my one friend named Mike, who seemed convinced that someone among us was playing a prank to frighten the rest. To test his theory, Mike decided to challenge the board. He asked it to reveal the name of a deceased relative that none of us in the room knew about. To our astonishment, the pointer spelled out E-L-E-A-N-O-R, Eleanor. Panic ensued as we realized that Eleanor was not the name of Mike's grandmother, Irene, whom we all knew. Instead, it turned out to be the name of his great-great-aunt who had passed away long before his own mother's death. In that moment, fear gripped each and every one of us, leaving us utterly terrified. Desperate to understand what was happening, we nervously asked the board what it wanted. In response, it spelled out a series of vulgar obscenities and incomprehensible words that none of us could decipher. Overwhelmed by the darkness and the malevolence emanating from the board, we hastily said our goodbyes and abruptly ended the session. As we turned on the lights, the room was filled with a tense silence and our faces reflected the deep unease we all felt. 
Without hesitation, we decided to dispose of the homemade Ouija board. Wanting nothing more to do with it, we threw it away, hoping to sever any connection we had established with the unknown forces that had momentarily entered our lives. Since that fateful night, none of us has dared touch a Ouija board again, haunted by the chilling and inexplicable experience we had collectively endured. And so, this cautionary tale serves as a stark reminder that some things are better left undisturbed, and that the supernatural realm can be far more potent and terrifying than we could ever fathom. Story number nine. Click and bright flash of light. The other day I had a truly perplexing experience in the comfort of my own home. It all unfolded during the late afternoon, around 4 or 5 p.m., when daylight still lingered despite the slightly overcast weather. As fate would have it, I was diligently concluding my day of remote work in the cozy confines of my dining room, accompanied by a close friend and colleague, While I meticulously packed away my trusty laptop, my friend stood in the doorway, engaging in a spirited conversation with me. Then out of the blue, a curious sound reached our ears, a distinct click followed by a faint pop. Although not deafening enough to startle us, it possessed a peculiar resonance, reminiscent of the sound produced when a light switch is promptly flicked. Simultaneously, a breathtaking vibrant light, or rather an enigmatic mass of luminosity, appeared to materialize in the kitchen and swiftly traverse the expanse into the dining room. This luminous phenomenon was astoundingly swift, lasting only a few fleeting seconds. Yet, it was not akin to a mere instantaneous flash that engulfed the entire room. Instead, it seemed to originate from one room and effortlessly migrate into the next. The intensity of this luminosity was so profound, so blindingly brilliant, that my vision momentarily dimmed as if I'd inadvertently stared directly at the radiant sun. In a state of bewilderment and astonishment, my friend and I locked gazes, silently acknowledging their shared confusion that enveloped us. With a mix of incredulity and curiosity, she eventually ventured to pose the question that lingered in both of our minds. Did you just witness that extraordinary event as well? Relieved that we had both borne witness to this inexplicable spectacle, we commenced an impromptu investigation. We meticulously examined the light bulbs, scrutinized the electrical sockets, and inspected every inch of the kitchen and dining room. Alas, our endeavors proved fruitless, for no blown light bulbs, faulty sockets, or malfunctioning appliances could be found. Moreover, there were no lingering odors or any discernible evidence that shed light on mysterious occurrence. It was as if a bolt of lightning had materialized within our house, yet miraculously, neither of us had suffered any physical harm. To provide some context, the layout of my residence entails the kitchen and dining room nestled toward the rear of the house, with a well-defined hallway situated betwixt the two. Consequently, sunlight doesn't permeate these chambers in any significant manner anyways, thereby eliminating the possibility of an external source contributing to the luminous anomaly that we had witnessed. Perplexed by our shared experience, I couldn't help but wonder if there were others who had encountered similar inexplicable events. Regrettably, as of yet, I have been unable to find solace in the accounts of others who have traversed a similar path. This singular incident has remained an isolated phenomenon, as if the enigmatic forces orchestrating this ethereal display have withdrawn, leaving us to contemplate the enigma that transpired. The passage of time has failed to yield any repetition of this awe-inspiring event, further shrouding it in an impenetrable veil of mystery. Thus, I'm left to ponder the depths of this curious occurrence, ever seeking answers to question that continue to elude me. Was it an ethereal visitation? A transient glitch in the fabric of reality, or perhaps an inexplicable convergence of natural forces, the true nature of this event may forever elude me, but its memory remains etched in my mind, a testament to the inexplicable and the extraordinary that can transpire even within the sanctity of our own homes.
Haunted House in Ireland Back in December in Ireland, I had an intriguing paranormal experience that I'm excited to share. During my vacation, which took place in Dublin for the first half and later in the country of Killarney, I encountered some haunting sights that added a thrill to the trip. Although I didn't sense anything negative from these attractions, there was a place that gave off an eerie vibe. It was a historical country, filled with antique furniture and situated on another family's property. Despite feeling creeped out by the house, I couldn't help but appreciate its stunning architecture and the surrounding picturesque landscape. As our stay neared its end, my mom and I decided to explore a nearby haunted castle and graveyard. Little did we know that this would visit sorry, little did we know that this visit would set the stage for unsettling nights. We went to bed and around one or two AM a sudden and piercing doorbell ring jolted me awake. Filled with fear, I immediately worried that a stranger was lurking outside the house. Moreover, since my mom occasionally got engrossed in her smoking and forgot to lock the door, I wasn't certain if it was secure. So for the next five minutes I lay frozen in bed, straining my ears to detect any signs of activity either inside or outside the house. Strangely, there is a complete silence. Eventually I mustered the courage to message my mom about the incident then cautiously rose from bed, locked my door, and patiently waited for another 20 minutes. With no further disturbances, I decided to check that all the doors and windows were secured before finally feeling safe enough to go back to sleep. Upon waking, I shared the unnerving episode with my mom. She, too, was deeply unsettled, fearing that we were in imminent danger in this secluded place. I attempted to describe the distinct sound of the doorbell to her, but soon realized that its unique resonance, reminiscent of bells resonating from all corners of the house, defied adequate explanation. Curiosity getting the better of us, we stepped outside in search of the phantom doorbell, only to find that there was no doorbell to be found anywhere on the property. Perplexed, I considered the possibility that the sound originated from the neighboring houses, from the neighboring family's house. Testing their doorbell, we discovered it emitted a faint and entirely dissimilar sound. Throughout our investigation, we encountered no one except for this particular collection of Victorian furniture, particularly their dining room table, but never used. Well, that's written confusingly. The following day, after returning late from an invigorating hike, we glanced into their house through a partially windowed wall. To our astonishment, we spotted a mysterious figure sitting in the dimly lit room, positioned on their Victorian couch, with no sign of a television or any other activity. It sent chills down our spines, both of us now thoroughly intrigued by the paranormal. I embarked on an internet search to find stories related to the doorbell phenomenon, but to my surprise, I stumbled upon numerous accounts advising against opening the door as it supposedly invited something ominous inside. Sharing this information with my mom, we retired to bed that night, bracing ourselves for whatever might transpire. Around 3 or 4 a.m., I awoke to the sense of urgency, knowing that it was our final night and I needed to pack for the airport. Descending the stairs to make coffee, I suddenly heard my mom's voice calling out, Megan, was that you? Surprised, I responded from the lower level, No, what do you mean? Later, my mom recounted her experience, explaining that she had been awoken at that precise hour by loud knocks on her door. Given that I was downstairs and I would have undoubtedly heard such a disturbance, her revelation left us both bewildered. Story number seven my paranormal experience with a doll when I was a child. I was born and raised in a quiet suburb of New Orleans called Chalmette, Louisiana. Our humble abode was a rented townhouse featuring two bedrooms at the back and a spacious living area with an attached kitchen up front. In our peculiar sleeping arrangement, my brother occupied one of the bedrooms while my parents made their bed in the main living space. When I was around seven or eight years old, a memorable event unfolded during a camping trip that my father and brother embarked on with the Boy Scouts. 
with the boys away, my mother and I decided to indulge in a special girls' night, relishing in the freedom to stay up late and engage in various games and activities. Time seemed to fly by, and before I knew it, it was already 1 a.m. Yes, I know, quite late for a child of my age, but my parents were always somewhat lenient. It was as if in the late hour that I ventured into my bedroom, seeking another board game to continue our evening of entertainment, yet the instant I crossed the threshold, an indescribable sense of dread washed over me. The feeling was so intense that even now, as an adult, recalling the moment sends shivers down my spine. Tentatively, I made my way to the dresser where the board games were kept, sharing the space with porcelain dolls lovingly bestowed upon me by my grandmother. One of these dolls, adorned with an elaborate dress and perched upon a little stand, created the illusion of standing upright. As I approached the dresser, my unease grew, and I sensed that something was dramatically amiss. In a feeble attempt to reassure myself, I reached out and gently patted the doll's dress, uttering comforting words like, It's okay, Dolly. Yet, the instant my hand made contact, an inexplicable occurrence unfolded before my eyes. One of the doll's delicate legs abruptly shot upwards, defying the laws of physics. The shock of this bizarre phenomenon overwhelmed me, and I unleashed a piercing scream as I sprinted out of the room, propelled by sheer terror. Years later, my mother disclosed that peculiar incidents were far from uncommon during our time in that house. Though my parents diligently shielded my brother and me from the truth, in one instance a pan mysteriously hurtled off the stove, an event they downplayed as though it were an everyday occurrence. Cupboards would spontaneously swing open, lights would flicker of their own accord, a litany of inexplicable happenings that pervaded our lives in that dwelling. Although our stay in that eerie abode proved short-lived, I steadfastly refused to set foot in that room ever again. Thankfully, my compassionate brother assisted me in disposing of the doll, as we both instinctively recognized its potential role as a conduit for malevolent presence lurking within our home. Over time, I endeavored to uncover the history of that house, seeking clues that might shed light on the inexplicable occurrences that we had endured. Regrettably, any hope of unearthing the truth was thwarted by the devastating impact of Hurricane Katrina, which reduced the whole town to ruins, rendering any historical records or insights utterly unattainable. To this day, that chilling encounter with the possessed doll serves as a haunting reminder that there are realms beyond our comprehension, where dark forces can encroach upon our everyday lives. It's an experience that has left an indelible mark on my psyche, forever igniting my curiosity about the supernatural, and instilling in me an enduring belief that there are things in this world that defy explanation. Story number 14. My Grandpa Came for a Visit The loss of my dear grandpa during the distressing pandemic brought immense sorrow upon our entire family. We were all grappling with the weight of grief, the heaviness of our hearts palpable in the air. However, a glimmer of hope penetrated the dark clouds that hung over us when we received the astonishing news that my grandpa's ethereal presence had paid us a visit. This extraordinary occurrence took place during the sacred day of the dead, a time when we honor and remember our departed loved ones. At the time, it was only my grandma and my cousin who remained at home, and when they became aware of my grandpa's spectral visitation, joy and excitement permeated the atmosphere. My grandma, who had been experiencing peculiar incidents all week, began hearing the distinctive sound of my grandpa's trusty walker. The rhythmic creaking reverberated throughout the house as though he was searching for something, his ghostly footsteps echoing in the halls. Strangely enough, my cousin and grandma both heard these phantom sounds on that eventful day. Curiosity sparked within my cousin's eyes as he directed his gaze toward the sacred altar we had erected in honor of our ancestors. A realization struck him like a lightning bolt of understanding. 
He quickly surmised that the cherished portraits of his parents were absent from their designated place on the altar. Without hesitation, driven by filial devotion, my cousin resolved to retrieve the forgotten paintings of my grandpa's parents, which had been stowed away in the attic. A sense of urgency propelled him up the staircase, his footsteps echoing in harmony with the phantom walker sounds that had haunted our home. When my cousin triumphantly placed the long-lost painting upon the altar, a peculiar phenomenon ensued. The once unceasing sounds of the walker abruptly did in fact cease, as if by some supernatural intervention. It was as if my grandpa's spirit had found solace, satisfied that his own parents had been rightfully included in our heartfelt tribute. The atmosphere grew still, as if the ethereal realm had momentarily converged with our own. Overwhelmed with the profound mix of emotions, my grandma relayed the miraculous visitation to me. Tears of both sorrow and joy streamed down my face, for this otherworldly encounter brought immense solace and happiness to my grieving heart. Witnessing the profound impact of the spiritual connection and what it had on my grandma's well-being only intensified my gratitude for my grandpa's ghostly presence. It was an indescribable comfort knowing that he had found a way to transcend the boundaries between life and death, to offer his love and support to the one that he cherished most. In retrospect, though, the significance of my grandpa's visit cannot be understated. It was a poignant reminder of the bonds we forged with our loved ones, especially as they transcended the physical realm. Their spirits endure, woven into the tapestry of our lives, leaving an indelible mark on our souls, my grandpa's ghostly presence during the sacred time of remembrance served as a powerful affirmation of the enduring love that exists even beyond the confines of mortality. So as I conclude this retelling of an extraordinary encounter, I sincerely hope that you found solace in this account. Although it may not have been a grand tale by conventional standards, its significance, laden with love and the eternal bonds of family, resonates deeply within me. May it serve as a gentle reminder that even in the face of loss, there is hope, and the spirits of our departed loved ones continue to guide us and watch over us, imparting their blessings from the ethereal realms they now inhabit. Story number five, Ask Reddit One. This one is a bit more tame, and it happened outside of the res, but still way in the country. We were renting a house out in the BFE, and our nearest neighbor was a good quarter mile down the road. My father is a city paramedic, so he's frequently out of the house. His commute to the major cities is about an hour and a half, but it was cheaper to live out here, and I'd sometimes go two days without seeing him, and it was only him and I living in that house due to our parents' divorce. The property had completely, or rather, the property had a completely separate garage that was basically an unfinished apartment. It had a bathroom, a table, a fridge, a couch, a TV, a microwave, a toaster oven, air conditioning, etc. Our house only had one bathroom, and to put it politely, it would stink when anybody used it, because somehow the scent would diffuse through the entire house. It was pretty much... Okay, you, got, you spelled something wrong. It was pretty much tradition to use the garage restroom and save everybody their noses. Well, that day was a Sunday, and my father had let me know that he was on his way home. Nature called, and I went to the bathroom in the garage. The door was closed, but it was silent due to the fact that we lived in the country. There's not much noise to go around there. Anyways, I was using the restroom when I heard the front door to the garage open. Not the huge wall door, just the person-sized one and I heard cowboy boots walking across bare concrete. That is a very distinct sound, and my dad always changed into his boots on the way home. The boots walked up to my door, and I very clearly heard my dad's voice exactly as he would intonate the words and all, and he said, Hey, you in there? I said, Yeah, I'm just using the bathroom. I'll be out in a second. He said, Okay, just checking. Cowboy boots walk out, door closes, and I finish up and leave. No one was home, no tire tracks outside in the gravel, 
No footprints in the white chalk hallway. Nothing. My dad was still driving home, in fact, and there was no radio on, no TV, and nothing but me and my thoughts. This occurred a second time, but it was much worse. Same situation, except this time my father had left to go to work. I was using the restroom, and I heard the door slam open and hit the wall. Stopping up to the closed door, and I heard, Hey, what are you doing in there? Again, exactly as my father would have said it, I replied, uh, I'm just using the bathroom. I then heard nothing but something heavy, flying and hitting a wall. I stayed in that bathroom for about an hour before I couldn't handle the heat. The bathroom was an addition with no AC, and the only way to get cool air was keeping the door open so the main room's AC could creep in. Until I finally creeped out and looked around. Front door was open, and there was a dent in the wall where the handle hit. There was a heavy pipe wrench that was on my father's top shelf sitting on the floor clear across the room. Another dent in the wall where it hit. I said a prayer and kept my eyes down and went back into the house. I have more, but those were my more tame ones. I'm frequently made fun of because of a lot of people assuming that I make these up for attention, but the fact of the matter is, I experienced something I can't explain and I need to share it. I don't know why this stuff happens predominantly to my native family. One person experienced this would be an anecdote, but every member of my family has stories like it, and we're all excessively logical, evidence-driven individuals, you could say. I may not be Christian, but I'm also not an atheist. I have enough evidence to conclude that there's things beyond my knowledge, and I'm unsure if I should pursue learning more about them. New Redditor to this sub, but I have a lot of paranormal stories. I grew up in a haunted house and very connected to my spiritual side. The story that still continues to amaze and send shiver down my spines whenever I recollect it involves a peculiar incident with my younger sister, who was merely four years old at the time. Now, it's important to bear in mind that she was mostly nonverbal and on the autism spectrum, which made her communication abilities quite limited. You see, my father and I have always had an affinity for seeking out haunted locations, embarking on thrilling journeys to connect with spirits, and upon returning home, delving into extensive research about the places that we had visited. We firmly believe that if one possessed precise knowledge about what they sought, the mind had the power to conjure illusions and play tricks on them. Consequently, we would often revisit these haunted sites armed with newfound insights, attempting to establish contact with specific spirits and entities. One day I stumbled upon a renowned haunted woods, and with great excitement, my father, sister, and I set off on a memorable expedition to this eerie location. It's worth noting that we had absolutely no prior knowledge of the woods, or its haunted history, until we conducted our research after returning home. However, even without any background information, an inexplicable sense of unease surrounded us as we delved deeper into the woods. We couldn't shake off the sensations that were being relentlessly pursued. Or sorry, we couldn't shake off the sensation that we were being relentlessly pursued by an unseen presence. After tirelessly exploring for about an hour, we arrived at a peculiar clearing devoid of trees, emanating an overwhelming sense of discomfort. It was then that something utterly bewildering occurred. My little sister's face turned as pale as a ghost, and she erupted into uncontrollable tears, completely overwhelmed by an indescribable fear. Realizing that it was best to conclude our expedition for the day, we hurriedly made our way back to the car, hoping to console and provide a sense of security. Concerned for her well-being, I sat in the back seat of the car, right beside my sister, determined to keep her company during the drive home. So as we embarked on the journey back, my sister turned towards me, her eyes filled with an uncanny intensity, and she uttered the words that sent shivers down my spine. The men in red told me to stop following them. I'm going to turn in now, she said, her voice carrying an otherworldly quality. The strangest part was that she rarely spoke in full sentences, limited mostly to simple phrases such as drink or cuddle. Therefore, her articulate and seemingly prophetic statement caught us completely off guard, 
leaving us with an overwhelming sense of unease and bewilderment. Upon conducting extensive research in the days that followed, we uncovered a horrifying truth about the very woods we had ventured into. It turns out that several hundred years ago, the exact clearing where my sister had cried so uncontrollably had served as a site for satanic rituals involving heinous human sacrifices. The individuals involved in these abhorrent practices would don red attire, concealing stains of blood as they departed the sinister scene. The chilling correlation between my sister's distress and the historical events that took place in that very location was too eerie to dismiss. Needless to say, we never returned to those haunted woods again, ensuring my sister would never have to face such distressing encounters in the future. The incident remains etched in my memory as a testament to the inexplicable and eerie forces that permeate the realms beyond our comprehension, forever reminding me of the mysterious and unexplainable depths of the supernatural world that we inhabit. Story number 10. Weird Dreams Several years ago, I embarked on a profound research journey, delving into the lives of individuals I came across at a museum whose tragic demises had left an indelible mark on me. Strangely, I found myself forming a peculiar bond with them, whether it was the sympathy I felt for their untimely deaths or the admiration I harbored for their immense courage. My insatiable passion for history propelled me to unravel every conceivable detail about these individuals and the fateful events that engulfed them. One particular night, the boundaries between reality and the ethereal realm blurred as I was ensnared in a dream, where one of the subjects I had been engrossed in materialized before me. The dream unfolded with an intensity that transcended the confines of my slumber, immersing me in an intimate encounter with this enigmatic figure. Every sensation, every emotion reverberating through my being as if I were an active participant in the dream rather than a mere observer. Moreover, I found myself traversing through an unfamiliar setting within this dream, a location that perplexed me to no end. Upon awakening, my curiosity peaked. I embarked on a frantic online search, desperate to discern the truth behind the enigmatic room that had manifested within my dream. To my astonishment, I uncovered that this room indeed existed in the very place I had studied so extensively, a room that had eluded my knowledge until that revelatory dream encounter. It was as though my subconscious had unearthed a hidden treasure, a clandestine chamber of secrets previously unknown to me. From that moment forward, a series of dreams commenced, each seamlessly picking up where its predecessor had left off. It was as if the souls of these unfortunate victims had found solace in my slumber, utilizing my dreams as a conduit to recount their haunting tales. Throughout this mesmerizing sequence, the original individual who had forged a profound connection with me in the intimate dream remained a steadfast presence, accompanying me through each nocturnal odyssey. In these extraordinary dreams, I not only witnessed events unfold, but also experienced them viscerally as if I were an embodiment of the very characters I had researched. Sight, sound, and sensation melded to a vivid tapestry of emotions, transcending the boundaries of my waking existence. However, it was in the final dream, the crescendo of this ethereal saga, where an unsettling twist ensued. Inexplicably, my connection to the companion who had guided me through the previous dreams waned, leaving me adrift and disoriented. Fear gripped me as I grappled with the disintegration of our bond, my heart pounding in my chest as a climactic tragedy unfurled within the confines of that enigmatic dream realm. I became a vessel for the rawest forms of terror and agony. Even upon awakening, remnants of the pain lingered, manifested as aches and soreness in the very areas of my dream-inflicted injuries. Since that momentous final dream, where anguish permeated every fiber of my being, I've never encountered a dream of comparable intensity. The connection I once shared with these ethereal figures, the conduits of history, abruptly severed, never to be rekindled again. Nevertheless, the profound impact of those dreams has left an indelible mark upon my soul. I find myself inexplicably longing for these individuals, whom I've never met in the waking world.
a profound sense of yearning for those whose stories became intertwined with mine through the tapestry of dreams. It's a sentiment I've never experienced prior to those vivid nocturnal journeys, a testament to the unfathomable power of the human spirit and the enduring legacy of those who came before us. Story number 16. Who is he? Eleven years ago, when I was still pregnant with my daughter, I experienced a peculiar incident that left me wondering about its meaning to this day. It was a splendid sunny afternoon, approximately around 2 p.m. I found myself sitting on the sofa, engrossed in watching television, eagerly awaiting the time to pick up my son from school at 3. In the midst of my leisurely TV session, I had a sudden urge to reach for the remote control, which had somehow managed to find its way to the other end of the sofa. As I leaned across, diverting my attention from the screen, I thought nothing of it. However, when I turned my gaze back toward the television, a chill ran down my spine as I beheld the sight of a man standing right beside it. This mysterious figure possessed black shoes, adorned light blue jeans, a yellow t-shirt, and light brown hair. Yet what struck me with an inexplicable fear was the fact that he had no face. It was as if his skin simply blended into nothingness. Initially, I attempted to rationalize the occurrence, wondering if it was a mere trick of the mind. I recalled how, when one looks away from a screen rapidly blinks, the residual image remains temporarily imprinted on the retina. I attributed this bizarre encounter to the similar phenomenon and dismissed it accordingly. However, fate had a different plan in store for me. Two weeks later, during another bright day, the enigmatic man materialized once again, this time on the periphery of the television screen. Unlike the previous encounter, he stood at a slight distance, lingering for what seemed like an eternity, but was probably no more than ten seconds. Although this may appear negligible, the experience of witnessing something that defies all logic and shouldn't exist was eternally protracted. In my shock and disbelief, I instinctively looked away, only to cautiously redirect my gaze back to the television, to find that he had vanished. A year had passed since that haunting incident, and I had welcomed the arrival of my beautiful daughter into the world. It was during a blissful bank holiday weekend when my parents decided to go away, leaving me to house-sit in their absence. On that fateful night, as I stirred awake, a craving for a refreshing drink compelled me to make my way downstairs. The illumination in my parents' kitchen appeared unusually bright, reminiscent of the radiance of natural daylight. In their kitchen, there was another door adorned with glass panels providing a glimpse into the adjacent washroom and downstairs bathroom. To my utter disbelief as I peered through the glass panels, there he was once again, the very same man I had encountered twice before. This time, his appearance lasted for around ten seconds for sure, causing my heart to race with a mixture of apprehension and fascination. In an instant, he vanished, leaving behind an air of perplexity and fear. What struck me as particularly disconcerting was the realization that he had appeared in a different house altogether. I couldn't fathom how this enigmatic figure had traversed from my own home to my parents' abode, blurring the boundaries of time and space. In the years that have followed, I have never caught another glimpse of him. His transparent presence, coupled with his contemporary attire and hairstyle, continues to elude my comprehension. I find myself frequently musing over his identity and purpose. Who was he? Was he a figment of my imagination? A ghostly apparition? Or perhaps something more supernatural? The lingering question remains, forever shrouded in mystery, haunting my thoughts as I ponder the unexplainable nature of that extraordinary encounter. Story number 11. I work third shift at a nursing home. Working the graveyard shift at a nursing facility has provided me with a unique perspective on life and death. It's like a residential home for individuals in their final stages of their journey, those who are transitioning or receiving hospice care. 
Despite the residents being so close to the end, there's an inexplicable sense of vitality that permeates the facility. It's an atmosphere that teems with a mysterious energy, leaving an indelible impression on all those who walk its halls. From the very beginning of my time here, I experienced strange occurrences that surpassed any rumors I had heard. On my very first night while engaged in conversation with a co-worker, I caught sight of a shadowy woman's silhouette pass behind. The figure vanished into the closed bathroom door situated adjacent to the main exit. It's worth mentioning that this door was equipped with an alarm, requiring a code for entry. It was a formidable barrier, reminiscent of the imposing automatic doors one might encounter in a hospital. In the dead of the night, around 2 a.m., the door alarm was unexpectedly triggered. Naturally, alarmed by the possibility of a wandering resident, we hurriedly rushed to the nurse's station to reset the alarm and guide them safely back to their beds. Yet, when we arrived, the door stood wide open and the alarm ceased its clamor as we approached. Puzzled, we conducted a thorough head count, ensuring that every single resident on the floor was asleep and accounted for. Eventually, we managed to find humor in the situation, but the following morning, during the shift change, the first shift staff imparted a chilling warning about the presence of uninvited guests that frequented the premises. Since that fateful night, I've encountered a plethora of inexplicable phenomenon within that nursing facility. Two recurring apparitions known as the Man in Black and the Woman in White have become almost commonplace sightings. Additionally, there are rumors of the kids in the courtyard, a group of spectral children who make their presence known. According to local lore, the man in black is a benign entity that often materializes when individuals are on the precipice of passing away. It's believed that he serves as a guide, leading them toward the realm beyond and taking away those deemed as good. On the other hand, the woman in white is said to be of sinister origins. Residents nearing the end of their lives report glimpses of her haunting figure in their rooms in the days leading up to their demise. Witnesses describe an intense sensation of burning or being set ablaze in her presence, leading to an unsettling speculation that this woman in white ushers them towards a malevolent afterlife. Very recently, one of her hospice patients succumbed to their condition. In the moments just before their passing, one of the nurses recounted feeling an ominous presence behind her, a towering, dark, shadowy figure that seemed to encroach upon her personal space. When she turned her head to confront the intruder, there was nothing to be found. We can only hope that this patient found solace in the company of the man in black, guiding them toward a realm of peace and serenity. These eerie incidents are just the tip of the iceberg. Countless stories continue to haunt my thoughts, compelling me to share them in the hopes of gaining insight into the nature of these inexplicable phenomena. By unburdening my mind and seeking external perspectives, perhaps I can finally make sense of these perplexing activities that unfold within the confines of this nursing facility. Ask Reddit 2, story number 6. This occurred at the same place with the disembodied garage voices. My father and I are accomplished hunters. We do the old school endurance hunting with a knife, so we're frequently running around forests and chasing down animals to stab in the heart and would carry back to eat. All this time in the woods made us very accustomed to the various sounds one would hear out there, and after a bit of time spent out there, you begin to be able to identify all of it, and it becomes more familiar and less scary. But that doesn't mean the woods are safe. Our property bordered the edge of a development on our patch of civilization, and the property line, which was unfenced, was a clear cut between the wooded and not. It immediately went into dense woods, and we had all manner of animals that would sometimes wander in or near our yard. These would be, by and large, pretty tame things. A doe here, a skunk there. Once we were attacked by a bobcat who just kit nearby, and we apparently spooked her enough into attacking. However, over time spent in this house, we began to hear the oddest noises that neither of us had ever heard ever 
emanating from the deepest woods behind her house and behind us. It's hard to describe. It almost sounded like a Bigfoot, or noises a Bigfoot would make, like in the shows of National Geographic, but nowadays, a long, loud, almost human-like bellow that reaches across the trees, but isn't shrill like a mountain lion, bobcat, or fox. It certainly didn't have the woman screaming or child screaming properties that those calls carry. Instead, it sounded like a very long, loud yell from the belly of an angry man. We heard it often, and we would sometimes sit out at night and just wonder what was making the noise that neither one of us could place in any animal dictionary around. Over time, we noticed the noise would seem a bit closer. It had a louder, less echo-like quality, and we'd noticed that we were getting more animals coming into our yard at night almost as if they couldn't bear to spend the night in the trees with whatever was making that noise. This, in and of itself, is odd, since we had hunting dogs that were very against any sort of animal visitors and made it known when they were out during the day and an animal was unlucky enough to be near them. Yet at night, our dogs began to not bark like they usually do. These dogs were specifically bay dogs, dogs trained to bark at prey, to close in on them, and somewhere so we could stab them in the heart. So barking was literally what they were made to do, and they loved doing it. Still, we noticed that whenever that thing started making those keening calls over the trees at night, our dogs would all huddle into their houses and not make a peep. Unfortunately, the story doesn't have much of an ending. Gradually, the oddity moved further away, and eventually we stopped hearing it altogether. Summer lazily, you know, sort of just went into fall. I wish we got some conclusion to it, though. I will say, my father and grandfather both told me to respect the forest, and I said I shouldn't wander about, or at least go near it at night. Since whatever was in there was clearly trying to be found. Ooh. These are both men of few words and life-learned convictions, so I took it seriously and I heeded their advice. And when I'm given evidence that points towards something that logically I can't explain, I tend towards the most obvious solution. There was something out there. I don't know what it was despite my lengthy experiences out in the woods, and I didn't want to find out. That property actually had a lot of weird occurrences. I met a stranger tonight who told me a very interesting story. Earlier tonight around 9 p.m., I finished my work and I decided to make a quick stop at the gas station on my way home. Conveniently located next to my workplace, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to grab some supplies for the evening. You see, my girlfriend was coming over later, and we had plans to indulge in a delightful evening of pizza and movies. However, I had an insatiable craving for a can of Monster Energy drink and a few other items caught my attention as well. I parked my car near the gas station and I stepped out, ready to fulfill my impromptu shopping mission. As I began walking toward the entrance, a young-looking man caught my eye. He was approaching me with his bicycle, looking relatively clean and not at all homeless. Sporting a camouflage-colored backpack reminiscent of the ones used in the army, he possessed a rather impressive bike. Politely, he asked, "'Excuse me, sir,' But I've been riding all day, and I'm quite famished. Could you spare some help? I'm in need of food. Feeling a pang of sympathy for the guy, I couldn't bring myself to turn him away. Sure, I replied, gesturing for him to accompany me inside the gas station. I instructed him to gather around ten dollars worth of food and drinks, to which he gratefully smiled and agreed. As we reached the counter, I struck up conversation with him, intrigued by his story and eager to learn more about this stranger. I inquired about his age and his destination. He disclosed that he was 27 years old, coincidentally the same age as me, and he mentioned that he was in cross-country, on a journey, although he didn't provide a specific reason for his travels. Offering a pseudonym, he introduced himself as Isaac and revealed that he was born on an Air Force base in Kansas. My curiosity compelled me to ask about his family, and he disclosed that they resided in Trinidad, while the revelation seemed peculiar, I chose not to delve too deeply into his personal affairs. My primary objective was to assist this individual in need. 
As we prepared to depart, he expressed his gratitude for the food and I reassured him that it was no trouble at all, reminding him to stay safe and acknowledging the presence of a guiding force. It was then that he surprised me with a question. Oh, you believe in God? What other beliefs do you hold? Astonished by his inquiry, I found myself engaged in a conversation with Isaac that lasted over 20 minutes, right outside the gas station. Isaac exuded intelligence, with no signs of substance abuse or impairment. His eloquence and extensive vocabulary left a lasting impression on me. He began recounting the bizarre encounters he had witnessed during his worldly travels, recounting a particular incident that struck me as exceptionally strange. According to him, he had previously found himself in another state before arriving in mine. While riding his mountain bike down a steep hill at an excessive speed, a car suddenly turned into the street from his left, hurtling towards him, and in that moment, with imminent collision seemingly inevitable, Isaac closed his eyes and braced himself for impact. Yet, upon reopening his eyes, he discovered himself inexplicably positioned on the opposite side of the car from the original trajectory. Astonished, he shared that the occupants of the vehicle had exited in a state of shock, exclaiming, How on earth are you not dead? You were headed straight for us. Nonetheless, Isaac remained oblivious to how he evaded the collision, finding himself unscathed despite the gravity-defying circumstances. Despite the velocity at which he had been hurtling, he suddenly found himself motionless upon reopening his eyes. Haunted House, Footsteps, and Light Dimming During my late teen years, I found myself residing in a peculiar abode that had been around for a good 10 or 15 years. This place harbored a myriad of intriguing tales that left me with an unsettling feeling that never seemed to dissipate. It seemed as though an enigmatic presence dwelled within those walls, an elusive entity that made it impossible for me to feel truly at ease. One fateful night, I was in the company of my former partner and her cousin, just casually hanging out and engaging in light-hearted banter. My significant other at the time proposed we partake in a game of sorts, a recollection that has grown hazy over the course of the past decade. It involved some form of dancing or charades, if I recall correctly. As I rose to my feet and performed one of the prescribed actions, an eerie occurrence transpired. The lights within the room dimmed to a low glow, only to swiftly regain their previous luminosity. However, it was in that momentary dimness that I glimpsed something unsettling. Reflected upon the glass surface of the photograph hanging on the wall, I discerned the outline of a figure standing near the light switch. My heart skipped a beat as I spun around, hoping to catch sight of this apparition, but it vanished into thin air, seemingly melting away behind an adjacent wall. Astonishingly, my then partner and her cousin appeared oblivious to this peculiar shift in lighting, their attention fixated on the minor alteration between acknowledging the presence I had perceived. Naturally, I was shaken to my core by this inexplicable encounter. Instinctively, I dialed up a friend who happened to be accompanied by two other companions at the same time. Urgently, I implored him to join me, yearning for the silence of their presence and the added security of numbers. Graciously, my friend agreed to come over, their arrival instilling a semblance of safety amidst the unnerving circumstances that enveloped me. For the following couple of hours as we sat there together, our collective ears were accosted by unsettling sounds emanating from the rooms directly above us. The distinct creaking of floorboards intermingled with the unmistakable patter of footsteps echoing throughout the house. Each noise served as a chilling reminder of the inexplicable and sinister presence that permeated the atmosphere. Even to this day, the memory of those spine-tingling occurrences sent shivers down my spine, leaving an indelible mark on my consciousness. In the subsequent years that unfolded within the very dwelling, there were a handful of other unsettling episodes witnessed by various individuals. It seemed as though the house itself possessed a dark secret, one that chose to reveal itself only to those who resided within its confines. Sometime later, I found myself in a different relationship, approximately a year or so after the aforementioned incidents. It was during this period that my new partner, while ascending the stairs in preparation for slumber, 
suddenly sprinted back down in a fit of tears. When questioned about her distress, she revealed that she had caught sight of a figure seated atop the staircase, an apparition that had instantly filled her with an overwhelming sense of dread and anguish. This disconcerting encounter further fueled my fascination and curiosity regarding the enigmatic nature of the entity that seemingly haunted our previous house. Upon leaving, I gradually realized that I never encountered a similar otherworldly phenomenon in subsequent residences. However, the memories and mysteries surrounding that particular home continued to captivate my thoughts and ignite my imagination. The question of who or what resided within those walls remained a tantalizing enigma, forever etched in my mind as a haunting reminder of the inexplicable forces that can permeate our lives. Story number 13, Whistling at Night. It's currently 4.30 a.m. in the place where I am, and I woke up approximately an hour ago with a sudden realization. I had left my drink, the trusty Stanley container filled with refreshing Mountain Dew in my car, and the thought of it bothered me. Now normally I have no qualms about getting out of bed and dashing to my car to retrieve whatever I may need, even if it means venturing out into the darkness of the night. Occasionally I've experienced a peculiar sensation while walking to my car, but considering that I reside in a small rural town plagued by a drug problem, it wouldn't be unreasonable to anticipate a chance encounter with someone under the influence, potentially leading to an altercation as well. As a 22-year-old female, I'd rather avoid such a situation. Perhaps it's worth mentioning that I live on one of the older sections of town, an area built long before streetlights became a common fixture in this vicinity. Consequently, some of the residents have taken it upon themselves to install small streetlights in their yards, aiming to illuminate the neighborhood during the nighttime. However, these lights are scarce and scattered, leaving my neighborhood enveloped in darkness which can be a rather eerie sight at times. Moreover, my residence is situated merely floor blocks away from the edge of a deserted expanse, predominantly employed by natural gas mining, which eventually gives way to a captivating canyon. As I mentioned earlier, ordinarily, I wouldn't hesitate to walk to my car. However, tonight was different. Upon awakening, an inexplicable sensation of unease settled within my chest, causing me to question whether venturing out to my car was a wise decision. I spent a good 20 minutes attempting to convince myself to take the plunge and receive my drink. Eventually, I mustered the determination to do so. With a resolute mindset, I set out to collect my beverage. Initially, as I walked toward my car, everything seemed normal, and I cautiously scanned the surroundings to ensure no one was lurking outside. Upon opening the car door, though, an abrupt, strong whistle pierced the air from a distance. In that instant, every hair on my body stood on end, and an overwhelming sense of dread consumed me. It felt as if I had been transformed into a small, vulnerable creature. Hastily grabbing my drink, I was startled by the two additional short whistles emanating from the same distant source. As I closed the car door, I stood there silently for a moment, my senses attuned to the sound. Suddenly, the whistle resounded once again, but this time it seemed closer, triggering an onslaught of alarm signals within my body, thrusting me into a state of flight or flight, fight or flight response. Fueled by adrenaline, I sprinted back inside, the whistle echoing in my ear three or four more times. I cannot explain the origin of that haunting sound, nor can I comprehend why it evoked such a powerful reaction from me. However, during those few yards that separated me from my front door, it felt as though I were fleeting from a predatory creature. While it isn't unusual to hear peculiar noises at night, such a distant scream or other unidentifiable sounds, but nothing has ever sent chills down my spine quite like that whistle did. As I lay here in my bed, the unsettling feeling persists and anxiety grips me tightly, leaving me on edge and restless. Story number 11, Just a Tad Creeped Out. Over a decade has passed since that eerie incident unfolded. 
allow me to take you back to that spine-chilling night where I found myself alone with my faithful canine companion. You see, my husband had been assigned to the night shift, leaving just my dog and me in the confines of our home. With the darkness enveloping the world outside, my dog peacefully slumbered beside me, oblivious to the events that were about to unfold. As the night grew deeper, I found solace in the company of gripping novel. The words on the pages danced before my eyes, captivating my imagination. However, a sudden urge to bid my beloved husband good night tugged at my heartstrings. Grasping my phone, I prepared to reach out to him, to bridge the distance between our nocturnal lives. With a few taps, I accessed the text application on my phone and diligently selected my husband's contact. But as my fingertips hovered above the keyboard, a peculiar occurrence sent shivers cascading down my spine. Inexplicably, without any prompt from my touch, the screen began to manifest a message before my very eyes. Slowly but surely, letter by letter, the words, I am B-E-A-U-T, materialized on the illuminated surface. The shock rendered me motionless, and in a reflexive response I involuntarily hurled the phone back into the bed, face down. Its dull thud against the sheet served as an awakening for my slumbering dog, who roused from her peaceful repose. Her eyes fixated on a point beyond the phone, her instincts alert, and an uncharacteristic growl emanating from deep within her being. As the hair on the back of my neck stood erect, an overwhelming sense of unease washed over me. The sensation that coursed through my scalp was familiar, a numbing feeling that had accompanied me during past encounters with the paranormal. The realization set in that I was not alone in the room, that an inexplicable presence lingered, disrupting the tranquility of our home. Yet my husband's absence until the late hours of the night compelled me to gather my courage and confront the enigmatic force. Turning my gaze towards the direction that my dog intently shared, I mustered every ounce of bravery within me. In a firm voice, laced with determination, I addressed the unknown entity, proclaiming, You are not welcome here. Leave this place at once. To my astonishment, almost as if acknowledging my words, my dog's growls began to wane, eventually transforming into a languid yawn. Gradually, her alertness faded, and she nestled herself back into a state of undisturbed slumber. The room fell silent with an eerie calm, and the supernatural visitor had heeded my warning. Although I had encountered paranormal phenomena in the past, the event that unfolded that night was unlike any other. The notion of an otherworldly entity taking control of my phone, manipulating it to communicate a cryptic message, remained a perplexing anomaly, a one-of-a-kind occurrence in my personal repertoire of supernatural experiences. As I reflect upon the fateful night, even after all these years, the memory remains etched in my mind. It serves as a reminder that our world holds mysteries beyond our comprehension, glimpses into realms that lie just beyond our reach, and although I may never unravel the true nature of that supernatural encounter, it's left an indelible mark on my consciousness, forever shaping my belief in the enigmatic forces that exist within the realm of the unknown. What was this huge thing that I saw? Allow me to share with you an unsettling encounter that transpired not too long ago, an incident that continues to send shivers down my spine. To provide a proper backdrop, let me emphasize that I reside in a rather secluded region of Germany, characterized by its rustic charm and tranquil surroundings. Throughout my life, I've always maintained an inexplicable affinity towards all things paranormal, but nothing could have prepared me for what unfolded on that fateful day. As I embarked on a leisurely stroll through the picturesque natural landscape, little did I know that I was about to embark on an otherworldly experience. The sun's warm embrace cast a golden hue across the terrain, casting elongated shadows that dance upon the path before me. I reveled in the serenity of my surroundings, immersing myself in the soothing sounds of chirping birds and rustling leaves. However, this idyllic setting was abruptly shattered as my gaze fixated upon a peculiar sight, a spectacle that defied comprehension. There before me stood an enormous creature, unlike anything I'd ever encountered before. 
Its presence was both mesmerizing and terrifying, an amalgamation of beauty and dread. The creature was adorned with three rotating rings, each adorned with a myriad of eyes and gazed ominously in every direction. However, what truly captivated me was the colossal eye at its center, a piercing gaze that seemed to penetrate the depths of my soul. To my astonishment, the creature spoke, its voice emanating from an unseen source as if defying the laws of nature. Without a discernible mouth, it uttered a phrase that reverberated through the air, echoing in the recesses of my mind. Don't be afraid. Though its message was meant to provide reassurance, I found myself paralyzed by fear, unable to muster a single word or action in response. In an attempt to comprehend the creature's enigmatic words, I quickly translated them from the native German into a language familiar to me. He will come, it proclaimed, its voice infused with an otherworldly resonance that sent shivers cascading down my spine. The implications of its utterance were obscure, leaving me bewildered and unsettled. Time seemed to stand still in that eerie moment of confrontation. My heart pounded within my chest as I grappled the maelstrom of emotions. Fear and awe intertwined with me, waging a battle for dominance over my senses. The creature with its surreal appearance, possessing a haunting allure that captivated me, its mesmerizing form forever etched in the recesses of my memory. As I retreated from the scene, my mind abuzz with questions and trepidation, I couldn't shake the feeling that this encounter held a profound significance. What did the creature's cryptic warning signify? Who was this mysterious he that he spoke of? These unanswered queries would continue to haunt me, serving as a constant reminder of that fateful day when the realms of the supernatural collided with my everyday existence. Thus, dear reader, I recount this tale forever etching it into the annals of my personal history. The memory of that surreal encounter lingers, an indelible mark upon my consciousness. It serves as a testament to the inexplicable forces that permeate our world, reminding us that there are realms beyond our comprehension, waiting to be discovered, feared, and revered. Story number eight. I think I'm cursed or haunted. I'm reaching a point of sheer exhaustion. This relentless ordeal has robbed me of peaceful sleep and instilled a paralyzing fear within me wherever I approach bedtime. It's a tale that originated from sleep paralysis, an event that I won't delve into extensively, as this isn't designated subreddit for such discussions. However, it serves as a genesis of my current predicament. Following that haunting episode, I found myself awakening on numerous occasions, overwhelmed by an inexplicable sense of dread, consistently around the ungodly hour of 3 a.m. or 3.33 a.m. Within the confines of my room, I perceived the eerie sounds of footsteps, the flickering of light switches, and an undeniable presence looming over me. Each time, a profound sensation of dread coursed through my veins, leaving me petrified and incapable of finding solace. But lately, matters have taken a turn for the worse. Although there was a brief respite from lasting about a month, two nights ago my slumber was interrupted by an unexpected disturbance. Awakening at what seemed like 6 a.m., despite the illusion of a full night's rest, a sudden noise pierced the silence. It resembled the sound of something toppling over, a notion I attributed to the wind knocking down my water bottle foolishly assuming my window had been left ajar, perhaps. However, upon inspection, I discovered that my window was securely shut. Perplexed but not overly concerned, I resolved to address the matter in the morning. It was only then, as I cast my gaze upon the floor beside my bed, that I beheld a roll of tape, incongruously lying there. I distinctly remembered its previous location on my desk, leaving me bewildered as to how it had managed to roll such a considerable distance. And then, last night, following what felt like yet another complete night's rest, I was roused from my slumber at the stroke of midnight, having retired to bed previously at 11.30 p.m., by an inexplicable occurrence. An indistinct noise, akin to the belch of my brother, occasionally unleashes, reverberating through the darkness. 
Strangely, no one else seemed to stir in response to this audio disturbance. Furthermore, a faint melody permeated the air, reminiscent of my mother's alarm clock. Nevertheless, it abruptly ceased mere seconds after its inception, a puzzling phenomenon given the lateness of the hour. Turning to face the wall, I suddenly found myself seized by an uncontrollable trembling, despite the absence of cold or any discernible cause for my physical reaction. On the surface, these events may appear relatively innocuous, but their cumulative effect has taken a toll on my mental well-being. I find myself perpetually drained upon awakening, as if my very essence has been sapped. The exhaustion engulfs me, leaving me desolate and bereft. Fear now haunts my every thought, casting its dark shadow over the prospect of slumber. The weight of this mounting torment, both physically and psychologically, has become too much to bear. I'm at a loss for what steps to take next, trapped in a state of perpetual apprehension. The simple act of going to bed once a cherished respite has transformed into a daunting and fear-laden task. My mind is plagued with uncertainty and my weary spirit yearns for a reprieve from this malevolent cycle. Flashbacks of unknown places I've never been to. Ever since I was a young child, I've experienced the peculiar phenomenon of sporadic memories surfacing in my mind. These memories are of unfamiliar places predominantly set outdoors, and curiously enough, I've never actually been to any of them. It's important to note that these occurrences are distinct from deja vu or any form of hallucination. Instead, they bear a resemblance to recollections from long ago, spontaneously resurfacing with remarkable detail when least expected. Intrigued by these flashes, I occasionally take notes to validate their authenticity. Remarkably, upon revisiting these notes later on, I find that they accurately reflect the memories that had come to mind. In an effort to seek answers, I sought medical examinations, including MRIs and CT scans, to investigate potential causes related to my visual snow and migraines. To my relief, the results showed no sign of physiological abnormalities. As for my mental state, I consider myself an educated individual who rarely experiences stress. I approach life with an easygoing and positive attitude, firmly grounded in logic, and I hold no belief in paranormal phenomenon. Therefore, it seems unlikely that these episodes stem from psychological factors. I have contemplated various rational explanations to make sense of these curious flashbacks, and one hypothesis I entertain is that they may stem from old dreams. Although I lack concrete evidence to support this theory, I have noticed that I can distinguish between memories of old dreams and these inexplicable recollections. For instance, when I dream of being in an unfamiliar house, I am acutely aware of the vivid interiors being merely remnants of a dream. However, the flashbacks I experience occur selectively, and only when I consciously choose to recall them. Another plausible possibility I have is considering that these places I remember might have been visited during my early childhood, given that the scenery in these flashbacks bears a resemblance to the typical landscapes found in Greece, where I have spent a majority of my life. This hypothesis gains some traction. However, what perplexes me is that these places do not align with any known locations. Chronologically, these memories seem to span from the late 1980s to the early 2000s, which coincides with my birth year, 1985. Interestingly, whenever these mysterious recollections come flooding back, an eerie yet pleasant sensation washes over me. There is a subtle otherworldly quality to these experiences, despite their utterly realistic nature. Conversely, when I recall familiar and ordinary memories, regardless of how nostalgic they may be, they feel entirely mundane and devoid of any inexplicable aura. The intricacies of these unexplained flashbacks continue to baffle me. I remain inquisitive and open to exploring potential explanations, yet thus far, I have found no definitive answers. It remains an enduring enigma, a captivating puzzle that adds a touch of the mystique to my otherwise ordinary life. As I traverse the realms of memory, constantly encountering these extraordinary glimpses, 
I can't help wondering about the mysteries of the human mind and the fascinating depths it holds. My second paranormal experience with the shadow figure in the corner. Story number two. The story I'm about to share with you is set in a house my family and I moved into after our first encounter with the paranormal. I think I was around eight years old when we made the move, and this particular incident took place when I was about nine. It was during this period of my life that I became deeply fascinated with ghosts. My dad and I would regularly watch shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures and others, although now I'm hooked on Ghost Files, a special shout out to Ryan and Shane. Sometimes, when we were at home, I would even download an EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, device app on my phone and use it for fun. Now, this new house had a completely different atmosphere compared to our previous one. It felt much lighter in terms of energy. I vaguely recall hearing that the previous owner had passed away in the home, but I was so young at the time that I can't quite remember all the details, so I didn't take it too seriously. As I mentioned in my previous story, I struggled tremendously with insomnia for the first 14 years of my life. However, over time, it's improved, which I'm grateful for. On this particular night, I distinctly remember staying up until around 2 a.m. engrossed in an episode of Life with Derek on Disney or something of that sort. I was sitting in a chair that my little brother and I had placed in front of the TV. He had already gone to bed, so the chair next to me was empty. As I was immersed in the show, I suddenly heard a rattling sound coming from somewhere in the vicinity. I turned my gaze toward the chair next to me and noticed that it was shaking. The feet of the chair were uneven, causing it to rock back and forth. Now let me clarify that it couldn't have been an earthquake, because it was the only thing in the entire room that was moving. Naturally, I began to feel a bit strange. If I hadn't been so deeply interested in the paranormal, I probably would have freaked out completely. However, due to my knowledge of the possible explanations, I was more curious than terrified. I couldn't shake off the nagging feeling that I needed to scan the room, as if maybe this was far from a normal occurrence. So, that's when all this happened, and that's when I saw it. Our sofa was positioned diagonally against the wall on the opposite side of the room. It was from behind that couch that I witnessed a tall, shadowy figure, approximately five foot seven in height, slowly rise up. It stood there facing me, or at least where its eyes should have been, although it had none, and then swiftly ducked down behind the couch. I remember turning away in sheer terror, that overwhelming sensation that usually brings tears to your eyes when faced with something scary or intimidating. After that intense experience, I tried my best to brush it off and resume watching TV. But it wasn't long before I found myself seeking refuge under the blankets. I confided in my neighborhood friend, Allie, about what had transpired, and she expressed genuine concern for me. She mentioned having a dream in which she saw a spirit lurking in the corner of my room, and she assured me that she had prayed for my safety. Now, whether you choose to believe her or not, that's entirely up to you depending on your own beliefs. But if I'm honest, I didn't sense any hostility from the entity. I was simply scared because of what I had witnessed firsthand. Story number two. Weirdest paranormal experience. I was comfortably lying on my bed engrossed in a captivating book while enjoying some soothing tunes from the radio. Everything seemed perfectly ordinary until something inexplicable happened. The music started fading out, and as I instinctively turned my gaze toward the radio, I couldn't believe my eyes. Right before me, I witnessed the knob physically switch off, as if being manipulated by some unseen force. I was left dumbfounded trying to make sense of what had just occurred. How could such a mundane object defy the laws of nature? It was a truly surreal moment that left me both fascinated and unnerved. But that was just the tip of the paranormal iceberg in my life. 
Another peculiar incident occurred when I was hanging out with a close buddy of mine in the depths of my basement. We were engaged in an intense session of Mario Kart, having a blast. I had recently charged my tablet, and it was in perfect working condition, displaying no signs of any issues. However, out of nowhere, as I unplugged it from the charger, the battery level plummeted to a mere 7%. What baffles me even more was the fact that it refused to charge back up. No matter what we tried, it was as if the energy within the tablet had been mysteriously drained away, leaving us bewildered and perplexed. But the strangeness didn't end there. As we continued our gaming session, the game itself started to act oddly. Glitches and distortions plagued the screen, making it increasingly difficult to navigate through the virtual world. It was as if some unseen entity had taken a keen interest in disrupting our gameplay, toying with the very fabric of the digital realm that we were immersed in. As the glitches intensified, an eerie coldness suddenly enveloped the basement. Both my friend and I could feel a chilling sensation crawling up our spines, goosebumps forming on our arms. The temperature seemed to drop rapidly, defying any logical explanation, and then the most unsettling moment of all unfolded before our eyes. From an adjacent room, an object figure, or rather an obscure figure, sorry, started to materialize. It began as a mere shadow but gradually took on a discernible human form. Our jaws dropped as we exchanged bewildered glances, unsure of how to process what we were witnessing. The entity seemed to linger for a moment as if observing us with an otherworldly gaze before abruptly vanishing into thin air. The room returned to its normal temperature, but the eerie atmosphere remained, lingering like an unspoken question in the air. Needless to say, the entire experience left us shaken and filled with a mix of emotions. It was an encounter that defied any rational explanation, challenging the very boundaries of our understanding. To this day, I find myself pondering the nature of reality and the existence of forces beyond our comprehension. So, when it comes to paranormal experiences, the one I just shared with you stands out as one of the most bizarre and mind-bending encounters I've ever had. It serves as a constant reminder that there are aspects of the universe that remain uncharted, hidden within the shadows of the unknown, waiting to reveal themselves when we least expect it. Grandma and I saw deceased great-grandma's shadow. When I was just a young child of eight years old, living in El Salvador, my grandmother's house was a place of mystery and peculiar occurrences. She practiced Santeria, and as a result, her home was always enveloped in an atmosphere of strange energy. I remember it vividly, the constant presence of eerie sounds and unexplained phenomena that seemed to manifest within those walls. The house itself held a haunting history, as my great-grandmother had passed away within its confines. Her bedroom was conveniently located adjacent to the garage, with a door separating the car parking area from the rest of the house. Beyond her bedroom, there was yet another door leading to a storage room. It was through these two open doors that an unforgettable event transpired. One evening, my grandma and I were preparing to go out to dinner. As she turned the key to the ignition, the engine roared to life, causing the headlights to illuminate the area outside. It was at that moment that a peculiar shadow was cast upon the wall, seemingly projected by an unknown source. Startled, I glanced towards my grandmother, seeking an explanation for its eerie phenomenon. That's my mom, she calmly uttered, her voice carrying a mixture of reverence and awe. In an instant, a profound sense of tranquility washed over both of us overwhelming our senses. Tears welled up in our eyes as we stood there, transfixed by the apparition before us. It was a rare and profound connection, bridging the gap between the living and the departed. For a brief moment, time seemed to stand still as we basked in the presence of my great-grandmother's spirit. It was as she had reached out to us from the realms beyond, offering solace and reassurance. The weight of her existence and the knowledge that she was watching over us filled our hearts with warmth and love. As a young child, I struggled to fully comprehend the depths of what had occurred that fateful day. But even at such a tender age, 
I recognized the significance of that encounter. It was a testament to the enduring bonds of family and the profound impact that they can have, transcending the boundaries of life and death. In the years that followed, my grandma's house retained its mystical aura. The peculiar sounds, the inexplicable flickering of lights, and the occasional glimpse of shadowy figures continued to bewilder and captivate me. It was an environment where the supernatural and the everyday coexisted, blurring the lines between the tangible and the ethereal. Looking back on that momentous day, I realized the profound impact that it had on shaping my beliefs and understanding of the world. It ignited a curiosity within me, a fascination with the unseen and unexplained. It sparked a lifelong quest for knowledge and a deep appreciation for the intricate tapestry of the human experience. To this day, the memory of the encounter lingers within me, like a cherished heirloom passed down through generations. It serves as a reminder of the extraordinary nature of existence, the interconnectedness of the past and present, and the enduring power of love. My grandmother's house, with its strange sounds and mysterious energy, will forever hold a place in my heart, a testament to the unspoken wonders that lie just beyond the veil of our reality. Story number six. Why do paranormal things seem to happen at night 99% of the time? I have had numerous personal experiences throughout my life that defy explanation based on my knowledge of science. Strangely enough, each of these incidents occurred after 11 p.m., but more often than not, it was around the eerie hours of 2 or 3 a.m. It is during these late night moments that inexplicable occurrences seem to take place leaving me perplexed and searching for answers. One particular incident stands out among all the rest, as it involved the sighting of an apparition. The entity I witnessed was unlike anything I'd ever encountered before. It manifested as a peculiar 2D mirage, yet possessed three-dimensional facial features. It seemed to be crafted from a subtle absence of light, as if some invisible force, perhaps a hidden brow line or cheekbone, was casting shadows that formed the distinct contours of a face upon the mirage. Astonishingly, this unnerving encounter took place in broad daylight within the confines of my childhood bedroom. Interestingly, all the other significant experiences I had leading up to my 18th birthday were predominantly nocturnal in nature, moving furniture without any logical explanation, staples mysteriously thrown at me, and my sister from the depths of darkness, and eerie footsteps echoing through empty halls were the haunting hallmarks of these encounters. It seemed as though the night held a profound significance in attracting these inexplicable phenomena. In my quest for understanding, I've come across the notion of the witching hour. It is a concept that many are familiar with, though its origins and deeper meaning remain elusive to me. This is where I seek the diverse perspectives and explanations that are different, my hope is that by exploring various viewpoints, I can strengthen my knowledge and gain a deeper understanding of the events that have indelibly shaped my life. Discovering this community has been an incredible source of solace for me. To find others who have encountered similar inexplicable phenomenon is beyond comforting. It is a revelation. It has instilled in me a sense of belonging and validation, knowing that I am not alone in grappling with these perplexing experiences. In fact... The overwhelming support and shared experiences have motivated me to delve even further into this enigmatic realm. As a means of catharsis, I've begun creating videos documenting and sharing my personal stories. There's an indescribable satisfaction that comes from articulating the bizarre occurrences that have befallen me. It is a profound release, and even more so when others can relate to experiences that I once believed to be isolated and singular. In conclusion, I eagerly anticipate the collective wisdom and diverse insights that this community can offer. Each story shared, every perspective explored, contributes to the ever-growing tapestry of knowledge surrounding these unexplained events. It is through these shared narratives and the collective understanding we cultivate that we can begin to shed light on the mysteries that have transformed me as an individual.
destroyed my bedside fan because I thought it was a ghost. I slowly opened my eyes, still caught in the clutches of sleepiness. As usual, I'd left my fan running overnight, its whirring providing a comforting white noise that drowned out the sounds of passing traffic and nosy neighbors. Little did I know that this ordinary morning ritual would soon take an unprecedented turn. In the groggy haze of awakening, my drowsy gaze fixated on the oscillating fan. To my half-conscious mind, it appeared distorted, as if assuming the eerie form of that infamous ghost girl from The Ring. My heart raced and a surge of adrenaline coursed through my veins, jolting me into a state of alertness. Startled, I abruptly sat up in bed, wide-eyed and fully awake. Without a second thought, instinct propelled my arm forward, connecting forcefully with the unsuspecting fan. The impact shattered it into five fragmented pieces, sending them hurtling across the room. In that adrenaline-fueled moment, I had unleashed an unexpected display of strength upon the innocent appliance. However, as the remnants of the fan settled on the floor, my racing heartbeat gradually slowed. A peculiar mix of relief and embarrassment washed over me. It was then that the reality revealed itself, and I revealed the truth. It was just my fan all along, innocently providing me with a cool breeze on those warm nights. As dawn gradually illuminated my surroundings, the objects in my room took on a form of mere silhouettes, their details obscured by the faint light. It dawned on me that my bleary-eyed mind had misinterpreted the innocuous shape of the fan, morphing it into a ghostly specter from a horror film. The interplay between light and shadow had deceived my senses, conjuring illusions that vanished in the clarity of daybreak. Reflecting upon the bizarre sequence of events, I couldn't help but chuckle at the curious workings of my own mind. I had unwittingly stumbled upon a newfound understanding of my brain's automatic response to perceived threats. In the face of a seemingly imminent danger, my primal instincts had swiftly taken over, propelling me to defend myself against the imagined menace. With a wry smile on my face, I concluded that, at the very least, I now had an entertaining anecdote to share. Who would have thought that a simple fan could trigger such a cascade of emotions and actions? It served as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of our own perceptions, the way our minds can play tricks on us, distorting reality in unexpected and sometimes comical ways. As the morning light grew stronger, I took a moment to savor the realization that in this instance, the only threat I faced was the one conjured by my own sleepy mind. And with that newfound understanding, I greeted the day with a mixture of amusement and gratitude, appreciating the quirks and idiosyncrasies that make each moment in life an adventure unto itself. Greetings from Paranormal M, where the unexplainable becomes real. Join us as we explore the most mysterious stories of our time. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay updated with the latest thrilling tales. We hope you're ready for the unexpected. Story number one, Shadow and Crumbs. Just a few hours ago, an inexplicable incident occurred that has left me utterly perplexed and struggling to comprehend what transpired. Let me recount the bewildering chain of events that unfolded. As I diligently went about my household chores, vacuuming the entire house, I found myself alone on the upper floor. My brother occupied the lower level while the rest of my family was away. With the vacuum cleaner in hand, I proceeded down the hallway, aiming to clean every nook and cranny. Upon reaching the bathroom, I slightly closed the door to gain access to the vent. Fully engrossed in my cleaning mission, that is. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of a shadowy presence passing by the partially closed door. My immediate assumption was that my brother was hastening towards either my room or our mother's room, prompting me to brace myself and reprimand him for his hasty movements. 
Filled with anticipation, I stepped out of the bathroom, ready to confront my brother. But to my astonishment, there was no one in sight. The silence in the air was deafening, devoid of any sign of human presence. However, what caught my attention was the trail left behind the enigmatic shadow. It consisted of peculiar brown crumbs strewn across the floor, distinctly marking the path that it traversed. This revelation only served to deepen my confusion and bewilderment. I had meticulously cleaned the hallway, employing my obsessive compulsive tendencies to ensure not even a single speck of dirt, dog hair, or mud remained. In fact, I had painstakingly vacuumed the area twice, thrice, driven by my unwavering pursuit of cleanliness and perfection. Thus, the sudden appearance of these mysterious crumbs defied all logical explanation. Adding to the enigma, these crumbs defied identification. They were unlike typical breadcrumbs or any recognizable food particles that one would expect to find. Furthermore, our household lacked any baked goods or culinary treats that could have plausibly resulted in such peculiar remnants. This inexplicable occurrence was entirely unprecedented, and its peculiarity only intensified my sense of unease and fascination. In conclusion, this inexplicable encounter left me grappling with a myriad of unanswered questions. The bizarre interplay of shadows, the eerie absence of any accompanying human presence, and the inexplicable trail of enigmatic brown crumbs have all combined to create a sense of perplexity that continues to bewilder me. It's an accident that has defied all reason and logic, leaving me with an enduring sense of intrigue and an insatiable desire to unravel the truth behind this inexplicable phenomenon. Story number four. Woke up to a glowing white mist over me. About seven years ago, there was a period of my life when I resided in a rather eerie house that seemed to possess a haunting presence. Although I never laid eyes on this mysterious entity, its presence was made abundantly clear through the eerie sounds of angry stomping that reverberated throughout the house. Night after night, it felt as though this unseen presence would materialize and plop itself heavily on my bed, causing me to question my sanity, since there was nothing visibly there. To exacerbate the matter, there were occasions when a putrid odor, reminiscent of death itself, permeated the confines of my bedroom. One fateful night, as I found myself roused from slumber, my eyes fluttered open to behold an ethereal sight that left me both bewildered and captivated. Before me stood a radiant mist, shimmering with a luminous white glow, its size comparable to that of a twin mattress. Now let me clarify that I was resting on a Grand California King bed at the time, allowing me to estimate the dimensions of this otherworldly apparition. This mist-like entity undulated and rippled in a mesmerizing manner, reminiscent of the majestic ebb and flow of ocean waves. Curiously, despite the unusual nature of the encounter, fear didn't immediately consume me. With a mixture of trepidation and curiosity, I mustered the courage to rub my eyes, half expecting the mist to dissipate as a mere figment of my foggy vision. Yet, much to my astonishment, it remained steadfastly present. I repeated the action, rubbing my eyes once again, but to no avail. The enigmatic mist persisted, defying any logical explanation. Driven by an overwhelming sense of curiosity, I summoned the bravery to sit upright in my bed and extended my hand toward the luminescent haze. As my trembling fingers tentatively reached into the ethereal glow, the mist swiftly vanished before my very eyes. Responding to my touch in a manner reminiscent of an undulating wave that had characteristically moved like such, it dissipated into thin air, its spiral-like retreat leaving me awestruck and instilling within me a profound realization. In that fleeting moment, as the mist dispersed into oblivion, a profound revelation dawned upon me. I was not merely experiencing a trick of my own foggy eyes, but instead, I had encountered something truly supernatural. The realization that this ethereal mist possessed an existence beyond the boundaries of the physical realm 
sent shivers coursing down my spine, flooding me with a deep-seated sense of terror. Over the years that followed this extraordinary incident, I found myself compelled to confide in only a select few individuals. The sheer peculiarity and chilling nature of my encounter made it a tale difficult to share without risking skepticism and disbelief. Consequently, this mysterious encounter with the glowing mist remained a closely guarded secret, forever etched in the recesses of my memory, serving as a constant reminder of the inexplicable forces that coexist alongside our tangible reality. Story number nine. Just a story from my experiences. About 15 years ago, not too recent, but quite a while back, my memory comes to mind that I've been wanting to share with you. It was summertime and our family always had this tradition of having a get-together before we embarked on our annual summer trip. The night before this particular gathering, something strange happened that I can still vividly recall. I remember drifting off to sleep in my bed, enveloped by the warmth of my sheets. Out of nowhere, in the dead of night, my eyes fluttered open, jolted awake by an abrupt noise. You see, the house we lived in at the time had quite a history, a charming yet old residence brimming with stories of the past. And on that fateful night, the house decided to share one of its enigmatic tales with us. There I lay wide awake, listening intently to the eerie silence. Suddenly, a cacophony erupted from downstairs, resonating through the halls. It sounded as if someone was forcefully trying to kick down our front door. The noise was thunderous, accompanied by a bone-chilling thud and the shattering of glass. The sound was so alarming that it sent shivers down my spine, instantly triggering a surge of panic. Without wasting a moment, I called out to my mother, whose room was just across the hall. However, it took her a few groggy shouts to rouse her from her slumber. I found it peculiar because I was certain she must have heard the same terrifying commotion that had jolted me awake. Eventually, she woke up, accompanied by my stepfather, and their initial annoyance at being disturbed in the middle of the night was apparent. In a trembling voice, I recounted what I unfounded, sharing the bone-chilling sounds that had disrupted the tranquility of the house. Yet to my surprise, they looked at me with a mixture of confusion and skepticism. They claimed not to have heard a thing. Perplexed, my mother and stepfather embarked on a thorough investigation, venturing downstairs to ensure the security of our home. As I anxiously awaited their return, I was instructed to go back to bed. However, the adrenaline coursing through my veins made it an impossible effort to drift off into peaceful slumber. So instead, I huddled beneath the safety of my covers, clutching them tightly as I contemplated the unsettling events of that night. Looking back, that house was undoubtedly the most active dwelling I'd ever experienced. But in truth, all the houses I've lived in had their fair share of peculiar occurrences. And so, my dear friend, that's the story of this mysterious night when I was awakened by what seemed to be an attempted intrusion, a tale intertwined with the fascinating history of the house that held countless secrets within its aged walls. It is memories like these that remind us of the enigmatic nature of our surroundings and the mysteries that often lie hidden, waiting to be unraveled. Scene from the Shower In my line of work, which involves constant traveling, I find myself spending a majority of my time residing in hotels. So over the years, I've come across numerous tales of paranormal phenomenon occurring within these establishments. However, personally, I've never experienced anything of the sort. That is, until a peculiar incident unfolded roughly three years ago during one of my hotel stays. On this particular occasion, I found myself taking a refreshing shower within the confines of my hotel room, and as luck would have it, the bathroom door had been left ajar, granting me a view into the bedroom from my vantage point in the shower. The room's layout was such that the shower was nestled in the corner, with a wall to my left and the doorway leading to the living room to my right. It was the spacious one-bedroom suite that I had chosen for my temporary house. 
As the water cascaded down, enveloping me in its warmth, I indulged in the soothing sensation. However, for some inexplicable reason, my gaze remained fixed on the room before me, and then, in the blink of an eye, it happened. Emerging from the right side of the room, seemingly materializing from the living room, glided a figure. She was a woman with an ethereal nature, possessing an otherworldly pallor and rendered her almost translucent, her skin resembling the texture of delicate parchment. Cascading down her back was a mane of long, straight black hair, reaching down to her waist in a mesmerizing display. The encounter lasted no more than a fleeting couple of seconds, but those mere moments felt like an eternity etched within my memory. As this enigmatic figure passed by, she turned her head in my direction, our eyes locking in an inexplicable connection. In her gaze, I detected neither fear nor curiosity, just an unnerving stillness that seemed to penetrate to the depths of my being. Without halting her ghostly stride, she continued her spectral journey, appearing to traverse the very wall directly in front of her. It was as if she was effortlessly traversing a barrier that existed only within the realm of the supernatural. The sight that unfolded before me was one of the most baffling and bewildering spectacles I've ever witnessed. The image of her countenance remains ingrained in my mind to this day, a face that lacked defining features save for two abysmal orbs, dark as the night sky serving as her eyes. A mere slit represented her mouth, barely hinting at its existence, while a faint suggestion of a nose completed her enigmatic visage. Not a single word was uttered, nor did she exhibit any discernible emotion. She simply shifted her gaze towards me, our eyes meeting in a silent confrontation before vanishing into the intangible fabric of the wall, leaving me dumbfounded and awestruck. That encounter, without a doubt, ranks among the most inexplicable and peculiar incidents I've ever experienced. It served as a stark reminder that the realm of the supernatural possesses wonders and enigmas that are far beyond our comprehension. Story number 13, The Missionary Chronicles, Part 2. During my LDS mission in Picture Rocks, Arizona, I had an intriguing companion with whom I served for several weeks. He shared a fascinating rule that he and other missionaries followed in the area. If we didn't have an appointment, we would head back home when it got dark. This rule stemmed not only from the paranormal issues, but also from concerns about drug running and criminal activities in the vicinity. Truly, the tales surrounding these topics could fill an entire book. One mid-November evening in 2014, we found ourselves driven back from an appointment that had run late, pushing our boundaries as LDS missionaries who were bound by strict and extensive rules. It was already around 10 p.m., and the overcast sky added a chilling atmosphere to our journey through the maze of dirt roads that comprised picture rocks. The road was uneven, making navigation even more challenging. As we traversed a long, desolate stretch of dirt road with no houses in sight, a figure suddenly emerged in her headlights. This man, seemingly walking aimlessly with his head down, clad in a t-shirt and shorts despite the freezing cold. What struck us as peculiar was his lack of any light source and his complete obliviousness to our presence. As the driver, I slowed down to maneuver around him, considering the narrowness of the road. As he drew closer, his face appeared translucent and his eyes were entirely white. My companion and I couldn't tear our eyes away from this inexplicable sight as we rolled past him. Incredibly, he was so near that I could have easily reached out and touched him by rolling the window. However, as we drove past, the figure began to fade away, ultimately vanishing into thin air. Unable to contain my astonishment, I exclaimed to my companion that the man had inexplicably disappeared and promptly halted the car. I scanned the mirrors aided by the red glow of the brake lights in an attempt to catch a glimpse of the mysterious individual, but he had completely vanished. Determined to investigate further, I turned the car around, partially driving off the road to do so. The illuminated areas that the car's bright headlights were showing showed nothing. So he was nowhere to be found. Following this perplexing event and other encounters with the poltergeist in our abode, I reached out to fellow missionaries inquiring if they believed Picture Rocks was haunted. 
To my astonishment, they all confirmed that this place was undeniably haunted and eagerly shared their own spine-chilling stories over the phone. The town was rife with strange happenings, unique encounters with the poltergeist in her manufactured home, and eerie warnings about skinwalkers. Prior to this, I've never even heard of skinwalkers, so I naturally turned to my companion for more information. Yet, he hesitated for a moment before responding indicating that he didn't wish to discuss the matter, at least not while we were inside the manufactured home. Among the recurring tales shared by fellow missionaries, including my companion, were accounts of phantom vehicles. I couldn't quite grasp the concept until I experienced them firsthand. Story number 14 the man without a face. Years ago, when my family relocated to America, I vividly recall an incident that transpired on our balcony. While everyone else busied themselves with the moving of our belongings into our new apartment, I found myself captivated by an overwhelming sensation. It was akin to the primal instinct of prey detecting an imminent threat, or a deer locking eyes with a lurking wolf. Intrigued, I instinctively cast my gaze upwards, and there, before me, stood him, or rather, it. His countenance was an eerie paper white, contrasting starkly against the backdrop of his black suit. Strangely, his face lacked any discernible facial features. Instead, a mere suggestion of a nose, eyes, and a mouth graced his visage. Yet these features bore no openings, rendering them reminiscent of lifeless mannequins found in stores. My heart raced as I absorbed the unsettling sight, while he unflinchingly fixed his gaze upon me. Time seemed to stand still in that moment, and then, in the blink of an eye, he vanished into thin air. The intensity of fear engulfed my young self, and I instinctively sought refuge indoors, wordlessly retreating from the enigmatic presence on the balcony. Taking solace in the familiar confines of a chair, I attempted to steady my racing thoughts. However, mere minutes later, that disconcerting feeling began to creep back into my consciousness. A sense of impending danger descended upon me once more, and I glanced upwards, only to find him standing in the doorway of my room. His spectral form exuded an eerie aura as he silently observed me. Without uttering a single word, he turned and walked away, disappearing into the depths of the apartment. Intrigued by this uncanny encounter, I mustered the courage to confide in my mother several years later. As I tentatively shared the details of that chilling encounter, a peculiar look crossed her face. It was as if she had known of this enigmatic entity all along yet chose to remain silent, withholding any further explanation. Her reaction left me with a lingering sense of mystery, compelling me to ponder the true nature of the haunting presence I had encountered that day. The memory of that surreal encounter is still in my mind, serving as a constant reminder of the enigma that once graced my presence. The questions surrounding that inexplicable being persist, and I find myself drawn back to that moment on the balcony yearning for a deeper understanding of what, who, whatever that spectral figure truly was. The secrets of that encounter, shrouded in silence and ambiguity, continue to tantalize my imagination, leaving me to contemplate the existence of realms beyond our comprehension. Has anyone ever had a similar experience? For a span of three years, I found myself immersed in this particular line of work, which led me to two different locations. To encapsulate my experiences succinctly, it can be said that it's brought me to the brink of death without actually succumbing to it. Among the myriad encounters I had, one incident stands out vividly in my memory, forever etched in my mind. It was a moment that shook me to my core, leaving an indelible mark. I was confronted with the perplexing scenario of bed alarms reverberating within the resident's room, even hours after their passing. These alarms, designed to activate when the individual either rises from their bed or falls out of it, defied all logic. 
The perplexing aspect was that the room remained empty during those early morning hours, devoid of any human presence. How or why these alarms would jolt into action in the absence of any physical movement remains a weird mystery. One of my co-workers, a woman deeply rooted in superstition, mind you, ventured to propose a peculiar hypothesis. She surmised that the lingering spirits of the departed were responsible for these supernatural occurrences. In her superstitious belief, she would ceremoniously open a window in the room, an action that inexplicably brought an abrupt end to the incessant alarm symphony. Such eerie incidents became commonplace in my line of work. Strange happenings once relegated to the realm of folklore and myth began to unfold before my very eyes with astounding regularity. Skepticism and disbelief, which had been my steadfast companions, were abruptly replaced by a newfound acceptance of the inexplicable. The boundaries between the tangible and the intangible, the living and the deceased, became blurred, ultimately shattering my preconceived notions. The profound impact of this occupation manifested in an unprecedented transformation of my entire worldview. Previously, I had held steadfastly to the firm disbelief in supernatural phenomenon, dismissing them as figments of overactive imaginations or mere tricks of the mind. However, my tenure in this new role rewrote the very fabric of my beliefs, dismantling the walls of skepticism and unveiling a profound understanding of the intricate relationship between life and death. Thus, this journey into the realm of mortality and the ethereal imbued my existence with a newfound sense of awe and reverence. It taught me that the boundaries of our comprehension are far more malleable than we dare to imagine, that the mysteries of the universe extend far beyond the grasp of our limited understanding. In embracing the inexplicable, I discovered a humbling truth, that the human experience is a tapestry interwoven with threads of the enigmatic, waiting to be unraveled by those willing to venture beyond the realm of convention. Something touched me in my own home. Story number nine. As the title suggests, an unusual incident occurred when my boyfriend paid me a visit the other day. We were engrossed in conversation when out of nowhere he abruptly halted his words, his gaze fixed on something unseen. Puzzled, I inquired about the sudden pause, and he sheepishly revealed that he had felt an inexplicable grip on his arm. Initially, I didn't dwell on it too much, dismissing it as a mere oddity. However, recent events have compelled me to ponder over the inexplicable occurrences unfolding around me. It was just yesterday when I found myself in the sanctuary of the bathroom, attending to my daily rituals, when I distinctly felt a brush against my posterior. That's a fancy word for butt. It was as though someone or something had grazed past me, mimicking the sensation of navigating through a narrow space. While I wouldn't describe this encounter as particularly frightening, it did stir a sense of curiosity within me. Couldn't help but wonder about the thoughts and interpretations of those who might come across my story. What could possibly be the explanation for these enigmatic incidents? Adding another layer of intrigue to this puzzling situation, I noticed a peculiar spot in my bedroom, precisely at the corner of my bed. Like clockwork, my feline companions would gather around this mysterious area, fixating their attention and occasionally scratching at it during the late night hours between 11 and 2 a.m. In my quest to unravel the mystery, I discovered that the previous occupant of this dwelling was an elderly woman, known for eccentricity, surrounded by an astonishing number of over 40 cats. Visualizing the dimensions of my abode, which spans roughly 70 square meters, I couldn't help but marvel at the sheer abundance of feline presence that once filled these walls. The question lingers in my mind, could there be some connection between the phantom touch and the feline fixation on this specific spot? My mind races with various possibilities attempting to decipher the conundrum at hand. Could it be that the lingering energy of the previous tenant has intertwined itself with the very fabric of this place? Is it plausible that these ethereal remnants of the elderly woman's feline-filled existence have left an indelible mark, suddenly influencing the environment around me? Or perhaps, 
there is an entirely different explanation waiting to be unveiled, something beyond the realm of conventional understanding. Regardless, I find myself both fascinated and unnerved by these unfolding events. In my quest for answers, I turn to you, dear listeners, seeking your thoughts, insights, and theories. Have you encountered similar inexplicable occurrences? Do you believe in the existence of unseen forces that inhabit our world, lingering long after their physical forms have departed? Your perspectives and experiences are invaluable to this enigmatic journey. Does anyone know any good prayers? A couple of months ago, I found myself entangled with certain objects that, in hindsight, I should have handled with more caution. Now, let me assure you that I'm not crazy. I do suffer from severe anxiety, which is why I regularly consult with both a therapist and a psychiatrist. However, despite my ongoing mental health struggles, I've never received any diagnosis other than anxiety, although I did experience periods of depression. It all began innocuously enough, with the occasional sighting of fleeting shadows darting across the periphery of my vision. These minor spectacles seemed inconsequential at first, easily dismissed as mere figments of my imagination, but gradually these shadow apparitions grew larger and more persistent. Sometimes they would linger for extended periods without any discernible movement, making me believe that they were part of my everyday reality until they abruptly vanished. Now let me explain the importance of my sublingual film in my life. You see, I rely on this medication to manage my condition, as failing to take it regularly can plunge me into debilitating withdrawals. To access the contents of the film, I must employ a pair of scissors. Due to my propensity for unconsciously kicking objects off the foot of my bed while sleeping, I make a conscious effort to never leave anything potentially hazardous in that vicinity. Consequently, I always ensure the scissors are nowhere near the foot of my bed. However, one day when I needed the scissors, they were inexplicably absent. I meticulously tore apart my bed, rummaged through every nook and cranny of my room, and meticulously inspected the closet and drawers, desperately searching for the misplaced tool. Frustrated and running out of time, I turned my head to the left, intending to grab my phone and rush to the store to acquire a replacement. And then upon swiveling back toward the bed, there they were, sitting nonchalantly on the very edge from which they had been absent moments before. Astonishingly, the same peculiar incident occurred with the small stuffed animal that I owned. Now I understand that one might attribute these strange occurrences to my deteriorating mental state, and indeed I have considered the possibility that I'm losing my grip. However, I assure you that I meticulously combed through every inch of that room, examining every possible location, including beneath the sheets, and found no trace of the missing items. It could very well be an elaborate trick of the mind, but as the frequency and intensity of these events continue to escalate, I find myself growing increasingly apprehensive about what might transpire next. In light of these perplexing events, I would be immensely grateful if anyone could share prayers or spiritual guidance that might provide solace or aid in this disconcerting situation. Has anyone else experienced this? Last night I was abruptly awoken by an incredibly peculiar snoring-like sound. It wasn't your typical comical snore, mind you, but rather an indescribable combination of inhaling and exhaling, accompanied by the unsettling noise of lips smacking together. Initially, the volume was deafening, persisting for several minutes. Simultaneously, I could sense an aura of negative masculine energy lurking in the corner of my room. Although the noise eventually ceased, my body remained tense, and my heart continued to race with fear. Just as I thought it was over, to my dismay, it resumed once more. During its recurrence, I perceived the presence shifting toward the foot of my bed, momentarily before retreating to its prior position. The sound persisted for a few more minutes before abruptly vanishing. As it subsided, my body gradually relaxed, and I felt the departure of this enigmatic presence. 
allowing me to drift back to sleep. Yet, my tranquility was short-lived as my body abruptly tensed up again, accompanied by the disheartening thought, Oh God, is it back? And predictably, the eerie noise commenced anew. On this occasion, in addition to the inexplicable sound, I sensed what I felt to be multiple hands clutching beneath my thighs, as if attempting to lift my body. Strangely enough, the sensation seemed distinct from the presence emanating the particular noise from earlier, as I still perceived its malevolent energy emanating from the other side of the room. The episode continued for a while longer before abruptly ceasing, yet as fate would have it, a few minutes later the sound returned, albeit noticeably quieter and weaker than before. After enduring approximately another five or ten minutes of the haunting noise, intermittently fading in and out, it transformed into a mere whisper. It persisted for prolonged durations before finally ceasing altogether. In response to this unsettling experience, I decided to acquire some frankincense and white sage incense sticks, which I am presently burning during writing this. In an attempt to seek solace or find similar accounts, I turned to Google, but my search yielded no results concerning this bizarre breathing phenomenon. It's worth noting that I've never been a proponent of the notion of witching hour. However, during this disconcerting encounter, I found myself questioning whether it was indeed connected to that supernatural concept. Eventually, when I mustered enough courage to open my eyes and move, I glanced at the clock and discovered that it was precisely 4.25 a.m., further fueling my contemplation. Does anyone think mind control could exist? I think someone might have used it on me. I know this might sound absolutely insane, but honestly, I'm at a loss for what else to call it. This is the topic I've discussed before on a different subreddit, hoping to gather more insight and opinions because I was left with an overwhelming number of questions. To add to that, I recently had another bewildering account that further piqued my curiosity about this phenomenon. Back when I was in college, there was this individual who possessed an uncanny ability to place me under some kind of trance whenever we engaged in conversation. It was as though she had a mysterious power over me, compelling me to do practically anything she instructed. Interestingly enough, I would always retain clear memories of her interactions. However, there was one particular occurrence that stood out in my mind. She somehow persuaded me to give her the money I had something I would never even consider doing for my closest friends. It's truly perplexing to try and articulate the sensation, but imagine teetering on the brink of falling asleep with all my focus solely fixated on her words. Since my college days, I've been working in the retail industry, and just the other day I found myself ensnared in that same perplexing state of mind while assisting a group of customers at the checkout counter. There were four friends, and I noticed them stealing glances at me from across the room, whispering amongst themselves as if preparing for some covert operation. As they eventually approached the counter, one of them assumed the role of the spokesperson and initiated conversation with me. It was as if an invisible switch had been flipped, instantly plunging me into that familiar otherworldly mental state. I found myself mindlessly nodding and agreeing with whatever this person was saying, completely surrendering my will to her command. It was only later that I realized to my utter shock that I had allowed them to exit the store without making any payment. It took me a good five minutes or so to gradually regain my senses and snap out of this perplexing trance. Needless to say, this incident left me rattled to the core. I find myself growing increasingly apprehensive about engaging in conversation with unfamiliar individuals, since it appears that I possess an unnerving susceptibility to whatever influence they wield. Now, people have told me that it couldn't possibly be hypnosis, since one cannot be hypnotized into performing actions they wouldn't otherwise consider. This is precisely why I've resorted to labeling it as mind control, although I'm well aware that such a description may conjure up images of conspiracy theories and individuals donning tinfoil hats. Hence, I find myself wondering if there's any others out there who have encountered similar experiences 
or if I'm simply descending into the depths of my own mind, teetering on the brink of madness. Is the ghost that followed me from my old house considered an attachment? I spent numerous years residing in a haunted house where a plethora of spirits resided. Among them, there is one particular entity that displayed an exceptional fondness towards me. It wasn't until I revisited my old abode and consulted a medium that I discovered that the spirit had tagged along with me, harboring no ill intentions but rather a protective nature. Initially, I tucked this information away in the recesses of my mind, giving it little attention. However, events that transpired just yesterday forced me to confront the reality of the situation. My husband and I found ourselves engaged in a minor disagreement, which seems to be escalating rapidly toward full-blown argument. It's worth noting that such disputes were a rarity with us, occurring only once every six months, during which we would unleash our pent-up frustrations accumulated over the preceding half year. Now let me provide some context. I am of a petite stature, whereas my husband stands at an imposing six feet tall, weighing approximately 240 pounds. Endowed with a robust build, as our quarrel intensified, I could feel my anger mounting, and before I knew it, an inexplicable force hurled my husband against the wall with an unimaginable vigor. Despite me being nowhere near him, astonishingly, he became immobilized, gripped firmly in place as if restrained by an unseen hand. In that moment of urgency, I instinctively cried out the name Charlie, the very name the medium had divulged to me. Let him go immediately, I implored, ensuring Charlie understood that this was merely a minor spat between marital partners and that my husband posed no threat to me. Miraculously, my husband was instantaneously released from the invisible hold. Being the perpetual skeptic he was, my husband cautiously proposed that, as a precautionary measure, we confine all of our future discussions to the privacy of our car. Although my husband had not displayed any form of aggression, nor was he close to proximity to me at the time of the incident, he had never resorted to physical violence throughout our ten years together. This raised a troubling question within me. Had I granted Charlie too much leeway by merely accepting his presence without making an earnest attempt to rid myself of his influence? As an individual seemingly drawn to paranormal encounters, I typically remained unfazed by eerie occurrences. However, this recent incident left an indelible mark on my psyche. It unsettled me deeply, compelling me to engage in heartfelt conversation with Charlie, wherein I firmly emphasized the unacceptable nature of his actions. Story number 12. Nightmare. I found myself in a peculiar state of confusion and uncertainty. Uncertain if it was indeed the right place to seek answers for the bewildering experience I'd encountered. The clock on the wall struck an eerie hour nearing 2 a.m. as I sat here contemplating the strange events that unfolded nearly half hour ago. It all began when weariness came over me, causing my heavy eyelids to succumb to slumber cozy embrace of the sofa. Little did I know that this brief respite from consciousness would transport me into the depths of a sinister nightmare. In my dream, I found myself back in the familiar comforts of my own bed, surrounded by a veil of darkness that accompanies the late hours of night. However, what unfolded before my eyes was far from anything that could be considered ordinary or mundane. In the dimly lit room, I noticed a young woman, her jet black hair cascading down her shoulders, adorned in a white nightgown. Yet, her presence exuded an aura of unease that sent shivers down my spine. To my utter dismay, she was on all fours, slowly crawling toward me with an unnatural gait, akin to a predator stalking its prey. As the distance between us diminished, my senses heightened, and a sense of impending doom began to envelop my very being. It was then that I noticed something chilling, blood crimson and foreboding, dripped ominously from her pale lips staining the pristine whiteness of her nightgown. A sickening dread washed over me as the realization dawned that this encounter was far from benign. 
Eventually, the enigmatic woman reached the foot of the bed, her movements filled with an otherworldly grace. She raised her head, her chin delicately wrestling on the edge of the mattress, and fixed her gaze upon me with a pair of eyes that seemed devoid of life. Dark and hollow, they bore into the depths of my soul, leaving me paralyzed with fear. The significance of dreams has been contemplated and pondered upon by countless generations, seeking to unravel the enigma that they present. Some attribute dreams to the workings of the mind, a way for our subconscious to process and reconcile the complexities of our waking lives. Others believe that dreams serve as a window into a realm beyond our own, a realm that we can communicate with through cryptic symbols and imagery. However, it's important to recognize that dreams are deeply personal and their interpretations can vary greatly from one individual to another. While some dream experts may offer general interpretations, the true meaning lies within the depths of one's own subconscious, waiting to be unraveled through introspection and self-reflection. So I embark upon this journey armed with a relentless desire to understand the depths of my own psyche. I shall delve into the recesses of my own mind, exploring the labyrinth corridors of my subconscious in search of the elusive answers that lie within. Story number nine, sat by a spirit in a sweat lodge. During a certain period of time, I developed a regular habit of attending Inipi ceremonies, also known as Lakota sweat lodge rituals. Nearly every week, it was a profound experience that I cherished deeply. One particular summer, as I sat engaged in prayer within the sweat lodge, something extraordinary occurred. If you've ever had the opportunity to participate in such a ceremony, you would understand that the environment inside the lodge is enveloped in pitch black darkness, the only faint glow emitted by hot stones providing any semblance of illumination. As the Anipi ceremony neared its conclusion, and the time for me to exit the lodge approached, I found myself relishing in sensations of cool air permeating through the structure and the gentle rays of the evening sun that filtered in. To my left, the person farthest from me in the circle completed their ritual and made their way out. It wasn't uncommon for individuals to engage in final prayers before departing, so it wasn't particularly you know, strange and I wasn't bothered by the person to my left taking a bit longer to rise and leave. Conversely, the person to my right seemed eager to exit the sweat lodge and wasted no time in conveying the sentiment to me. With a tap on my shoulder, the person to my right indicated that it was my turn to crawl out of the lodge. So in that moment, I swiftly turned, my gaze to the left, and then I expected to see the individual who had just exited. However, to my surprise, there was no one there. This exchange transpired within a mere three seconds, and as we were positioned just slightly off-center from the door, it was inconceivable for anyone to crawl out that swiftly. I distinctly sensed the presence of someone or something beside me, while I had been basking in the gentle light and coolness of the air. An obstruction had ellipsed the illumination from my left. It was a substantial figure casting a shadow that partially obscured the incoming light within my field of vision and peripheral awareness. Given that most attendees of the Anipi were burly and robust men, it wouldn't have been unusual for a large individual to inadvertently block part of the light. After obediently crawling out of the sweat lodge, the ensuing moments were uneventful. We indulged in a hearty meal of deer meat chili without any negative incidents transpiring. In my contemplation of the experiences, I couldn't fathom the presence of any malevolent spirits lingering within the sacred confines of the sweat lodge. Seeking insight, I approached an elder and recounted the occurrence, inquiring about its significance. The elder's response was both enlightening and nonchalant, as if to say, Of course, we invite the spirits to join us in prayer. Isn't that obvious? My Paranormal Experience in High School Back to 2010, I had the privilege of attending high school in the beautiful country of the Philippines. It was an unforgettable time in my life filled with unique experiences and fascinating encounters. During that period, I was in my second year of high school, which technically speaking would be equivalent to 8th grade in the United States. The educational system in the Philippines differed slightly as we transitioned from 6th grade directly into high school as freshmen. I attended a private high school located in Cavite, a 
a province known for its rich history and vibrant culture. Our school had a customary routine after recess and lunch, where all the students would gather and form a line in the gymnasium. This assembly served two purposes, to listen to important announcements and to wait our teachers, who would then lead us to our respective classrooms. As high schoolers, we would be assigned the upper floors, while the lower floors were dedicated to the elementary and preschool students. One particular part of this routine intrigued me and my group of friends. On our way up to the classrooms, we often stopped by the bathroom situated near our classroom. It became somewhat of a tradition for us to take a quick detour and freshen up before the next class began. On this eventful day, I was engaged in conversation with the good friend Lambert as we followed our buddy Denzel into the bathroom. Denzel had a distinct walk, accompanied by his unique bowl-cut hairstyle. Since we saw him heading toward the bathroom to kill time, Lambert and I decided to join him. However, as soon as Lambert and I entered the bathroom, an eerie silence enveloped us. To our astonishment, the bathroom was completely empty, despite the fact that we had just seen Denzel walk in moments before. It was a perplexing situation that sent chills down our spines. Without wasting any time, we quickly dashed out of the bathroom, fear urging us to return to the safety of our classroom. When we arrived at our classroom, our hearts still racing, we were utterly shocked to find Denzel already sitting at his desk. It was as if he had been there the entire time. While we had experienced something inexplicable in the bathroom, the realization dawned on us that we had just witnessed a paranormal phenomenon, and it was the first time I had ever encountered such an occurrence with a fellow witness. Living in the Philippines, I had encountered numerous inexplicable events and supernatural phenomenon throughout my time there. It was a country rich in folklore and deeply rooted in beliefs concerning the supernatural. If you're interested, I'd be more than happy to share more of my captivating stories from time to time in the Philippines. Just let me know, and I'll gladly recount those mesmerizing tales. The Baker Boy, story number 18. During my mother's childhood, she lived in a remote region of Mexico, where basic amenities like electricity and running water and air conditioning were non-existent. In that little cramped house, my mother and a few of her siblings often resorted to sleeping on the porch to accommodate everyone. Yes, it may sound strange, but they slept on makeshift beds outside, as it sometimes proved to be cooler than inside the house. The porch had a screen, meticulously installed by my resourceful grandfather, who had also constructed the entire house with his own two hands. Given the vast expanse separating them from the nearest neighbor, the dwelling felt like it was situated in the heart of nowhere. Now here comes the eerie part, the ghostly tale that unfolds from this quaint setting. Amongst my mother and her three siblings, there were the chosen ones who slumbered under the starry night sky each evening. Initially, they never encountered any disturbances or fears until the night of the baker boy making his first appearance. Picture a small child with golden curls clad in white baking attire with a face concealed by a grotesque mask made from real pig skin. This peculiar figure would amble in circles around the perimeter of the house, reciting a mysterious phrase incomprehensible to my mother as it neither resembled Spanish nor English. Naturally, they were frightened at first, but as time passed, they grew to appreciate the presence of the baker boy. It almost seemed as though he performed nocturnal vigils to safeguard them from any misfortune that may be befalling them. However, his true identity remained shrouded in mystery, and the lingering question of his existence loomed over us all. Unfortunately, my grandpa, being the skeptical soul that he was, dismissed their accounts as figments of their imagination concocted merely to find an excuse not to enter the house. But my mother and her siblings vehemently denied such motives. As days turned into weeks, a curious development unfolded. The faint trace of the baker boy's nightly sojourn began to manifest as an indistinct pathway encircling the house. This peculiar phenomenon was undeniable, and it left an indelible mark on their memories. Needless to say, they didn't remain in that house for much longer they relocated before eventually making their way to the United States. What makes this tale even more extraordinary 
is that before my grandpa passed away, he admitted that my mother and he had finally glimpsed the elusive figure, the blonde boy with the unsettling pig mask. Story number six. Is it possible to trigger paranormal activity by thinking about it? Recently, within the past week, or perhaps a fortnight, I stumbled upon an intriguing episode of the renowned television show Paranormal Caught on Camera. This featured a segment that revolved around a woman, previously unacquainted with the supernatural occurrences, who after immersing herself in numerous videos depicting paranormal phenomenon, began to experience a sense of unease within the confines of her humble abode. Stricken by the inexplicable sensation, she hastily reached for a trusty smartphone, fully intent on capturing the unfolding moment of posterity. Little did she anticipate the spine-chilling revelation that awaited her lens. With trembling hands, she meticulously directed the recording device toward the ominous corner of the room. Apprehensive of what she might encounter, to her astonishment and terror, the digital evidence unveiled a presence beyond comprehension. A nebulous silhouette of ebony hue, resembling a humanoid figure, yet sporting an inexplicable non-human visage. The shadowy enigma, a disconcerting amalgamation of the familiar and the otherworldly, etched an indelible mark upon her psyche. Moreover, my fascination with the paranormal continued to thrive as I delved further into the realm of supernatural mysteries. A subsequent foyer into the realm of the late-night radio led me into a captivating program, Coast to Coast. During a particular episode, a caller, no doubt plagued by curiosity, boldly broached the topic of establishing communication with the enigmatic extraterrestrial beings known as greys. Eagerly anticipating the guest's response, I hung on to every word, eager to uncover the secrets that lay dormant within the abyss of the cosmos. With an air of authority, the guest elucidated upon the elusive nature of these interstellar entities. According to their account, the greys possess a form of telepathic prowess, enabling them to effortlessly intercept our most intimate thoughts whenever we happen to contemplate their enigmatic presence. Seemingly omnipresent within the realms of human cognition, the greys selectively descend from the celestial expanse to visit our humble abode should our thoughts pique their insatiable curiosity. Such revelations left me awe-stricken, pondering the seemingly boundless intricacies of the universe and the mysteries it conceals. The intricate tapestry of the paranormal, interwoven with ethereal shadows and the cosmic dance of alien minds, beckons us to traverse the realms of the unknown, urging us to unravel the enigmas that lie beyond the veil of human perception. I heard my mom's voice when she wasn't home. While my mom and grandma are usually busy with their nightly routine of driving to the community garden, getting groceries, and taking her dog to the farm, I often find myself home alone with one of my brothers. On this particular day, my mom and grandma had left the house with the dog, and I assumed they were off to tend to the garden and give our furry friends some outdoor time before dusk. With the house to myself, I usually take advantage of the solitude by either lounging in the living room or watching TV, or perhaps indulging in some baking. About an hour had passed, and everything seemed to be going smoothly. I had finished tidying up the dishes, and I had just placed the cake that I was baking into the oven. Sensing the need for a quick bathroom break, I excused myself and I stepped into the restroom. As I emerged, I was taken back by a distinct voice that echoed through the kitchen. It was unmistakably my mom's voice, crystal clear and seemingly coming from right there in the kitchen. Thinking my mom and grandma had returned, I called out to them, eager to know when they had left and where they had gone. To my surprise, no one answered. Puzzled, I ventured back into the kitchen, only to find it empty and devoid of any human presence. Nevertheless, I couldn't shake off the vivid auditory experience I had just encountered, it was as if I had heard my mom's voice, accompanied by the sounds of footsteps and objects being moved around the kitchen, like chairs scraping against the floor and jars clinking on the table. I ruled out any external sources of sound, no music played, no videos or broadcasts filled the airwaves, 
and all electronic devices were either turned off or far away from me. Furthermore, the windows were tightly shut, emanating the possibility of outside noises infiltrating the house. Moreover, I knew it couldn't have been my brother, as his voice had a deep timbre, and once he was engrossed in his laptop, he rarely emerged from his room for hours on end. I personally ensured that I was the sole occupant of the upper floor, and verified that no one had entered the premises during my brief absence. Everything appeared to be in order, devoid of any logical explanation. Curiously, this wasn't the first time I'd experienced such unexplained phenomenon. There had been instances where I distinctly heard my grandma's voice calling out to me when she wasn't even present in the house or attempting to even contact me. Each time I found myself perplexed and unable to attribute these mysterious voices to any discernible cause. Story 9. Sulfur Throughout my life, I've always been a skeptic when it comes to the supernatural. Ghosts, paranormal activities. I believed that there was a logical explanation for everything. However, there were three peculiar incidents that made me question my skepticism. The first happened when the mother of one of my closest friends tragically took her own life in the living room of their house. Ever since that fateful day, the room became an eerie and unwelcoming space, shrouded in an inexplicable aura of unease. Understandably, my friend and her family were eager to move out as soon as they could. One evening, during either the pleasant months of April or May, my friend invited a few of us over for a slumber party. Despite her warnings about the living room, advising us to gather in her room instead, we recklessly decided to camp out in the very room that held such dark memories. At first, things seemed relatively normal, but there was an unmistakable feeling that something was amiss in the air. It was as if we were constantly being observed, though it's challenging to articulate the sensation precisely. As the night progressed and we started to drift off into sleep, a sudden acrid odor filled the room. One of the girls identified as the distinct scent of sulfur. Fear gripped us tightly as we attempted to trace the source of the smell, assuming it must have originated from the kitchen. However, to our astonishment, there was no trace of the odor within the culinary confines of the house. When faced with uncertainty, what do we do in this modern age? We turn to the almighty oracle of knowledge, Google. In our panic, we fervently searched for any information about sulfur and its potential association with spirits. The results we stumbled upon only deepened our unease. Reacting swiftly, one of the girls hastened to open a window, hoping to dissipate the unsettling smell. But in a disconcerting twist of events, just as the window creaked open, a glass perched on the table teetered precariously before plummeting onto the floor, shattering on impact and staining the carpet. A peculiar coincidence, I thought to myself, trying to rationalize the occurrence. However, the expressions on the faces of my companions revealed the growing dread that enveloped us all. Sensing no other recourse, we hastily abandoned this eerie living room, seeking refuge in the sanctuary of my friend's bedroom, where we finally managed to find solace and drifted off to sleep, albeit uneasily. My Childhood Haunting When I was a young child, approximately between the ages of five and seven, I had recurring experiences where deceased relatives would appear beside me during the night. At that time, my mother, sister, and I resided with my granddad in a traditional Australian Queenslander house. This particular house was quite old, with two stories and an above-ground basement on the first floor, where my granddad lived. Almost every night I would encounter a man wearing green overalls and a lady positioned beneath my bed. Although the lady remained completely silent, her presence filled me with terror. The man would often stand near the bookshelf in my room, located right next to the door. He had a pale grayish complexion and would awaken me with his humming. If I remained still or concealed myself beneath the covers, he would continue humming. However, somehow, 
He would sense if I was looking and would turn to face me. He would then approach my bed, leaning in and attempting to come face to face with me. He did so silently, merely staring at me intently. Frightened beyond measure, I would hastily retreat under the covers or cry out for my mother. The lady emitted a faint light from beneath my bed. Unfortunately, I cannot recall her appearance clearly as I was usually upside down and in a state of shock whenever I caught a glimpse of her. Although I did manage to glance under the bed a few times to investigate the source of the light, the room's atmosphere felt overwhelmingly watchful whenever I did so. Later on, my mother deduced that the man resembled my granddad's deceased uncle who had passed away in the same room where these encounters were taking place. When my mother showed pictures of him, I recognized him completely. She reassured me and perhaps he was there to protect me and that I needn't worry. However, the presence felt undeniably malevolent to me. Just before he moved away from that house, my mother screamed at these apparitions in the dead of the night, demanding that they leave me alone. I can only imagine what the neighbors might have thought, but it seemed to have worked. Although he returned a few times thereafter, he never approached me again. After we settled into our own place, my granddad's brother moved in to live with him. Years later, he passed away in that very same room. Occasionally, I'd visit the family house, but I always avoid staying in that room. Merely passing by it fills me with dreadful sensations that I can't shake off. Story number seven, Ask Reddit 3. This incident hit me hard, and I feel compelled to share my experience. At the time, I was residing in an old motel complex turned student dorm, where I worked overnight at the desk and I provided security. Admittedly, the place wasn't the most pleasant, but I found solace in having my own tiny apartment within its walls. Most nights, I would happily immerse myself in the vast world of the internet, without a worry in the world. Paranoid thoughts and delusions were foreign to me. Yet one particular night stands out in vivid. As I mindlessly tapped away at the keyboard, engrossed in a video game or some online activity, an inexplicable and overwhelming thought suddenly consumed me. It was as if this notion had washed over me in an instant, crystal clear and definitive. There's a spirit in here. A girl, burdened with a profound sadness. This revelation completely stunned me since I'd never been experienced such a thought before. It was a fleeting uncertainty. Rather, it felt like a confident assessment that I couldn't disregard. Without any reason to doubt the message from my own end, I found myself speaking aloud to the unseen presence. Hey there, if you're feeling lonely or distressed, you can stay with me, but only if you promise not to frighten me. Let's be friends. You don't have to endure solitude. Strangely, after uttering those words, the overwhelming sensation subsided, but I resumed my computing endeavors without further incident. The entire episode left me perplexed and unsettled, prompting me to seek answers the following morning. I approached my boss, an older lady who had been associated with the establishment since its motel days, and shared my account, while inquiring about the deaths that might have occurred in my room. Her complexion turned pale, and she seemed visibly shaken by my question. She hesitated for a moment, then revealed the chilling truth. Deacon Nunu, back in the 70s, by hanging herself from the walkway railing just outside the door to your room. Notably, I haven't divulged any details of my experience prior to her response. I had merely inquired about the room's history, her reaction nearly mirroring my own bewildered state. Since then, I've never encountered anything even remotely similar. While I'm now inclined to approach spirits and the supernatural with skepticism, seeking plausible explanations, I can't deny that this particular event was profoundly jarring. Story number one. House in front of a graveyard. Throughout my entire life, my parents and I have resided in a house situated right in the front of a graveyard. Although there's a wooded area separating the house from the cemetery, it's not much of a distance. 
Whenever there were services taking place, we could hear them faintly, especially when we were in the very back of the yard. Growing up, we constantly experienced peculiar occurrences. I vividly remember one incident where I was standing in the kitchen, and out of nowhere, the ice in the door dispenser began pouring out, as if someone had activated the lever. Random breakages, unexplained footsteps, and other strange happenings were common, but we had yet to actually witness shadows or apparitions until now. One particular night, as I was home alone, I strolled through the house and sensed a presence other than my own. There was someone else inside. It turned out to be my grandpa, who, due to his old age and declining health, had trouble moving around. He had progressed from Alzheimer's to dementia. Standing in the kitchen with my dad's dog by my side, I gazed down the dark hallway and immediately felt that something was amiss. The atmosphere wasn't giving off a get-out-of-here vibe, so I cautiously proceeded forward. I walked towards my grandpa's room to deliver his medication when suddenly my dog began growling and snapping at the air. Simultaneously, I caught a glimpse of a shadowy figure resembling an arm. Sensing the need to address the situation, I reassured the unseen presence that it was welcome to stay, as long as it showed respect, particularly towards the animals. Fast forward to tonight, as I stood in front of the bathroom sink washing my face. Meanwhile, my grandpa resided in his room, sporadically engaging in random conversations. Suddenly I heard him sit up and exchange greetings with someone, as the bathroom was adjacent to his room. Intrigued, I raised my head after drying my face, and what I saw left me astounded. There before me was a white figure, taking the shape of a person, and then it vanished into thin air. The workings of the spirit would have always puzzled me. However, I can't help but be curious about how recent these spirits might be, considering that our paranormal activity tends to spike when new occupants move into the area surrounding the graveyard. Am I the only one who actually feels bad for lost spirits, or as we call them, ghosts? Ghosts, oh how they always manage to evoke a deep sense of melancholy within me. The more I ponder upon their existence, the more overwhelming the sadness becomes. Ghosts, in their essence, epitomize the profound loss of everything. While our bodies may merely serve as vessels, they are undeniably the most vital possession that we can ever have. If we were to lose even that, we would be left with nothing but emptiness. The thought of succumbing to a painful death, only to find oneself wandering aimlessly within the confines of a desolate and darkened edifice for all eternity, is utterly unimaginable. What's worse is that even when people are present, it becomes an unfathomable task for them to perceive or hear the presence of these ethereal beings. It's a plight capable of driving someone to the brink of insanity, akin to being perpetually trapped within an isolation chamber. In this peculiar state, one is able to observe the world, albeit without the ability to engage with it. If I were to encounter a lost soul trapped in such a predicament, I would gladly welcome them with solace of my abode and make every effort to engage with them whenever the opportunity arose. They deserve this connection and acknowledgement. I firmly believe that we should strive to transform the prevailing culture surrounding the deceased. These spectral entities are not to be feared as terrifying monsters. They're simply individuals whose spirits are unbound, unsure if they even exist anymore. They were once people just like you and me. While malevolence will inevitably reveal itself in due course, the vast majority of these apparitions pose no harm, and thus we should not be afraid to greet the seemingly vacant air from time to time. I wouldn't wish the plight of being a ghost upon anyone. It is undeniably the epitome of anguish. However, the most distressing aspect of all is the knowledge that one might still see or sense the presence of those they deeply cherish, yet to be forever denied the ability to interact with them. Despite my unwavering belief in reincarnation and the concept of an afterlife, 
it remains an arduous task to come to terms with the fact that I may never again engage with someone I hold dear in this present existence. The mere thought of this reality is a true hardship that tugs at my heartstrings. Story number seven. Toddler continues to see something. Last night at around eight o'clock, my husband and I found ourselves inside our three-year-old's bedroom. Across the hall, our one-year-old was sound asleep in his room. Our little son was engrossed in playing with his train table, and we were simply enjoying some quality family time together. Suddenly, he darted into the hallway, clutching a toy helicopter in his tiny hands, on a mission to rescue his other toys. He stood right outside the doorway, about to make his triumphant return to his room, when all of a sudden, he froze in his tracks, and looked up as though he had seen an adult figure standing in the doorway. Perplexed, my husband inquired about a sudden pause. Our toddler replied with a sense of urgency. A ghost! Startled, I interjected with a confused tone. Huh? He continued, A ghost trapped me! Intrigued and concerned, I asked him, Is it blocking the doorway? To my surprise, he affirmed, Yeah, it is, Mom. All the while remaining motionless, fixated on this unseen apparition. Though I couldn't sense anything or see any spectral presence myself, I understood that just because I couldn't perceive it didn't mean that my son couldn't. We decided to unite our voices and assert, In the name of Jesus, leave our house. We reassured our little one that the ghost couldn't harm him and encourage him never to allow it to hinder him from pursuing his desires. It infuriated me to think that this ethereal entity was attempting to prevent him from seeking our company. However, with some gentle encouragement and cheers from us, he mustered up the courage and ran back into his room, triumphant over the perceived obstacle. We continued playing for a while longer, but I couldn't help but notice that he kept pausing and glancing over in the direction where he had seen the ghostly figure. Despite this, he eventually went to bed without any further issues, seemingly unaffected by the supernatural encounter. As I reflect on this peculiar incident, I'm left pondering the mysteries of the unseen world. It amazes me how young children with their pure hearts and vivid imaginations can perceive things that elude the grasp of adults. Perhaps there's more to this realm than meets the eye, and our little one's encounter with the ghost serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between the tangible and the ethereal. Story number seven, Shadow Figures in My Room. Around 15 years ago, during my teenage years, I experienced something quite unsettling. Every night just before I went to bed, like clockwork, a peculiar occurrence would take place. At the same time each night, I would catch sight of a mysterious shadow. Its presence would manifest itself initially in the corner of my room, only to gradually advance toward the foot of my bed. This shadow figure was remarkably tall and slender, its appearance sending shivers down my spine each time. Strangely enough, this enigmatic entity always evoked the same inexplicable sensation within. Whenever the shadow figure materialized, an indescribable force seemed to take control of my entire being, leaving me utterly motionless and paralyzed. I found myself lying there, trapped and unable to move a muscle, as if I were under its spell. What made it even more puzzling was the fact that this entity lacked any discernible facial features. It was nothing more than a mere outline of a person. Half of me rationalized that it was just an ordinary shadow figure, as I had come to know that such entities do exist. Yet the other half of my mind was filled with lingering doubts and curiosity. As this entity seemed to exert an undeniable influence over my thoughts, leaving me in a state of complete mental captivity. Adding to the mystery, each time the shadow figure appeared, an inexplicable drop in temperature would permeate my room. It was as if an icy breath whispered through the air, chilling me to the bone. 
This chilling phenomenon only served to intensify the sense of unease and fascination that enveloped my nightly encounters with the shadow figure. Reflecting on those haunting nights from my past, I cannot help but wonder about the true nature of this ethereal presence. Was it indeed a mere shadow figure, a product of my imagination, and the tricks that darkness can play on one's mind? Or could it have been something more, something beyond the boundaries of our understanding? The questions linger, unanswered, in the depths of my memory, serving as a constant reminder of this enigmatic force that exists in our world, often hidden in the shadows, waiting to reveal their mysteries to those brave enough to seek the truth. Hauntings in my apartment. I currently reside in a charming apartment nestled in the heart of Pennsylvania. This building has a rich history spanning over a century, and it possesses a rather unique neighbor, an ancient funeral home. For the majority of my time here, I've never encountered any peculiar occurrences until the past couple of weeks, that is. Allow me to provide a bit of context. I'm a parent to a lovely child who splits her time between living with me and her mother. Now, let me recount the series of events that unfolded during this unsettling period. One fateful evening as I lay in bed, drifting into a peaceful slumber, an unexpected sensation began to overwhelm me. The onset of sleep paralysis. It felt as though an invisible force was gradually seizing control over my limbs, rendering them stiff and immovable. Panic surged through my veins as I desperately sought a means of escaping this nightmarish state. By a stroke of luck, my hand instinctively reached to the nearest object within my reach, which happened to be my trusty phone. Summoning all my willpower, I managed to break free of the clutches of sleep paralysis, feeling an immense sense of relief wash over me. Subsequently, I was able to rest peacefully for the remainder of the night. As I prepare to embark on a new chapter in my life, I carry with me the lessons learned from this ethereal encounter. I have developed a newfound appreciation for the fragility of our reality and the vast unknown that lies just beyond the surface. The experience has instilled with me a deep respect for the unseen forces that intertwine with our daily lives, urging me to remain vigilant and open-minded to the extraordinary. In the end, it is not fear for uncertainty that defines us, but rather how we confront and grow from these experiences. The story of my time in Pennsylvania will forever be etched in my memory, serving as a reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and our ability to overcome even the most inexplicable and daunting challenges. As I embark on my journey toward a new home, I carry within me a newfound sense of strength and an unwavering belief in the power of the human spirit to conquer the unknown. Story number 17. What is in the patrol room? During my uncle's time as a trustee at the county jailhouse, he encountered an inexplicable incident that has haunted him ever since. The puzzling occurrence not only left him dumbfounded, but also perplexed the workers who observed the event through the surveillance cameras. It all happened in the early hours of the morning when my uncle was diligently tidying up the patrol room of the sheriff's apartment. The task at hand was relatively simple. Clean the area surrounding the computers, sweeping and mopping the floors, and ensuring that trash was properly disposed of. As he finished tidying up the trash bag, ready to leave, something bizarre occurred that sent shivers down his spine. Without warning, one of the swivel chairs he had previously pushed back against the desk suddenly started rolling toward him. Astonished and initially suspecting a prank, my uncle swiftly turned around, only to find himself completely alone in the room. Startled, he dropped the trash and sprinted out, vowing to never set foot in that room unaccompanied again. The jailers, who had been monitoring the cameras, were equally astounded by the sight of the chair inexplicably rolling on its own. Even to this day, the incident remains an enigma defying any logical explanation. After the peculiar episode, an unspoken agreement was reached among everyone involved to avoid discussing it further, as if by acknowledging the event, they would be inviting more inexplicable occurrences into their lives. However, 
My uncle staunchly remains that the patrol room in the entire department is still plagued by supernatural forces. On certain nights, as my uncle could make his way from the patrol room, he claimed to hear faint whispering echoes through the air, emanating from the very place that had sent him fleeing in fear. The eerie sound only added to the mystique surrounding the haunted room, reinforcing his belief that something otherworldly resided within those walls. Strange Car Situations Told by My Friend One morning around 6 a.m., I embarked on my usual drive to work. As I merged into the highway, I noticed a peculiar car up ahead. There was something off about it, an indescribable sense of abnormality. As I drew closer, my confusion escalated, for the car appeared as though it hadn't fully rendered yet. It resembled a pixelated and blurry object akin to a video game character waiting to load. My mind struggled to comprehend what I was witnessing. When I finally overtook the car, a young girl behind the wheel, the inexplicable phenomenon abruptly corrected itself. I glanced back only to find a perfectly normal vehicle. The girl now appeared entirely different from the strange, distorted image I had observed moments earlier. It was a perplexing experience, leaving me puzzled and fascinated by the fleeting anomaly. Another peculiar incident occurred while I was driving. I found myself on the main road, approaching a car coming from the opposite direction. As our vehicle passed each other, I couldn't help but notice all four occupants fixated their gaze directly upon me. What made this encounter even more unsettling was the strikingly pale complexion of these individuals, resembling sheets of paper. Their eyes, unnaturally large and devoid of pupils, resembled the markings of raccoons. As the car moved past mine, the father and mother occupying the front seats, and the young boy and girl in the back, maintained unwavering eye contact with me. It was as if their intent was to penetrate my very soul. This chilling experience left an indelible mark on my memory, leaving me with countless questions and an eerie sense of unease. My First Shadow Figure, Story Number 5 When I was 17 years old, I had my inaugural encounter with the mysterious shadow figure. It happened shortly after I moved into a new house in September of 1986, a dwelling that had tragically been the place of the previous owner's demise during the past winter. It was during the night when the peculiar incident unfolded. Suddenly I awoke with an unsettling sensation that I was being closely observed, you see, my bedroom was situated off the second floor landing, with the wall directly opposite my door. Slowly, I rolled over to the position where I could sit up and assess my surroundings. To my surprise, there was no discernible sources of light present. The other bedroom doors were securely closed and the room was immersed in an eerie darkness. As I propped myself up, my gaze fixated upon a peculiar sight. There in front of me stood a shadow figure seemingly darker than the already dim ambiance of the house. Its presence was intensified by the presence of silver pinprick eyes that pierced through with obscurity. Filled with curiosity and a tinge of trepidation, I summoned the courage to inquire about its intentions. Yet to my dismay, my query was met with an eerie silence. Engulfed in an atmosphere charged with anticipation, the shadow figure and I engaged in an intense staring contest the duration of which felt like an eternity. The air was thick with uncertainty as we locked our gazes, neither one of us yielding. But then, as abruptly as it had appeared, the enigmatic figure began to fade away, gradually dissipating into the surrounding darkness. That encounter marked the first, and surprisingly the last, I had of such experiences for a considerable period. The Lady in Black I'm a trucker, and my brother-in-law and I work as a team, frequently running a route to York, Pennsylvania. One of the roads we often traverse is the Susquehanna Trail, which I mention in case anyone's familiar with the area. On a chilly January morning, around midnight, we had just finished delivering our trailer, and 
we were ready to hit the road again. As we approached a dip in the road, I noticed a series of houses with long driveways surrounding the area. Little did I know that this mundane stretch of road was about to become the stage for a peculiar encounter. As our headlights pierced through the darkness and illuminated the bottom of the dip, my brother-in-law and I simultaneously caught a glimpse of a woman. She appeared to be elderly, dressed in striking black gown, reminiscent of a Gothic or Victorian era piece, and to complete her enigmatic appearance, she wore a hat, and her face was partially obscured by a veil or translucent fabric of some kind. Despite the veil, we couldn't discern her facial features along with her arms and hands. Her head was lowered, but her eyes were fixed upon us. What struck us as eerie was the fact that although her body remained motionless, she managed to turn her face in our direction as we drove past. The entire scene left us bewildered, questioning the nature of this encounter. Could it be possible that this woman suffered from mental illness, compelling her to stand alone on the side of the road in the dead of night? Moreover, what motivated her to endure the bone-chilling temperatures, braving the freezing cold just to be there? These questions echoed in my mind as we continued our journey, leaving behind the mysterious woman in the dark, wintry night. Knocking on my window during the spring and summer. For the past seven or so years, I've resided in my house. A peculiar occurrence has taken place during the seasons of spring and summer. Without fail, I've experienced a series of perplexing incidents wherein the knocking sounds emanate from both my bedroom and bedroom windows, both of which are situated on the second floor. Given the architectural design of my abode, I'm inclined to believe that there must be an individual positioned outside of my bathroom window, as the roof adjacent to it is remarkably flat, rendering it easily accessible with the aid of a ladder. However, to my perpetual bewilderment, each time I mustered the courage to investigate the source of the knocking, I am met with an empty vista devoid of human presence. Bafflingly enough, the enigma does not cease at the bathroom window alone. After I reluctantly withdraw from my bathroom and proceed back to the sanctuary of my bedroom, an unsettling pattern emerges whereby, more often than not, a short interval elapses before the reverberation of knocking resounds against my bedroom window as well. Unlike its bathroom counterpart, my bedroom window opens up to a sheer drop, leading directly to our driveway below, leaving me perplexed as to how anyone could possibly approach it. Without arousing the attention of others nearby, Remarkably, this peculiar phenomenon seems to be confined solely to the warmer months, with occurrences in the winter seasons being a rarity, further deepening the enigmatic nature of these incidents.